All right, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you, Pook, with the very first video for 2016. Woo, yeah. I'm in my car once again, just because it's a, uh, a nice place to record. It helps me uh, gather my thoughts and stuff like that. Plus, I, I don't know, I kind of feel weird recording uh, in the house, you know, in my parents' house, because, you know, they're home and they may knock on the door and, you know, mess it up or something like that. So, uh, I decided to record out here in my car, um, back home in Salina, Ohio for the time being, you know, visiting folks for the holidays. Uh, I'm going to be leaving uh, in a couple days to go back up to Portage, Michigan, where I'm going to make a, uh, a, a proper uh, update video for the month and uh, stuff like that. But I thought I'd just uh, check in with you guys, let you know I'm alive and well, and uh, show off my new uh, Dragon Ball Z t -sh Well, you can only see the top part because I can only, like, I can't. <laughs> this is how high it goes, so you can't see the rest of it. But it's my new shirt I got for Christmas. So, yeah. <clears throat> and I also got a, a bunch of uh, coffee mugs and. Uh, a, a uh, my very first uh, Keurig coffee machine. Now, I know a lot of people are kind of all the hippy dippy types are like, oh, K cups are ruining the world. Uh, whatever. I love it. I don't like making a whole pot of coffee if it's just me. You know, I just prefer to have like, you know, put the little thing in there, set it, forget it. So works for me. So <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm real excited to uh, get that all set up once I. Uh, get back home so uh yeah <laughs> as well as a bunch of other little uh, random things for the house you know not nothing too exciting you know i got light yeah <laughs> so you know nothing too spectacular but it's a lot of stuff that i need for uh, my new place that i didn't have in japan so you know that's cool but anyway um <clears throat> yeah like i said i just wanted to uh make this video to uh, check in with you guys I've really been holding in this uh, this announcement for a long time, and I wanted to uh, say it on uh, my proper monthly update video, and I am going to reiterate it on the, in that video too, in case you guys missed this one. Um, but I'm going to say it here first for uh, 2016. I've made it my year year resolution, my New Year's resolution, to um, change some things up on my channel. And stuff like that. Now you guys know that you know I'm gonna be uh, kicking off my Let's Play channel. Uh, that's Andy Cade. Uh, I'm gonna be kicking that off very soon. Uh, once I get back home, get some games loaded up, do some recording sessions, things like that. Um, it's not gonna be pretty at first. I realize that because I don't have the uh, the conversational uh, patterns for a Let's Play down yet. I I, I went back and looked at. Uh, some of my uh, first Let's Play attempts, the first two games that I did, which were uh, Honey Pop and uh, Phantom Breakers Battlegrounds. Both great games, by the way. Um, <clears throat> so I looked at them, kind of dissected uh, what I liked and what I didn't like. And what I liked was, uh, surprisingly, the setup that I had, the recording setup. The audio and the video was very good. So I was really... Uh, really uh, pleased with how the uh, recording setup was. And it, it was like the jankiest of recording setups. Like, like seriously, this setup was pretty damn janky, but it ended up working out pretty well. So um, I'm hoping to, in the future, maybe invest in some better equipment so I can streamline the process a bit better. But for now, this process works just fine. So yeah, that's cool. But uh, I do have a couple games lined up for my uh, relaunching of Andy Cade, and uh, uh, I want them to be a surprise. You know, I'll, I'll wait for the actual release because I don't want to hype it up and then do something else, and everybody's like, well, "Andy, I thought you were gonna do the one game. What happened, man?" <laughs> you know, I don't want anything like that. But um, <clears throat> so basically, like the theme of Andy Cade, as far as like what games I'll let's play, is. Uh, Mostly games that I grew up with, or like retro style games, you know, like anime style games, maybe like, you know, Japan centric style games, you know, not, not necessarily RPGs per se, even though that's like the bread and butter of Japanese gaming right now, if you don't include like visual novels or something like that. 
which aren't really games per se. It's just, eh, I don't know, it's a fine line. <laughs> but basically, it's going to be, uh, you know, a lot of retro games, anime games, stuff like that. So, uh, you know, and I'll throw in a couple popular games in there too if, like, I like them. I don't want to just like do a game just because it's popular. I mean, it's like it's like me doing Minecraft or something like that. You know, like. I don't hate Minecraft. I just, it, I don't know. It just, it really doesn't appeal that much to me anymore. It's just, it's very, I don't know. It's just, uh, I don't know. I might do it, but uh, I have my doubts. So, <laughs> especially with all the uh, the scandals going on at the time of this recording, you know, there's a big uh, pedophilia scandal going about in the Minecraft community. So, uh, I think I'll stay away from the whole Minecraft scene at least until all that stuff dies down, and then. Yeah, maybe pick it back up, I don't know. But in any event, um, <clears throat> the big announcement, you know, about six minutes in or so. Um, for 2016, in addition to uh, taking my Let's Play channel a bit more seriously, having a more consistent schedule and uh, doing stuff like that, is that I'm going to be moving my main channel. Now, you got, as you guys know, I've been on my uh, Andy-san channel, which is where you're viewing this at right now. Um, I've been on my Andy-san channel for going on 10 years now. It'll be officially 10 years, uh, March 1st of 2016. So, um, <clears throat> I just wanted to make this announcement now, so that way you guys can shift over to the channel. Because it's, you know... <laughs> Like I said, I've been doing this for almost 10 years now, so I have a lot of backlog. And so the plan is for me to move all of my videos from my Andy-san channel over to my uh, The Andy-san channel. So um, originally I wanted to do like a, like a start from scratch. So I set aside um, a separate channel. You know, as like a channel where basically like I would, you know, pick a lot of my... Uh, videos and stuff like that you know i would i would exclude like you know random amvs or something like that that i uploaded and uh, like certain update videos just because i didn't want people to get confused about an update when in reality the update was done in like 2009 or something you know people are like dude what's going on jesus <laughs> sorry there's like a shit ton of seagulls out there just getting at this trash can but anyway sorry ADD moment <laughs> anyway so um the plan is to move over to my the Andy Son channel that's youtube.com slash the Andy Son uh it was originally my secondary channel and I would upload like concerts and stuff like that to it but um I've decided to uh <clears throat> move my main channel over to it um not only for like branding consistency because you know if you look up just Andy San, you'll you'll see a lot of uh, videos for uh, the porn star Andy San Dimas. She still beats me in search en engine results to a point, but uh, yeah, you'll see a lot of her videos, and so like people might get confused or something like that. And I originally wanted my channel to start with Andy because like it would show up in the search results first, I think, at least in the beginning it would, because a lot of the uh, how the subscriber thing would go at least in the beginning of YouTube was that it would go for like from A to Z pretty much so you know and I don't like putting numbers in my channel name I mean that works for some people but for me I just I don't like doing that so I figured just make it all names so that way it would be less confusing to people and stuff like that and uh, so I decided to go with the Andy Son because there's a lot of Andy Sons online you know it's a uh, fairly common username it's very easy to remember you know i remember going to uh <clears throat> a lot of the uh the youtube gatherings a lot of like the hanami uh the summer party up in japan and uh people who didn't know me or my channel would ask me hey do you do the uh the youtube thing or you on youtube you on twitter or something like that and i would say yeah man i'm you know youtube.com slash andy san you know andy y s a n pretty easy to remember and then like some of my other friends i'm not going to name names so don't want to incriminate people but there were some of my friends who had uh, longer more complex names and you know when they would tell them the people they would just kind of look at them like how do you spell how long is, how do you spell that so it's a what now 
It just, it doesn't roll off the tongue and it's not short and sweet like Andy San. Easy. <laughs> so yeah, um, so I decided to go with that name and I've had that name for friggin' years now. I think, uh, if I remember right, the very first iteration of that name was on a message board I used to frequent back in the day called the shiz.org. It was the uh, the mini bosses message board forum dealio back in the uh, the early days of me on the internet. So we're talking like uh, shoot probably 2004-2005 ish. So it was a little before uh, I started up on YouTube. But uh, yeah, so that's where the name came from because it asked for a, a forum name and I'm like because uh, I wanted to incorporate my own name because, you know, I don't want, like, <laughs> if I were to call myself, like, you know, I don't know, White Tiger 45822 or something stupid like that, you know, then people, you know, if I would meet them in person, they'd be like, hey, White Tiger, what's up, dude? And, you know, I, I may or may not respond, and it sounds kind of silly, you know. So at least if I had, like, Andy-san, you know, it's got my name in it, so... I mean, some people may come up to me on the streets and be like, Hey, Andy-san! Or something like that, and I'd be cool with that. But, you know, some people be like, Hey, Andy, what's up? So, you know, that's one of the reasons why I want to incorporate my own name into it. You know, so that way people know me, know me by name versus handle, which kind of blend together a bit better when you have your own name in it, so... At least... That's my own opinion. If you have a, uh, a username that you're comfortable with, or like a handle or something like that, and it works for you, then great. But, you know, for me, that's just uh, what works for me. So, anyway. So, yeah, that's the big announcement. I'm going to be moving all of my uh, old Andy San videos uh, over to my The Andy San channel. Um, it's going to take a very long time because I have... Shoot... Uh, Last time I checked, I have, I think, maybe 960 to 980, so, like, almost a 1,000 videos on my main channel alone. Because, you know, like I said, I've been doing this for almost 10 years now. You know, and I like to emphasize that because it makes me sound professional. <laughs> oh, you've been YouTubing for 10 years. Wow. <laughs> a real veteran of the game, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah. Um, so that's the basic plan is over the next couple months... I'm going to be moving over to my The Andy San channel. Um, once everything is all uh, moved over, once I get all the you know tag information and all that kind of crap from the videos all set up and everything, uh, then I'll make the whole thing, uh, make all the videos public. So I'm not gonna hook up my Twitter account to it just yet until after I make all the videos public. So you might see like a, an explosion of videos one day during the launch day. So, yeah, but then once that happens, then I'm going to be posting uh, from there, mostly. And uh, in regards to, like, that channel and my Let's Play channel, so the idea is that I'm going to make my The Andy San channel my personal channel. So um, we're going to be talking about, like, vlogs, you know, life in series, stuff like that. But it's basically just going to be my personal channel. I don't know, it's, it's hard to, like, call a channel a personal channel and then, like, call another one, like, a working channel. But basically, like, the personal channel is going to be more variety. You know, it's not going to have a, a certain theme per se, rather, or, like, uh, it's not going to have a certain focus. It's mostly just going to be, you know, what's going on in my life, which I guess is a focus, if you think about it. But you, got, you guys know what I mean, right? So um, it's basically just going to focus on me, my life, what's going on with me. <laughs> I'm going to put a gonna put some channel updates and monthly updates and all that kind of stuff on there so if you guys want to check all that stuff out you can subscribe to that channel and if you guys just want to check out the let's play stuff or whatever then you can subscribe to the andy k channel so that's the idea behind the the whole two channels thing two channels <laughs> so i just wanted to kind of keep them a little separate so if you guys you know don't want to see the let's play stuff you know you can go to the other other channel or vice versa you know just keep them separated <laughs> and uh plus i already have uh my adsense account uh already linked to the two channels now um adsense was disabled on my uh, original andy san channel so which is another reason why i'm 
making the migration over to my The Andy San channel because it's already set up for that account and I already have uh, a small subscriber base with it. So it's not going to be anything super new, which is another reason why I decided to just migrate to that channel versus starting a whole new channel because with the whole new channel, like, I know that there are some people who are subscribed to my channel who don't necessarily like watch every video that I make or anything like that. And you know, it's fine, it's whatever. At least with uh, the other channel, like I started the other channel, I think, uh, I think in like 2008, 2009, something like that. So it's been around a long time too. So it definitely has, you know, some clout in the community, even though it was just a secondary channel. But, you know, in any event, it's not gonna be like super unfamiliar territory and it's gonna, you know, keep, in uh, consistency with, you know, my branding of the Andy San versus just Andy San. And plus, you know, I already have AdSense integrated into both accounts, which I know you guys don't like to hear me talk about money because, you know, talking about money is like the cardinal sin on YouTube, only like marketing people and salespeople do it. And it's just kind of, yeah, but you know, I, I pride myself on being as honest as I can with you guys. You know, so there are some things I can't talk about because, you know, a little too personal or, you know, especially if it involves other, other people, you know, unless I have their consent, I don't like talking about it. But, you know, aside from, from that, I like to pride myself on being honest with you guys. I got my AdSense account set up for both those channels, but uh, I had problems with my original channel because of uh, my original AdSense account being disabled due to uh, invalid click activity, <laughs> which I'm not going to get into uh, what happened. You know, it is what it is, but uh, it did happen. Uh, there weren't uh, the safeguards that there are now. You couldn't really contest it like you could now, or like you can now. And so they made their, Google made their decision back in 2005, 2006. This was before YouTube even started is when I got the AdSense account. So maybe like a year or two before. So around that time. So one thing led to another and uh, got banned from that AdSense account. So yeah. Um, and I've tried to appeal it so many times because I figured like maybe there's like a statute of limitations or something like that. Like, you know, hey, I was a dumb 18, 19 year old kid. Didn't really know what I was doing. I'm like 30 years old now. So, you know, can we let bygones be bygones? Come on, Google. <laughs> you know, but they're just like, your account was disabled due to invalid click activity. There's nothing we can do. So, yeah. <laughs> Shogunai, I guess, right? Can't be helped. But, uh, so yeah, that's basically uh, the gist of this video. And once again, I'm kind of rambling on with these vlogs. And uh, I apologize for the, the vlogs being so long. But, uh, you know, I got a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, I'm not as quick on my feet like I used to when I was cranking these videos out, you know, consistently because of like the holidays and transitioning over to civilian life and all that kind of stuff. You know, I'm not as quick on my feet or, you know, as far as making videos go. So, you know, I don't, you know, have the, <laughs> so, okay. And that <laughs> exhibit A right there. So anyway, with that said, uh, I want to thank you guys for, um, uh, being subscribed to this channel for as long as you have. Um, I apologize if there's any inconvenience in the move. Um, it's Like I said, it's definitely not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a lot of time for me to export all those videos over to my other channel, get them all ready with like the tags and the description and all that kind of stuff. And then once that's done, you know, once I get all that stuff done, then um, we'll do like a, a launch date, I guess, and get that all set up. And then uh, I'll officially be making vlogs and all that kind of stuff over there. And I'll be sure to put up like an announcement video on my Andy San channel as well. So that way, you know, if you're a little late to the party or whatever, you're wondering like, why isn't Andy San making videos anymore? What's going on, dude? <laughs> then, 
you can uh, check that out as well. So that way you go to the page and it's that video. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyway, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, hopefully 2016 will be a much improved year for me on YouTube. Year for me in my personal life as well. Um, as you guys know, I'm going to be uh, starting up school. Um... Not this coming week, but the following week. So I start on the uh, 11th of January. I had to think about that for a sec. But I start on the 11th of January, my classes and all that kind of stuff. And uh, really nervous because, uh, you know, I'm a little out of practice when it comes to college. You know, I haven't, haven't actually uh, been to like a college class since uh, 2007. So, you know, nine years now, <laughs> let's say. Um, and I've just been out of the whole education environment for a long time. And uh, really nervous about, you know, getting myself in the right, uh, like, frame of mind and stuff like that for college. You know, because, yeah, you know, I'm a little older, a little wiser, so I think... You know, I'll do a lot better this time around versus the other times because I, I was like too distracted. You know, I let a lot of things get to me that shouldn't have got to me. You know, I should have, you know, dealt with that. It's a lot of personal stuff. You know, I don't want to get into it like 22 minutes in <laughs> this video, but you know, there's a lot of stuff that um, just kind of held me back. You know, in college, and it was it was mostly me and a little bit of the college itself that I went to, there was a, you know, just, you know, they weren't working with me to keep me going. And, uh, you know, <laughs> conversely, because they weren't working with me, it affected me and my schoolwork and just my mental state at that time. Like, you know, I, every once in a while I go back on my blog and look at a lot of posts that I wrote from that time period. And it just seems like I was in such a completely different frame of mind, you know, I was, you know, speaking, I tried to speak from experience, but I didn't have experience, if that makes any sense. So a lot of what I was writing, you know, I was trying to come off as somebody who's been there, done that, but I wasn't there and I hadn't done that. So, you know, it, to me, it came off a bit disingenuous, you know, me, the 30 year old me looking back on it, you know, at what the 20 to 21 year old me was writing about, you know, somebody who now has some experience looking at someone who had very little outside experience trying to, you know, puff themselves up as, you know, somebody that what they weren't, it was kind of laughable. And, you know, like I said, I was, one of the things that I noticed a lot in my writing was I was very passionate about what I was writing about. You know, I was kind of passionate for some of the wrong reasons and stuff like that, but, you know, I did notice that I did have a, a huge passion for writing. I was very, you know, emotionally invested into what I was writing. Now, <laughs> there's also a bunch of technical stuff, like I wasn't really a big fan of formatting, you know, like, you know, condensing stuff, you know, putting headlines and all that kind of stuff, which is probably one of the reasons, you know, some of my posts didn't take off like I thought they should have back in the day. You know, was I, I wasn't, you know, gussing it up for everybody. You know, it's just, this is what it is, and here you go. <laughs> you know, I pretty much just, uh, you know, separated by paragraph, but, you know, no, you know, headlines or anything like that so yeah <laughs> but hey you live and learn right you know you can only get better if you you know keep on doing what you're doing and that's that's something I tell a lot of people who ask me you know like you know because some people ask me editing questions especially since I started doing the uh, the live streams for editing my videos and those are gonna be coming back soon by the way once I get internet all hooked up in my place and all that kind of stuff, but I'm a little tight on money right now, so that might that may have to wait till next month, you know. <laughs> so, but I mean, it is what it is. So, anyway, um, hey, you know, what can I do starting off on YouTube? You know, like what kind of setup I have, what kind of editing rig, and 
you know, what I should, you know, just little technical questions here and there. And, you know, for me, starting off, like, I had no experience with editing video. Like, my only editing experience at the time I started making videos was uh, just editing audio. And it was... My setup was so janky at the time. It took me forever to even find out what Audacity was. But then again, I think Audacity was released kind of around that time anyway, so, you know. <laughs> but I remember, you know, my very first, like, edited recording that I ever did, you know, on the computer anyway. We're not even getting into tapes and stuff like that. But the first edited uh, audio recording I ever did on the computer was with the old... Uh, Microsoft sound uh, recorder but the thing is it could only record up to 60 seconds at a time I think I think it was like 60 90 seconds something like that so like if a song or whatever would go beyond that there would be you know I'd have it would just cut you have to like stop the tape okay then hit record you know start the tape up again and uh, just kind of edit out a lot of the pauses in between. And uh, I remember editing, because uh, my friends had this little uh, thing that they did, like a couple sketches and stuff they did on uh, an old cassette tape and an old karaoke machine. And uh, it was on tape, and I wanted to convert it over to, uh, to digital, because I wanted to give them like a CD and stuff like that. So I remember I had like the cassette tape, and I would just like hit hit play, let it do its thing for like 60 or 90 seconds, whatever. And then the Microsoft sound thing would stop, start a new file. And then I, uh, I forget what program I used to, uh, compile all the files together. I, th I think it was, uh, might've been like Roxio or I don't know if I had total video converter at that time, but I think it was total video converter actually. But actually, Total Video Converter was also turned out to be my very first uh, editing program <laughs> for uh, for my very very early Andy San videos. Like uh, I think like the first video I was in my guitar solo video because uh, my friend Eric, also known as the Talking Vidalkin, he recorded me in my dorm room back at uh, the old uh, college I went to, Urbana University in, Ur in Urbana, Ohio. Um, so he recorded me doing, like, this guitar solo. It was pretty shit, but, you know. <laughs> like I said, live and learn, right? But anyway, so he recorded me, and he only had, like, a small... Uh, I think he had, like, a small memory card or something like that. Now, keep in mind, this was, uh, like, 2006, 2007. So, you know, <laughs> you could get, like, a 32-gigabyte card for fucking nothing nowadays. But back then, you know... A 256 megabyte, not gigabyte, megabyte, you know, 256 or 512, you know, that was, that was the bee's knees, man. That was like the shit back in the day. But in any event, you could only record so much video on those cards, even back then. So like what he would do is he would re only record in like uh, little 30 second or 60 second clips. And then what I do is I would compile them into total video converter which basically meant, like, little actual editing. It was just me, you know, piecing together a lot of those files. I think, like, what I did, you know, because there was some dead air in between the clips, was I would figure out where the dead air was, like, the second and stuff, and, like, right where I started playing again. And then uh, I would cut out the dead air because, of, like, of how it was done. But it was very, very janky, very... Uh, you know, basic, primitive form of video editing, and that's what I initially used to, to video edit. And it wasn't until uh, Vlog 4 on my Andy-san channel that I actually got down to editing, editing. You know, I, I got a copy of uh, Sony Vegas. I think, it was like, I think it was like version 7 or 8 at that time. I think it was version 8 at the time. And, uh... I got that, and, you know, I've been with them ever since. And uh, speaking of Vegas, actually, Sony Vegas, Vegas, baby, <laughs> um, I've been dinking around with some Adobe programs 
lately just because like everybody's talking about oh adobe premiere is like the editing pro all the professionals use it and stuff like that and uh, i remember dinking around with premiere which is you know their version of video editing uh before and it wasn't it wasn't bad it was a good program it just to me it was very similar to sony vegas there's a lot of differences too it was very similar to me, you know, like to Vegas. And, you know, for me, it was just like, well, uh, you know, I didn't really see the point in converting over to Premiere because it was basically the same as Vegas. And I'm just like, I'm already familiar with Vegas, you know, why would I convert over? But then I started playing around uh, yesterday, actually, with uh, Adobe Audition because um, I was just kind of looking around and uh, I was looking for like a dynamic converter or dynamic processor for converting audio because uh, I know that there are some plugins you can get for audacity but they're not they're not like not to say that they're not as good they are but like you can't um, set up like a graph to nuke certain frequencies and to boost other frequencies and stuff like that like you can with uh, Adobe audition which I got recently, and uh, I've been just been dinking around with it. And uh, so another thing that I'm seriously considering now is, you know, maybe, you know, upgrading my uh, editing software, my editing rig, as far as, you know, the software end of it goes. The hardware end, I think I'm good for a while. <laughs> you know, I think w maybe once 4K starts becoming more mainstream and the cost for you know, getting 4K video out and all that, all that, in, that it entails, <laughs> you know, it comes down in price, then maybe I'll switch over. But until then, you know, 1080p, 60 frames per second, totally fine, totally smooth video for now. So <laughs> in another 10 years, you know, this video even will look like, oh my God, it's so pixely. Why is it flat? The colors look like shit. I can barely understand what he's saying. Oh my God. <laughs> Because, like, you know, sometimes I look back at even my old videos, which I thought were good at the time, you know, the whole setup and everything all considered. And I'm just like, man, the audio is really staticky. I'm too close to the camera. You know, it's too, it's pretty much just like a picture of my head and like maybe a little bit of background. But again, it was camera placement, um, the resolution, all that kind of stuff. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> So I think it'd be kind of neat in another 10 years if YouTube's still around to look back at a lot of those old videos and be like, man, 1080p looked like shit. <laughs> so, but anyway, yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to say in this video. I know I've been rambling on and on, and I'll probably have to tack this little clip onto the end here with uh, the YouTube editor because I don't have uh, any editing rig at all with me at the moment. Um, but who knows, that might change, wink. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I just want to thank you guys for uh, tuning in to this especially long, rambly vlog. First video of 2016, woo! And uh, with that said, this is the Andy San. Sign up for now. Thanking you guys, Poop, for tuning into my videos and uh, all those stuff. And uh, hopefully you guys, you know, can make the migration over to my The Andy San channel. Um, if you want to do it early, that's cool. You know, just hit the little subscribe -y button so that way you won't be out of the loop. So, yeah. <laughs> also want to thank you guys for liking with the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party, and hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you boop, with my long overdue January 2016 update video for, you guessed it, January 2016. Woo! So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm going to go over some personal stuff as well as youtube -y stuff. But um, before we begin all that, um, I do want to apologize for the, uh, the lack of videos as of late. Um, I've been busy moving, if you couldn't tell, I'm at my new digs here in uh, Portage, Michigan. I just started my uh, first semester of college in nearly 10 years, so nearly a decade. Um, and I just started last week, so I've been busy with that, going to uh, Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo, just a couple miles away.
And so a lot of changes, and I just got uh, internet connectivity in the apartment uh, yesterday. So since then I've been very busy uploading videos and stuff like that, and actually uploading a whole bunch of them right now. So um, yeah, but we'll get into that here in a bit. So, um, and in this month's video, the, uh, the personal life stuff and the YouTube -y stuff kind of intermingle a little bit, so it's not gonna be as clear cut as in most of my uh, monthly update videos, so um, apologies for that in advance. <laughs> but anyway, let's begin. So let's start off with some uh, YouTube -y stuff. And I already pretty much covered the bases as far as like why I haven't been making as many videos as of late, so you know, moving on from that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, I have two major announcements for not only this month, for, but for this year, as far as a new direction for the Andy Sun. So um, and I've already kind of touched on these in previous update videos, but I just want to reiterate it in this video just so you guys, you know, know <laughs> about it. So you're not kind of blindsided about, oh, what's going on? <laughs> so um, one of the main changes that's going to be happening this year is I'm going to be um, moving my channel. So I'm going to be moving my main channel to my former secondary channel. So instead of, you know, youtube.com slash andysan, which is what you're watching this video on right now, I'm gonna be moving my channel over to youtube.com slash theandysan. And I'll be sure to put uh, links and stuff down below in the uh, description, in the boobity boops. So that way you guys can check it out, subscribe, so you can just set it and forget it, <laughs> pretty much. But, um, yeah, so one of the reasons, actually I have two main reasons, you know, uh, for uh, the move and uh, one of the reasons is for branding consistency now I know that on YouTube. I'm known as Andy San, but for a lot of my other uh, Social media outlets and stuff like that. I'm the Andy San So <laughs> it's kind of a, a weird little Anomaly and it didn't always used to be that way But just because a lot of people found the name and picked it up before I did it was just like shit <laughs> So I had to go with the Andy San you know, so um, I think just for branding consistency, you know, moving over to, you know, my The Andy San channel, it'll just streamline everything, you know, and people won't get confused. You know, which Andy San is it? I don't, I don't know, man. Andy Space San, San, I And also, uh, <laughs> as anybody who has tried uh, searching for my videos uh, under the name Andy San can attest to, um, it, it can come up with a lot of uh, unsavory uh, search results, you know, depending on who you are, of course. Um, so, as you know, you guys have found out, um, the porn star Andy Sandimas appears in a lot of my search results if you're trying to search for my Andy San channel. So, um, depending on you know who you are and your taste for adult content and stuff like that, uh, you may not find that favorable. And uh, if you're if you're one of my younger viewers, you know if you try searching, where's Andy San? And you see friggin' porn star with their legs spread open and stuff like that. You know, you know, mommy and daddy may not take too kindly to that. So um, I decided to switch over to the Andy San, where a lot more of my videos show up more consistently as opposed to other people. So that's one of the reasons. And uh, Probably the main reason, second reason, is that I've got my AdSense account activated for that channel finally. So it's been approved and stuff like that. And I've already started monetizing some of the videos. Not all, but some. And um, so I just want to talk to you guys a little bit about the whole monetization thing. Because, you know, talking, you know, YouTube money is kind of a, a dirty word on YouTube. Because, you know, it, it's very, you know invocative of uh, selling out and you know just doing it for the views or doing it for the money or something like that but the reality of it at least in my case is this so I'm no longer in the United States Navy I'm a veteran which I mean that's cool and all but the reality is that I'm not making the money that I used to so you know when I was in the Navy I had a whole lot of disposable income and granted I saved a whole bunch of it I mean <laughs> Why else do you think I have this place, you know, to begin with, is from the money I saved and, you know, the car I bought and all that kind of stuff, you know, that was all from money put away specifically for that reason. But the thing is, I'm not bringing in money like I used to anymore. In fact, 
at the time of this recording, I'm not bringing in, bringing in any money, really. You know, I get, you know, a stipend from the GI Bill and stuff like that, and that's pretty much it, really. So, um, and yes, I am looking for a, a regular job, you know, don't misunderstand. You know, I am looking for, for employment, but the thing is, you know, making these YouTube videos and putting them out there and stuff like that is very time, you know, consuming. It's very, you know, like I said, just time consuming, you know, not only in recording the videos, and I've done multiple takes of this one already, so, you know, I sit down and do the video and like, oh, the camera's overheating, shit, you know, and I gotta redo it. So that's more time lost in making a video. And not only after I get the, the perfect take or the close enough take, whatever it takes, <laughs> um, I have to sit down, I have to edit it, I have to sync up the audio because I'm also using a mic, so that takes more time. Then I gotta tweak and peek, you know, make sure there's not too many ums and ahs and stuff like that. And, <laughs> and you know, in addition to that, you know, once it's all done, I gotta render it. Then once it's done rendering, upload it, and I gotta, you know, put in the right tags, I gotta adjust the description, then once it's all done, you know, schedule it, and then, you know, make sure all the, you know, the text and everything like that is right, so that way when it goes live, you know, when it's sent out to Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that, you guys know it's a, a new video or, and something interesting to watch, hopefully. <laughs> I like to think it is. Anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um, with all that said, and over the years I've gotten a lot more efficient with making videos, so there's a lot less time lost in me making videos. But the thing is, you know, I can only do so much. I can only whittle down uh, so many different steps. And it's just, you know, it's come to a point where, you know, I kind of feel like I should get some return on investment of my time with these videos because, you know, I've done them so much and they take up so much of my time and that could be time spent, you know, getting extra hours at a job or, you know, maybe taking an, an, an extra class at Western or something like that. So it's not me being greedy and, oh, Andy just wants some money because he wants to be, a, a, you know, big, fat, rich YouTube star. Mm. You know, it's just, you know, I, <laughs> I've been doing these videos for almost 10 years now, which we'll get to in a bit. And I just want some return on return of investment on making these videos. And then, you know, the plan is hopefully as time goes on and, you know, <laughs> planning on, you know, getting more views and stuff like that. And as, you know, more money from YouTube comes in, I can begin to um, break apart, you know, other time consuming things, you know, like a job, you know, once once the YouTube income starts becoming large enough to where I don't have to work a part-time job anymore, then that will give me, I'll be able to allocate the time that I used to spend on a job to making more videos, which means, you know, better quality videos, more videos, hopefully, <laughs> and stuff like that. So, you know, don't think it's me being selfish and, you know, I just wanna, party in my yacht and, you know, take trips to Japan or some crazy thing like that. You know, it's just, there's a bit of reality in here. And yes, I realize that, you know, maybe, you know, there's a possibility that, you know, m the money that I earn on YouTube won't be enough to cover a part-time job or anything like that. You know, that, that is possible. But, you know, <laughs> I still want to give it the old college try, right? I mean, I am in college now, so, hey, why the hell not? <laughs> so just, you know, don't misunderstand me and think I'm just being all greedy and just doing it for the money or whatever. So anyway, <clears throat> so aside from that uh, announcement, and as far as when the actual switchover will go, um, I don't have a definitive date set yet because, you know, I have a huge back catalog of videos and I'm uploading a lot of them right now, but in addition to uploading them, I also have to, you know, put in the text and the tags and all that kind of stuff from the old videos. 
and it's just a, a big to do as far as you know moving channels over so it's going to take some time but um the tentative date is march 1st of 2016 which is my official 10 year anniversary on youtube on my andy san channel so uh, i figure you know what better way to uh to begin a new channel than uh to do it on the uh, anniversary of the old channel so um yeah i just thought that was kind of a cool idea but again it depends on you know how fast i can get the videos up how fast i can get all that stuff ready so you know if anything changes i'll be sure to let you guys know in a future update but that's that's the the plan going forward for now so um in addition to that the other big youtube announcement that i want to make is the the, the restart of my Andy Cade channel, which is my Let's Play channel. And um, <clears throat> I also have a link to that below in the booby de boops in the description of all my videos, pretty much. Yeah, with, uh, with Andy Cade, um, I originally started it as just kind of a Let's Play channel, but the, the thing is, I didn't realize just how much time went into making Let's Play videos. Like, you know, watch I watch a lot of Let's Players, and I, you know, kind of, watched a lot of their behind the scenes videos and stuff like that and a lot of them were like oh you know let's plays take so much time because you got to set aside time to record and then time to edit and render and all that kind of stuff and i'm like i can fucking do it it's not that hard you know, i've been making videos for a long time it's not that hard but um the reality is that <laughs> it's well it's not that the process is difficult it's that there's a lot of you know moving parts involved with it you know there's a lot of things that can go wrong and uh, I've seen a lot of things go wrong with my, you know, recent-ish attempts at doing Let's Plays. And so I had a lot of uh, technical problems, basically with uh, my capture equipment, getting everything all synced up, and uh, it's just been, you know, a lot of trial and error with, uh, with making Let's Play videos. But, uh, you know, I'm, I want to give it another try. Um, I really like doing let's play videos it's just they're a little more time intensive and there's a lot more involved to uh, editing them than my normal videos where it's pretty cut and dry you know just sync up the two uh, audio tracks do a little tweaking and peeking and bam video <laughs> but uh, with let's plays it's it's a little bit more time intense and editing intense i guess you know it's not that it's hard just takes more time so um, a lot more moving parts involved like I said uh, but I do want to give it another try and I've already recorded uh, two weeks worth of sessions at the time of this recording so um, the plan going forward with Andy Cade is that I plan on officially relaunching the channel on February the beginning of February so February 1st 2016 Ooh sure to mark that on your calendars that's when the uh, the first Andy Cade video you know goes up and the plan is to release one video every day and uh, do like a new game every week and I do plan on like revisiting games you know if I really enjoyed a game or something like that and I want to go back to it and maybe continue the playthrough you know definitely want to do that as well but again since I'm only doing one video a day um, it it would behoove me to uh, include some variety in my videos. So I figured just doing like one solid game a week, you know, pretty simple. And, you know, like I said before with the whole, you know, once the YouTube money starts coming in, I can out reallocate time, you know, that was formerly spent on a job to making videos. You know, if the money starts coming in and starts getting to a point where I can afford to make more videos, which is, it is what it is, then I want to upgrade it to like, you know, two videos a day. So, um, but for now, just, you know, one video a day, one new game a week, and uh, possible revisiting of series, and uh, stuff like that. So the official launch date, relaunch date, I should say, of Andy Cade is February 1st, 2016. So be sure to tune in for that. And um, that's pretty much it on the whole YouTube front. Uh, now getting into personal life stuff, which we're uh, pretty far into the video for this, but you know, thanks for tuning in for this long. So uh, as far as personal life stuff goes, um, as you guys know, 
I moved from uh, my parents' place in Salina, Ohio to out here in Portage, Michigan, which is a suburb of Kalamazoo, Michigan. So I'm officially starting in school at uh, Western Michigan University. My first week was last week at the time of this recording. And, um, you know, it's been, it's been a while since I've been in, in college as a student. Uh, the last time I was in college was at Urbana University at uh, Urbana, Ohio, and that was from uh, 2006 to 2007. So <laughs> it's kind of funny because it, it's, it's right along the same time that I started YouTube. And actually, my, my very first YouTube video that I was in was at Urbana University. It was me and my friend Eric, also known as a Talking to Dawkin. Uh, we got really drunk one night, and um, he had a camera. I didn't have one at the time. So I asked if you know we could record just a short little video of me playing piano. And I wanted to upload it to the site called YouTube. He's like, what's YouTube? Because like YouTube was a, a new thing at the time. And I just wanted to upload something just to show to people and be like, <laughs> check it out. Play a piano, it's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, he recorded me doing like a little less than a minute clip because, you know, he didn't have uh, a very big memory card, so he could only, you know, record one minute clips at a time. And, uh, you know, we just did some of that. Um, I did a little uh, guitar solo <laughs> in my dorm room uh, a couple days later. And uh, it was, it's pretty bad, you know, don't get me wrong, it's, it's terrible. But, you know, I did it, and it's my start on YouTube. But uh, anyway, I'm, I, I, I digress. So, um, anyway, going, moving forward almost 10 years, you know, since I was in college last, you know, going to Western, there's a lot of differences between Western and Urbana University. And uh, one of the big differences is size, you know the size of the campus, the size of the student body, and just all that kind of stuff. You know, with Urbana, Urbana was, well, is, <laughs> it hasn't changed much over the years, but Urbana University is a much smaller campus. Urbana, Ohio is roughly the same size as my hometown of Salina. So maybe like a little bit bigger, but it's roughly the same size, amount of people, stuff like that. Um, so going from Salina to Urbana was pretty easy because, you know, I was used to that amount of people in town. But compare that to, you know, Portage slash Kalamazoo, that whole area, you know, near Battle Creek and stuff like that. Uh, it's just massive and there's a lot of people and uh, the infamous Michigan drivers are plenty out here, let me tell you. these. Out of all the places I've been to, you know, not only in the world, but in America alone, I gotta say, out of every place I've been to, uh, Michigan has the craziest drivers. Just fucking nuts. And um, the only way to really combat that is to become that, you know? So I've, I've learned to become a much more aggressive driver you know, instead of, you know, just kind of, you know, clicking the turn signal, waiting like a click or two before actually turning and just kind of slowly turning into the lane just so that way, you know, people aren't freaking out, you know. I'm a lot quicker at stuff like that. And, uh, which kind of leads me into my next point. Um, the differences between, Cal between going to Western versus Urbana is driving. Um, when I was going to Urbana, I didn't have my car. I had to give it up because, you know, I didn't have a full-time job, so I wasn't able to afford it anymore, so it got repoed. It is what it is, but, um, yeah, so I didn't have a vehicle of my own. I had to bum rides from friends and stuff like that to get around, or just hop on my own two feet and, uh, just do it, or get my bike, which I, I later got at the next semester was my bike. Um, but yeah, now that I got my, my car, I have a lot more freedom, stuff like that. And I'm commuting to campus for, versus, you know, living in the dorms like I did at uh, Urbana. So um, it has its advantages and disadvantages. Um, one of the advantages of living in the dorms and living very close to campus is that, again, you're closer to campus. You have a much more intimate connection with uh, 
not only the campus, but the students and stuff like that. So um, it's a lot easier to connect with them as friends or, you know, one night stands or whatever, I don't you know, stuff like that. Versus, you know, a commuter where you basically, it's, it's pretty cut and dry, you know, you go to school, you have a little chuckle with your friends and stuff like that, and then you come back home and that's it, you know, so. You know, it kind of reminds me of when I was going to ITT Tech, except, you know, it's a lot closer. So when I was going to ITT Tech, it, I was basically just commuting. Like, I never lived in the area, I never lived close to campus or anything like that. I would basically just go there twice, sometimes three times a week, you know, go through my classes, do my homework, all that kind of stuff, and then, you know, head back to Salina. So it's kind of like that. And I think, you know, one of the things I've noticed over the years is that, you know, I think if I was uh, younger, more closer to the, you know, college age, you know, the typical college age of like 18 to 21, 22, I think I would enjoy living closer to campus more because I'd be around the environment and, you know, I'd be closer to parties and I wouldn't have to worry about, ah, oh, shit, who's gonna drive me home? I'm so fucking drunk, you know, it's not, not like in Japan where you can just hop on a train and go home that way, you know, no matter how smashed you are. You know, in America, it's all about, oh, you gotta find a car, or, you know, depending on how big a city you, you're in, like a cab, or, I mean, now they got like Uber and Lyft and stuff like that, but even that, even still, it's like, it's extra money, you know, that you may or may not have from doing all the drinking and stuff. So, you know, you, you gotta plan it more accordingly. But the thing is, like, I think as I'm getting older, I'm starting to appreciate uh, just, uh, like, my own, me time basically like you know I go to college and it's college time you know it's time to you know take notes uh, do homework you know I'm a lot more serious about this whole college thing now versus then where I was a little more unsure of myself and then when I come home it's me time you know it's just me booping around in fucking PJs you know I can wear pajama pants and you know dick around or whatever you know just goof around on YouTube Make soup. <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, instagram.com slash theandysan, you'll know I, I like to make a lot of crockpot stuff and put it up on on Instagram. And uh, I might make uh, recipe videos eventually once I uh, get the hang of it. And I actually tried doing that when I was living out in Yokosuka, but uh, the reason I didn't put it up was um, one of my roommates, when he cooked something, he left like a little splatter from like the grease and uh, I didn't clean it up and so like I have my camera kind of tilted because of, it was on like a little mini tripod and it was supposed to focus on like me cutting up vegetables or some, something like that and I was looking at the footage and it the the camera wasn't focused on you know me cutting the vegetables it was focused on like the gnats crawling around the walls and stuff like that because you know, I would buy bananas and stuff like that for the morning and, you know, just gnats, fucking gnats. So it made the kitchen look just a lot grosser than it was. It, it wasn't really that gross, but the way the video made it look, it looked like I was, you know, in fucking some slumlord kitchen, you know, just chopping up carrots and potatoes and stuff like that. Just flies and gnats and all kinds of shit crawling around. So I'm like, I don't know if I want to do this video. <laughs> But um, I've learned from my mistakes, so I might do some recipe videos depending on, again, time and, you know, just, I like to experiment a lot, so, you know, it's not necessarily like, you know, oh, this is the definitive recipe of how I do things, you know, it's a lot of trial and error and stuff like that, because I'm still learning, you know, how to cook, <laughs> you know, but uh, anyway, I've, I think I've, I think I've prattled on long enough, but uh, anyway, the whole point of, you know, the, the whole gist, I guess, of me going back to Western, and I, I might make a, uh, a dedicated video to this, like the differences between, you know, me going to college now versus then and stuff like that, but the whole point of it is this, is that um, I did have some difficulty adjusting, you know, mostly just because I didn't know where a lot of my classes were. The campus is a lot bigger than the ones that I'm used to where, yeah, I did get lost at Urbana, but there's a, <laughs> the campus is a lot smaller, so it's easier to kind of, 
you know, through trial and error, figure out where your class is, you know, versus Western, where a lot of the buildings look, look similar, or they sometimes straight up look alike. And uh, you think you're going to, your to the building where your class is in, but it's actually a building all the way across campus that kind of looks like it. So, you know, <laughs> but I think I got a handle on it now, so hopefully that won't be uh, an issue going forward. Uh, and as far as like the schoolwork and stuff like that goes, so right now at the time it's recording, for this semester anyway, um, I'm taking only four courses. Uh, I might be doing more later on, but uh, I wanted to uh, kind of take it easy the first semester because I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't know like not only how hard they, the classes would be, but like how much homework, how much time I would have to dedicate towards doing classes and stuff like that. So I just wanted to kind of, you know, you know, test the waters, I guess, and not overload myself with, uh, with classes. So I just picked four. So I got uh, principles of accounting, uh, sociology class, uh, a, I say I already said accounting, uh, economics, basic, I think it's like micro or macro, I think it's micro economics, and then uh, basic Japanese, so Japanese 101. And uh, I know a lot of you guys are like, Andy, why are you taking Japanese? You lived over, over two years in Japan, what's the point? You know, shouldn't you be like para para at the Nihongo? <laughs> Well, that's not exactly true. Um, the reality is that um, while I do know a lot of Japanese, I don't know a good amount of Japanese, at least for like conversational level. Like I know enough to kind of get by and to order food and like basic survival Japanese and, and in addition like a couple interesting phrases to kind of, you know, make the locals heads turn like, eh, foreigner foreign knows that word, huh, strange. <laughs> So, uh, but as far as like conversational level, like I'm just a complete caveman. Like me am Andy, me am American, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you know. So I wanted to improve my uh, conversational level Japanese as well as, you know, just uh, keep that part um, strong, I guess. Cause you do end up forgetting some things over time as you're not in the environment anymore. So, and I don't exactly have a lot of Japanese uh, people around me, at least near, not nearly as much as I did back in Yokosuka. So, you know, there's no, there's not as much practical application out here versus there. So I just wanted to keep my skills sharp, uh, hopefully improve upon my skills. And actually, uh, one of the major reasons was so I could learn to read and write in Japanese. You know, hiragana, katakana, kanji, all that kind of stuff. Because, uh, I mean, I only know at, you know, before the class, I only knew a couple characters, you know, mostly like train stations and stuff like that. So that way, you know, if I get lost, at least I'd kind of know where they were. And yes, I know a lot of the train stations, they have English names, but, you know, it's a lot easier to know what station you're at if you kind of know the kanji for at least some of the major ones, you know, like Shinagawa, Yokohama, Tokyo, stuff like that, you know, just... <laughs> Yukosuka Chuo, you know, the station that I used to get off for home, Horonochi. So, yeah. Um, and also, I know a lot of you guys, you know, <laughs> this is kind of late in the video to be saying this, but uh, I know a lot of you guys have been asking me, well, Andy, don't you ever have plans to come back to Japan, either as like a, a study abroad, or maybe like when you graduate, you know, come back, teach a little bit of English to the kids, you know, stuff like that. And um, I don't have any plans set as of yet, as at the time of this recording anyway. But um, one of the things I do want to do uh, before I graduate is do a study abroad program back in Japan. And Western is actually very well noted for its extensive uh, study abroad programs and uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny because uh, the one of my YouTube heroes and inspirations I guess uh, the late great Roger Swan actually went to Western and that's how he was able to come over to Tokyo to film the Tokyo Swan series um, because he, he went over on a study abroad program to Keio University and they still offer that program at Western so um, that is a very big possibility that I could be 
you know, going to Cale University. But again, you know, on the other hand, uh, I've already been to Tokyo. I've already experienced that part of Japan. And、uh, while it would be nice to see a lot of my, you know, Tokyo based friends again and hang out with them and, you know, go to all the cool places we used to go to and you know, maybe even revisit Yokosuka at some point.、Um, the thing is, it, it would pretty much just be like a case of been there, done that. So, you know, as much as I want to go back to Tokyo and, you know, actually live there instead of, you know, commute to there to visit everybody.、Um, I feel like I would just be, you know, rehashing a lot of old experiences. So,、um, Western also has a bunch of other schools that I could potentially go to, which seem a little more interesting. So, the ones that stick out in my mind, aside from Keio in Tokyo, is、uh, there's a couple,、uh, at least there's one in Kyoto, which、um, I've really wanted to visit Kyoto. I've never. Been out that way before, never been to the Kansai region. And I think it'd be really interesting to、uh, see how they do things over there. And to, of course, you know, see all the temples and see all like old Japan and stuff like that. Now, I know a lot of people that come over to Japan are kind of enamored with like the old Japan, you know, the rice patties and the geisha and samurai and all that kind of stuff. And you know, I think that stuff's cool too, don't get me wrong. But like, I, That wasn't the reason why I wanted to go to Japan. You know, it was a lot of the, the newer, more modern stuff about Japan that I, I was interested in.、And、yes, you know, <laughs> oh my god, Andy's such a weeb boo, you know, like in the anime and stuff like that. And yeah, you know, don't judge me. Yeah, yeah, anime is one of the reasons why I wanted to go over to Japan. But, you know, it is what it is, I guess. But、uh, yeah, it'd be kind of nice to see, you know, old school Japan and. Just to get to see a, another part of Japan, a place I've never been to before. And, you know, in addition to temples and all that kind of stuff, Kyoto has a lot of great landscapes, which, as a photographer, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of stuff like that. That's, that's my bread and butter, baby, <laughs> you know? So,、um, it'd be really interesting to see something like that. And I've also wanted to explore southern Japan a bit more because I got a little taste, you know. While I was in the Navy, and we visit like Sasebo, you know, further south, and I went to Hiroshima and Miyajima and stuff like that. And it's just beautiful out there. And, you know, I really want to visit that part of Japan as well. So I'm also looking into、uh, scholarships for that area, but it's a little bit, a little scant, at least from what I've seen so far.、Um, but、uh, in addition to, you know, Keio and going out to universities in Kyoto, Uh, they also have a unique opportunity, opportunity to go to a university near Sapporo, which is in Hokkaido, which is the northern island,、uh, the northernmost island of Japan, which is very cold. <laughs> a lot of winter storms and stuff like that. But again, it's an interesting part of Japan, and I don't know too many people that have not only been up there, but actually live there. I don't, you know, I, I'm sure there's J vloggers that. Uh, do those kind of videos up there. But most of them are just, you know, either visiting, you know, doing the touristy thing, you know, just for like an ice festival or something like that. But I don't know too many people, at least not on the foreigner circuit, that live up there. So I think, you know, for my money, I would find that extremely, extremely interesting. And to see how the northern Japan, northern Japanese people do things. And I'm sure they have a lot of great food up there as well. Um, Hokkaido is known for a lot of great seafood,、uh, bear stew, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. So I think that'd be really cool, no pun intended, <laughs> to see that as well. So、uh, there's, there's so many different、uh, opportunities and options for me as far as that goes. But the thing is, I'm not going to be able to、um, do any of those study abroad programs, at least. Definitely not this semester because everything's already set in stone, and not next semester either because, you know, I want to、uh, just kind of get myself established, kind of get used to the area as far as that goes. And、uh, I'm planning on, you know, sometime next year in 2017 to do a study abroad program. That's the plan going forward, anyway, because there's a lot of、uh, different. 
you know, academic requirements that need to happen first before I hop on the plane and go back to Japan, you know, so. And again, this is all just kind of ideas and stuff like that, and you know, it may or may not happen. Like I said, nothing set in stone, but um, that's the plan going forward as far as that goes. So I think I've rambled on long enough in this video. If you're still tuning in, uh, here at the end, you know, I gotta thank you. You the real MVP, not me. <laughs> so anyway, with that said, this is the Andy song. Sign up for now, thanking you guys boop, for tuning in to this long, rambly ass update video that's been long overdue. Again, apologies for that. And uh, for watching my other stuff. And I hope you guys tune in when I switch the channel over to my The Andy San account. And I hope you guys tune in to my new Let's Play channel, the relaunching of my Let's Play channel, Andy Cade, at the beginning of February of this year. And uh, I wanna thank you guys for watching my other stuff. Also wanna thank you guys for liking the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, sending your friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys, bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. And uh, today I just wanted to uh, talk to you guys about uh, what's been going on in my life lately and all that kind of stuff. And I wanted to record this originally on my uh, my usual you know, Sony camcorder setup, but uh, I went to go turn it on and uh, the battery is pretty much dead. So I'm just like, ah, I gotta get these thoughts out like right now, but I wanna sit around and wait for the camera to charge and then, you know, go through all that crap. So I'm just like, well, you know, maybe I'll do it on my cell phone or something like that. I don't know. Uh, who knows if I even put this video up actually. But uh, uh, yeah, this video is just kind of a uh, response of sorts to a Facebook post that I made on my personal account. And it was, you know, one of those typical like emo posts, you know, like nobody understands me, you know, life is just meaningless and all that kind of crap and uh, it's just you know a lot of that just stems from you know not uh, fitting in I guess to you know society and just being aimless and disconnected yeah there, there's the word disconnected so uh, I just feel really uh, disconnected from everything really right now because you know ever since I, I moved back to to America and I've gone through a lot of major life-changing events you know all in you know pretty rapid succession you know I've went from you know leaving Japan to getting out of the Navy to starting college again for the first time in almost a decade all in relatively quick succession. And, you know, I thought that, you know, well, you know, I've, I've been through worse in the Navy, you know, I've learned to uh, adapt to stressful situations as best I can and kind of, you know, power through or whatever. But, uh, I don't know, man, like this week, I don't know what it is about this week in particular, <laughs> but uh, it's just been a lot of... Uh, Feelings have just been dredging up as of late. Just, you know, feelings of disconnect from everybody. And it's just one of those things where, you know, I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm not connecting with anybody anymore on a personal level because, you know, as, as much as I like to, you know, talk with you guys and be as open as... I can be with you guys, you know, I don't want to, you know, <laughs> you know, tell you every single detail of my personal life because, you know, it's not really all that interesting, you know, it's, I'm just a regular dude, I'm not trying to get by in this world, but, uh, you know, I try to be as open as I can about um, just what I'm going through and all that kind of stuff, and, uh, you know, that's the reason I'm making this video, you know, I could have just you know, deleted my email post and, you know, put up an, I'm okay, guys, really, you know, don't call the suicide hotline, really, <laughs> I'm okay, but, I don't know, I just, I don't like lying to people, because, you know, A, I'm not good at lying, 
and B, it's just dishonest and it's a slap in the face to you guys and I don't want to do that. So I guess the reality is that I just, I don't feel connected with anybody anymore. You know, when I was out in Japan, there was a bit of disconnect, but um, I was close, I was close enough to Tokyo to where I could, you know, go up there for the weekend or whatever and hang out with my uh, Tokyo-based friends or, you know, friends that live relatively within the Tokyo area. Because Tokyo is kind of a, a nice little hub, a little meetup hub. Because, you know, I got some friends who actually, like, live in Tokyo, Tokyo. And then I got some friends that live, you know, on, like, the outlier areas that are... It's not Tokyo, per se, but it's close enough to where they can zip on over. Kind of like what I did living in Yokosuka. So we'd always use, you know, uh, some place in Tokyo as, like, a little meetup area. Or, you know, when the weather is nice, you know, we go to Enoshima Beach and just chill out out there. So, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works, right? But uh, the point is, um, when I first started doing YouTube in 2006, I was pretty much, you know, all alone. You know, YouTube was a relatively new platform. Uh, nobody really knew about it. <laughs> you know, not, not, not back then anyway. You know, it didn't really start to gain, you know, large attention until the whole Lazy Sunday thing happened. And then people are like, oh, what's this YouTube thing? That's crazy. It's got Andy Samberg and all that kind of stuff going on. And, uh, you know, then people put up cat videos and people getting punched in the junk. And then the first first wave of vloggers came out and all that kind of stuff. But basically, the, the point is this. Um, when I first started doing YouTube, it was pretty much just me. You know, I none of my friends did YouTube. No matter how much I tried to convince them to do it. And no matter how much I thought that they could do it, it just, you know, they weren't passionate about it like I was. You know, they weren't as driven about it as I, I was. So maybe they would do like a onesies, twosies, twosies video and that's pretty much it, you know. So I was much more uh, consistent with making videos than they were. And, you know, it is what it is. I'm not, you know, bad-mouthing them or anything like that. It's just, you know... I was just more passionate about it. So I decided to continue making YouTube videos. And uh, I was pretty much just in my own little bubble. And I didn't realize it at the time, but looking back, I just became more and more isolated in making YouTube videos because, you know, none of my friends did the YouTube thing. And, you know, I'd try to bring a couple of them on, you know, for like little guest spots or something like that. But, uh, you know, they just weren't as into it as I, I was and am, currently. So um, I just felt very alone in the YouTube uh, video making process. And it was pretty much, you know, a, a, like a one man team, you know. I'd have my online supporters, but as far as my, like my in real life supporters, you know, there were none, really. So um, I had to pretty much motivate myself to make the videos and to make the videos that I want to make, wanted and, and continue to want to make. And, you know, that's pretty much it. So uh, when I moved out to Japan and, you know, got in contact with a lot of the uh, YouTubers and, you know, I hate using this word, but content creators. It's just such a, ugh, I hate it, but, you know, content creators. Then uh, I, I experienced a new... I guess, like, feeling, I guess, of camaraderie and just, like, you know, being around people who are into the same little weird niche hobby that you're into. And it's just, I guess the only way I can equate it to is, like, if you're part of, like, an anime club or, like, a D&D &D club or some kind of nerdy club that, you know, everybody else ridicules or just doesn't understand. And, you know, if you say that, you know, I'm into Dungeons and Dragons or something like that. You know, a lot of people kind of look at you like, do you get like stuffed in lockers as a kid? Or like, what the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> you know, but actually, you know, being around like-minded people who are into the same hobbies as you, you know, for me, you know, I'm not, <laughs> never really was a very social guy. I can be, but you know, it has to be in the right context, I guess but never in general being a very sociable guy. 
you know, and actually being around like-minded people who were into the same strange hobby that I was into was very refreshing. And it was just like, wow. And getting to see how they make videos and how they edit videos and all the kind of stuff was very refreshing. And it's just like, I'm not the only one out here. I'm not alone. You know, there are other people out there. But, um, and so that was uh, really refreshing for me and really helped me make the, uh, the videos that I did while I was out in Japan. Even though, you know, they may or may not have, you know, actually been there at the time. But just the fact that, you know, I could go up there and talk, you know, kind of get all excited and be like, hey, you know, you know, next week or the week after whatever, I'm going to release this video or oh, I'm thinking about going to this place and doing a video. What do you think? And, you know, they'd give me little tips or something like that if they've been there or, you know, just whatever. It was just, it was just nice to be around like-minded people again and uh, stuff like that. So, you know, when I moved back to America and <laughs> I should clarify this, moved back to Ohio, you know, small town Ohio. Because, you know, America is such a big place and it's hard to generalize an entire country, especially a country as diverse as America, by just simply saying, you know, oh, when I came back to America, you know, nobody knows who I am and you know, whatever. But uh, when I came back home to small town Ohio, like, it was such a depressing reality check for me because um, obviously I was out of the Navy, so I didn't have that connection anymore. I was um, out of Japan, so I didn't have that connection anymore. And all of my friends that I grew up with, you know, moved on without me. And <laughs> I'm not I'm not criticizing them. That that's that's their lives, man. But uh, the fact is, I had nobody, really. I mean, I had my family, and you know, thank God for them. But uh, nobody that I could relate to, as far as my interests and my hobbies and stuff like that. I mean, I can't go with my mom and talk about making YouTube videos. You know, she'd, she'd just be like, well, that's nice, Andy. But, you know, I can't <laughs> talk to her about stuff like that. It's just, it's it's not her thing, man. So, again, and, you know, I'm not being ungrateful to my family. It's just they can't relate to something like that. And, you know, obviously the whole life after the military service has its own challenges as well, you know, trying to fit in with the civilian sector and try to blend in and, you know, not stick out like a sore thumb and, you know, just, you know, <laughs> assimilate, I guess is the right word to say. You know, it has its own challenges as well. Um, Okay, that's my arm. I was wondering, like, I thought, like, my thumb was over the, the thing. Sorry, just random ADD moment. But anyway, so I just, I felt like I couldn't really relate to anybody anymore. And, you know, the only people that I could talk to were online. And, I mean, that's cool, you know, get to see what they're up to and all that kind of stuff. But there is, there's still a disconnect with uh, talking to people online because it's just like... You know, you're not really talking to them, talking to them. You know, you're just sending messages and words. And it's not like you're, you know, there's a difference between, like, talking to somebody on the phone versus, you know, sitting down on a couch or something or at the table and talking with them. You know, there's that, you know, a lot of, a lot of, I guess, pretenses and stuff like that seem to, you know, get pushed aside and it's a much more intimate uh, conversation when you're physically there and you can kind of drop the whole pretense. Because I know there's a lot of YouTubers out there who are afraid that their um, core audience w won't like them if they don't behave a certain way and, you know, you know, <laughs> call it whatever you want. But, uh, it is what it is, I guess. And that's their choice, you know. It's whatever. But, you know, so they act a certain way in their videos. And, you know, when you actually sit down and talk with them, you know, because I'm a pretty chill guy. Anybody who's who's met me in real life, I'm really chill, laid-back guy. You know, I don't... I am <laughs> I would like to think that I'm the same person in my videos that I am in real life. 
you know, maybe in the videos I'm a, I'm a bit more animated, but uh, maybe less, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I like to present like a what you see is what you get sort of uh, thing, sort of attitude, I guess. You know, so that way, you know, if people meet me, they kind of know what they're getting themselves into, I guess. Um, and, you know, they're not going to walk away thinking, you know, whatever. But uh, I don't know where I'm going with this. This is all just kind of a stream of consciousness, you know, word barf sort of vlog. So if you're looking for something a bit more organized in thought and structure, I apologize. But uh, this ain't one of those videos. So, um, but anyway, I just, I missed that connection, man, with, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I think I'm coming down with something too, so that's why I'm stuffed up. I think, uh, them kids at Western are getting me sick, fuckers. <laughs> anyway, um, I just want to, you know, say that I, I feel very disconnected from everybody, you know, yeah, I feel disconnected from, you know, I thought that. You know, when I would come back here to America, to Ohio, to Michigan, wherever, um, that, you know, I, it would just be like, you know, when I was back home on leave, you know, for a couple of weeks or whatever, I'd be in town and I would say, you know, hey, you know, I'm in town for a couple of weeks, you know, when are you guys available? Let's go hang out, you know, kind of do what we used to do. Or, you know, we don't have to go do that kind of stuff. We just, Sit at home, chill, talk, catch up, whatever, you know. I'm, I'm a pretty flexible guy, you know. <laughs> but when I came home to stay versus coming home on leave, you know, <clears throat> the reality is that, you know, they've moved on with their lives. And, you know, it's not like we can pick up from where we started again. And, you know, I'm happy for them you know, doing their own thing and stuff like that. Don't think that I'm being ungrateful or asking too much of my friends or whatever, but it's just, you know, I figured, you know, well, you know, they got the nine to five jobs and some of them have families and kids and stuff like that. So obviously, you know, get togethers are a bit more difficult when you have other people involved and stuff like that. So, you know, we could go by two weeks, three weeks, a month, two months, three months, and nobody would send me a message saying, you know, hey, Andy, you want to go hang out? You know, I got this weekend free or whatever. And I'd just be <laughs> sitting at home, you know, with my folks or locked in my room, it seems. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't forcibly locked. It was just I felt trapped there because, you know, I, don't, I didn't have anybody to talk to really. Because, you know, when, when talking with my folks, it, it was always, always felt like I had to say the right things. Because if I, if I said one little thing wrong, then they would just automatically jump on my ass and be like, oh, you're a grateful little shit. You know, stuff like that. And, you know, just completely misunderstand what I was trying to say. And it's just, it's hard, man. You know, just being pretty much all you got, really. You know, I just, I miss that connection with people. And then, you know, I also thought, you know, going back to college, I would kind of pick up where I left off, you know, at Urbana, where, you know, with Urbana, I, I kind of cheated, I guess. I, I stumbled into it, you know, as far as my, uh, my group of friends, because, you know, my best friend was going there at the time, so... You know, I kind of fell in with his group of friends and, you know, they became my friends and stuff like that. So I already had a friend base set up by the time I actually started officially attending Urbana. Mm, excuse me. <clears throat> right, sorry. But, um, you know, it's just going back to Western. It's just like I feel like I can't relate to anybody. Because, you know, it's not that they've changed, it's that I've changed. And I thought that I could, you know, I, I it's kind of weird, but I thought that, you know, when I left Urbana, I hit the pause button on my college life. And that, you know, everything that happened between May 2007 to January 2016, like, 
didn't exist. It didn't happen and that I could just unpause in January and just pick, pick up right from where I left off. But so many things have changed in that period of time. You know, I've changed, I've experienced so much. I've seen so many different, uh, cultures, countries, cities. Um, I've got to experience a life that's far different from the norm, I guess you could say. And, uh, I've come out the other side alive, which not a lot of people can say. So, you know, I got to be grateful for that at least, you know? So, but, uh, it's just, uh, you know, once you leave that environment, you know, obviously a lot of stresses from that environment seem to fall away. And, uh, you know, the first, uh, couple weeks that I was, um, back, it just felt like I was back on, you know, back home on leave, you know, it's just like, oh, cool. I don't have to deal with that, you know, ship bullshit anymore. I could just sit back, relax, you know, try to set up some times to hang out with my friends and, you know, just do whatever, man. Cause you know, that's what I used to do when I'd come home on leave. And I figured <laughs> we'd just be able to do that more often, but you know, I haven't seen my friends in almost a year. Like I haven't physically seen them. I haven't hung out with them or anything. And, uh, you know, I figured like, <sighs> I don't know. It's just, it's such a sobering reality, I guess, to to think that, you know, you've hit the pause button, you know, while I was out doing my Navy thing, you know, out in Japan. But in reality, there is no pause button, you know. The world's going to continue, you know. The ride's going to continue whether or not you're on it. So, um, just gotta make the best of it, I guess. But, you know, right now for me, that's really hard because I don't have anybody out here, you know, and the people that I can talk to, I can't relate to with these kinds of problems. They just kind of see it as, oh, you're just being all depressed and weird, being strange. Stop it. Stop doing that. But you can't just turn it off like a switch. It doesn't work that way. You know? It, it doesn't. And so, you know, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if I want to continue making this video anymore. I, I've rambled on for like over 20 minutes. And uh, I don't know if you guys got anything from that. Um, if anything, it was somewhat beneficial for me to at least, you know, put out some word barf, you know, to help me out a little bit, I guess. I don't know. A little bit of talk therapy, I guess, whatever you want to call it. But, um, yeah. And, uh, I'm going to try to be, uh, to be a little more sociable out on campus. Um, I'm going to try to find some clubs, groups, whatever, you know, stuff that I'm interested in. And, you know, maybe that's it. Maybe I just need to uh, find a group of like-minded individuals, you know, to help, you know, to help me realize that I really am not alone in this world and that there are other people that are like me and I'm not just the odd man out. So, you know, we'll see where it goes from there. We'll see, you know. So, anyway, that said, this is Andy Son. It's not for now. Thanking you guys for uh, tuning into this rambly ass, uh, no direction video. And uh, as always, see you next time. Bye, guys. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, coming at you. Book with my February 2016 update video for, you guessed it, February 2016.
Woo! So yeah, as always with these uh, monthly update videos, I'm going to be going over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So let's start off with the YouTube stuff. And first up is Andy Cade. So as you guys may know, I recently relaunched my Let's Play channel called Andy Cade, and it's been enjoying some really good success as of late. I'm really proud of how everything is turning out and the positive response of uh, my Let's Play channel. So for those of you who don't know, Andy Cade, like I said, is my Let's Play channel. <laughs> uh, dedicated to playing games. Uh, currently, I can only play Steam games since I don't have a uh, huge collection of um, like console games or, you know, I still have some of my portable stuff, which I may end up playing at some point on Andy Cade, but for the most part, you know, I have to stick with uh, Steam games. But I am gonna be, uh, you know, maybe getting some consoles in the future, but you know, that's gonna be maybe a couple months down the line. Not sure yet. <laughs> so in any event, um, Andy Cade is my Let's Play channel, like I said. I already said that like three times. The plan for the schedule is to release one new video a day with one game played per week. And I've been kind of liking that schedule, but at the same time, I wonder if that's the um, ideal schedule for an up-and-coming Let's Play channel. Um, I know that when a lot of Let's Play channels start off, they just, you know, overload with content and stuff like that, but um, I don't really have the time to be doing something like that, because Let's Plays do take a lot of time to edit, a lot more time than, you know, my regular videos do. So that has to be considered, especially since, you know, I'm also going uh, to college as well. So um, a lot of my time has to be invested in that, as well as a part-time job, which I'm working on right now. I don't, I don't currently have a part-time job at the time of this recording, but I'm looking to, to be gainfully employed by somebody in the very near future. So that also has to be considered with uh, recording schedules and stuff like that. So for now, I just want to stick with uh, one video a day. And, you know, hopefully, you know, once it, you know, kicks off and I can afford to cut back on some hours and maybe a little bit during the summertime when my schedule's not so intense, I could probably do a little more. But for now, you know, this is pretty much all I can do. All that considered, I am uh, looking for suggestions as far as, you know, maybe how to mix up the schedule a little bit. Maybe, you know, instead of doing one game a week, maybe do two games or maybe have like a, a random one-off, you know, I don't mind doing you know, maybe putting in an extra episode or two throughout the week, just as like random one-offs or whatever. But um, I'm still, like I've been following the Let's Play scene for a while, but as far as actually like doing it yourself, it's a whole different ball game. So I'm still fairly new to the actual like doing it yourself Let's Play. So for those who are a little more experienced, I am, you know, more than welcoming suggestions for uh, upcoming episodes of Andy Cade and scheduling and all that kind of stuff. So there you go. <laughs> and before we close out the whole Andy Cade thing, I am also looking for uh, suggestions for new games as well. And like I said, I currently only have Steam, so I, I can't get into the console side of the house just yet. Um, I, like I said, you know, I am looking to, you know, maybe get like a used console or something like that in the future. But for now, I just have to stick with Steam games and then you know, once I start getting some more money, start bringing some more money in, then I can invest in console games and stuff like that. So, like I said, any and all suggestions are welcome. So, you know, be sure to put them in the comments below in the booby de boops either in this video or on my Andy Cade channel. And like I say in all my videos, I read all the comments and I read all the messages. So, there you go. <laughs> and also, um, if you've been tuning into my um, live streams that I've been doing lately. I'm working on a super secret project, which is gonna be released uh, later on this month, uh, February 23rd to be exact. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So um, I can't discuss it in this video because I kind of want you guys to see it and have it be like a little bit of a surprise as far as what it is. But if you've been tuning into the live streams, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So be sure to tune into those live streams, just saying. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna try to uh, schedule them a bit better. It was just kind of a spontaneous just do it sort of thing last time But I am working on you know, maybe getting like a, a live stream schedule set up for those editing videos as well So, you know stay tuned for that and also stay tuned for the results of the super secret project Which I should be finishing up here in the next couple days 
maybe doing a live stream or something like that in the near future. Maybe. Just a little, little, uh, little hint there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And speaking of editing videos, or editing live streams rather, um, <laughs> kind of gets into my next subject. I am going to be working on um, some how-to tutorials for doing uh, like basic editing and a lot of very basic um, things that I do with uh, Sony Vegas as well. So um, I haven't quite decided on the format of those yet. Um, it's still very much a uh, in the planning stages as far as uh, that project goes but do expect those videos to be coming out very soon maybe within the next uh, couple like next month or two I'd say so you know stay tuned for that and next up on YouTube e news is another series that I've been wanting to do for a while and I've already mentioned this before on previous um, update vlogs is my um, sequel series to my very highly successful NFAX series where in that series I answered your uh, Navy Frequently Asked Questions, hence the name. <laughs> um, so the sequel series is gonna be called Life, Life After Navy, or LAN, L-A-N. <laughs> so um, the plan with that series is, um, it was really inspired by a uh, fellow YouTuber and fellow Navy vet, uh, JT Suits. Um, I've been following his channel for a while and really, I really dig his format and you know, we've, talked about you know YouTube -y things before so you know I'm, a, I'm at a good rapport with him and uh, I've been really looking into getting into that format of video for a while now and I've you know even before then when I was still in the Navy I was thinking about bringing NFAX back but um, being stationed overseas in Japan you know my recording schedule was pretty tight so you know I had a lot of stuff on my plate you know both demands for my job as well as you know doing the Andy Japandi series doing unboxings and a bunch of other stuff and I just I just couldn't you know fit the time into uh, making you know more NFAX videos and honestly like at the time I didn't really even know what to talk about you know there was there were some things that I wanted to talk about you know and I've already discussed them a little bit in my short-lived uh, co-podcast with my friend Bushido Devil Dog called The Dog and Squid Show, which uh, I tuned into a couple of those episodes a while back while I was waiting for class. And it's just like, it kind of got me, you know, in that mindset again of, you know, doing NFAX and stuff like that. So I thought I'd do an updated sequel series called Life, Life After Navy, where I discuss um, a lot of issues that recently separated, uh, recently transitioning veterans may face, and you know how I dealt with those situations. And I'm hoping to get uh, more vets onto the show to give a different perspective as well. But that's kind of long-term planning. You know, for the time being, I hope to uh, just talk about my experiences as a recently separated veteran, and uh, you know, hopefully, as I learn more about how things work on this side of the, of the house in the civilian sector, then I can kind of uh, give my perspective on that, give an updated perspective on that, maybe talk about like the GI Bill, um, various issues with transitioning, what to do before you transition, you know, stuff like that. So less, you know, what's boot camp like kind of questions and more like, what's civilian life like? <laughs> so I'm trading one, frequently asked question for another, I guess. So um, I'm really looking forward to doing that series and I hope to help out a lot of uh, transitioning vets with that series, so stay tuned for that. And probably the biggest news on my channel um, thus far is the fact that I'm, well, moving. <laughs> moving this channel, rather. So um, as you guys know, I've been doing the YouTube thing for going on 10 years now. Now It'll be 10 years exactly next month in March. So um, I figured as just a way to kind of freshen things up and to get a nice clean start on YouTube again is to uh, transition everything over to my former alternate channel known as The Andy Son. So youtube.com slash The Andy Son is the channel that I'm gonna be moving to. And if you're already watching this video on that channel, greetings. <laughs> you are in the future now, my friend. But anyway, yeah, so I've been busy moving all of my back catalog, or at least as much as I can, onto my The Andy Son channel. 
and it's been kind of a slow process just because, um, well, <laughs> my upload speeds here in Michigan pale in comparison to uh, my speeds out in Japan. Now, downloading speeds are pretty on par for the most part, but uploading speeds, you know, it's, <laughs> in my opinion, fucking sweaty ass hot garbage. It's terrible. So it's been a very slow grinding process to get everything uploaded to that channel. And uh, I hope to have everything uploaded there by next month. But the way things are going, I might have some carryover time. So um, we'll see. But uh, the plan is to uh, basically um, have everything moved over by March, but you know, depending on schedule and uploading speeds, that may or may not happen. But I'll have the majority of my videos over there by then, at least. <laughs> but um, starting March 1st, I'm going to be releasing all of my um, videos that I would be releasing on my Andy-san channel, on my The Andy-san channel. So be sure to subscribe to my The Andy-san channel so you guys um, have all the updates and everything like that and uh, stuff like that. And I'm gonna be releasing, I think my last video on my Andy-san channel is just gonna be a big thank you video for you guys and also just kind of like a redirection video to be like, hey, thanks for subscribing to my channel, but I actually moved to this other channel, so be sure to check that out for new stuff, you know, whatever. <laughs> Starting March 1st, I'm gonna be uploading all of, you know, like, uh, vlogs, update videos, stuff like that on my The Andy San channel. And then I'm gonna be gradually phasing out a lot of my old content that was formerly on my Andy San channel, and it's gonna be on my The Andy San channel. And uh, I'm just, I'm basically just gonna unlist all those videos. So if you have if you have them embedded elsewhere on the internet, or if you have the original links or something like that, you can still watch them. You know, I have no problem with that. It's just I want to give um, exposure to the real uploaded videos, so that way they get a chance to you know get some traffic and stuff like that. And like I said, as far as you know, how I plan on uh, dealing with the re-uploads is that um, starting March 1st, I'm going to be, like I said, phasing out all of my old videos on my Andy San channel, uh, basically putting like uh, an updated description on the re-uploads on my The Andy San channel, and then unlisting the videos progressively rather than just doing a huge <clears throat> dump <laughs> of videos. So it'll be more of a gradual process, but that process is gonna be starting effective March 1st, 2016. Ooh, mark it on the calendars. And currently at this time, I don't plan on uh, updating the videos, the video links on my blog, you know, from my original uploads to my re-uploads, but that may be a future project. It just depends, like I said, on time and stuff like that. But at the time of this recording, I don't have any plans to do that. And the last little bit of YouTube -y news and stuff like that that I'm gonna be talking about in this video is uh, basically looking for suggestions from you guys. Um, I've been doing this for a while and, you know, there are, there are times where I just kind of run out of stuff to talk about and run out of videos to do and things like that. And I'm just kind of like, I don't know, I want to YouTube, but I don't know what to YouTube about. <laughs> so I'm always open to suggestions from you guys as far as like new videos, maybe like a, a new uploading schedule either for, you know, my Andy San slash now the Andy San channel or my Andy K channel, something like that. So I'm, I'm always open to suggestions from you guys if you guys um, want me to play certain games, talk about certain things or whatever, you know, I'm more than happy to uh, to look over the idea and see if, uh, if I can do it. So, there's that. All right, and now moving on to the personal life section. So, if you guys watched my uh, previous vlog, I was kind of in a very uh, depressed funk as of late. I still kind of am a little, little depressed, but I'm, you know, things are kind of turning around for me right now, so I'm a little bit more happy about uh, life in general <laughs> right now. So, I mean, if you couldn't tell by my jovial attitude. But yeah, things are starting to uh, turn around for me as far as, you know, getting a job and stuff like that. Although, um, I'm basically just submitting my application to more places, getting my resume retooled, and I might go into uh, more detail with this in like a Life After Navy video, but uh, just to kind of sum it up, like um, I was in the Navy for over five years 
and a lot of my Navy experience, at least for my rate, doesn't exactly transfer over to a civilian job, unless it's like working for the government, like a federal job, or like being an ultrasound technician <laughs> or something like that, you know. So, you know, I'm trying to do something different with my uh, civilian career, you know, move over to the IT side of the house, because that was something I wanted to do even before I joined the Navy. So I want to transition to that, but because I don't have any like IT experience, you know, the most, you know, job wise, the most IT experience I have is uh, working at a call center for about a month or two before they laid me off because of the economic downturn at the time. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> that was pre-Navy, so that was like six, seven years ago, I think now, maybe more. So, you know, I don't have a lot of current experience. In fact, I don't really have any as far as like, you know, working in the IT field. So I'm looking into, you know, maybe getting like a paid internship, kind of, you know, put some experience on my resume, looking for some, uh, or at least, you know, maybe some part-time work, just something to help me, you know, pay the bills and stuff like that. Cause um, the GI Bill only covers so much. And especially like if you're coming off of a winter or summer break or something like that, um, the first month is always going to be the hardest because you're not going to be in school for the full month. So that's the thing about the, you know, the post 9-11 GI Bill as far as um, getting the housing allowance. Because a lot of people, myself included, thought that, you know, they saw the, the little number as far as, you know, what BAH is like in, you know, the town where your college is like. And they kind of, you know, see dollar signs and they're like, oh my God, I don't have to work a part-time job. I don't have to do shit. I can just sit around, go to college, not have to worry about a dang old thing. And then uh, the bills start coming in and you realize how expensive food and all that kind of stuff is. And then, you know, it's like, mm, it's a bit of a reality check for most people. You know, and the savings start to dwindle. So basically, I'm just looking for a, a small part-time gig just to help me cover some of the bills and stuff like that and to help so that way I'm not relying completely on the GI Bill as far as like the BAH and stuff like that goes. And, you know, I'm also looking for, you know, full-time work once summer rolls around because, you know, unless I'm taking summer classes, which is something that I am um, seriously considering, uh, depending on how the job market is, you know, in the future. Um, I, you, you don't collect BAH if you're not in class. You know, in the summer months, you're pretty much on your own, unless you're taking summer classes, like I said. So I'm um, looking for, you know, full-time employment or, you know, summer classes, but I still need that part-time employment. And like I said, you know, finding a job has been kind of stressful. Um, it's been, you know, just a very stressful experience for me because uh, the job market has changed a lot, you know, from when, before I joined the Navy to when I got out. And, you know, that's, you know, mostly positive, but, you know, there's some negatives, uh, negatives as well. Um, a, lot, a lot of the positives include, like, you don't have to, you know, physically fill out an application anymore because I absolutely hate actually like writing, like physically writing something. Um, I prefer typing, I'm a lot faster, and you don't see so much crap, you know, in my typed writing. And also the submission process for applications is a lot easier, it's a lot more efficient. You just, you know, fill out the application, put in your work experience, do like a little questionnaire kind of dealio and then you submit it and there you go, your application's out there. So it's pretty easy. But the downside of all that is, is that doing this online application process, your application is dealt through either like an HR department, which may or may not even be part of the place where you're looking for employment. It may just be either like a separate HR department or like a corporate HR department or something like that. Before I joined the Navy, typically what I'd do in order to look for jobs is I would fill out an application, go turn it in in person, try to talk to a manager, you know, see what's going on, get some FaceTime so that way at least they can, you know, know that, hey, this is a real person actually applying for this job and maybe I can kind of get a feel for the company a little bit. You know, like I said, get some FaceTime with the manager, that's always a good thing. And then, you know, 
wait a week and then once a week went by just constantly call in you know if they haven't called in already you know just asking hey you know I'm just calling in about my application wondering if you guys are hiring or so, you know just something like that just to know that you're still interested in employment with them and now because it's all done with a either a third party or like a second party um, HR department uh, it's all very hands-off so you know the managers at the places I'm applying for have little to no uh, say as far as who gets hired and who doesn't. It's all very much in the hands of corporate and the HR department and whatever else, whatever employment agencies that they use. And the thing is like I don't have any contact info for even those HR departments so I can't even talk to them about employment. You know, I. I had uh, tried to contact a certain big name department store. I'm not gonna go into names. And uh, so I called them up and asked, you know, hey, you guys still hiring? I'm just checking in on my application. I'm still you know, interested in uh, you know, getting a job with you guys. You know, not my exact words, but the basic gist of it. And uh, they redirected me to a, uh, their employment you know, center, their HR center, whatever, quote unquote. <laughs> And uh, it basically was an automated voicemail message saying, you know, in order to apply for such and such store, which I won't name, and uh, you have to, you know, it basically just goes through the whole steps of how to apply online, you know, fill out the form, you submit it, and then such and such and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, well, I already submitted it, so I'm just going to kind of wait for it to get to the part where it's like, if you've already submitted your thing, you know, maybe talk to an operator or check on the status of your uh, application. And then when it finally got to that point, it's like, if you've already applied, then uh, there's no need to contact us. We'll contact you. Goodbye. Click. And it was just such a slap in the face to me as far as like, you know, I'm trying to, you know, establish a more personal connection with the place I'm applying to and, you know, try to, you know, if they have any questions about my application because, you know, being a veteran, a lot of uh, your military experience is kind of just gobbledygook in the minds of, you know, most civilians who don't know what the heck you're talking about, to be honest. And even like, if your employer is a former is a vet, you know they may not know all about you know every single rate or MOS, you know for non-Navy people. So you know it's, it it would behoove you to explain it and to civilianify it, put it in civilianese, as I like to say. And even then, like um, I would focus more on. Um, soft skills versus hard skills because you know a lot of the hard skills which is what I actually did as a sonar tech doesn't really apply out in the real world unless I'm working for you know maybe Raytheon or Prodigy or you know Lockheed Martin or something like that. that those are the only companies really is where my expertise as a sonar tech would come into play as far as hard skills go. But soft skills, you know, like leadership, organization, discipline, uh, stuff like that, those would come into play more on the civilian side of the house and as well as those two. But, you know, soft skills are what a lot of employers look for, you know, for transitioning vets. And that's pretty much <laughs> what I have to market myself as, you know, so it is what it is. And it's been kind of a stressful venture thus far, and I'm still looking for employment. Thankfully, I, you know, did my taxes earlier this week, so you know, once that comes in, I'll have a nice cushion to uh, help me out until I gain employment, <laughs> at least for a while, anyway. So we'll see. We'll see. And now let's uh, let's talk about school. So uh, school's been going pretty good for me, you know, despite all the the craziness involved with uh, getting a job and all that kind of stuff. Uh, school's been going pretty good for me for the most part. You know, I'm enrolled in Japanese and sociology, and those classes I've been doing pretty well in. Uh, Japanese I'm doing, doing extremely well in, and I get along with everybody in the class. They're all kind of at that, you know, level of humor, I guess. So they all kind of get my jokes, and, you know, I kind of 
help explain, you know, because I was in Japan, so I would talk about, you know, what I saw in Japan and just little, you know, in real life Japanisms and stuff like that. So I, you know, I find it very interesting. It helps keep, keep my, uh, my skills sharp. And I'm learning to read the, read the, uh, you know, the katakana, hiragana, stuff like that. We haven't gotten to kanji yet. So, you know, <laughs> baby steps, right? So I'm, I'm learning to uh, get the hang of that. That part, as far as learning the writing, has been kind of shaky for me. Um, I'm still, like, <laughs> using the cheat sheet, you know, with the, all the hiragana characters. With, I, I should really stop doing that. But, you know, it's been kind of a shaky process as far as that goes. But, like, the speaking part, it's been going pretty good. And, like I said, to get along with the students and the teacher, she's actually from Yokosuka, so I would show her pictures of you know, the local Kanagawa area and like my train stop and all that kind of stuff. And she'd be like, oh yeah, I know that place. You know, and it's just, it's really cool, man. So, and you know, she's married to a vet as well. So she kind of understands the whole, you know, transitioning veteran thing. So, and she's throwing events for vets and stuff like that. So I think that's really cool of her to do that. So, yeah, I get along quite swimmingly with everybody in my Japanese class. Now, my social class, um, I'm not as involved with it, just because it's a much bigger class and stuff like that, so it's not as intimate and, and atmosphere as my Japanese class, but I still I still really, really like the whole, uh, what we talk about in uh, sociology. It's very thought-provoking and stuff like that, even though it's a basic gen ed class and, you know, I, most people don't give two shits about it, really, but, you know, I find it very interesting and it kind of helps with um, thinking about new stuff to talk about in my videos. And, you know, even when I was at Urbana, I took a, uh, a couple fine arts classes, like I uh, took some art classes and stuff like that. And it wasn't really relative towards my major, it's just a general elective just kind of a throwaway class or whatever. But I really enjoyed those classes just because, you know, it, it got me thinking about stuff. And that's what I like about sociology as well because it, it's a lot of note-taking, of course. I use my Surface tablet to uh, take notes rather than actually physically writing the notes because, you know, like I said, I don't like to physically write stuff. My handwriting is shit, to say the least. And it takes me forever to write stuff. And she goes through everything so fast that it's just like it it's just easier for me to just type everything out you know so it's a lot less time intense and plus I can transfer the notes I don't have to worry about oh shit I spilled milk or tea or coffee or whatever on my notebook and all my notes are ruined no you know, unless I spill coffee on my tablet you know before I transferred everything over you know heaven forbid like I said I've been enjoying it you know doing a lot of creative writing and stuff like that it's kind of getting the uh, creative juices going again for not only writing but also structuring videos a lot better because I noticed that when I take like creative writing classes and stuff like that I noticed that my videos are a little bit better a lot more structured and I kind of, you know, know what to talk about and, and you know, it's just kind of bam, 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 <laughs> you know? At least that's, that's my, my take on it, so yeah. Now, as far as my, uh, my other two classes, uh, accounting and uh, microeconomics, I'm not doing so good in those classes right now. I w I'm not failing yet. <laughs> I'm not doing so good in those classes. It's very mind numbing. It's very much, you know, here are the notes, here are the notes. Okay, now we're gonna take a quiz on the stuff that we just talked about before you have time to process everything. And I'm just like, eh. I didn't have time to study or process any of the notes. I just wrote everything down. But hey, let's take a quiz on it. Why the hell not? <laughs> and then, you know, using a lot of the e-learning platforms, which I wasn't even, I wasn't a fan of it back then. And it's gotten better now, but still a lot of the systems that they use, I don't 100% agree with how they utilize certain things and it's just it's very eh, you know at least that's again that's my, that's just my take on it although I do have to say I am improving in microeconomics I'm starting to get the hang of things as far as you know what he's talking about and doing better on the assignments so things are going good in that front but uh, accounting I think I'm going to have to get some uh you have to get some tutor time uh, with accounting cuz I don't know like it's weird, right? Because the actual concepts of what we're talking about in accounting seem pretty simple. 
and you know, I'm taking the notes, taking the notes, okay, so for this you do this, okay, you know, easy, right? But once you're actually faced with like a problem or like you go take a quiz, it's just like, what are they talking about? Like, I'm just drawing blanks the whole time, and I just took my first uh, big quiz, my exam, uh, yesterday, actually, at the time of this recording, and uh, I don't know, I, I didn't feel super confident about it. I don't think I did very good. Probably definitely gonna have to seek out some uh, tutor time for accounting. Microeconomics, maybe, but like I said, I'm doing better with that class. So we'll see, but that's what's going on, you know, school-wise in my life. And uh, also, I've been taking a lot of pictures of my school, Western Michigan University. So if you follow me on Instagram, that's instagram.com slash uh, you'll see a lot of cool pictures of WMU and the surrounding areas and stuff like that. And I'm hoping to do more of those pictures so that way you guys can kind of see the campus and see how it changes throughout the seasons and stuff like that. And I think it's really cool. So, you know, <laughs> that's just me though. And the last little bit of news that we're gonna be talking about in this video, I know it's kind of long, <laughs> sorry. But uh, the last little bit we're gonna be talking about here in this update video is how I'm dealing with stress. Like I said, I've been going through a lot of very stressful changes in my life. You know, not only getting out of the Navy, uh, moving back to America, uh, moving away from my hometown to start college, and just a lot of stuff's been going on in a very short amount of time for me. So it's, you know, it's gonna take some time to 100% adjust to everything. And so there's that weird transitionary period where I'm just kind of like, I don't know what's going on. And you know, all this stuff's coming at me all at once. And I'm just like, ah, just, what the, the fuck, man? You know, slow down. <laughs> But I've been looking at different ways on dealing with stress. I know everybody's saying exercise, exercise, run, run, you know, do jumping jacks, lift. You know, rah, rah, rah. But you know, the weather's just not that good right now. Um, it's very cold, there's a lot of snow and ice and I don't wanna run and like slip and fall on my head or something like that because I'm not, not exactly the most graceful of human beings. And as far as that kind of exercise, I'm gonna wait until, you know, the weather warms up a little bit so that way I don't slip and fall on my ass or my head or whatever and hurt myself. Um, and yes, I know I can go to the gym at Western or wherever and work out, but I, I have issues with going to the gym just because I don't have a lot of self-confidence. I know I, I kind of come across as very gregarious, very self-confident in my videos, but when I'm out and about with people, I'm very, you know, very introverted, very, you know, tense and just kind of like, don't look at me. Why is everybody looking at me? And stuff like that. So like when I go to the gym, I'm very, very self-conscious about myself. And um, I remember one time I went to the gym to, you know, work on legs and stuff like that. So I do like leg lifts and things like that. And of course, uh, like all the gyms, they seem to have mirrors everywhere. I don't know. I guess that's just to look at your know, your form, your technique, whatever, and that's okay, but like me, as long as I'm lifting, you know, it's whatever. I don't really care too much about it, just as long as I'm doing it. And so I'm sitting there with my legs, you know, just doing like leg lifts, and like I look at myself in my workout clothes, and I'm like, God, I look fucking disgusting, you know? It's like, like a tube of toothpaste that's been filled up too much, and it's just, ugh, I just, you know, and then like looking at my legs, I'm like, ah, oh, look how pasty white and gross your legs are. And just a lot of this negative, you know, self-depreciation sort of thoughts just creep into my head as I'm working out. And I know, you know, a lot of people are gonna be like, you know, just ignore the thoughts, you know, you're not there for them and you're there for yourself and you gotta work on yourself and stuff like that. But just a lot of those personal mental issues crop up in my in my mind when I'm working out in a gym. It's just, and that's one of the reasons why I kind of avoid that scene. And you know, also laziness too, but you know, it's mostly just fear of being judged by everybody. Even though in reality, I know that they don't give two shits and a fucking holler about me as long as I'm not yelling or making a scene or whatever. So as long as I'm not doing that, you know, they don't really give a shit what I'm doing. But just in my head, I get all these little, you know, thoughts that brew and just kind of discourage me from working out and stuff like that. So that's why I prefer to be outside while I work out. That's why I like, you know, 
cycling, you know, getting on my bicycle and going places and that, that's been my main source of cardio, but because I have a car and the weather has been kind of cold and <laughs> up in, uh, in western Michigan, I haven't been biking nearly as much as I was in Yokosuka, because in Yokosuka I'd bike every day, you know, going back and forth to work and stuff like that. So I, I think that kind of helped give me a little bit of exercise, you know, it's not, you know, an intense 90 minute workout, but you know, it's something, every little bit helps. But now that I'm not getting that, I think, you know, that's another thing that I have to get used to. And, you know, hopefully get back on the exercise wagon once the weather warms up and I can go and, you know, hope, ideally I want to start running again, uh, even though my joints are going to hate me for it. And I've, I've always had issues with, with running just because it, it affects my, my knees and my ankles. And, you know, you know, they would hurt, and I, I thought that I had like shin splints or something like that, and I'm, I may have them, I don't know, um, but hopefully they've healed up by now. <laughs> I don't know, but I just, like, you know, from the knee down, it always hurts when I run. Now when I bike, it's not so much the case because I'm, you know, you don't get that impact that you would when you run. It's a lot easier on my joints to bike. That's why I prefer to bicycle versus running. But I do want to get back into running because you do burn more calories and you don't have to go out as far and stuff like that. So um, once the weather warms up and there's less ice and crap everywhere, you know, I'm going to start running again. So there's that. And, uh, you know, in the meantime, I'm going to be working on doing like uh, some, I guess, meditating even though it sounds super hippy dippy it's basically just breathing exercises i'm not like you know going um you know, doing stuff like that it's just i'm focusing a lot more on breathing exercises to help you know calm me down and to reduce stress and i've noticed it's had a very significant effect on my stress levels because i noticed that there's there's weird times where even though I'm not feeling stress and I'm not thinking about stressful things, like my body kind of goes into like the stress mode where I start just shaking uncontrollably, uncontrollably for some reason. And I'm like, why am I shaking? Why am I stressed out? What's going on? Even though like nothing triggered it, <laughs> nothing, you know, it was like, and I, I didn't get like a, an eviction notice or a bill that was really high. And I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do, dude? <laughs> You know, it's just like, it's usually before I go to bed. It's it's really weird. Like, before I go to bed, you know, I just roll up in the covers and I'm just waiting to drift off to sleep. And then all of a sudden I just, I start shaking uncontrollably. And I'm like, what's going on? And I just, and like all these thoughts creep into my head as far as, you know, not being able to, you know, pass college. You know, just all these very morbid thoughts. And I think that's just a result of stress and not enough exercise and all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm doing a lot of little things that's hopefully gonna build up to being able to get back into exercising again, you know, lose some damn weight, tired of this freshman 15 <laughs> among other pounds. But, you know, in addition to losing weight, it's, it's mostly just about having a, a healthy mental state. You know, I'm not doing it just to lose some weight, although that's nice too. But like I said, it's just mostly to, you know, help me have a clear mind. Once I get a job and can afford better food, <laughs> that's going to be another thing that's going to be changing soon because right now, like I said, money's kind of tight, so I'm eating some not so healthy things just so that way I can survive, basically, until I start getting some money again. So, you know, once that, you know, starts up, then I can start eating healthy again. And, you know, just basically it's just, I'm doing a lot of little small things to help build up to where I can live a healthier lifestyle than it was before like uh, you know I've been drinking water you know <laughs> mostly out of necessity because um, I can't afford um, other drinks like apple cider orange juice I, <laughs> I sure as hell can't afford liquor right now even though I do like it I do like to drink I'm not saying I'm completely giving up drinking but you know compared to my Japan days especially my Japan days where I would drink a lot very frequently and drank more than I probably should have actually you know, especially compared to that those times I've sobered up significantly um, I don't drink nearly as much as I did back then I think now well I mean now it's kind of a bad example because you know I don't have 
a lot of you know money to spend on drinking and in Japan it's very cheap and very accessible to get something to you know tide you over you know alcohol wise you know whereas here it's very much like I mean the beer is pretty weak you know, as far as like if you want to get drunk you know beer is a pretty terrible option for the most part unless you get like craft beer where the alcohol percentage is much higher you know or you go to a bar but again you're paying for the the craft beer which is you know it's good I'm not saying it's not it's good but you're definitely paying more than you know getting name brand stuff and so I switched over to you know like liquor and stuff like that you know maybe mixing it with orange juice, apple juice, whatever mixing stuff I have and just kind of getting by with that. And that's been doing fine, doing me fine. But like I said, you know, because I'm kind of tight on money, I can't afford those things right now. So just, you know, a little cause and effect. So I'm kind of eating healthier in that regard, you know, just because I can't afford, you know, less healthy stuff. You know, I'm going to be cutting back on my drinking, you know, once money starts rolling in, eating healthier stuff, you know, exercising, that kind of stuff. You know, that's kind of a long-term plan versus just, you know, I gotta lose the weight now. So anyway, that's what's been going on in my life. Um, this video is extremely long and I do apologize for the extreme length, but if you've been sticking around for this long in the video, um, I gotta give you props. You the real MVP. And with that said, this is the Andy Son. Sign up for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to this especially long update video and for watching my other stuff. And I hope you guys tune in when I move over to my The Andy Son channel. I would suggest subscribing now so that way uh, once I start cranking out uh, videos and updates and all that kind of stuff, you know, you're not wondering, you know, why hasn't Andy uploaded anything in a while? That's weird. So that way at least, you know, <laughs> you got that covered. So when I officially, you know, transition over to my The Andy Son channel, you know, you're not missing out on anything. So anyway, thank you guys for tuning in this video and my other stuff. Also want to thank you guys for liking with the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, then we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you, book with my February 2016 update video, part two. <laughs> so yeah, um, in this video I'm gonna be talking about some uh, major YouTube updates and some other stuff as well, but mostly YouTube, so stay tuned. So yeah, um, as you guys know from my uh, previous update videos, I'm gonna be switching over channels very soon from my Andy San channel to my The Andy San channel. And uh, I've, you know, I'm currently making preparations and exporting all of my old videos from my Andy San channel over to my The Andy San channel. And it's definitely gonna be a work in progress, but I've got the majority of the videos already over there for now. So um, the idea is to um, basically just have them be released on a daily schedule. So that way it's not just one big 900 plus video barrage in your subscription box. So um, I'd rather just release them gradually so that way, you know, you're not bombarded with uh, content from me. So there's that. And as far as release times and stuff like that goes, uh, as far as like what time during the day, I'm gonna release those videos. Um, haven't quite settled on a time yet, but I'm thinking probably around afternoon-ish Eastern Standard Time. So I'd say maybe between 2 to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time-ish during the week. That's a pretty fair time timeline to say. Um, but yeah, those are gonna be starting uh, effective March 1st of 2016. So if you're watching this in the future, greetings. And uh, the switchover's probably already, prob probably already done by now, if I can speak the English good. <laughs> so um, yeah, anyway, um, in addition to that, um, I'm also going to be changing up a lot of things on my Andy Cade channel, which is known as my Let's Play channel. So, um, <clears throat> 
the idea originally was to have my The Andy San channel be like my personal channel where I talk about vlogs and do update videos and unboxings and talk about YouTube issues and you know show you around different uh, places and stuff where I'm at you know tours around town and things like that and then have my Andy K channel just be my let's play channel and just have it be its own thing but um, I did a little digging recently due to um, a uh, warning issued by AdSense and it turns out that um, my uh, AdSense account for my Andy K channel and my The Andy San channel are two separate uh, accounts and that uh, currently violates AdSense terms of use. So they sent me a little 30-day uh, suspension while they investigate suspicious activity which may or may not include that. There could be other uh, factors involved, possible click bombing, which is where people just click on the ads, you know, to, f you know, flag Google's um, little thing saying, oh, this ad did, you know, very well, too well. <laughs> so there's possibly that. I'm not sure because I only use that AdSense account for my Andy Cade stuff. I don't have it on my website or anything like that so it's not as easily monitored as far as you know who's clicking what where and all that kind of stuff you know i can see how well an ad performs but i can't see the amount of clicks anymore it's it's a weird um update they did with the youtube analytics i don't particularly agree with it but it is what it is so in any event um i decided after looking over all this to uh consolidate everything under one roof one channel, one AdSense account to comply with the terms of use for AdSense and, you know, to have like one stop shop basically for all of your Andy San needs. <laughs> so um, basically what this means is that uh, I'm going to be uh, mothballing or canceling my Andy K channel and uh, I'm going to be moving all that content over to my The Andy San channel. And then uh, starting March 1st, I'm going to be re-relaunching <laughs> um, all that stuff on my The Andy San channel. So you're going to have a, uh, a slow um, just reintegration of content from both my Andy San channel and my Andy K channel as well. So it's going to be uh, daily content for... A long time <laughs> let's put it that way so um, and like I said times you know, I haven't quite settled on an exact time schedule just yet but I am planning on in the afternoonish time Eastern Standard Time so between 2 to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is what I'm aiming for as far as content now as far as quantity of videos per day um, as far as what I already have content wise I'm gonna be shooting for uh, two videos a day uh, for the time being. Uh, one of them is going to be uh, my Andy San videos from my Andy San channel. And then the second is going to be uh, an Andy Kate episode and stuff like that. And uh, the Andy Kate episodes, um, after looking over the analytics and all that, I've decided to, for, the, for now, and I may change this later, but for the time being, I'm um, just going to have them uploaded uh, just during the week, and I'm not going to do weekend episodes of Andy Cade. So, in uh, absence of a, an Andy Cade episode during the weekend, I'm just going to upload a uh, second um, Andy San episode, basically. And uh, I'm also going to squeeze in some new content as well, but those are going to be the constants for a while. <laughs> and then, you know, the newer content is going to start filtering in as well. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be doing monthly announcements like this one, you know, telling you guys what I'm going to be covering, when it's going to come out-ish, and uh, stuff like that. So um, be sure to uh, tune in for, uh, for those videos. And like I said, they're all going to be released in between 2 to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, once I get a schedule all set up, I'm probably going to send out just a tweet or maybe cover it in an upcoming update video so that way you guys have a more solid idea of when videos are going to be released so um <clears throat> and like i said the reason that i'm uh consolidating everything is for 
several reasons. You know, one is to comply with AdSense's um, terms of use as far as only having one AdSense account. Now I can have that AdSense account on multiple channels, but the reason I'm not doing multiple channels, you know, I'm gonna cover that next actually. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's kind of an old school YouTuber mentality to have multiple channels because, you know, back in the day, everything was very niche oriented and still kind of is today as well. But, you know, it's, it's a lot harder to break through to an audience today than it was back then because there's obviously a lot more YouTubers now than there was like five, ten years ago. So, I mean, I'm not complaining. It just, it is what it is. So, um, and you also compound things when you separate your audience by channels, you know, where you have like, um, I've seen a lot of people where they have like their niche channels, like, uh, like they have a personal vlog channel, then they have like a gaming channel, then like a cooking channel, and then like uh, a random update channel and stuff like that. And it just kind of splits the audience um, unnecessarily. And it may have worked a couple years ago, but it just doesn't really fly that well nowadays. So um, I thought, you know, rather than just split the audience as far as, you know, oh, well, if you want the Let's Play stuff, go subscribe to Andy Kane. And if you want everything else, you know, subscribe to the Andy song and stuff like that. I figure just to make things a little less confusing and so that way you guys get a, uh, a nice stream of content, videos. I hate using the C word. Ugh. But in any event, so that way you guys get uh, more videos and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's best to just consolidate it all into one channel. It'll give uh, good exposure to the videos. And uh, you guys won't have to uh, worry about, oh, which channel su should I subscribe to? I don't know. What, what's an Andy Cade? <laughs> stuff like that. So there you go. And uh, all that stuff should be rolling out. Uh, effective March 1st, 2016. So in the meantime, uh, all the Andy Cade videos that are currently up are going to be um, unlisted for the time being until we uh, get this thing all sorted out. I'm gonna be canceling upcoming videos for that channel as well. And then once I, you know, re-upload the videos that were on that channel to my The Andy San channel, we can start re uh, rescheduling them again and uh, re-releasing stuff as well. So, um, yeah, I'm just basically gonna be uh, releasing my uh, Let's Play series, you know, starting from the beginning. <laughs> and then uh, <clears throat> in the meantime, I'm also gonna be uh, recording new series as well, which are gonna be coming out. So, um... ooh, chili farts. <laughs> At any event, um, that's what's going to be happening. Um, I hope to uh, get everything all clarified and get specific times in a future update video uh, once I have everything all solidified. But that's pretty much where we stand right now. So um, I, apolog I apologize for the um, confusion in this change. You know, changing over channels is never easy. <laughs> you know, I guess. So, um, <laughs> Apologize for, you know, the inconvenience in not getting Andy Kate episodes uh, for the time being, for the next two weeks, basically. So um, once I get everything all sorted out, then, you know, starting March 1st, you know, then we'll actually get a good schedule. So <laughs> just uh, hang with me for the next couple weeks and then um, everything should be good uh, moving forward once we get all those videos uploaded so yeah and if you guys have any questions or anything like that you know feel free to uh, leave something in the comments below in the boopity boops and as i always say i read all your comments and i read all your personal messages and uh <clears throat> you can also hit me up on uh, twitter as well that's uh, twitter.com slash the and i'm also on instagram so if you like uh, my nice pretty pictures instagram.com slash the as well and uh, also consider uh, donating to my Patreon if you want to support the show, which is, uh, I think, patreon.com slash Nandison, something like that. Anyway, um, if you don't remember all the links, which, you know, it's kind of hard for me to remember stuff sometimes too, <laughs> everything's down below in the description, so be sure to check those out. And with that said, this is the Andy-san, 
it's time for now. Thanking you guys boop, for tuning into this episode, or not episode, but <laughs> this update video, and uh, for watching my other stuff, and for uh, sticking with me during this uh, massive change and massive shift over to a new channel, new beginnings, all that kind of stuff. And uh, also want to thank you guys for liking the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, Send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Coming at you, Pook, with a little vliggity vlog of sorts. Um, I guess this could be considered uh, my February 2016 update video, Bertwa. Um, I guess. Um, <laughs> you know, it kind of goes, you know, I, I plan on going over a lot of uh, stuff that's been going on with, you know, personal life as well as YouTube life. So, yeah, it's, it's an update video, <laughs> I guess. You know, but uh, it's just, yeah, a lot of stuff's been happening to me lately. So, let's go over it. And, uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these little vlogs, uh, despite what you guys may have seen earlier. Um, and, you know, one of the things I've noticed about YouTube is it's it's definitely like a, a habit or like a discipline in a way in that, you know, it's so easy to make videos when you're constantly making videos because you get into a rhythm, you get into a flow of how to do things. And then once you get out of that flow, it's so hard to get back into it. And I, I don't know if you guys notice, like, you know, when I take long breaks and like the first couple videos that I do back from those breaks, I'm a little stilted and there's probably a little more jump cuts than normal, you know, as opposed to like when I'm just regular, regularly talking in the English, <laughs> hopefully. Um, I don't know, I mean, maybe it's just me, I'm not sure. But uh, in any event, uh, one of the things I want to talk to you about is something that happened fairly recently uh, over this past weekend in February 2016. So if you're watching this in the future, greetings. And uh, yeah, <laughs> all that stuff. So um, this past weekend, there was a uh, mass shooting uh, here in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Well, technically Kalamazoo is uh, a bit north of where I live. I live in Portage, which is uh, slightly south. I guess it's kind of like the suburbs of Kalamazoo, kind of sort of a little bit. I mean, in essence, I live in Kalamazoo, you know, just basically, so <laughs> for all intents and purposes. Uh, but in any event, there was a, uh, a mass shooting that went on over this weekend. And, uh, you know, thankfully I was inside, so I'm, I'm totally fine. You know, they never came to this neighborhood, thankfully. And, you know, even if they did, I was inside my apartment here the whole time because I was busy working on videos and all that kind of stuff. So I guess it pays to be a recluse, you know, <laughs> sometimes anyway. But uh, yeah, and you know, my, my thoughts and everything go out to um, all those who were affected by all this. You know, they caught a, um, a suspect, a very, uh, I don't know what the term is, like top level or very likely high suspect. I don't know. They caught someone who they think most likely did it. That's the terminology I can think of off the top of my head. So, um, you know, if he did do it, then you know, thankfully he's off the streets now and the authorities can deal with him accordingly. So, um, I haven't, you know, gotten any updates with it at the time of this recording. So from what I've heard, he was arraigned today on Monday that I'm recording this. So, you know, hopefully just pay attention to Google News or whatever to get your uh, updates and stuff like that, you know? So um, anyway, my thoughts and all that are with those who are affected by the shooting. But this whole thing just kind of got me thinking about uh, my life back in America and just how um, unsafe it is here compared to other parts of the world, you know, namely Japan, where I used to live. And there's just, <laughs> as a friggin' ambulance and all that stuff is going by, you know, it kind of hammers the point home, right? But uh, in any event, it just, it just got me thinking, man, about um, all the differences between uh, living in America and living in Japan. 
and especially living in America again as a as a returnee. Um, I guess that's what they call it. You know, someone who's been abroad for a while and decided to, you know, live back in their native country. Uh, there goes the dogs next door too. Jesus, I know this video's being made in less than ideal conditions. Sorry about all that. Um, but I just wanted to get all this out there because it's been kind of weighing on my mind lately. And, you know, I've been wanting to make videos again for so long, but I've just been so busy with uh, re-uploading everything from my old channel to my The Andy San channel and getting ready to launch that as my main channel and then begin the process of shutting down my Andy San channel. And it's just been a very draining process. But um, anyway, getting back to uh, the whole uh, living life in America again thing. And it's just, this whole shooting thing just kind of brought, you know, perspective uh, to me as far as um, just that it's not safe here. And I know that, you know, you're, you're not safe anywhere you go, but there are levels of safeness depending on where you live, you know, and it's just, America's just not safe anymore. And, uh, you know, no matter where I live, you know, even in my little hometown of Salina, Ohio, with, um, I think it has close to 10,000 people now, it's, you know, fairly small. I mean, yeah, there's smaller towns, but, you know, it's a pretty small town, all things considered. And it's rife with, you know, heroin, Problems. There's a big heroin drug ring going on that thankfully the police department's dealing with now. You know, they finally get on that now, finally. Um, and just, you know, drug crimes and all kinds of breaking and enterings and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, what the hell is going on? What's happening? And it's just hammering the point home that, you know, I thought coming back to America would help me out, help me get back to my roots and figure out who I am and just help me get my shit together, basically. But, you know, ever since I've been back, it's just been... It's just been a struggle, you know? I mean, there's obviously a lot of good things about being back in America, you know? A lot of the foods that I missed while I was over in Japan, you know, I have ready access to. I have a car now because that's the thing in America. You have to have a car to get anywhere. You know, it's just, it's, it's not like in Japan where, you know, you can ride on a bike or just walk to the train station and then you can go anywhere in Japan pretty much if you have enough money, of course. But, you know, and the public transportation system is not quite as good. Although, you know, here in the bigger cities like Kalamazoo area, they have a, a fairly decent public transportation system, but, you know, I got a car, so I don't have to deal with it, you know, so <laughs> that's my transportation system. But in any event, um, just this, this whole thing just got me thinking, like, you know, what am I doing here? And just, you know, and also like college life isn't what I, um, you know, college life the second time around isn't uh, what I expected it to be. And yeah, I know, I shouldn't expect things, you know, just be appreciative of what happens. But, um, you know, it's just, it's so weird going back to college now because I've changed so much over these past couple of years. You know, I've experienced so much. And, um, you know, I thought that, you know, I'd be able to get back into college the same way in 2016 as I did in 2006, 2007. And it would just be like, you know, I hit the unpause button and I could get right back into it. But, you know, that's just not how things work. You know, I've changed so much over this past, you know, nine, almost 10 years since I left college the first time around. And, uh, you know, the landscape's changed so much. Um, because I remember when I was in college the first time around, um, online classes were starting to become a thing. You know, they had some 
you know, some semblance of them, but the uh, software and everything they were using wasn't very good. Um, it was hard to communicate with teachers efficiently using those system to, systems because even back then, I remember, shit, even going back to the IT tech times where we had to do a couple online classes, um, I was never very good at it. And, you know, it's hard to hold myself accountable for those online classes just because I didn't have anybody telling me, you know, hey, you got X assignment due this time or, hey, you know, check the online thing because your assignment's due in a couple days or something like that. Even it's just a simple little throwaway line. You know, it's like, oh, shit, you know, okay. Just make a note of it. You know, you're expected to go to e-learning and uh, figure it out for yourself. But now they have slightly better tools. It's still not what I ideally would like it to be, but the system has improved and um, I'm better at communicating with my teachers now than I was then just because, you know, I'm different, I guess, from back then. Because back then I was very, very passive, very go, go with the flow and, uh, you know, I tried to do my best without talking to people. And, you know, now if something's going on, I can talk to people better. You know, I'm still not perfect in that regard. And there's a lot of things that are going on that I should talk to people about, but I don't because I don't want to burden them with my problems, all that kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah, so there's that. And, uh, you know, just, Going back to college the second time around, you know, being a, a 30-something, no longer a 20-something, even though I look fairly young and most people think, you know, man, maybe he's like a senior or something like that, you know, maybe he's like 21, 25 tops, which I mean is great, but just my whole mindset is different now from when I was that age. And like, I can't, it's hard for me to relate to those types of people anymore because a lot of their issues and what they're going through is stuff that I've already dealt with for the most part, you know, discovering who you are and trying to, you know, get your shit together as an adult, you know, how to, you know, pay the bills and what to do in that regard. And uh, a lot of that stuff I already have dealt with before and it's pretty much, you can just set it on autopilot, you know, set it and forget it. For the most part so um, and then you know just standard you know college drama you know it's just like high school plus pretty much which I don't get into that anymore and you know there's a lot of differences now you know because when I was in college the first time around I was actually like in college in college like I did I was in the dorms and stuff like that so I was a bit more you know in the atmosphere, I guess. And, you know, everything was so new to me at the time because I'd never lived away from my parents before that that time period, you know. Because before I was going to college, I was going to a tech school and uh, I basically commuted, you know, two, sometimes three times a week, depending on how many classes I had that quarter. And it was basically just like being back in high school, you know. Like, except my high school is very far away, and, I, and I'd only have to go, like, a couple times a week. And uh, I worked a little bit more at McDonald's to, uh, you know, be able to afford the gas money to get over there and back, and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but now, um, I'm very much a commuter, you know. It's kind of like being back at IT, IT Tech, which was the tech school I went to before, in that um, you don't really invest yourself so much into, you know, the the student so you know the student social groups at large. You pretty much just associate with whoever is in your class, for the most part. That's kind of what I equate equate uh, this you know, time around to college as is, you know, basically like whoever's in my class I can talk to and, you know, just goof off and have fun with or whatever the case may be. And then, you know, at the end of the day, you know, they either go to their next class or they're done for the day and I go home. So and that's that, you know, we don't hang out after 
class or anything like that. It's just, you know, <laughs> we're there in the classroom and then outside it's whatever. But um, there are some classes that I do enjoy more than others. Um, my Japanese class being the number one, um, I'm making a lot of good strides, a lot of good progress in that class. You know, it helps having been in Japan for a couple of years, you know, you kind of know how to pronounce things better. You kind of, you know, know a bit more about the grammar and, you know, what certain things are and stuff like that. But that being said, you know, my Japanese was okay at best. You know, like I could answer questions. I could ask fairly simple questions. It was... And uh, it was a little above survival Japanese. And it was, you know, pretty much enough for me to get by. But after a while, I kind of plateaued because I was in the English bubble for so long. You know, I was in the Navy. So we didn't really use a lot of Japanese while we were there because it was all in English for the most part, <laughs> depending on your rate and stuff like that. But and I digress. But, you know, majority of it was English. Um, the only time I had to practice or even use my Japanese was, you know, if I would go to the grocery store, or go to the restaurants or something like that, and I would order food or buy food or something like that. And that was pretty much it, really, you know. And, uh, you know, there's times I'd go out to Tokyo and stuff like that, and uh, I'd get a chance to use my Japanese. But I know a lot of uh, foreigner YouTubers you know, the J-Vlog scene, what are their main complaints about, you know, them trying to use Jap Japanese in Tokyo or whatever, is that all the, all the Japanese people want to do is talk English to you. But it, it's kind of funny because I had the exact opposite problem when I went out to Tokyo because the foreign friends that I had were very fluent in Japanese, you know, much more so than I, you know, it was basically like, you know, they were able to converse you know, fairly fluently, whereas I was like, Watashi wa Andy desu. Ah, Andrew desu ka? Ah, Andrew san. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, just whatever. So, you know, my Japanese was fairly basic, and I knew a couple words, so I kind of, you know, pepper in there, so I would, I didn't look like a complete caveman, but still, it, was, it wasn't, it was nothing compared to my friends, so, like, you know, they would see how, you know, fluent my friends were. And they kind of thought, oh, this new guy, he must be fluent like them. And they would just, you know, bah, 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 and just, you know, I'd, I'd maybe only understand like three or five words at a time at best. And plus, like we go to clubs and stuff like that and music's really loud. So even if I could understand them, I couldn't really hear a damn thing they were saying anyway, because it's just kind of the nightlife in Tokyo, I guess. You know, but, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. And again, that's another thing I really missed about living in Japan was the amount of friends I had, you know, and just the fact that I got to hang out with YouTube friends, which was a completely new concept to me, you know, because, you know, before I moved to Japan, you know, the only friends I had were like friends I made in high school and college, pretty much. Maybe like some work-based friends, but it, except for a handful of them, like I never really hung out with them after work. It was pretty much like with my, you know, school friends at IT Tech. Like, you know, we'd hang out and joke while we were in class or on break or whatever, but once class was over, like we, you know, <laughs> we'd go our separate ways and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, so, but, you know, being in Japan, getting to hang out with YouTubers, you know, that I've known for years, you know, that I would, you know, make comments in their videos or send them personal messages or friend them on Facebook and stuff like that. And, you know, to get to know them and get to actually physically meet them in person, that was, you know, just amazing to me and get to hang out with them and kind of see how they are behind the scenes and, you know, maybe complain about some YouTube problems like, oh, some little snot-nosed fuckhead called me fat and told me to kill myself on YouTube. Brr, 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 You know, it's like, hey, me too. You know, because before I moved to Japan, you know, I was basically the YouTube guy to my friends. You know, they, 
they knew that I did YouTube and they knew that I did blogging and all that kind of stuff. So they kind of figured, you know, that was my thing. And as much as I tried to get them in on it too, you know, maybe they did like a couple posts and that's about it really. So, you know, I was basically the YouTube guy. So I didn't really know anybody else that did YouTube aside from making like maybe a couple videos back in 2006 and being like, hey, I know what YouTube is. <laughs> I made this video of me throwing a ball at my bro's face. <laughs> you know, that's about it, really. You know, whereas I, you know, made my videos and made them on a fairly consistent basis, which is pretty amazing considering, you know, my work schedule and all that kind of stuff. You know, I tried, I tried my best to work around my Navy schedule and still, you know, upload videos on as consistent of a schedule as I could. You know, it wasn't a daily vlog thing, which wasn't really my thing to begin with anyway. But I just, I never uh, got to that, but still I was able to upload fairly consistently, you know, and at least like one, up, one video a week at least, you know, for the most part. And I was able to do that, you know, my whole five year stint in the Navy, which is pretty amazing actually. When I sit down and think about it, you know, I remember when I was on uh, USS Kurtz, FFG 38, um, I remember sitting in <coughs> uh, one of the spaces, one of the sonar spaces, and uh, just working on videos, you know. I recorded a bunch of stuff while we were underway on deployment, and I was just putting it all together and stuff like that, and it was just, you know, kind of cool, and yeah, maybe I should have worked on some quals, but you know. This was my thing, this was my baby, you know. And I'm not quite sure where I'm going with this, but um, I know it's kind of <laughs> devolved in some, some kind of rant, freeform, word barf uh, vlog. But, you know, like I said at the beginning of this video, I got a lot of stuff going on in my head, a lot of stuff going on in my life that I want to get out. And I think it's very healthy to you know, release those emotions and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, in addition to uh, just feeling unsafe in America with all the shootings and stuff like that happening so close to home, it's not like, you know, oh, obviously there are shootings in L.A. and New York City. I mean, duh, it's a big city. Of course that stuff's going to happen. You know, having that kind of stuff happen, you know, in some people's cases, literally in their backyard, it's like, what the fuck am I doing here? What am I doing here? And, you know, I know that there's some people out there, I'm not gonna name names, but there's some people asking me, you know, man, I bet you regret getting out of the Navy and moving back to America, huh? And, you know, I do wanna make a, a video going a bit, a bit deeper into the subject because it's kind of a, you know, there's a lot more to it than just, you know, yeah, it sucks I got out of the Navy, whatever. You know, it's not as black and white as that. You know, it's a little more gray. <laughs> but um, I guess like the long and short of it is, you know, I don't regret getting out of the Navy because, you know, the Navy was never a long-term career choice for me. You know, since the day I started, I knew that I was gonna do my time. When I was done, get out, go back to college. That was the plan, right? And I did that. <laughs> I did my time. I mean, I got out a little bit earlier than expected, but I still got out, got my honorable discharge, got my DD-214, honorably, and I'm here going back to college. So um, everything should be good, right? But uh, I don't know, it's just a lot of things, that, you know, it just wasn't really what I thought it was gonna be. And, uh, you know, I don't regret getting out of the Navy because at that point in my career, you know, especially once I made second class, I was kind of at the precipice of this decision of, you know, I could re-enlist and then, you know, hopefully make, you know, work my way towards STG-1, then later STGC, and, you know, if I wanted to go up from there or just retire at STGC, you know, that's on me. But like that was the basic long-term uh, career path that I was looking at. 
you know, and especially since I made SCG2 so quickly. I, I only, I made, I made second E5 for, you know, those who don't know, in like two years and five months. On the Kurtz during that promotion cycle, I was the fastest to get promoted to second. There, I beat out an FC by two months. <laughs> so, you know, that was pretty cool. And I was the first of my, um, not the first of my boot camp class, because there was like two or three others that made second before me on that in that part. But I did manage to beat out everybody in my A school class and my C school class to make in second. So, you know, I was really proud of that. So, uh, but you know, ever since I left the Kurtz, it was just, um, I didn't really know what my place was. I knew that uh, Lassen, you know, the people in Lassen wanted me to step up as a second class and assume leadership and, you know, discipline the, uh, the division and stuff like that, deal with paperwork and maintenance scheduling and work center soup stuff. But it just, you know, I had to sit down and think about it because that wasn't really my strong suit. And the whole thing was the Navy wanted wants, you know, all around good sailors. You know, they don't want people who are subject matter experts at their rate. They don't want people who are really good at their job. They want people that are good at all the jobs, you know, that are that know everything about their rate that, you know, do command collaterals. They do stuff outside of the command. You know, they're one of those hard charger alpha male or alpha female types. You know, no bait is allowed. You know, Mr. or Mrs. get her done type, you know, go get her person. And that's really not me. I'm not Mr. Alpha male, you know. I, I'm very much a laid back kind of, you know, if something were to go wrong, I would approach the person one on one rather than you know, try to discipline them or correct them in front of people. Um, I don't really like confrontation. It's just a lot of these things added up and uh, I just, I just didn't like where my career was going in the Navy at that point. And I just, I became frustrated with it. You know, I, I became trapped by it. Because, you know, and it was so uh, depressing to go through that because here I was in Japan, the place that I wanted to be since I was a little kid. You know, since my cousins went off and, you know, told me so many good things about Japan and shared their stories about it and mailed me back stuff from Japan. It was just so cool and so different. And here I was actually living that I was actually in Japan. I had an apartment that overlooked Tokyo Bay. I got to see the sunrise over the ocean every morning, you know, when the sun rose. <laughs> Sometimes I wake up super early, but you know, you guys know what I mean. And uh, I was just so fortunate, but I just, I wasn't satisfied. You know, I thought that, you know, it was great being there the first couple of weeks or whatever, but you know, once I had accomplished that, I wanted to do something career-wise, but it just, I was just so unsatisfied being in the Navy, you know, especially at that point. And, uh, you know, I liked the people in my division for the most part, and I liked the people on the ship. I just didn't like where they wanted my career to go because everybody's career path was very uh, scripted. You know, it was a one size fits all, basically, you know. Okay, you're an E5, you need to get these qualifications and you need to be this type of person. And if you wanna make E6, you know, that's how you do it. And then you gotta be more of this person. You gotta be super leadership man, dude, girl, person. And then, you know, that's how you make the E7 and so on and so forth. And it was, it's very scripted. And that's not something I wanted to be a part of. And, you know, it also didn't help that the operation tempo, the op tempo was so high, you know, with China and North Korea acting fools on a consistent basis, you know, and us getting the call late at night, 
hey, we're getting underway in 24 hours. You know, you better get your stuff and come on over. You know, I got plans that weekend. Well, you know, <laughs> so is North Korea. So, and just having that stress of always being basically on call in case something went down, you know, it was so stressful and I had to cancel so many plans with my friends and they thought I was such a fucking flake because of it. And I felt so bad because I don't like flaking out of my friends, you know, but you know, when duty calls, I guess. And, uh, but in any event, I just, I was not satisfied being in the Navy, but um, on, the other, on the other side of that, I loved being in Japan. I mean, sure, it had its down, it has its downsides, like every place, you know, even America has its downsides. Um, but for the most part, I loved being in Japan. I loved, you know, where I was. I loved being near the ocean. You know, the Japanese people are kind of a mixed bag depending on where I went, but for the most part, they're very nice, very polite. They never bothered me that much for the most part. I mean, there was a couple incidents here and there, but it was pretty forgivable in the grand scheme of things. It was just, you know, weird drunk salary men being weird drunk salary men. You know, what you gonna do? <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I really miss Japan. And uh, I especially miss my friends out there as well. And uh, yeah, so hopefully I can get back there someday. You know, either as a study abroad student, which is something I'm working on right now. I can't do it until, you know, I've established myself more as a student at Western. You know, get a good GPA, get some classes under my belt saying, you know, see, this guy knows the Japanese. This guy's got such and such GPA. Yeah, let's send him abroad. Cool. You know, I can't, I can't start my freshman year and be like, yeah, I want to go to Japan. <laughs> You know, that's, that's not how it works. But um, I plan on uh, doing like a study abroad program my sophomore year, second year. So sometime next year is when I plan on doing a study abroad program. Now, um, there are several programs that they offer. There's the year long program, which ideally I would like, but there's also um, summer programs as well, which Considering I just, you know, re-upped on my lease here until uh, Feb, uh, until, sorry, uh, March of uh, 2017, you know, I can't break my lease until then, you know, without suffering the consequences. And I don't have the money to pay for that. So um, I'll be here for the next 12 months at least. So yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, I guess the plan moving forward is to hopefully get a year long a scholarship to go over to one of the universities that Western has a partnership with. They have a partnership with so many other places, um, but you know the partnership that they have with those universities um, makes it easier for me to get in there and to get scholarships to go there and to have money while I'm there. Because you know, the, like I said, the GI Bill only goes so far, and I'm not sure how much if any at all, it covers for study abroad programs. That's something I'm gonna have to look into and stuff like that. So, you know, again, <laughs> it's the reason I'm doing it my sophomore year and obviously not my freshman year. So, you know, it's gonna take some time to figure out everything and to get everything all, you know, put in line. But uh, just know that I am looking to come back to Japan at some point, whether that is through a study abroad program or maybe after I graduate from college and can go up there to teach English to the kids. Uh, I want to continue with this video, but I could see that ba my battery for all the things is dying and I have so much more to tell you guys. But um, I guess that's just where, where we'll leave it here for now. And uh, yeah, so that said, this is Andy san Sign for now, thinking you guys, Poop, for tuning in to this rambly video. I guess this wasn't so much of an update video after all. Um, it was just uh, rambly blah. <laughs> so um, thank you guys for tuning in this video and for uh, watching my stuff. Also want to thank you guys for liking the thumbs. 
commenting, subscribing, sending your friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, coming at you, Pook, with a video for uh, Busan Kevin to congratulate him on 100 episodes of his uh, Just Japan podcast. Everything you want to know about Japan. So uh, for those of you who don't know, um, I was actually a an, an very early on guest of Kevin's uh, back when he first started the Just Japan podcast, episode three, being in the US Navy in Japan. To commemorate 100 episodes of the Just Japan podcast, Busan Kevin uh, issued a thing asking a lot of his recurring guests um, what their first week in Japan is like. And uh, I thought I'd share this with you in video because <laughs> I missed the cut, you know, because uh, of time and I had a lot of other things going on and I was sick that particular week, so it is what it is. So now you get to hear about it, so <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so for those of you who don't know, um, I was in the United States Navy. Before I went over to Japan, I was stationed on the USS Kurtz, FFG 38, based in San Diego, California. I did a six month deployment with her, uh, decommed her for about two months, did the whole preparations for all that. Then after that, after we decommed, um, I went back to sonar school to learn a new uh, sonar system. And from there, I was sent, I had orders to go to USS Lassen DDG-82 out in Yokosuka, Japan. They're currently going through a port shift right now, so they've shifted from Yokosuka to Mayport slash Jacksonville, Florida. So they're kind of in the middle of that right now. But at the time, they were stationed in Yokosuka, Japan, which is where I was at. <laughs> After I had packed all my bags and checked out and everything like that, I took about, I think it was five sea bags in total. Uh, for those who don't know what a sea bag is, it's those big green uh, duffel bag looking things that you see a lot of military personnel carrying around when they're uh, shifting stuff over. And you know, you see uh, like the goodbye photos and stuff like that. So just look for the big green uh, duffel bags. So I had about five of those worth of stuff. <laughs> cause you know, I didn't know when I was gonna be coming back to America cause I didn't know anything about uh, what the operation of uh, the op tempo, the operational tempo was like over in Japan, which I would soon find out. <laughs> it was pretty stressful. But in any event, so I gathered uh, five sea bags worth of stuff, my backpack and uh, myself <laughs> on, a, on uh, three flights altogether. Uh, the first flight was from San Diego to LAX, the Los Angeles airport. And then from LAX to SeaTac, which is the Seattle Tacoma airport. And uh, I had to wait about five hours to get on the next flight from SeaTac to Yokota Air Force Base in Japan, which is about two, two and a half hours by car. Uh, from Yokosuka, so I had to wait for five hours and it was just terrible because I was exhausted from everything and uh, When I finally got on the flight, I was able to sleep a little bit. I don't really typically sleep on flights I just I, I catch little naps here and there, but you know, that's <laughs> it is what it is I guess I went on the flight from uh, SeaTac to Yokota that took about 12 hours I think altogether ish and uh, from there, we landed in Yokota. I got my quick little briefing on uh, stuff to worry about in Japan, you know, culturalisms and stuff like that. It was just really quick, bam, 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 kind of dealio. Then uh, hopped on a bus to Yokosuka with all my stuff and was just, you know, constantly looking outside the window of the bus, just looking at, at life in Japan, you know, just houses and people walking around and stores and trees and everything pretty much and it was just amazing because it was just the culmination of everything that I'd worked for up to that point was to come out to Japan and I didn't think it was going to happen just because you know I didn't have a college degree and that's one of the main requirements to get a work visa in Japan if you're an American anyway uh, if you're not there's other ways you can get around it but for the most part you need a uh, four-year college degree. So um, I managed to find a little loophole out of that, I guess, by being stationed out there through the uh, US Navy, so military clause and all that kind of stuff, which afforded me a lot of uh, good opportunities that 
uh, your regular Joe Blow English teacher doesn't typically get, which is pretty nice. And uh, anyway, so I was on the bus ride from Yokota to Yokosuka, and that took about two, two and a half hours to get there. And then uh, I was greeted by somebody who was from my ship, from my division, actually. He, uh, <laughs> he has a very thick French accent, and it was kind of like, I, I wasn't quite sure if he was French or if he was uh, like Russian or something like that. I couldn't quite place the accent at the time, but it turns out he was from uh, Belgium. So you know, he spoke French and stuff like that. So he, his accent was very thick and I couldn't really understand him. And I thought it was just like tired and like, what's just going on, dude? <laughs> so like we had some McDonald's because it was a long flight and I hadn't eaten anything. And then took all my stuff over to the ship so I could uh, check in, unpack all my bags, uh, put them in my rack, which was uh, where you sleep on a ship. It's basically just like a bed and then a storage compartment underneath the bed. Then you have like a, a little tiny, uh, like a little stand-up locker, not a full stand-up, but like a half stand-up basically. So you can put extra things in there as well. So I began the process of unpacking everything and stuff like that. My LPO, which is basically like a, a manager for non-Navy people, said, you know, hey, you know, welcome aboard, all that kind of stuff. Um, quarters, which is our daily morning meetings, will be, uh, you know, 0730, make sure you're dressing you from the day, all that kind of stuff. You know, Liberty expires 07, so which means you have to be on board by seven o'clock in the morning. And since I didn't have an apartment or anything like that at the time, I was pretty much living on the ship. So, <laughs> um, once I got done unpacking and everything like that, um, I took a couple hour nap because, you know, they didn't have any work for me that day. They just, you know, as long as I checked in and had all my stuff issued and everything, you know, they're fine. So I didn't start working until the next day. And so in the meantime, um, after I got done unpacking everything and took like a couple hour nap, woke up, got dressed in civilian attire, and uh, left the ship, went out into town, into Yokosuka, and uh, just explored the area. You know, there's a lot to do if uh, you've ever visited uh, Yokosuka, a lot to see. And uh, I was just taken aback by everything. And uh, I had studied a little bit of Japanese before coming over, just so that way I wouldn't be completely uh, like a fish out of water with uh, the whole thing. So I explored the uh, the local town went to uh, several places, most notably a ramen restaurant right across from base. And then I went to uh, Koko Ichibanya, which is a very famous uh, curry restaurant. It's a curry uh, restaurant chain out in Japan. And so uh, for the first week, I pretty much uh, did my normal duties on the ship, uh, got checked in and stuff like that and started uh, progressively uh, getting used to how things are done on uh, the last and stuff like that. And then I spent the, the first week pretty much uh, just checking in. So I didn't do like a whole lot of work. It was mostly just going to uh, different departments, getting signatures and stuff like that, and uh, checking in and all that fun stuff. Once the, uh, the weekend hit, which is only a, a couple days after I arrived, I think I arrived on like a Tuesday or Wednesday or something like that, so it didn't take very long. Um, I managed to uh, get my first PASMO card and uh, you can get them like custom made with your name on it and stuff like that, so it's pretty cool. And uh, hopped on a train out to Tokyo to see the sights and all that fun stuff. Uh, the whole idea was to just see a lot of uh, the same sights that uh, a lot of J vloggers that I watched over the years went to. You know, a lot of the the main touristy spots of Tokyo. You know, going to Akihabara and uh, stuff like that. Going to Tokyo Tower. And you know, just walking around Tokyo in general because you know, I was so new to Japan and that whole area, you know, because I just arrived. So, you know, it's kind of funny to think uh, how adventurous I was, especially, you know, those first couple weeks, couple months, even. And just, you know, how I would always uh, go out and explore. And like every. Every week I would think of something, okay, so uh, this weekend I'm gonna go to this place and then next week I'm gonna go to the next place and just like, like I had a rhythm and a flow going. It was really cool. I was out in Japan for about two years. In September of 2015, 
I uh, officially was honorably discharged from the U.S. Navy and from there uh, moved from Japan back to America here in uh, Portage, Michigan where uh, I'm going to school, going back to college uh, here at Western Michigan University. Um, studying computer information systems and uh, just moving on to the next chapter of my life. I am really grateful for my time in Japan. It was a blast. I got to meet so many amazing people and uh, just got to experience so much from living over there. And I would absolutely love to go back um, if given the opportunity. And I'm actually pursuing opportunities to do that, but uh, it's going to take some time So, because I just started school and all that. So it's going to take some time, but uh, I will be back <laughs> someday. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, my first week in Japan. And then my second week in Japan, um, I want to talk about it a little bit because it gets into uh, some funny stuff. Navy personnel that are new to the to Japan, basically, um, they had this program called AOBICR. And what that is, is it, it's basically an intercultural relationship thing. For one week, you go to this class in an auditorium and uh, you get to meet different uh, personnel, different members of the chain of command on base. You know, you get to meet, you know, the CEO of, ba of uh, the Yokosuka Naval Base and stuff like that, and you get to meet different people like the guy who runs the post office and stuff like that. And you get maps of the base and of the local Yokosuka area, you know, so you know where restaurants and uh, malls and stuff like that are. And uh, you're taught uh, certain uh, Japanese culturalisms and stuff like that. So that way you don't, you're not that, that guy. <laughs> you're not that gaijin, that foreigner that's, you know, not understanding what Japan's about and making a lot of uh, faux pas out there and you know making a bad example of yourself and of the foreigner community in general that's the whole idea behind the class and uh, a lot of the stuff I already knew was basic Japanese stuff whatever the cool thing was at the end of the class uh, the very last day you would go to uh, Kamakura which is a hot spot for a lot of like Japanese shrines and stuff like that. It's really cool. And then in a town over in Hase, you get to visit the Daibutsu or the Great Giant Buddha statue. And uh, it's just really cool and a really uh, definitely a must see if you're in the Kanagawa area, especially if you're near Yokosuka. Definitely go to see uh, the Daibutsu and Kamakura. And just Kamakura in general, it's uh, an amazing place. So we got to go there, got to eat ramen and all kinds of stuff, and it was just amazing. And uh, that was basically my first uh, two weeks in Japan. You got that little extra bonus there. Yeah, it was a little different from uh, your typical English teacher, jet person that comes over, but uh, I wouldn't change it for the world. And with that said, this is Andy san Sign up for now, thanking you guys, Poop, for tuning into this video and for watching my other stuff. And I also want to, again, thank uh, Busan Kevin, Jalen Kev, whatever you want to call him, Kevin O'Shea. I <laughs> uh, want to congratulate him on uh, 100 episodes of the Just Japan podcast, everything you want to know about Japan. I wish him uh, more success with the podcast. I can't wait to hear more episodes and stuff like that. And uh, I also want to thank uh, the rest of you guys for liking the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. And happy Leap Day 2016. Woo, yeah. So yeah, um, I just wanted to make this video to commemorate Leap Day 2016, February 29th. Um, it's a day that only comes around once every four years, so that's pretty amazing. Going back and looking at the stuff that I posted on previous Leap Days, I only have like uh, two other occasions that I've managed to post stuff from way back then. So it's kind of amazing and stuff like that. Like one of them was when I was looking to buy my theandysan.com website, the domain name for it. So that really took me back. <laughs>
about eight years to be exact. So it's pretty interesting and stuff like that. But anyway, um, in addition to celebrating uh, Leap Day 2016, I also wanted to make this video as a bit of an announcement uh, for you guys, just like a last minute announcement. So this is basically gonna be my last like uh, for real video on my Andy-san channel. And then I'm going to uh, be releasing everything on my The Andy-san channel. So the only other video that's gonna be released on my Andy-san channel from this point forward is gonna be like a little thank you redirect video that'll redirect you to my The Andy-san channel for newer stuff and stuff like that. It's kind of surreal thinking, uh, thinking about the whole thing and just, you know, what I've, you know, accomplished these past 10 years and the amount of people I've met, you know, both in real life and through YouTube, on YouTube, rather. And, you know, people have commented on my videos who, you know, aren't around anymore. So it's just kind of surreal to think about that and to think about, you know, how much YouTube has changed this past decade. It's, it's amazing. And yeah, it's not all been for the better, but you know, for the most part, it's, uh, it's pretty decent, I guess. But yeah, man, this is gonna be my uh, last video on my Andy-san channel. Um, subsequent uh, releases and stuff like that are gonna be on my The Andy-san channel. So if you haven't already subscribed, youtube.com slash The Andy-san, uh, I suggest you do, so that way you don't uh, miss any updates and stuff like that. Then uh, after I'm done making this video, I'm going to uh, resume work on my Draw My Life video, which is to commemorate uh, my 10 years on YouTube. I'm about halfway done, or actually more than halfway done, uh, with storyboarding, you know, lay laying out the script and stuff like that. And uh, once that's done, then I'm going to begin the actual recording process for those videos. And then I bought the dry erase board, all that kind of stuff uh, over the weekend. I'm hoping to get it out either by tomorrow or at the very latest, uh, Wednesday. So, and it'll be released on my The andy -san channel. So that way you guys don't uh, miss a thing. And uh, I'm also going to be uh, working on my uh, March 2016 update video, and which will again coincide with my 10 year anniversary on YouTube and uh, stuff like that. So, can't wait. To, uh, to get things going, um, I'm going to be uh, privatizing the uh, majority of my videos. Well, not necessarily privatizing, but unlisting is the correct word of all my videos on my Andy San channel. And uh, if you already have them embedded on websites or something like that, they'll still work, but uh, you won't be able to search for them on YouTube or Google or anything like that. So unless you have the exact URL, you know, or you have them embedded, on uh, other websites or something like that, you won't be able to access them. And that's basically just to give my upcoming re-releases of those videos a fighting chance in like the YouTube, Google search and stuff like that. And uh, I know you guys might be wondering like why are you releasing, re-releasing, I should say, all your old videos and stuff like that. And I decided to slowly re-release all the videos rather than just um, make like a big almost thousand video dump on the uh, the channel just because um, you the YouTube algorithm nowadays favors um, daily uploads anyway so it's uh, it's just easier for my channel to grow doing daily uploads and I'm still gonna be uh, doing regular uh, current content as well it's just the daily um, re-releases are gonna help uh, get things going in the search results and stuff like that. And uh, it's gonna also allow people who are just recently following my stuff to see a lot of the older videos that I've done as well. So it's just kind of a chance to refresh in old content and stuff like that. And uh, I'm also going to be re-releasing Andy Kate episodes as well on my The Andy San channel. So I'm going to be unlisting all the videos from my Andy Kate channel and gonna be releasing them on my uh, The Andy San channel. And then once those are done, then I'll begin uh, releasing new episodes. I'm actually, I actually already recorded uh, about a week's worth of stuff for that. 
and I bought a couple games over uh, the weekend, so I can't wait to start recording those. But uh, yeah, so as you can see, I got a lot of uh, stuff I got to take care of. But I just wanted to give you guys this little update video to let you guys know what's going to be going on, and that um, I'm not going to be making any more videos for this channel. So. <laughs> So uh, be sure to subscribe to youtube.com slash theandysan for your Andysan fix, or the Andysan fix rather. And uh, with that said, this is the Andysan. Sign out for now. Thanking you guys, Poop, for tuning in to my channel these past 10 years and uh, all that kind of stuff and giving me a chance to, you know, connect with the world, connect with people, stuff like that from different places that I didn't even know existed. So it's just, it's been an honor and a privilege to uh, present uh, YouTube videos and stuff like that for you guys this past decade. And I uh, also wanna thank you guys for liking the thumbs or the stars for you old school YouTubers. Uh, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time on my The Andy San channel. <laughs> Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, coming at you with my March 2016 update video for, you guessed it, March 2016. Woo. So yeah, in addition to this being my monthly update video for March of 2016. It's also my 10 year YouTube anniversary video. Woo, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands, but anyway. So um, I've been really looking forward to this video and uh, I got a lot of uh, changes and stuff like that in store for not only this month, but for this year as well. So um, I think the major change is also going to be in the format of these uh, monthly update videos. So how I normally do these videos is I go over youtube -y stuff as well as personal life stuff. That's kind of the catchphrase, I guess, of these videos. Once I hit my 10 year anniversary mark, I had to really uh, sit down and think about uh, where I want this channel to go, where I want myself to go as a YouTuber. You know, I've been doing this for a decade now, officially. I really gotta start making some changes if I want to uh, continue to grow as a channel and to, you know, feel good about making videos on the YouTubes or elsewhere. Never know. <laughs> Never know where the future might lead, but in any event, uh, some of the changes that I've made uh, is two main ones. Uh, at the time of this recording, and uh, one of them is quitting Facebook. Um, I still have my Facebook fan page, so I still check that from time to time. Um, I don't check it as much as, nearly as much as I used to. Um, I've kind of uh, parted down to just checking it uh, once a week, you know, check messages and stuff like that. And uh, as far as my personal fa Facebook, I've decided to quit that entirely because it was just taking up too much of my time Time that could have been spent, you know, either doing homework <laughs> or uh, making more videos, working on more videos, um, just working on the setup and the general gist of the videos and stuff like that. Basically, it was just taking up too much of my time. I was worry, worrying too much about uh, my public image and stuff like that on Facebook, on my personal Facebook. And the thing is, I wouldn't get anything in return from investing so much time into that platform because it was just my personal Facebook, you know, <laughs> the only people who'd see it are my friends. It just got to a point where um, one of the things I've been struggling with ever since I got out of the Navy several months ago is uh, trying to project an okay life or, you know, project a life where I'm living the dream, you know, going back to college and living in Michigan with nature and snow and all that stuff. You know, when I was in Japan, you know, it was pretty easy to, you know, feel good about myself and feel good about my life, you know, just shoot a couple pictures of the ocean from my balcony and, you know, shoot a couple little Japan pictures from around the way and stuff like that. And, you know, there you go, call it a day. But since moving back to the States, I just, you know, I've been having a rough time trying to figure out um, basically who I am now. And, uh, just where I fit in into the whole thing, you know, and 
it just felt like I was living a boring life, you know, compared to my previous life as a member of the U.S. Navy. And uh, I just felt, felt like I couldn't keep up with it anymore. I couldn't keep projecting this, you know, oh, I'm living this awesome life and going back to college. Everything is awesome. And man, I wish you could live my life. And that's just kind of what Facebook does. It, you know, kind of forces us to project this life that we really aren't living. And uh, it just got to a point for me where I just, I couldn't take it anymore. You know, everything was pissing me off, quite frankly, especially the whole Super Tuesday thing. But yeah, I don't want to get into politics. That was just one of the things that pissed me off that particular day. And just the fact that you know, my friend base would latch on more towards negativity than they would positivity. Because so I would put out a negative post and it would get way more uh, reactions. I can't really call them likes anymore. You know, and then a shit ton more comments and all that kind of stuff. Whereas if I would put up a positive post, it may get like a couple likes and maybe like a well said, Andy. You know, just a basic attaboy. And that's it. So I just decided, you know what, yeah, the platform is just too toxic for me. I can't deal with it anymore. I can't, I just, I can't deal. <laughs> so I decided to give it up, you know, whether or not I decide to come back eventually, I don't know. But uh, at the time it's recording, I don't have any plans of coming back to my personal Facebook. Um, like I said, I'll still uh, manage my uh, Facebook fan page. So that's facebook.com slash the official. Um, links and stuff are in the description below in the boopity boops. So if you want to check that out. And uh, I'm also on Twitter. So twitter.com slash theandysan. Again, links below in the description. Twitter's kind of a funny thing, man, where it's actually a lot easier to interact with people because they tend to respond faster. And the conversations have been generally better. So um, I think I'll stick around with it a little bit. I still have to... Uh, do some spring cleaning on my follow list, if you know what I'm saying. So, um, yeah. And again, that also gets into another thing of what I'm going to be doing differently, you know, moving forward with YouTube as well as life, pretty much. And that's doing some spring cleaning on my uh, subscription box, or my subscription, who I'm subscribed to. A lot of things, you know, are going to be changing. I'm going to be getting rid of a lot of uh, J vloggers, mostly. And, you know, if you guys are watching this video in particular, it's nothing against you. I don't hate you or anything like that. It's just you remind me too much of my previous life. You remind me too much of why I should have stayed in Japan, why I miss Japan and stuff like that. And I just I can't look at that stuff anymore. You know, it just, it reminds me too much of my previous life and it, I can't move on, you know, if I continue to watch those videos and be like, man, I wish I was back in Japan. I wish I could go to those places in Tokyo or wherever. And, you know, but I'm stuck here in Michigan. So, you know, it just, <laughs> I'm going to have to be doing some uh, spring cleaning very soon. So, um, again, you know. Don't take offense to it. It's nothing against you. It's it's not you, it's me. So um, don't take it personally. But I will follow a couple of my JVlog friends just to kind of keep on the up and up with what they're up to. But you know, so don't feel uh, offended, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, uh, one of the other things I'm gonna be doing uh, with moving forward with uh, YouTube and life is I'm gonna be more, a man of action rather than a man of talking because I've noticed that you know with especially with these update videos and that's kind of the point of the update videos is to let you guys know what's going to be going on uh, with like YouTube releases and basically discuss what's going on in my personal life a little bit not too much but you know just enough to let you guys know what's going on just to check in as it were it's just I noticed that I've been you know when it comes to the YouTube stuff I've been doing more talking than actually doing. And when I am actually doing it, you know, I'm not satisfied with the product. I'm not satisfied with what I'm putting out there. I'm going to make it a rule for um, these update videos, you know, whether it's the monthly update videos or 
a separate little mini update or whatever that I'm not going to announce any projects, you know, not only in the update videos, but also like on Twitter and stuff like that. I'm not going to announce anything until it's at least 80% complete. Like the whole thing, 80% complete. Not like, well, I'm about 80% done with the writing and I kind of have about 80% of what I generally want to do done. No, like the whole thing, 80% done, at least. You know, it's, it, I think it's a disservice to you guys if I were to kind of hype up this project and it either doesn't happen or it happens, you know, way past schedule. And, you know, when it does come out, it's not uh, to my liking. I'll still do, you know, my announcements and stuff like that if I have a project at least 80% done. Um, with releasing stuff, my release schedule. Um, uh, starting next week, so I believe that is the second week of March. I forget the day. Um, just look it up in the calendar. <laughs> so basically starting next week, I'm going to be starting my um, archive, archival re-upload schedule and stuff like that. So the basic concept is that I'm going to be releasing an old Andy san video from my previous channel. And that's going to be going up around, um, I'll say like 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. After that, it'll be about an hour, I'd say like two hours after that, so like 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Then I'm going to be releasing an episode of Andy Cade. And uh, the idea is I'm going to be releasing old episodes of Andy Cade until I can get up to current with uh, the newer episodes of Andy Cade. And then once I've done with the Andy Cade episodes, then I'm going to start releasing newer episodes, and I'm going to be paring down my schedule from one episode of Andy Cade every day to uh, one episode of Andy Cade uh, Monday through Friday. So there's going to be no weekend episodes, just going to be five episodes a week. So that way um, I can divide the week into more even uh, chunks rather than like 7, 14, and so on and so forth. So, and plus, like, you know, the weekend episodes never really did that well anyway. So, um, in place of what would normally be an Andy Kate episode for the weekends, I'll just upload an extra um, archival episode from my Andy San channel over the weekend. So, you'll still get the two episodes. It's just um, for the weekends, those two episodes are going to be uh, previous uh, Andy San re uploads. And then um, <laughs> I have so much. Uh, so many videos from that channel that it's going to take me some time to, you know, get everything all uploaded. So um, you won't worry, you don't have to worry too much about um, me not having enough video content out there. And then as far as the newer stuff, once, you know, I start making some newer stuff, um, then I'm going to be filtering that in as well. And uh, if you know, I start releasing new stuff. Um, I'm not sure exactly, you know, like what this, when the set time would be because again, it depends on what the project is and stuff like that. But again, follow me on Twitter if you guys want uh, like an update time and stuff like that. So I'll release, you know, the time and date once the video is uploaded to YouTube. So that way you guys can uh, know what time to tune in so <laughs> and also be sure to subscribe to this channel as well so that way you guys can get a little um, email sent to your uh, inbox so that way you know exactly what time the video is going to be uh, submitted and stuff like that all right so that kind of rant is over so that's enough for the youtube -y slash personal life stuff let's get into personal life stuff so um, I kind of touched on some uh, personal life stuff uh, previously, but I think we'll get into it a bit more. Um, as far as the job hunt and stuff like that goes, um, still looking for a job, <laughs> just a just a part-time gig. I'm not looking for anything too serious. But uh, yeah, so um, I did get a job offer at a certain department store, which I'm not gonna name because I don't know if they're watching. <laughs> but um, I did get the gig, but I just, I had a bad feeling about it. Like, I I know this is kind of lame to say because it's like, well, Andy, you're looking for a job. You know, beggars can't be choosers, right? But uh, I, I just, I got a real bad feeling about it. And uh, I didn't want to go into a job only to be stuck in that job and feel like, you know, I was a slave to it and stuff like that. Because I've been to those types of jobs before. 
and it's not fun, you know. And it just, you know, I wasn't super thrilled about it to begin with. So it was just, you know, one of those things. But um, I have applied to several other positions in the local area. So um, hopefully, you know, I'll be getting some callbacks from them very soon. Um, it's, <laughs> and I've talked about this before on a, a previous update video, but uh, it's a lot more, the environment's so much more different now than it was back then, you know, because back then, you know, you'd go into a place, fill out an application, submit it, you know, wait for a week for it to process. And then, you know, start calling them back, you know, hey, I'm so-and-so, I'm just checking out my application, are you guys still hiring, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, you could also go into the store or the office or wherever you're planning on working and, you know, develop a rapport with the manager or just the people there in general so they know who you are. And, you know, if you keep on coming there on a consistent basis, you know, they're either going to tell you, like, no, dude, we don't want you here. Or they'll be like, you know, hey, let's schedule an interview. This guy keeps on coming in. He seems to be pretty all right. You know, let's at least give him an interview. And then from the interview, you get the gig or you don't. So, you know, at least, you know, you get that. So, um, again, I've been continuing to apply for um, all kinds of jobs and stuff like that. Um, hoping to hear back from somebody this month and stuff like that. So... It is what it is. I gotta live a little bit lean lately, you know, because uh, money's kind of tight right now. So, yeah. <laughs> Might have to sell a couple things just to make ends meet, pretty much. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. But in addition to that, and quitting Facebook, which was a major thing that I did this month, and I'm honestly so glad that I did. You know, just because it was such, it weighed so much on my mind to, you know, have to constantly project this, this false life, this, you know, I'm okay, guys, really, I'm doing okay. And, you know, in reality, I'm not. I wasn't then and I'm not now. I'm not doing okay. You know, we all have our, our good days and we have our bad days. Today is, an, is a good day for me, thankfully, you know, but it's not always a good day. And it's hard to project this false image of yourself of it always being a good day. And uh, to project this image of, hey, look at my life. Look at how awesome my life is. I get to go to college and all this kind of cool stuff. And I know it's first world problems, but, you know, it just it is what it is. And it's just been stressing me out unnecessarily. And it's also been consuming a lot of my time. So it's been taking time away from uh, when I could be doing homework, uh, when I could be working on more videos, and you know, looking for more jobs, <laughs> you know, making that coin, because you know, it is what it is. So yeah, so you know, for my Facebook friends that may or may not be watching this video, it's nothing against you guys. I don't hate you guys. I just, I can't deal with it anymore. You know, I gotta do me. And uh, I'm still on my Facebook fan page, so if you guys want to uh, follow that, I still uh, manage that. But as far as my personal Facebook account, I don't even bother with it anymore. So, yeah. But as far as school goes, um, doing fairly well. Uh, still having some trouble in uh, accounting and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I am improving somewhat in economics, doing really good in Japanese course. In sociology, I'm also doing very good as well. I could be doing better, but again, you know, it's okay. <laughs> I'm satisfied with where I'm at in Soch. And uh, again, it also helps me to think of uh, new things to talk about on YouTube and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. Now uh, we're going to get into the last little bit of this uh, update video here, and that's talking about uh, the 10 year anniversary of me uh, being on YouTube, my 10 year, my 10 year YouTube anniversary. So um, I started my original account, my Andy Son account was started on March 1st of 2006. And uh, it's March of 2016 now. So 
Um, I've seen the site uh, grow in so many different ways. I've seen a lot of YouTubers come and go, and uh, it's been a lot of fun overall. There have been some uh, some bad times, you know, when uh, YouTubers pass away, which does happen and has happened. And, you know, it's also, you know, it's also sad to see some YouTubers, you know, give it up entirely. You know, they quit YouTube. And, you know, it's sad to see those people go as well because, you know, YouTube is a lot a lot more different than like, you know, a TV show or something like that. It's, you know, it's an actual person on the other side of the screen, you know, making videos. It's not a big production for the most part, you know. Nowadays, you know, some YouTube channels make stuff that actually looks like it could be seen on TV, but, you know, for the most part, for the the OGs like myself, um, it's just uh, just a dude, the wall in the background, camera, microphone, some lights, go. <laughs> so that's pretty much uh, all I got working for me right now. Um, but yeah, it's uh, been kind of sad to see some of them uh, original YouTubers that I looked up to uh, leave the platform for whatever reason. And uh, I've seen that happen uh, a lot in the J Vlogger community, which is the community I've been following the most over this past decade. And, uh, you know, it, it's a common occurrence where a lot of, you know, people start up a YouTube channel to dedicate towards their life in Japan. And then when that life in Japan is over with and they move back to their home country, wherever that may be, um, they think that their life isn't exciting anymore and it's not fun. And so they just shut off their channel. You know, sometimes without warning, other times, you know, they put out a big video of, hey, I moved back home or I moved to this other country or whatever. And I'm not going to be doing YouTube anymore, so bye. <laughs> and that's it. And, you know, I feel like, I mean... It's their reason for quitting the platform, you know, I can't really fault them too much, but, you know, in some some respects, it's kind of hard to deal with some of that because, you know, you feel like you've developed this relationship with this person, you know, whether it's just living vicariously through them, you know, and then all of a sudden one day they're like, well, I'm not going to do this anymore, so bye. And uh, it can be disheartening at times, but, you know along with YouTubers leaving, there's also new YouTubers that are, you know, coming up in the platform. And they're taking the, uh, they're taking YouTube to a whole new level, you know, with production value and, you know, better editing and stuff like that. And um, when I first started out on YouTube, um, before I even got a camera or any of that other stuff, um, I was primarily a, comment, uh, a commenter. You know, I just leave comments in you know videos that I would follow, uh, video makers I would follow, you know videos I liked, stuff like that. So um, a lot of the videos that I followed um, early on back in the day, uh, let's see, you had like Tobuscus, uh, you had SXE Phil, Renetto. Um, I didn't follow Give Me a Break Man, Give Me a Flake Man. I didn't follow Victor for a while, just because during that period he was mostly focused on like 4chan level drama and that just you know he had uh he was kind of persona non grata at that point so i just kind of stayed away but once he started uh reformatting his channel then i started following him and he's actually a really cool guy in person you know in real life so you know hey <laughs> so um so i followed those people uh charles trippy he was one of my early people that i followed um Jeez, so many. <laughs> and of course, again, some of the original wave of J vloggers that I followed, you know, Tokyo Kuni being the first, pretty much, that I followed on a regular basis. There were others, but for the most part, they just made like one off videos and that was it. You know, I remember watching this one guy's video back uh, on Google Video before Google bought out YouTube. Uh, Google had its own video platform, and one of the cool things about it was that you could upload stuff longer than uh, 10, 15 minutes. I think it was 10 minutes at the beginning and then they went to 15, but yeah, so it was really cool. You could see these really long videos before YouTube you know, got rid of the time limit and uh, stuff like that. And so I'd watch this one guy 
who was teaching English over in Oita in Japan. Um, I don't know exactly where that is, you know, Google's your friend, but uh, he made two videos that were about 20, 30 some odd minutes long, basically showing, it's like a day in the life type video, pretty much. And uh, it would just show him like what he would eat for breakfast, um, how he would heat the water in his bathtub for like a shower or something like that. Um, he gave like a short little clip of him teaching English because he taught English to adults. So he was basically just like an English tutor, I guess. So he didn't, he didn't like teach in a classroom or anything like that. He taught, it was, I guess like kind of like an Akaiwa, I guess. But Akaiwas are, are taught in like established buildings. He went to this person's house to this uh, lady's house and then her and a, a couple of, you know, his other clients, you know, students uh, were there. So he was teaching English to them. So I'm not sure exactly how he would classify that, but it's that. So he showed like little clips of him, you know, showing flashcards and like, you know, saying English phrases and then they would have to repeat back what the phrase is and you know, stuff like that. And I just found it really interesting. And so I looked, you know, because he only did the two videos, I was looking for other people who also uh, did Japan videos as well. And I came across uh, Kevin Cooney, also known as Tokyo Cooney at the time. And, you know, he was one of the first uh, J vloggers to make videos about Japan on a fairly consistent basis. You know, he would just do like a weekly upload. But um, in addition to maintaining a consistent schedule, he also had... Um, had a sense of quality because he was in the uh, the television production business. So he was working for, I believe, Fuji TV or TV Tokyo or something like that at the time. Uh, it's it's been a while, so um, but I believe he's working for one of the big um, TV places out in Tokyo, and so he um, had, I guess, just a, a sense like an eye for uh, TV production. So. Uh, his videos, even today, even, even watching some of his videos today, it's just like, wow, you know, because he uses a lot of the same stuff that a lot of new YouTubers are using, you know, a lot of B-roll and, you know, certain angles and cuts and stuff like that. And I mean, yeah, the majority of his videos are in standard definition. They're not in super crisp, high definition, and some of the audio is a little mm, at times. But, you know, considering that these videos were released in like, uh, 2006, 2007, 2008, that period of time, you know, it was really cool, <laughs> you know, for a YouTuber to take, you know, TV production skills and move it onto the YouTube platform, which at that time was relatively unheard of. You know, it was mostly just people with their webcams in their dimly lit rooms or the basements or whatever, like, hey, YouTube, what's going on? You know, just doing stuff like that. And uh, with him, he took it, you know, a step further with production quality. And, you know, he's a funny guy, very informative as well. So um, that's why his videos did as well as they did. And, of course, um, another one of my uh, original J-vloggers I followed back in the day was uh, the late, great Roger Swan, who was actually from this area, from the Michigan area. He used to live in uh, Battle Creek, which is uh, a couple towns over, and he actually went to Western Michigan. So he was one of my inspirations, you know, for doing YouTube as well as coming out to this area to go to go back to college and stuff, you know, learn Japanese and hopefully get back to Japan someday. And he kind of uh, followed the Tokyo Kuni uh, school of video production. His videos weren't quite as um, clear cut as Cooney's. You know, they weren't quite as nice production wise, but uh, where he uh, lacked in that, he uh, he made up for more for uh, just, uh, <laughs> it's gonna sound weird, but like intimacy or just like a, a, a greater connection between the, you know, the video maker and the video watcher. You know, he had more of an intimate connection with his fan base. And that's something I really liked. You know, it was, you know, just an actual guy. It wasn't just him showing clips of Tokyo and be like, yeah, see you next time. Blah, blah. <laughs> you know, and, you know, it wasn't him putting on a persona. It was, it was him, you know, living his life in Tokyo as a, uh, as a, uh, 
foreign exchange student, and then later in Iwate as a teacher as part of the JET program, where he sadly passed away from acute pancreatitis. So, you know, it is what it is, you know, such is life. But uh, those were my very early uh, YouTube uh, influences. And so by the time I did actually get a camera, you know, I bought one. I bought my very first camera that I used for YouTube was um, not counting like a webcam or something like that. But um, my very, very early videos on YouTube were from my friend Eric, also known as the Talking Vidalkin. I borrowed his camera back when I was in college at Urbana University. And... Uh, at the time, you know, he had such a small memory card, um, he could only record like maybe up to a minute of a video at a time. So I would have to make like these really quick clips. And then once it would reach that minute limit, then I would transfer it over to my computer, put the card back into the camera, resume recording, and it was just this big thing that took forever to do. And I only managed to get like, uh, a couple videos out of it, you know, it was me playing piano at uh, one of the dorm rooms or dorm dormitories, I should say. Um, they had like a little electric piano in the corner that you could practice on and stuff like that. And I, you know, in between classes, I would often go there and, you know, because they had like a little headphone slot so you wouldn't disturb people. So I just practice stuff just for shits and giggles, you know, just if there was a song that I wanted to learn, I would kind of figure out some of the musical notation and just kind of, you know, hash it out or whatever and attempt to learn it, you know, even though looking back at that video, you know, people who are legit pianists or better than I am at least, um, you know, they can see, oh, your form is all wrong. It's all weird. You know, it's just, it is what it is. But um, my early YouTube videos were of my friend Eric recording me playing piano and then me recording him playing piano because I basically taught him a little bit of what I did and he was trying to figure it out and you know it was a little mixed results as it were and we were both you know drunk off our ass off of Sparks which was a then alcoholic energy drink but uh, due to you know some things that went on back in the day uh, they decided to get rid of the energy drink components so it's just an alcoholic drink and I don't even know if it's around anymore I haven't seen it in stores or anything like that. It's it's basically like another version of Four Loco, essentially. So, yeah, <laughs> that was our drink of choice back in the day. So, um, in addition to that, um, another one of my early videos was me on uh, a very cheap webcam that I got from Walmart for like 20 bucks, and it was it was just garbage, pretty much. So, so my first camera. Um, my first like legit camera was a Sanyo Zac D CG6, which is basically like one of those little pistol grip type cameras that were really popular back in the day. And uh, I got that in, 2000, in uh, September of 2008. And um, once I got my own camera, that's when I started uh, making videos on a more uh, consistent basis. Because before then, um, like I said, I was just borrowing my friend's camera and uh, just <laughs> had a bunch of other setups, but they weren't quite as good as this one, at least at the time. So, um, and from there, um, I went, joined the Navy, and uh, once I got a steady paycheck, I was able to afford uh, better equipment. And at the time, uh, YouTube was just uh, rolling into the uh, HD uh, format, so you could upload uh, videos at 1080p which was pretty exciting at the time because, you know, the quality jump was just massive. And I wanted to get gear that uh, reflected that. So I went out and bought another Sanyo camera. Um, this was the SH-1, I think is what it was. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was the SH-1. But it was my first uh, HD camera. From there, I also started using uh, my first smartphone's camera, the Droid 2 Global Edition. Um, I started doing more uh, mobile videos, which um, at the time I could only use so much data, so I had to down convert them to like a ridiculously low bit rate, so the quality wasn't quite there. But um, they did allow me to uh, focus more on my presentation and allowed me to get my thoughts out quicker through the mobile vlog, so it would be less jump cutty and stuff like that. From there, I eventually upgraded phones and was able to do 
um, better quality uh, mobile videos and stuff like that. And then moved out to Japan and I uh, was able to do all those great videos out there as well with my Sony camcorder, which had a uh, built-in uh, stabilization. And uh, I still have the camera, by the way. And then I eventually upgraded to the camera I'm using right now, the Sony Alpha 5100, but it's a DSLR, or a, like a mirrorless DSLR, I guess you could say. Uh, one of the advantages of the camera is the clarity. I mean, <laughs> obviously. And, uh, but one of the disadvantages is that um, it tends to overheat really quickly when you're recording video. So I can only record uh, little small chunks at a time, usually about 10, maybe 15 minutes if I push it, you know, at a time. And then you gotta let it cool, and then once it's cooled down, then you can, you know, start recording again. But uh, my setup has changed so much over the years, and uh, I'm really happy with where it is right now. But I'm always looking uh, forward, I'm always looking towards, you know, future upgrades. But uh, as it stands now, I'm pretty uh, satisfied with the setup. Where do I see uh, my channel and stuff like that in the next 10 years? Um, you know, I, I see a lot of a lot of growth. Um, I'm going to be uh, taking uh, my uh, video release schedule a lot more seriously now versus then. Um, not that I didn't take it seriously then, but um, due to uh, Navy life and you know all that that entails, um, it was hard for me to stick to a consistent schedule, especially with uh, surprise underways and workups and all that kind of stuff. But now that I don't have to worry about that, and you know, once I get a job, I can have a more set schedule. And you know, college is pretty set in stone as it stands now. You know, it's it's a lot easier for me to work out a, a more set more solid schedule now, which is really important to the YouTube algorithm because, you know, before, if you uploaded a video like, you know, once a week or whatever, you know, you're fine, you're golden. But now it's like you gotta upload a video every day because if you don't upload a video every day, then you might as well be dead, you know, according to YouTube. You know, it's like you abandon your channel, oh my God. <laughs> So, um, again, that's one of the other reasons why I'm re-uploading, you know, all the videos from my Andy-san channel on a daily basis rather than just doing like a big massive dump is to kind of get the ball rolling, you know, analytics wise. And also, you know, like I said in previous videos, it's also a chance for uh, newer viewers to see a lot of my older stuff as well. And uh, I'll be sure to label you know, the old stuff as like a re-upload or something like that. So, you know, you guys don't get confused wondering why I'm re-releasing an update from like 2013 or something like that. Like, what? <laughs> so, there you go. And uh, I see my camera battery is getting pretty low. So, uh, I think we'll end things here. Um, once again, thank you guys so much for sticking with me this past decade, you know, on YouTube. And uh, there's plenty more to come. I can't wait to get uh, new videos and stuff like that out for you guys. And with that said, this is the Andy Son. Sign for now. Thanking you guys one more time <laughs> for uh, tuning into this video and for watching my other stuff. Also, want to thank you guys for liking the thumbs or the stars for you old school YouTubers out there. Uh, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, coming at you with a video response to Grace of the Texan in Tokyo channel. Um, but before I get into the response and stuff like that, um, I want to uh, congratulate Grace and her husband, Ryosuke, on an extremely successful uh, Kickstarter campaign. Um, she raised, I think, well over a thousand percent of her um, original asking price for uh, doing her next uh, comic book, which I also contributed to the Kickstarter as well. So she'll be getting that very soon. And uh, I also got to get to uh, doing more book reviews of hers. So those will be coming soon. But uh, I want to congratulate them both on an extremely successful uh, Kickstarter campaign. And uh, if you guys haven't donated to that, um, I'm sure there's going to be extra copies left over. So 
don't worry. <laughs> Just be sure to hit Grace up for, uh, for more info on that. But uh, anyway, I'm making this video to uh, kind of talk about something that she posted recently and that was on creating art when you're happy. And I kind of see this as a trend for artists and I've experienced it before as well. And it's just kind of the, the feeling that you're not as creatively strong, I guess is one way to put it, when you're in a good place in life. Because a lot of creativity and art comes from struggle and pain and depression and a lot of uh, negative emotions and it's kind of a coping mechanism in a way to uh, get over those negative emotions you know not being good enough for such and such thing or you know just being depressed about life and not knowing if you're gonna have enough money to eat the next day and stuff like that um, she kind of feels that, you know, while she's extremely, th you know, thankful for all of her recent success and stuff like that with, you know, her YouTube channel, as well as her blog and her books and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's generating a good amount of income and she's very happy with that. On the other hand, um, that happiness is kind of hampering her creativity because it's you know, kind of sapping her drive, I guess, for creativity. And she's kind of, you know, running low on topic ideas as far as like Japan and stuff like that goes. And it happens, you know, a lot of artists run uh, across uh, different roadblocks, different writer's blocks, things like that. I've gone through so many of them over the years, not only doing YouTube, but also doing blogs and all that kind of stuff. And granted, I was never as successful with Grace, so I don't know all the extra external press pressure she must be feeling uh, involving that, but um, I can only speak from my own experiences. So from what I've experienced, it's, uh, it's tough, but you do um, overcome it. It's just another obstacle to overcome, really. And, you know, there is no one true way to get over it. You know, what works for me may not work for you, and what works for, you know, you may not work for me. But um, one of the things that I did to get over my uh, writer's block, or just my creative block, as it were, because it's not, you know, specifically towards writing or making videos, it's just an overall creative slump. There, there you go, that's the word. <laughs> so what I did to get over a creative slump, um, number one, I got out of the house. I got out of my apartment or wherever, wherever I was at. And before I joined the Navy, I was living in the Midwest in Ohio and now I'm in Michigan, so it's even worse because of the weather. And because of the coldness through most of the months, um, it was difficult for me to get out of the house because you know, I didn't want to trudge around in snow or be cold all the time. But now that it's starting to warm up a little bit, um, I'm going to be focusing more on uh, doing long walks outside and, you know, maybe uh, get my bike working again, get the uh, wheel and all that stuff put back together and stuff like that so I can go on longer bike rides. And that was another thing that I did. Uh, before I joined the Navy in order to lose some weight. And that's another thing I want to do to lose this damn weight. <laughs> so, but in any event, um, doing, it doesn't have to be like super duper intense exercise. You don't have to like kill yourself doing cardio, but just something that gets you out of, out of the house, out of your comfort zone, which kind of leads into that. Do something that is different because if you keep on doing the same old thing and expect different results, it's insanity, some people say. But uh, what I did was I went on uh, long bike rides just to kind of um, get my mind off of things, helped clear my mind, um, managed to lose some weight, so that was cool. And uh, I got to see a bunch of cool things and uh, it helped me with uh, photography ideas as well. And it also, you know, Initially, it led me into photography, actually, because, you know, I was getting kind of bored with the whole YouTube thing, and blogging didn't really interest me all that much anymore either. So when Instagram came out, I was initially skeptical of the platform because it's like, 
I mean, I can upload pictures to Facebook and Twitter had its own thing. I'm just like, it just seemed like another program for the kids, you know, just like, oh, look at me, selfie, me, me, me. Because that's, you know, part of the selfie generation. It's all about me, my selfie, ha ha ha. And stuff like that. And I was just like, eh, I didn't really get into it too much. But then I started following uh, some photography Instagram accounts and uh, seeing all kinds of really cool things that you can do with Instagram, you know, taking pictures of nature and stuff like that. And my Instagram account uh, really blossomed when I went out to uh, Japan. Although I did a lot of Instagramming before then, but that's when it really kicked off and that's when I really got into it. Now, nowadays, you know, because I'm not around nature as much being in the city, um, it's a bit more difficult to uh, to get good Instagram pictures, at least, you know, for what I do. So I don't do it as much, but, you know, I usually post a lot of throwback pictures and stuff like that just to do something. But, um, anyway, the whole gist of this is to get out of your comfort zone, do something different, you know, get outside, breathe some fresh air, you know, that's... One of the best things that, you know, happened for me, you know, helped me lose some weight and it also um, got my creative spark going again. And uh, also uh, changing up the video formats, you know, doing new series and, you know, talking more about my life and stuff like that also really helped in, you know, just coming up with new ideas for a series for that as well as, you know, what I was also working on. It just, you know, helped spark a new wave of creativity for me. Yeah, one of the things that came out of that was NFAX, actually. The Andy Japandi series didn't really come out of that because I've been wanting to do that series pretty much ever since I started YouTube. Um, it didn't, <laughs> I didn't have the name Andy Japandi at that time, but it, that didn't come until much later. I just took a lot of new things in my life put them together for my YouTube channel and just kind of embraced the change, you know? And that's something that I'm gonna be working on now. I mean, yes, I'm not in Japan. Yes, I'm not in the Navy. So I, you know, can't really talk too much about those. I can only talk about them from past experiences, which, you know, I'm more than willing to do. But again, it's in the past, my experience is limited now to two years of uh, Japan time and five years of Navy time. So it was, you know, it's it's no longer, uh, since I'm in Japan, this is how this is. And since I'm in the Navy, this is how this is. It's more a case of when I was in Japan or when I was in the Navy. So it's nothing really too helpful moving forward. But uh, on the other hand, now you can be a uh, source of experience and you can help out uh, people who are thinking about going to Japan or uh, are thinking about joining the Navy or something like that. And that's something I'm gonna be doing with my new uh, Life After Navy series, where I talk about uh, my life as a recently separated veteran. So I'm gonna be talking about like the separation process, uh, what that all entailed, um, getting stuff rolling with your post 9-11 GI Bill benefits, and you know, hopefully getting on some veteran guests so that way, uh, you know, we can uh, just talk because, it, you know, it's not just about me it, as because I only have one perspective. So it'd be nice to get uh, multiple perspectives as well. So that's going to be something, you know, just a small little plug for a, uh, a future video series. Basically, just to sum it up, um, just get out of your comfort zone. Try something new. Try something different. Uh, collaborate with uh, YouTubers, you know, since she's, I mean, she's not in Tokyo anymore, despite the name, <laughs> Texan in Tokyo, but uh, she's close enough to Tokyo to where she can get on a train and bam, Tokyo. So, but the point of this is, is that, you know, there are a lot more YouTubers, you know, in the Tokyo area than there are in Michigan not even like the Kalamazoo area, just Michigan in general. So there's a lot more chances for collaborations and stuff like that. So that's another thing I would highly suggest 
you do. And even if, you know, no videos come of the collaborations, it's always good to kind of touch base with other YouTubers and kind of see how they do things. Because, you know, I learned so much from looking at a lot of uh, behind the scenes videos from uh, not only people I've met in person and are friends with, like, you know, in real life friends with, rather than just, you know, YouTube friends. Um, I also benefited a lot from watching uh, the pro YouTubers and a lot of their behind the scenes and like what equipment they use, um, how they edit and put, you know, put together footage, how they edit the audio. Um, a lot of, you know, my more recent uh, video editing stuff is derived from uh, me wanting to learn how to do Let's Plays. So I was, I was like looking to change up what I was doing because, you know, the Andy Japandi series, well, you know, I was getting kind of um, bored with it for a while. So I was like, eh, I want to do something different. I want to do something different. You know, there's only so many places in Tokyo I can go to, you know, before I get bored of it. I was really following a lot of Let's Play series at the time and mostly like Game Grumps and Super Beard Bros and stuff like that. A little bit of Markiplier. I'm following him more now, but... So I was looking into, you know, what I need to start a Let's Play, like capture equipment, microphones, stuff like that. Editing programs, editing techniques, because um, putting together a Let's Play is much different than doing like this type of video. Just researching all that and uh, applying it not only to my Let's Play videos, but taking a lot of what I learned from that and applying it to my other videos as well. You know, most notably using compression and using a lot more um, audio editing techniques. So uh, yeah, that pretty much sums it up for this video. Sorry got a little too ranty at points, but uh, that's just uh, my two cents on the matter. Um, if you have uh, any more suggestions for getting out of a creative slump or doing art when you're happy and doing art out of positivity instead of negativity, uh, feel free to put something down below in the comments, in the booty boops. Or uh, if you don't feel comfortable, feel free to send a personal message. And uh, I'd also highly recommend uh, doing a video response. Just leave a link of your video in the comments below as well. So with that said, this is the Andy San. Sign for now. Thanking you guys, Poop, for tuning in this video and watching my other stuff. Also want to thank you guys for the liking, for the thumbs, commenting, subscribing. Send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, coming at you, Pook, with a new car vlog. So yeah, it's uh, it's definitely been a while since I've done one of these, and uh, this time I decided to show you around uh, my local neighborhood here in Portage, Michigan, and. Uh, Right now we're going to uh, my college, uh, Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo, which is just a uh, town over. And so I thought I'd just show you around the, uh, the town and stuff like that. It's not, may not be as exciting as uh, Japan, but uh, it's still pretty exciting. You know, I got some stuff and things going on, you know, for the uh, percentage of my audience who's never been to America, doesn't know what America looks like. You know, here is a, small glimpse at least in my part of the woods america wise so yeah they got a lot of different restaurants and stuff like that uh meyer is a uh, a local ish uh like it's kind of like a local ish walmart in a way it's like a big department store um they're Continuing to expand, but you know they, they're still they still haven't you know quite got the success of like a, a Meyer or a, a, a Walmart or a Kmart or something like that. So, all right, I'm gonna roll the window up because it's kind of loud, and uh, I don't know how well the mic picks up things like that. So I'll just uh, seal it off and sweat it out for you guys. <laughs> because uh, one of the other reasons why I decided to do this car vlog is uh, because it's an unusually nice day out today. So uh, I wanted to show you guys around while the weather wasn't all gross looking and stuff like that. So I thought that'd be kind of fun. 
and uh, it's also a spring break at the time of this recording, so um, I don't expect there to be a, uh, a lot of people on campus during this time. So, you know, we'll just kind of look around, stuff like that, so, ugh, man. That's the thing you know, I don't like about this drive up is that, uh, I mean, there's not a lot of stop signs or stop lights and stuff like that, but, you know, at the places there are, you know, if they do, if you do have to stop, it usually takes forever. And this is no exception. So yeah, this is the less exciting part of the car vlog, but you know, hopefully, We'll get things going here. And you'll get to see how insane Michigan drivers are because they're fucking batshit insane. So um, yay for that. And uh, also you'll notice that there's a lot of uh, hibachi sushi restaurants because I guess hibachi is very, is a big thing in this part of the woods. So um, yeah. <laughs> now, um, for those who don't know what hibachi is, um, it's basically like where they cook stuff on like a uh, on like an open grill in front of you. So they do like fried rice and whatever else. Um, it's cl it's quote unquote Japanese, but I haven't seen any of that style uh, restaurant anywhere. I think the closest I could think of to what that would be would be uh, like an okonomiyaki restaurant. But uh, even then, you know, it, <laughs> they don't do it with like that kind of weird performance uh, level flair that the hibachi style restaurants do here. So uh, it's, they say it's Japanese, but it's really not Japanese. At least not to my knowledge anyway. So um, but yeah, you'll see a lot of that. And uh, yay. <laughs> Well, then this is, uh, so I live in a, uh, a suburb of Kalamazoo called Portage, and it's just a town south of Kalamazoo. It's just a little suburb area. And uh, so it doesn't take me very long to get to actual, like, Kalamazoo, Kalamazoo. So in fact, I think I technically just, uh, you know, crossed the Kalamazoo border when I got past the hibachi restaurant. I think that was the sign. I wasn't wasn't quite paying attention there. I was busy talking. Walking here. <laughs> so yeah, Taco Bell. They're everywhere here. And uh, yeah, that's another thing I've noticed uh, since I got back. I mean, and I, I do want to make a, uh, a proper video about this because, and I've been meaning to do it for a while, but to talk about uh, the differences between uh, America and Japan and things that you know being in America I miss about Japan and things that while in Japan I missed about America and uh, just you know different pros and cons I guess of each country and one of the things uh, I guess this could be both a pro and a con but the car culture the automotive culture here in the States you know as you can see in front of you there's a shit ton of cars, and that's pretty much the only way most people get around. Now, granted, there was a lot of cars in Japan too, but uh, not quite to this degree. And, uh, you know, in Japan, a car isn't always considered a necessity. Now, if you live out in the countryside, or the uh, Inaka, as they call it, um, and yes, it is definitely a necessity because there's little to no uh, public transportation in those areas. But if you live in a fairly decent sized city or near one, then for me, there's really no need for a car. You know, um, aside from maybe moving or if you wanna, you know, do something special or something. It's basically like a special occasion. There's no day-to-day -day use for a car. You know, and living in Japan, I saved so much gas. So, I, and just money in general from not having a vehicle. Like the only vehicle I had was a bike, a bicycle. <laughs> so, and it wasn't no mama chari. It was a, a proper mountain bike because, you know, hey, I'm American, so why the fuck not, right? <laughs> so, yeah, I saved so much money 
uh, on both car payments, car insurance, uh, the yearly inspections, all that kind of crap. So I didn't have to deal with that at all while I was in Japan. Thank God, because that shit got really pricey. And plus for me, you know, being stationed in Seventh Fleet, it didn't really make sense as a single guy to have a vehicle because like you're you're uh, underway most of the time so you're not going to get a chance to enjoy that really expensive vehicle that you're plunking all this money down on and plus you know you can't really take it with you back to the states because it's you know it, you have to like reconvert it to uh, uh i guess like to fit uh the american safety whatever basically it's just a bunch of hassle and again more money that you got to plunk down just to get the vehicle back to the states so it just i don't know to me it didn't really make uh, much sense to invest in a vehicle out there now um i do plan on going back to japan at some point whether that's through a study abroad program that i can go through here at western michigan or uh, maybe doing something after i graduate like the jet program or what have you um, I do plan on going back to Japan at some point. Um, it's just, um, I realized, you know, within a couple months of moving back to America that while America's nice and it was nice to see family again, um, there, for the most part, just really isn't anything here for me. You know, nothing that's really uh, keeping me here or that's really all that um, interesting to me anymore. It's just kind of, you know, it's nice to come back to America. It's, it's I, I guess the best way I can equate it is it's like going back home. And by home, I mean like your parents' home. Because, you know, like the house you grew up or whatever. And it's nice to come back and, you know, be in your old room and see what your old life used to look like and see all the posters of bands you liked and stuff like that from back in the day or to see you know if you don't have that you know to see a lot of your old pictures up on uh, up on the walls and stuff at your parents house you know hopefully if you're within their good graces but uh, in any event it's like going back to that it's just it's a nice trip down memory lane and you know very nasukashi as the Japanese may say. But uh, there's really no future in it. And that's something that I've come to realize, at least for me. I'm not saying America is bad and, you know, fuck America or any of that kind of stuff. You know, America's great. It's just, at least during this time, and this may change later, but for now, I don't really see much of a, a long-term uh, future for me here, aside from getting my degree and moving on. And, you know, I've also thought about uh, moving to other parts of America, other parts, you know, different states. You know, I've you know, seriously considered moving to California just because the weather's nicer, um, it's close, you know, be relatively close to LA, which, you know, I mean, yeah, it's the celebrity hotspot and all that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, it's the entertainment capital of America and thus the world, really. But And it's also close to the YouTube space there because they got a YouTube space up in L.A. And then their, ha their headquarters are in uh, San Bruno, which I think is, uh, is closer to San Francisco. It's in the Bay Area, I believe. But uh, in any event, they got the YouTube space in L.A. And so there's a lot of uh, content creators that live out there. And so it'd be nice to collaborate with them. And that was one of the things that I liked about being in Japan, being relatively close to Tokyo. You know, I was about an hour and a half away by train. And uh, so if there was, oh geez, top up here. <laughs> So if there was like a big YouTube event or something like that, you know, a lot of the YouTube get-togethers, usually they were seasonal in Japan. Um, it was pretty easy for me to uh, make the trek out there. It didn't take me very long. And I'd usually go up to Tokyo on the weekends anyway. So it was no big deal for me. So long as um, I didn't have, I wasn't on duty or we were getting underway. <laughs> so pending that, um, it was pretty easy to get out there. 
So, um, yeah, after being back in the States for going on six months now, about half a year, God, I can't believe it's been that long. It's crazy. Because I got out in late September of 2015. And, uh, yeah, it's just been nuts. I gotta watch out for this guy. Oh, jeez. Okay, go, go, go. <laughs> Yay, Michigan drivers, am I right? Alright, I just gotta go slow. I don't know, did he wreck or something? I don't know what's going on. Anyway, so yeah, here we are at the uh, part of the campus. You've seen like the big western sign, one of them anyway. So um, here's the, a bridge so you can go over the highway and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, getting back to the whole Japan thing, man. Like, I would really love to go back to Japan again. Um, and uh, Western has a lot of good uh, study abroad programs. But uh, one of the things I'm really thinking about is where in Japan do I want to go? Now, obviously, like everybody's saying, go to Tokyo, go to Tokyo. Everybody's in Tokyo, go to Tokyo. And I'm seriously considering it. Because, you know, like I say, a lot of my friends are, are in that area. So uh, it'd be easy to do collabs. I wouldn't be as lonely as I was uh, living in Yokosuka. But uh, I don't know, like I'm debating on doing it because, you know, a lot of my friends are there. A lot of cool and interesting things are there. But at the same time, um, I don't know, man. Like I've been to a lot of the interesting uh, parts of uh, Tokyo that I wanted to go to. Now, of course, there's new and interesting things uh, cropping up all the time out there. So even if I were to go out there, I highly doubt that I'll be bored. <laughs> you know, be pretty hard pressed to be bored in Tokyo. So that's one advantage of it. But uh, another thing I'm thinking about is uh, just I've kind of it's kind of a case of like been there, done that, you know, it would be nice to kind of revisit a lot of those cool places, you know, do some new videos and stuff like that. But uh, I also want to explore uh, other parts of Japan as well. And uh, there's a lot of other programs that uh, <clears throat> that Western has that I could go to other places besides Tokyo, even though the majority of places that they have for exchange programs are in the, uh, the Tokyo area. Uh, I do want to, why is that grinding noise? It's so weird. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, random thought bubble cropped in my head. Um, but yeah, so, uh, they have places out in uh, Kyoto. Uh, there's a couple places in the, uh, I don't think it's in Osaka per se, but it's in like a little subsection of Osaka. So there's that. Jesus. Looking nobody around. So uh, I guess we'll just park here for the time being and uh, in the next little bit I'm gonna show you guys around campus so yeah see you there okay so um, we're here at the school and uh, I got the GoPro in the uh, little head mount here um, so uh, I'll go ahead and show you guys around as uh, we continue walking here um, I don't know. I just, I'll wait to switch over views once we cross the street here. Okay, so uh, here we are at Western. Some piles of snow that are melting at the time. So, um, yeah. This is usually a spot that I walk through a lot. So, uh, yeah. Um, I got the GoPro in the, uh, the head mount. Uh, with a little foamy piece in the back so hopefully there's not a whole lot of noise but if there is i apologize so uh, it's a little windy today so you know how it goes 
but uh, yeah, there's a sculpture of a, a whale. I think it's pretty interesting. And uh, actually, let's, I'm gonna zip over to the other side here. And it's currently spring break, so there's not a whole lot of people around. Okay, so here we are in the main, one of the main uh, openings here at the campus. In that little snow pile. <laughs> I don't know why I think that's so interesting, but uh, and uh, this is actually one of my favorite places to uh, take pictures at um, here on campus. So if you follow me on Instagram, instagram.com slash theandyson, you'll probably recognize a few of these landmarks here. So uh, there's a sculpture I took a couple pictures of a while back. Yeah, it's weird. Ever since I came back to the States, uh, I just feel weird uh, taking video of myself out in public. <laughs> I always get this weird vibe that I'm getting stared at because I'm making video. It's really weird. Yeah, here is the uh, Lee Honors College area. And here's like the center area of campus. You got Sangren Hall right there where I have a couple classes at. Pretty nicely laid out. You got the, uh, the Canley Chapel where uh, I take a lot of pictures at, so. <laughs> yeah. And down this way is where I take a couple more classes. Take my Japanese class, a couple couple buildings down. Economics class, a couple more buildings down. Oh, nice. Oh, it's four o'clock. <laughs> wow, this is just such a good time to take pictures. up here. Ooh, sorry about the wind here, but uh, here we are at the uh, Waldo Library, and uh, this is another one of my very favorite places to take pictures at because of the clock. Okay, so here we are at Sangren Hall. This is where uh, I have one of my classes at. And uh, it's, it's just, it's one of my favorite looking buildings. I think it's one of the newer ones. At least it looks like it anyway. It's in very good shape and uh, a lot of cool stuff going on in there. You know, a lot of glass and it's very modern looking, stuff like that, so. And then over there, uh, right about, if you can see my hand there, is the Bernhardt Center, it's kind of, one of the main parts of uh, the campus for like the admin and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, over here we got uh, the Canley Chapel, which uh, not a real big religious buff, but uh, I don't know. I just like it because it's a clock. <laughs> so, um, I mean, yeah, there's more buildings and stuff like that here, but this is the uh, main gist of it here at Western. So, there you go. Yeah, this is the Andy 
on. Sign up for now. Thanking you guys for tuning into this video and watching my other stuff. Also want to thank you guys for liking, little thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send your friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you book, with my March 2016 update video, part two. So yeah, um, in this video, um, it's not so much an update video as it is uh, just addressing some questions I've been getting lately in the comments. So um, before we begin with this video, um, I do want to address that I have, uh, I don't know if it's a cold or allergies or whatever's going on, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, at the time of this recording, it's the first day of spring, yay! And uh, it's like 30 degrees American or 3 degrees centigrade. And uh, so, spring! Yay! <laughs> so I think with all this extra pollen and stuff from the slightly warmer weather, it's starting to get my nose all stuffed up. Or it could be those sickly Western kids. I'm not sure. But uh, in any event, I'm a little stuffed up right now, so I apologize for all the uh, grossness, including my gross ass hair right now. I haven't taken a shower yet, so I'm gonna do that when I'm done with this video. But I just wanted to get it out there before uh, hop in the shower and all that jazz. And uh, another thing I wanna address is the fact that I've changed my recording setup. So I'm gonna be shifting over to my uh, little bedroom setup in here. And uh, the reason being for this is because it's a smaller room than my living room, so um, I'm hoping to, once I get a job and get some extra months, I can invest in proper uh, acoustic treatment of this room. And it's gonna be a lot easier to treat the bedroom versus the living room because there's a lot less space in here. Versus the living room, which had like a big window where a lot of uh, air and stuff would come in and you'd hear the whooshy noise. Um, you'd have the refrigerator, you'd have upstairs neighbors who'd sometimes, you know, <laughs> because I'm too loud, but whatever. <laughs> and uh, just a bunch of other noise, you know, including from my own computer, you know, the fan noise and stuff like that. So that's another one of the reasons why I decided to switch over to my bedroom uh, so I can uh, avoid the majority of that. And uh, once I get some money, I can invest in proper, you know, foam dampening, sound dampening equipment and stuff like that. So it'll sound better eventually. And I also want to get like a green screen for back here so I can do all kinds of cool uh, chroma key effects as well. But for the time being, I think this uh, little white wall background here is fine. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below in the boop -de boops. And uh, I'm also using, for lighting, I'm using the, uh, the lamp from my living room. So it's got like a little gooseneck that I can direct at my face here. And uh, I'm hoping to invest in proper lighting, but I think for the time being it's fine. But uh, in any event, now that we got all that stuff out of the way, let's begin the, uh, the update proper. So I know you guys have been asking in the comments, um, like, why are you uploading old episodes? You know, where's the new stuff? Where's the new stuff, Andy? What's going on? I don't want to see old stuff. <laughs> and I appreciate all that, um, don't get me wrong. But uh, I'm, I'm re-uploading a lot of old videos for several reasons. Um, one of them is uh, because I know a lot of you guys uh, are new viewers, you know. So I wanted to give you guys a chance to see a lot of my old videos and stuff like that that you might have missed um, when you first subscribed to me whenever that was. So I wanted to give uh, some of my older videos a chance to be seen by the newer viewers and stuff like that. And just to kind of give you guys a sense of where I came from as a YouTuber, a content creator, as some people may say, but I hate using that word. It's a little, little too pretentious in my not so humble opinion. But uh, yeah, as a content creator, <laughs> just to show you guys uh, just kind of where I came from and stuff like that. And uh, for a lot of those uh, early videos, um, when I got my first camera, which is a San Diego Zac D CG6, if you guys were wondering, got it off of eBay for a little over a hundo and uh, stuff like that, just to show you guys uh, where I was at that time in my life and just to kind of show you just how far I've come as far as making videos and stuff like that. And uh, another reason why I'm doing the daily uploads is uh, because YouTube favors 
uh, daily uploads for the algorithm and uh, my college schedule and hopefully my work schedule once I get a job being what they will be it's uh, it's very difficult for me to do daily uploads it's just really not feasible for me at this time so I decided to kind of have like a little compromise I guess with uh, re-uploading old content but uh, I'm only doing just one episode every day two on the weekends <laughs> for the old stuff and uh, I'm also going to be giving you guys newer stuff as well which I am working on I am so the uh, current schedule as it stands at the time it's recording is uh, and keep in mind these are all in Eastern Standard Time so be sure to adjust accordingly if you live outside of that time zone uh, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, I'm gonna be releasing new episodes of non Andy Cade stuff and that's throughout the week. Um, uh, I'd prefer to do it Monday through Friday, but if I got something that needs to get out, like on a weekend, you know, I'm okay with that. But don't expect anything too major on the weekends. So, um, but in any event, um, 3 p.m. is the new stuff. Uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is uh, Andy Kate episodes. And uh, just like with the old stuff, and we'll get into Andy Kate a bit more um, here in a sec, uh, but 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when I release a new episode of Andy Kate, and that's Monday through Friday. So one of the reasons I decided to get rid of the weekend stuff, again, we'll get into that here in a sec. <laughs> so, and uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, throughout the whole week is going to be uh, a re-upload of an old episode from my Andy Sound channel, whatever it may be, you know, just depending on, uh, and I'm doing this in order of upload as well. So that's why it's, it is what it is basically as far as like how I'm uploading stuff. So I'm uploading them in the order that they were originally uploaded. I'm also doing uh, an extra old episode, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, Saturday and Sunday as well, just to get that extra episode in for the weekend. So there you go. And uh, getting into Andy Cade, as far as like why I'm doing the things I'm doing with Andy Cade. So um, I had some trouble with my AdSense account on the Andy Cade channel which is why I decided to switch everything over to my The Andy San channel. And also just for consistency and so you guys won't have to worry about which channel to subscribe to for whatever stuff and stuff like that. So it's basically just one stop shop. And uh, I know that the whole um, separate channels thing was kind of cool and hip with the kids uh, back in the day, back in the early days of YouTube, but uh, it's just not really a viable option nowadays. So I decided to switch over all my stuff to youtube.com slash theandyson, which is where you're watching this video right now, hopefully. <laughs> I don't know if like Russian hackers uh, captured the footage or whatever, but uh, hopefully you're watching this on youtube.com slash theandyson or wherever. But in any event, um, that's why I'm doing the things I'm doing. And uh, with Andy Cade, um, I decided to, instead of do like daily episodes, I decided to just do it Monday through Friday. So again, with my college schedule being what it is, I wanted to kind of downsize the amount of uh, new videos that I'm doing. And uh, I still want to do new videos, but uh, again, <laughs> being as busy as I am, and with finals coming up very soon, next month I believe, um, it's gonna be uh, a pretty hectic time for the old Andy son here, so I won't be putting out as many videos as I used to. So again, I, I wanna give you guys something to watch in the meantime. So another reason why I'm re-uploading old videos and for Andy Cade, um, the reason I'm up uploading old episodes of Andy Cade is because I had some problems with my AdSense account on that channel. We had some uh, invalid click activity and uh, I don't know where it came from or anything like that because I didn't have my uh, analytics properly set up at the time so I couldn't track down who was doing what. And so Google was like, all right, let's pump the brakes here. And uh, they temporarily suspended my account for 30 days, which at the time this recording is now up. So I'm able to properly use AdSense for that account again, but I decided just to play it safe and move all my Indicate stuff over to my The Andy San channel where it's going to be 
uh, for now at least, <laughs> unless I say otherwise. And uh, I'm also recording new episodes of Andy Cade, so once I get all the old stuff out of the way, then uh, new episodes are going to kick in and stuff like that. So I have everything planned all the way out to May of 2016. So, um, yeah, so once May hits, then uh, newer episodes are going to be coming out and stuff like that. And I'm really uh, looking forward to uh, these new episodes because it's the first time I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro to do Let's Play stuff. And I'm still very new at the software and uh, stuff like that. But I think now I've started to get the hang of it and I hope to insert like more funny edits and things like that. But again, class schedule, so I can't do it all the time and I can't do like extensive edits, but little funny things here and there, you know, more than happy to do. Uh, I'm also looking for uh, game suggestions as well for uh, Andy Caden and uh, if you guys have any game suggestions, be sure to leave them in the comments below in the booby boops, and I will do my best to play those games. But again, it's gotta be games that I like. So if it's a game that I don't particularly like, you know, if you guys say like, go play Minecraft, play Minecraft, play Call of Duty, haha. <laughs> you know, I, and I mean, nothing wrong with those games. If you like them, great, cool. But uh, for me, I'm not a big fan of them. So uh, <laughs> not to say, you know, I'll never play them but it is highly unlikely that I'll be playing those games, especially on Andycade. So, um, unless it's for like a special event or something like that. But uh, in any event, um, I'll do my best to accommodate you guys as best I can with the um, requested games and uh, just looking for new ideas and stuff like that. And uh, also, speaking of new videos, I'm working on my Life After Navy series, which uh, at the time it's recording, I've finished up on the very first episode. It's a really long one, but uh, hopefully the, uh, the future of the series, you know, those episodes aren't gonna be quite that long. I think it's like 40 plus minutes long. So it's just kind of like a long talky video. Uh, most of them I'm planning on doing are about maybe 10 to 15 minutes long on average. So that one's a little above average as far as length goes. But um, if you guys have any questions uh, for the Life After Navy series, and for those who don't know, uh, Life After Navy is my sequel series to NFAX where NFAX was a Navy frequently asked questions where I addressed questions about, you know, joining the Navy, being in the Navy, stuff like that. And Life After Navy is my new series about being a recently separated veteran. And it's designed to help uh, people who are either thinking about getting out or people who are already out and are having difficulty adjusting to civilian life again. And I'm just kind of sharing my experiences with, uh, becoming a civilian again for the first time in five years. So it's a little different now than what it was when I first joined the Navy. And uh, I'm hoping to share my experience as well as share other veterans' experiences as well. I'm hoping to get uh, more vets on the show to share their experiences as well. So if you are a vet and you want to share your experience, um, hit me up in the uh, private messages and maybe we can schedule like a Google Hangout or Skype or something of the like. And uh, maybe you'll make it on uh, a new episode of Life After Navy. So that'd be pretty cool, man. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to share with you guys in this video. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this is the Andy song. Sign up for now, thinking you guys poop for tuning into this video and for watching my other stuff. Also wanna thank you guys for liking with the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party, and hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you boop, with my April 2016 update video for you guessed it, April 2016, woo. So yeah, as always with these updated videos, I'm gonna be going over some personal life stuff as well as youtube -y stuff. I was just kind of waiting for April Fools to wrap up before releasing this video, so there's that. And uh, before we begin, no, I'm not gonna be doing vlog every day, April, um, Vita, as it's called. Uh, I really wanted to, and I was really thinking about it, but again, uh, this month I'm gonna be focusing mostly on uh, like finals and stuff like that. So I don't know <laughs> how interesting an everyday vlog will be for me. 
So, eh, it is what it is. But I'll be tuning in to uh, some of my friends that are doing Vita. So, uh, if, you, if you're doing Vita, I'll uh, be tuning in to you, if you're my friend. So, eh. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's begin with uh, some youtube -y stuff. So, like I said, I'm not going to be doing Vita Vlog Every Day April. Uh, just because I'm going to be very busy this month doing finals and then switching over to summer classes the following month. So I'm um, going to be busy with that. But uh, I do have some videos already in the can. Just uh, I just got to get down to editing them and stuff like that. So uh, one video that I already have recorded is uh, showing off how I make uh, white chili in a crock pot. It's a pretty simple recipe, pretty cost effective. You can get a lot of uh, meals out of it. Uh, so it's perfect for a single poor college kid like myself. So uh, if you guys are interested in that video, uh, it's going to be coming out very soon, probably in the next uh, week or two. And then the next set of videos I'm going to be working on are the Star Bomb set from uh, South by Southwest in 2016. Um, this is just kind of practice for me to uh, practice with Adobe Premiere as well as Aud Adobe Audition, which is their audio editing program. So, you know, it's not like I'm trying to rip them off or anything like that. It's just me practicing, you know, fixing up the audio a little bit, stuff like that. And uh, I'm going to be releasing it uh, as a full concert. So the full concert's about, I think, 20 some odd minutes, maybe a little less. And uh, I'm also going to be releasing it song by song as well. So that's going to be coming out very soon. So uh, be sure to stay tuned for that. And uh, we'll get to my Let's Play stuff, Andy Cade. So at the time of this recording, I already have stuff scheduled up through uh, mid-May of 2016. And uh, next thing I'm going to be working on is uh, editing uh, a new Let's Play that I did for a game that I'm not going to talk about now. But uh, it's a game that's pretty interesting. Uh, it's a pretty slow Let's Play, but I go over some stories about Japan and stuff like that. So that's a little little hint for you there. <laughs> so I, I think it's pretty interesting. You know, the game's just kind of slow, but uh, I just like the stories that I tell about uh, my time in Japan. And hopefully it'll help you guys out as well. And uh, next up is Life After Navy, which is my sequel series to NFAC. Right now I'm in the writing process for new episodes of that. I don't have a set schedule for it per se. It's just kind of like uh, if I come across a topic or something I find interesting, then uh, I'll put together something and throw my own two cents into the topic. So what Life After Navy is, for those who don't know, is a sequel series to NFAX, which was a series which you know stands for Navy Frequently Asked Questions. So with NFAX, I was talking about life in the Navy and stuff like that as somebody who was in the Navy, active duty, all that stuff. Where, uh, whereas life after Navy, as the name implies, is uh, chronicling my life after the Navy and uh, showing, you know, just basically giving my own two cents on uh, Navy topics as a veteran versus somebody who was active duty. So I can talk a bit more freely about certain things and, you know, give, you know, a more honest opinion on certain topics that I felt I really couldn't do justice as, you know, somebody who was in the Navy, you know, because it's kind of a conflict of interest. But now that I'm out, I can give a, uh, a more honest opinion on certain things. And uh, like I said, right now, I'm just kind of uh, looking through uh, questions and, you know, trying to come up with something that I think is interesting. I'm hoping to do collaborations with uh, fellow vets, you know, maybe doing like interviews, stuff like that. And, you know, asking them questions as well. So if you have any questions about uh, like what life is like after the Navy, what to expect as a transitioning veteran, you know, how much money should I save up, you know, stuff like that. You know, just basically stuff that's not like, what's boot camp like? Because <laughs> I was uh, in the Navy for five years, so I graduated boot camp in 2010. So uh, I, I imagine that boot camp in 2016 and beyond is a lot different than, uh, than my time in. So uh, try to try to steer away from those types of questions. But uh, other than that, I'm pretty uh, pretty open to whatever you guys have to say. And uh, be sure to leave those questions in the comments below in the boopy de boops. And I used to say personal messages, but for some reason I think YouTube started uh, phasing out personal messages. And I didn't even realize it until, 
you know, somebody pointed it out in the comments like, hey, I'm trying to send you a personal message, but uh, it's not working. So um, if you go to my about on my uh, YouTube channel, you can uh, find like a little link for uh, my email address. So if you don't feel comfortable putting like a comment or something down below, you can uh, find my email address there and just send me an email as well. I'm not gonna put it up on the screen because you know I don't wanna get spam or any of that stupid shit. But uh, just go to my about page and uh, there's a link down there. You'll have to put in something like a CAPTCHA or whatever and then bam, there you go. The last little bit of uh, youtube -y stuff that we'll get into before we get into the personal life stuff. And it's not really technically YouTube per se, but it's just dealing with uh, podcasting. And it's something I've been really thinking about uh, very seriously for the past couple months and just coming up with an interesting concept, looking for uh, guests to interview, uh, release schedule, pace, and all that kind of stuff. Because, you know, I'm pretty busy with school and I really got to start getting, you know, I really got to start cracking down on my studies because, you know, like I said, finals are coming up. Got to, you know, make sure my grades are up to snuff. Otherwise, you know, what am I going to school for, right? If you guys have any uh, suggestions for videos you'd like to see or maybe topics about a podcast or something like that, you know, as always, leave them down below in the comments in the boopity boops or uh, send me an email. I already talked about how to send me email. So there's that. Now, we're going to get into uh, some personal life stuff. So... Like I said and have been saying in this uh, video, I'm going through uh, studying for finals for this month. And then next month, I'm going to be going into summer classes. So it'll be summer one semester. And then from there, I can sign up for summer two as well. And the idea is to just continuously work on my uh, degree, you know, so that way I'm not out for an extended period of time because you know, right now my job situation isn't looking too good. Although, you know, I talked with a an IT uh, recruiting agency. They really liked, you know, what I had to offer and stuff like that. But they just, they uh, suggested that I tweak my resume a little bit, which is something I'm going to be doing uh, very extensively this coming week. Not only, you know, just me doing it by myself, but also uh, Western Michigan has uh, their own resume tweakers and like the business department stuff like that so i'm going to be utilizing those services as well hopefully we can get a nice good resume uh worked out ready to go and uh i can send it off to various companies and uh i'll basically be like a contractor for the most part so i'll just be working temporary jobs and uh, i think that's really interesting because it allows me to build up a resume working at multiple companies you know getting experience so I won't be as bored as easily because, you know, I'll only be working for them for maybe a couple months at a time. And uh, during the school year, I'm going to be uh, just working weekends. That's what I put in. So, and they said that, you know, since most people work Monday through Friday, they're looking for people to do weekends and holidays. And, you know, I'm your guy. <laughs> the amount of money I'll be getting for doing the weekend jobs will be more than enough to cover for uh, these extra expenses and stuff like that that BH isn't able to cover because, you know, living expenses in Michigan is a lot higher than I anticipated. So uh, I've been living a little lean as of late, which is why I haven't really been doing a whole lot. You know, just kind of laying low and studying and just kind of hanging in there. But, you know, once I get a job, everything should smooth out and... Uh, Hopefully my own uh, state of mind will start smoothing out as well because, you know, to be honest with you, I've been going through a lot of problems with uh, just transitioning back into civilian life. And it's not like, you know, I was Mr. Joe Navy while I was in or anything like that. You know, I was the exact opposite of that. I was like being in the Navy, looking out into civilian life. I had already know, knew what I wanted. You know, I had my goals all set and everything. But then once I got out into the civilian world, it was just so different. It was just kind of hard because I didn't really have the support system being in the Navy and I didn't have my friends around me, you know, physically around me. But uh, I just kind of let off some steam on Facebook the other day and, you know, all my friends kind of 
were by me by my side and you know i don't like doing those stupid you know drama facebook posts that's not really my thing but you know just sometimes i just feel like you know the weight of the world is just crushing me a little too hard and you know it's just me up here so i feel like i'm all by myself but really i'm not you know i got i got friends and places all over the world and uh i'm really thankful for that and uh i know i sometimes come across as mr emo you know cut myself kind of person on facebook sometimes and i apologize for uh worrying people about that you know i'm trying to get better every day uh just trying to focus on improving myself every day and just being a happier guy so you know, you just gotta keep moving forward, I guess. So, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, in this video. Um, if I forgot anything, and you know, as always, I'll put in like a part two or something like that later on. But uh, I just wanted to keep it kind of short because I'm working on uh, editing videos and stuff like that. Because I gotta get some videos out because <laughs> haven't been doing a whole lot of that lately, and that may be another reason why I'm just kind of down in the dumps as of late because I'm not focusing on things I enjoy. And, uh, oh, she's <laughs> speaking of which, that kind of reminded me of the one thing I wanted to talk about before we head out, you know, uh, and that is, you know, possibly changing my major. So for those who don't know, uh, my current major is computer information systems, which, you know, a lot of people are like, that's that. <laughs> it's basically like a combination between computer sciences and business. So it's a little less math intensive than uh, computer science because I suck at math. But it also incorporates uh, more business classes as well, which is good for me being a YouTuber. You know, I got to learn me some business and stuff like that, you know, proper marketing and all that jazz. But uh, I don't know, man, like I've been thinking about uh, doing something different, you know, because I really enjoy making YouTube videos, but... Uh, making YouTube videos right now really isn't, you know, <laughs> getting me enough money to live off of, you know, it's just a little bit of pocket change here and there, but that's about it. So I was thinking about, you know, going to uh, film school to learn how to do, you know, movies proper. But I know what everybody's going to say. Don't go to film school. You'll be destitute in the street when you're all done. You know, you'll be lying face down in a ditch because you make no money. But uh, anyway, it's just, it's just an idea I've been, you know, tossing back and forth in my own head and uh, stuff like that because, I don't know, I just, I just don't feel like uh, Western or this whole Kalamazoo, Michigan area is a, a right fit for me. You know, I just feel like, you know, I need a bigger city to really latch on to because I was, you know, I got so used to living in that environment, you know, living in uh san diego living near yokohama nearish to tokyo stuff like that you know yokosuka was you know, not really a big city but again being that it's japan it's close enough to a big city to where you know it's i f i feel now more comfortable in a big city than i do in a smaller city i'm thinking about going to a new place but uh, again you know it's not going to happen overnight. I don't have the cash for something like that for sure. But it's just something I'm thinking about, just kind of picking and choosing places, you know, figuring out the pros and cons of uh, those kinds of places and uh, stuff like that. And if I do manage to save up enough money to move over there and I feel that moving over there is the right thing to do, then I'll do it. Or if not, maybe I'll just sweat it out here and get my piece of paper and uh, move on from there who knows but uh, in any event that's all i wanted to say in this video for reals this time <laughs> so yeah this is the andy song sign up for now thanking you guys poop for tuning into this video and watching my other stuff also want to thank you guys for liking the thumbs commenting subscribing send a few friends to the party and hey as always we'll see you next time catch you later guys bye all right, I'm recording.
Hey gang, Andy here. And today I'm coming at you whoop, with a car vlog. So yeah, um, school's done for the day. So I decided to uh, strap on the GoPro and uh, show you guys around because uh, I also had to make a quick run into Walmart. So I figured I'd show you guys what, uh, what Kalamazoo is looking like right about now because spring has finally sprung. And uh, it's really nice out, finally. <laughs> don't have to deal with any more snow, you know. Knock on wood. Or dashboard, I guess. I don't have any wood in the car. But, yeah. Done with all the... What was that? That was weird. Anyway, done with all the snow for now, hopefully. And so, signs of spring are around, including cherry blossoms and plum blossoms. And, or apple blossoms, rather. So you got all kinds of trees in bloom, finally. And uh, the place looks great, man. So another reason why I wanted to get the car vlog going so you guys could see all this and uh, just kind of take in the springness. That is, oh geez, Kalamazoo. Come on, squirrel. Look in, please. <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah, a lot's happened since the, uh, since the uh, April 2016 update video that I just put out uh, a couple days ago at the time of this recording. And uh, I just kind of wanted to go over some of the uh, the changes and stuff. Ooh, wow, look at those cherry blossoms, or I don't know if are they apple blossoms? Plum blossoms? I think they're plum blossoms. Maybe, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> the blossoms, there you go. So anyway, uh, lots of ha lots of stuff has happened uh, since the uh, April 2016 update video that I just put out a couple days ago. At the time's recording. Um, I might make a uh, a separate proper part two update uh, in a separate video because this one's just a little car vlog. But uh, yeah, uh, one of the big things is that uh, when I made that video it was at the beginning of the month and uh, it took me a while to put it out because I was really busy with school and trying to find a job and all that that entails. And uh, I'm proud to say that as of yesterday, at the time of this recording, which was the uh, 18th of uh, April, 2016, whoop, uh, finally gainfully employed for the first time since uh, being honorably discharged from the US Navy. So I got my first civilian job in well over five years. So that's pretty exciting. I'm gonna be working at McDonald's. I'm obviously not gonna tell you which one, but a McDonald's in the area. And uh, yeah, I'm just really excited, man. Like. You know, honestly, I was very, very hesitant to uh, apply to fast food and all that kind of stuff. I just, I felt that, you know, I'd kind of grown up past that point and that, you know, in a way I was kind of too good, quote unquote, to work in fast food or do these little kitty jobs and stuff like that. And I wanted a big boy job, but you know, a lot of the big boy jobs were full time and they didn't really play into my schedule very well and they were all very far away, the majority of them in uh, Grand Rapids, which is about an hour north of where I live. So commute-wise, that wouldn't work out very well, especially in the winter time. And that was one of the main reasons why I decided to look a bit more locally because uh, this past winter here, it was my first uh, you know, winter here in the Kalamazoo area, and the first winter in Michigan even. You know, that I've experienced in some time and well, <laughs> even going further out, you know, it's the first winter I've experienced in America in a while, you know, because I mean, I, I, I would visit my folks and stuff like that for Christmas, but like I'd only be there for a couple weeks. So like, I'd just be chilling and just like, ah, there's snow outside, ah, who cares? But you know, I gotta do, oh geez, these cars aren't letting me, oh wait, this guy's, thank you. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say cars aren't letting me through, but they are, so it's all good. Okay. So, yeah, you have to adapt to the Michigan way of driving, which is insane. You know, it's a lot more aggressive, like super duper aggressive driving. But uh, anyway, yeah, just dealing with this whole uh, winter and stuff like that, and dealing with, you know, a lot more snow than I'm used to. Uh, really made me think about uh, getting a job locally because 
Um, it just, you know, if I would get a job like a town over or something like that, there'd be days where I'd probably miss work because I couldn't get there in time. Even with a nice car like this one, you know, it's got all, got a all wheel drive. Um, you still um, gotta worry about those kinds of things, you know? And plus, you know, heaven forbid something were to happen to this car because there's a lot of crazy Michigan drivers out there and uh, <laughs> they aren't as mindful of, Jesus fucking Christ guy. Yeah. I apologize if you don't like swearing, but fuck it, right? <laughs> Anyway, so uh, there's a lot of crazy Michigan drivers out there, and you know, it may not even be my fault at some times, because like this past winter, there was an especially bad blizzard, and I saw a lot of wreckage. A lot of just cars wrecked and stuck in the ditch and stuff like that. And you know, it just makes me glad that I got uh, all wheel drive for this vehicle. But of course, the downside of that being. Uh, you know, obviously more gas needs to be applied to this car, even if you're just using it in normal two-wheel drive, which is what I got it on now, so, but, uh, yeah, this kind of, uh, safety net, I guess, comes at a price, you know, but it is what it is, but in any event, uh, moral story is, I just wanted to get a job that was a bit closer to where I live, so that way, if something were to happen to my car, or if the weather got extremely bad to where I couldn't you know, drive to work, I could at least get there some way, somehow. Because Grand Rapids is a little too far for me right now. So, there's that. And uh, so, it, you know, it took me about, what, four and a half months to get a job? And, you know, I'd, I'd applied everywhere, and, you know, one of the things that I kind of regret was signing on for the winter, for like the winter slash spring semester. Jesus Christ, what the fuck happened there? Anyway, <laughs> I, I just noticed that. I was like, what the hell? But uh, yeah, speaking of wreckage. <laughs> but, uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, yeah, it just took me a long time to get this job, man. And uh, I'd applied at, you know, mostly retail and those kinds of positions and they were just kind of ho-humming around and I'd gone to a lot of interviews, uh, tailored my resume, stuff like that, and you know, a lot of places around were pretty keen on wanting to hire a veteran, so that's, that's a plus. But at the same time, you know, I, <laughs> I didn't get the call back, so, eh, it is what it is, I guess. But, uh, yeah, now I got this job at McDonald's, ate a big, generous slice of humble pie, you know, but I mean, it's not all bad. You know, it's just kind of my uh, mentality going into it was that I thought it was above doing a minimum wage job. But you know, at this point, I just had to change my way of thinking in that, you know, I'm not gonna be doing this for life. It's just something to get me through uh, college, get me through this period of time. And then uh, <clears throat> once I get, uh, like an internship or something like that, I get like a, a true big boy job when I've earned it, then I can transition to that. But in the meantime, you know, I got myself a nice little gig, just a part-time gig because, you know, the, and this is kind of a, a, a misconception with a lot of people, you know, thinking about the GI Bill and stuff like that. And I, I wanna get into a little more detail with this in like a, uh, a Life After Navy episode just based on my own experiences, but uh, the uh, the GI Bill, like the post 911 BAH, um, only goes so far. And you know, you can, uh, <clears throat> there's ways to get around it, like if you live in the dorms, you still get BAH. And uh, like obviously if I lived in the dorms, this whole money thing wouldn't even be an issue. Like, you know, the vast majority of my expenses would not even exist because I wouldn't have to pay rent, wouldn't have to pay utilities, none of that stuff. So, uh, yeah, but the thing is, you know, I, I just wanted to uh, have my own place, you know, because I'm a very private guy, despite what you may see on YouTube and stuff, but you know, 
at the end of the day, I just want a nice place I can relax at and stuff. I don't need to be, you know, slumming in the dorms and nothing, none of that stuff. But, uh, you know, that's the price I pay. But anyway, the whole BAH thing. So, uh, but he's just kind of spacey today, so I'm kind of going all over the place. But the BAH only covers, uh, it covers the majority of my expenses, but there's still a little bit, you know, left that, you know, BAH can't quite cover. You know, considering like cost of living and stuff like that out here. And, you know, I've done what I could to minimize my expenses, got rid of a couple extra online subscriptions, you know, like with WWE Network and stuff like that. Um, kept, you know, like I don't have, I don't have cable, I just have internet, which despite Charter Net, which is the local internet company, trying their damnedest, their damnedest to get me to sign on for like the trifecta landline cable internet package for the low, low price at 99 a month. And it's just like, eh, no. Like, just give me the internet. And if you can give me faster internet, I'm all down for that. But uh, it seems like they only got one speed, sadly. So, don't know if, uh, if there's any other cable networks in town or whatever. But if there is, you know, might have to give them a ring. But uh, anyway, so uh, anyway, I've been keeping my expenses and stuff down as best I can. Not eating out as much as I used to. Uh, and even when I do, just minimizing what I eat, you know, sticking more towards like the dollar menu sort of stuff instead of, you know, the extra value meals or whatever the case may be, just as an example. And then trying not to drive my car as much unless it's to places I absolutely need to go, like school, store, uh, stuff like that. Like I don't travel very far usually. But anyway, just long story short, I've been keeping my expenses really to a minimum. And uh, even still, you know, the BH only covers so much. And I've been dipping into my savings and selling some stuff on eBay to, to help offset those expenses. And, you know, I was starting to, starting to run out of uh, valuable big ticket items to sell, you know, aside from my computers and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, just running out of stuff to sell. And uh, that's when I was like, you know what, fuck it, you know, I need money, you know, I might as well apply to local fast food stuff, because I see, as you can see, they're fucking, uh, they're fucking everywhere. So, I did. Applied to a McDonald's and uh, they took me in. So um, I just got hired uh, yesterday at the time of this recording. So uh, I don't have hours or anything like that yet. I have to still go through like orientation and crap like that. But I am hired. So, you know, that's nice. And uh, aside from that, like the weather is really good today and has been like all this week actually so that's really nice and uh, I'm finally able to do some more photography because you know I just <laughs> hasn't been you know aside from today which is pretty cloudy but you know yesterday was pretty clear so I was able to get a lot of good uh, pictures of the campus so if uh, you guys follow me on Instagram instagram.com slash the Andy son uh, you'll see a lot of cool pictures of uh, campus, Western Michigan University, here in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And uh, I'm going to be posting some more pictures that I took today as well, very soon, so yeah. But uh, anyway, yeah, it's just been great out today. And I just wanted to show you guys the area with all the blossoms and stuff in bloom and Stuff like that, because I know that they don't last very long. So, geez, kind of scared me a little bit. I thought, but anyway. Yeah, they don't last very long, so uh, I just wanted to make a, make a video of it. You know, whilst I'm going to Walmart, because I gotta get a money order for rent. Which again, you know, <laughs> being that I had to sell some things, rent, I got a little behind on rent because of uh, eBay, like, because the way eBay's got it now, it used to be like you sold something, 
you know, wait a couple days. Once you got paid, you got paid, you know? But now it's like you gotta go through this whole verification system where you gotta wait, uh, I think like two to three weeks before you get your money. And it's just, I don't know. It's something that they changed in their fairly recent terms and services, at least from what I can remember, because like, granted I haven't sold anything uh, until this point, I haven't sold anything in a while, but I don't remember it taking quite that long to get your money. Usually, like maybe at most a week, you know, but yeah. <laughs> so, got a little behind in rent because the, uh, the money that I got from selling stuff didn't uh, go into my account as fast as, I, as I'd expected. So now I have to pay the price with late fees and all this other stuff, so I'd end up selling more stuff, and it's just nuts. Anyway, I'm just glad that I got a job now, so I can begin to climb out of that hole and, uh, you know, start, start new classes uh, next month, actually. I think the beginning of May is when I start my summer classes, so I get a little... I think week, I think like a one week break in between spring and summer classes. Sounds about right. So I'm still ab able to keep my BAH. And uh, the plan is just to, uh, just to do summer classes, man. Like um, I do want to do like a study abroad, but I'm not quite sure about that just because of, you know, uh, expenses and stuff like that. I'm gonna try to save up for it. All right, so yeah, I had to do a little turning around and look at this, uh, this ice cream shop. Looks pretty interesting. Might have to go there um, afterwards. So yeah, um, <laughs> I forgot that the uh, the right lane turned into the right turn only lane because they kind of sneak up on you like that. But uh, anyway, yeah. So. Uh, just turn right again and uh, carry on. And uh, yeah, man, like uh, life's looking up right about now. So I'm real glad for that. You know, I'm hoping to put some hours under my belt. Um, summer classes, you know, uh, I'm, I'm only taking two classes during the summer per uh, like summer semester because the summer semester is divided into like two parts. You got summer one and summer two, which combined make about the length of an actual semester. So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so I've already signed up for summer one, uh, but I haven't signed up for summer two yet because I got to talk with an academic advisor and do all this, that, and the other. And uh, anyway, like I got a lot of stuff going on and you know, I got to save up know get some money in savings again because you know with this whole not having a job situation funny thing about that is is you lose a lot of money in savings you know it's it's weird I know it's strange but uh, yeah I just got to get that back up again um, you know I'd really like to uh, do like a study abroad I'm not sure how uh, viable that's going to be. I know that I'm going to have to work my GPA back up again because, um, like, I got really, uh, I was really stressed out about not being able to find work. So I was focused, you know, on trying to find a job, and I know m my uh, grades suffered because of it. So I'm probably gonna probably gonna catch a lot of hell for that. Um, probably gonna have to. You know, be put on academic suspension or something like that you know at least for the next semester but plus side is it'll be summer semester so I'll be able to get my GPA back up to standards now that you know I'm gainfully employed and money won't be as big of an issue as it was before so that's nice and plus you know the way the summer classes I got set up uh, so far for summer one just two classes I go in Monday through Thursday, and then you know Friday through set. Friday through Sunday, I got off completely. So that's nice. And uh, speaking of class, I'm uh, seriously thinking about changing my major as well because you know I've been at this whole uh, 
computer information systems, IT, business, sort of dealio for a while now. And it just isn't working for me, man. You know, I picked it because it was, you know, to me, the safe bet. You know, everybody's gonna need more IT people. You know, people that work in IT get like fuck tons of money and stuff, and that's great. But it's just, I don't know. <laughs> it's too hard, man. And plus, I'm just, you know, I gotta face facts. You know, I'm just not that into it anymore. You know, as far as like it being a career choice. You know, I take a lot of pride in what I've done online as far as, you know, establishing the Andy Son brand. I know it sounds super douchey, but, you know, I, I do take a lot of pride in that. It's, you know, been a long time coming, and I think I should uh, invest more in doing that sort of thing. I think the... Oh. There it was. <laughs> I thought, I always think it's the light, but that was actually one entrance to the Walmart. And, uh, but anyway, I'm th seriously thinking about uh, changing my major over to uh, like film studies and stuff like that. So this week, I'm gonna go talk with uh, the uh, communications school, or the communications department, I guess, and uh, see what we can do about that because you know, if this semester has taught me anything, it's that, you know, I don't like a lot of the business courses <laughs> and stuff like that just because eh, it's just not my thing. I love business. I just, you know, it's changed a lot from what's taught in schools. So, yeah. Anyway, look at this Walmart, man. This is, it's been a while actually since I've seen a regular Walmart. This isn't a super Walmart. This is a ye olde basic Walmart. Like, I thought they stopped making them. You know? I thought that they died out a long time ago and that they were all super Walmarts, but not this one. This one's a holdout. Anyway, so uh, I'm gonna go inside and uh, get a money order for things as well as groceries and all that kind of stuff. So, with that said, this is the Andy Son. Sign up for now. Thanking you guys boop, for tuning into this car vlog and for watching my other stuff. Also, want to thank you guys for liking, for the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, coming at you boop, with my May 2016 update video for, you guessed it, May 2016. Woo! So yeah, as always with these uh, monthly update videos, I'm going to be going over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. But first, let's have some coffee. Ah, yeah, good stuff. <laughs> that was my cheap rip off of the One Cup of Japan from Charlie no Saikatsu. Um, good channel, check them out. I'll uh, be sure to leave a link in the description below in the boobie boops for you to check out. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, so let's go over some uh, some YouTube -y stuff. First on the list for YouTube -y stuff, um, now that the spring semester is over, I can finally start uh, working on some more YouTube stuff. I kind of put a lot of uh, doing stuff on YouTube on hold uh, last month just because uh, of finals and stuff like that. And uh, now that finals are over for the semester, um, I'm starting to uh, bring back some uh, some past projects and starting to work on videos again. So I'm really excited about that. Um, the past project that I talked about last month um, with making, like how to make a, a crock pot full of white chili, uh, that's gonna be coming out this month. Um, working on that. Um, let's see, I uh, got new, new episodes of Andy Cade already out actually. Um, just started uh, releasing Slime Rancher at the time of this recording, so if uh, you guys want to check that out, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm also working on a new playthrough. Um, I'm about three episodes in for the five episode set, so that's going to be coming out very soon as well. And uh, I'm also looking for, uh, for new suggestions for uh, Andy Cade and stuff like that, um, as far as like what games you'd like me to play and stuff like that. Now, um, 
Now with the whole Andy Cade series, um, like, I like doing Andy Cade, don't get me wrong, but it is a very uh, time consuming uh, series to do. So I'm just debating on whether I should really continue doing it or maybe make it like an every once in a while thing or something like that. I'm not, not really sure, but um, let me know in the comments below in the boopity boops or send me a personal message if you'd like. Um, oh wait, <laughs> I forgot, YouTube doesn't do personal messages anymore. Um, just send me an email, um, email address is in the about page for my channel. You just go there, find the email address, and bam, there you go, so. <laughs> um, anyway, um, yeah, like I enjoy doing the Andy Cade series, but it is a very uh, time consuming series to do. Uh, not only to record, but to edit and stuff like that. So I just like to know if you guys like what you see because uh, if I'm putting all that time and effort into making a series um, and if you guys are just kind of eh with the whole thing, then it's like I could probably be spending my time uh, better, you know, doing something else you guys do like and stuff like that. So uh, just want to make sure my time is being used wisely. <laughs> to say the least. Uh, anyway, um, now we've got that out of the way. I'm also looking for uh, new YouTube ideas as well. Um, since I came back to America, it's it hasn't been easy um, coming up with new exciting YouTube stuff because my channel was basically a travel channel for a while and uh, I'm not really doing as much traveling as I used to uh, now that I'm out of the Navy and I'm pretty much just back to being a regular old Joe Schmo, uh, going to college and stuff like that. So it's kind of difficult to find uh, new and interesting things to do and also those new and interesting things do end up costing money, which I don't have a whole lot of. <laughs> so budget's a bit tighter now, but uh, I am looking for uh, new ideas and stuff like that. I'm always looking for new ideas, but uh, I'm just putting it out there. Uh, so if you guys have any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And also, I'm thinking about uh, doing a podcast series. Right now, it's just kind of in the developmental stage. I'm um, looking to do like kind of an interview series with a lot of uh, top uh, YouTubers and stuff like that. A lot of well-known people on like YouTube, Snapchat, Instagram, stuff like that. Um, but again, I have to uh, contact them or their people depending on who it is so uh, it's definitely a work in progress but it's something I want to do um, still it's still very much in a infancy stage right now I'm still uh, hashing out what I all want to do with the podcast but the basic idea of it is to um, interview content creators and I hate using that word but uh, basically to interview like youtubers stuff like that and see, you know, what drew them onto YouTube, what they do on YouTube, um, different milestones that they've gone through, any kind of tips and stuff that they uh, might have for other YouTubers or content creators. <laughs> Again, I don't like using that word, but it is what it is. So um, that's the basic uh, just for the, uh, the idea of the series. Um, again, it's all a matter of coordinating with guests and getting them on and stuff like that. So uh, be sure to uh, keep an eye on that. And uh, another thing I want to talk about here uh, involving YouTube stuff before we move on to the personal life section. I'm also working on a secret project right now. Um, I had to put it on hold uh, when I moved out here to Western to uh, like the Portage, Kalamazoo area because um, I wanted to focus on school and uh, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, life kind of happened. So uh, it kind of got lost in the shuffle. But now that uh, the spring semester is over, I have a lot more time now to focus on, you know, YouTube projects, including that one. So right now I'm in the middle of uh, working on it right now, actually. <laughs> I just got done rendering one of the videos. So uh, once I'm done with this, I'm gonna continue working on the project. And I'm hoping to make it kind of a, uh, a documentary 
at some point. Um, but again, like with the podcast, it's all a matter of coordinating with people and, you know, getting times to sit down and interview them and stuff like that. So it's not something I can just hammer out in a couple days and bam, there you go. You know, this is going to be a very um, carefully crafted documentary and I'm still in like the writing stages, the very, very early write writing stages. So once I get something a bit more concrete and I get uh, proper permissions to um, uh, disclose what it's about, I guess, uh, then I can talk to you guys a bit more freely about it. But for now, just know that I'm working on something. <laughs> Can't talk about it just yet, but uh, hopefully I can soon. So, now that we've got the, uh, the youtube stuff out of the way, take a sip of coffee and uh, we'll talk about some personal life stuff. Ah, it's good coffee. Um, anyway, so personal life stuff. Um, the, sem the spring semester is finally over. I'm gonna be starting uh, summer classes next week, um, you know. Not letting, you know, gotta strike while the iron's hot, right? So, uh, some of the, one of the reasons why I'm doing uh, summer classes is not only to keep my GI Bill BAH stipend, so that way I can still afford to live in this place, but uh, also to kind of keep myself in the student mindset. And uh, it was really difficult for me to kind of get back into that mindset again uh, after being out of school for so long, like, uh, before this, the last time I was in school was in 2007. So, uh, needless to say, I was a little rusty at, uh, being a student. So I had to relearn all that. Uh, I had to relearn how to learn, basically. <laughs> and then also just dealing with a lot of change that happened in a very short amount of time, you know, getting out of the Navy, moving back to America from Japan, moving to a whole new place with where I don't know anybody, going back to school. All this happened in very quick succession. And it was very difficult for me to uh, just kind of wrap my head around all of that. Now, I mean, on the surface, it was kind of like, yeah, of course, you know, to, you know, at first it was just like, well, it's the next step, you know, no big deal, right? You know, just whatever, move on. <laughs> but uh, once I actually got down to actually doing it, then, you know, problem problems started to uh, to surface, and uh, I did find some difficulty with uh, some of the classes. Not all, but a couple of the classes. Which, uh, by the way, final grades came out, and uh, those classes I weren't, I wasn't uh, doing so good in. Ended up not doing so good grade wise. So um, again, another reason why I'm doing the summer courses so I can build my GPA back up again. I did talk with my. Uh, uh, VA coordinator at the campus and they said that I can retake the classes but uh, I'm gonna wait until you know much later to retake them because uh, you know I want to make sure that I'm uh, in the right mindset and stuff like that you know before I retake them and you know because I'm shaking off a lot of rust you know with going back to school and stuff like that so I gotta make sure that I'm in a good mindset before I even attempt to retake those classes. But uh, I am able to, so uh, just, yeah. <laughs> in the future, I might retake those classes, so yeah. Um, but uh, overall, you know, this semester, um, you know, it was definitely a learning experience, you know. I mean, obviously, going back to school, the <laughs> But not just with uh, the academics, but also with uh, how I dealt with uh, a lot of change, um, overcoming a lot of obstacles, um, just the whole process in general, because um, I think I would have had, you know, a much better time adjusting and stuff like that had I um, gotten in in the fall I would have, you know, gotten honorably discharged a bit earlier, so I would have time to find a place, have time to get a job and all this kind of stuff, but, uh, you know, it is what it is, so I had to deal with uh, what I had. Um, there's a lot of uh, decisions that I made that I shouldn't have done, you know, looking back on it now. 
Um, again, with uh, enrolling in the spring versus enrolling in the fall, the uh, the job market was pretty much, you know, nobody was hiring at all, <laughs> you know, across the board, no matter what job I looked into, um, nobody was hiring because, you know, it was the winter and stuff like that. But uh, it wasn't until uh, last month, actually, you know, when I was studying for finals that I started getting callbacks from all these different companies that I applied to over the months and they're like hey you know, come in for an interview come in for an interview hey <laughs> I'm like where were you guys like two three months ago shit but uh, you know I was grateful for the callback but still kind of like where the hell were you guys um, but now I'm happy to say that I'm gainfully employed um, just got hired at uh, McDonald's, I know. <laughs> Had to eat a big slice of humble pie with that one, actually, because um, I didn't, you know, one of my things that I was looking for when I was looking for a job was to not go back to fast food, because that was like my big thing. You know, I didn't want to be one of those failure stories of, oh, he got out of the military and all he can get is flipping burgers and, oh, he's such a loser and shit like that. But, uh, you know, I had to approach it with a different mindset and that um, I'm going back to school so I mean McDonald's isn't my career <laughs> you know I'm not planning on making it my career um, it's just uh, a nice little part-time gig that I have to help me pay the bills and stuff like that and help me live a fairly comfortable life you know um, I don't exactly live super lavishly in my one bedroom apartment but uh, you know, it helps, it'll help with uh, a lot of the extra costs and stuff like that because uh, another misconception uh, about like the GI Bill, you know, the BAH and stuff like that is that it, you know, pays for everything. And uh, I guess that depends on where you live and your living arrangements and stuff like that. Like if you lived in the dorms, like you'd be straight balling because you would still be able to collect that much money. Although I think you still have to pay like the room and board fee or something like that. I, I'm not sure exactly how that works. I don't know if that's separate or if that's tacked on to whatever the GI Bill pays. I don't know, but uh, yeah. Or even if I had like roommates or something like that, that would uh, greatly alleviate uh, the cost of living and stuff like that. But uh, I don't have them, just living by myself, which I'm totally fine with. Um, and I just got to uh, work a little bit, you know. I don't ha I don't need like gobs and gobs of hours. I just need a little bit to help me uh, get by, you know. So it's not like the BAH doesn't pay anything. It's just, uh, you know, <laughs> I just need a little part-time gig to kind of help uh, cover for some extra expenses. No big deal, you know. It's not my career again, so. And plus, uh, a lot of the jobs that I was looking at that, uh, you know, were very high paying and they weren't in fast food, <laughs> put it that way, um, were several towns away. And uh, after experiencing winter here, um, <laughs> it's probably best that I don't work out of town uh, for the time being because... Uh, you know, there was a lot of times where the lake effect snow was so severe that you know, I'm surprised I came back home um, in one piece, pretty much. Like there was one one time where the snowfall was so fierce and the plows weren't on the roads, or at least the roads that I was going down, that um, what it normally takes me about 15, 20-ish minutes to get from my apartment to school, you know, give or take traffic. But uh, in that instance, it took me over an hour to get back home. And I was just like, <laughs> I can't work out of town. You know, if, if there's gonna be this much snow, I, it just doesn't make sense for me to work out of town because if it took me this long to get home, you know, imagine if I got a job, you know, in Grand Rapids or Battle Creek or something like that and I'd have to drive a long ways, although Battle Creek's really close, but you know, like Grand Rapids, that's easily an hour away, you know, by car. And uh, just imagine if it started snowing during that time, it just, it just wouldn't be 
feasible. And again, I also looked into work studies, but uh, they don't have uh, enough hours for me to really benefit a whole lot from it because they pay, generally they pay like minimum wage and uh, a lot of what they do is they kind of work on like once you get either up to a certain amount of hours or you earn enough up to a certain like pay cap or whatever then they pay you so it's not like a once every week or every other week sort of thing it's just you reach up to I don't know, say $500 and then once you reach $500, then they pay you. So for something like that, like it just wasn't really feasible for me. So uh, again, that's why I decided to uh, get a job a bit more, you know, a bit more locally, we'll say, with McDonald's. But I um, had an orientation with them last week, uh, just waiting on my uniforms to come in so I can officially start, start. I'll go through training, get some hours, stuff like that. Uh, so that should be starting either this week or very early next week, I'm expecting. Um, if I haven't heard back from them this week, I'll give them a call, see what's going on. But in any event, uh, I see my uh, camera battery is getting a little low, so I think we'll end things here. So yeah, this is the Andy San. Sign up for now. Thanking you guys boop, for tuning in to this uh, monthly update video for May 2016. Woo. And uh, for watching my other stuff. Also, I want to thank you guys for liking, the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Coming at you, book with my May 2016 update video, part two. So yeah, in this update video, I'm just going to be, well updating you guys on stuff that I didn't uh, quite get to in the uh, the first update video and you know to cover changes and stuff like that so update <laughs> so yeah um, the other day I posted a uh, new little thing on my blog that's right I do have a blog it's uh, theandysan.com so um, it's it originally started off as just you know because before this whole YouTube thing uh, I was a blogger so that's kind of where I got my start on uh, doing stuff online. And uh, once YouTube came around, then I progressed to that platform. But we'll get to that in a minute. So uh, I got the blog post up here. So I'm just going to be kind of leafing through and uh, giving you guys a general gist of what's going to be going on uh, for a while. So, yeah. Um, the main thing is I'm going to be looking into uh, revamping my blog uh, it's just kind of been this ongoing thing and you know I've had you know several projects come and go that have kind of interfered with that but uh, I do want to get back into uh, trying to fix up my blog a little bit maybe um, change the layout or something like that although I do like the layout it's nice simple and effective but uh, I'm not sure if it still works in today's blogging world I mean that might have been cool back in 2006 not sure if it flies now in 2016 but uh, I could be wrong you know maybe simple is best but uh, let me know what you guys think in the uh, comments below in the boobity boops so I may be completely off base here I don't know but uh, in any event um, what I'm gonna be doing is taking a short little break from making new videos um, this is just because uh, uh, lately, just whenever I sit down to make one of them, like this one right here, um, <laughs> this is actually like my third take, but uh, anyway, uh, whenever I sit down to make videos, I'm not entirely happy with them, um, so I decided to uh, just take a little break, get uh, a chance to kind of uh, recoup, get back to basics as far as that goes, and you know, come back to YouTube fresh and stuff like that, but that's not to say I'm not going to be making any new videos. It's just I'm not going to be making um, new videos on a uh, consistent basis for a while. Uh, so uh, that's to you know, there's several reasons behind that, but we'll get into that. I'm getting ahead of myself here. So um, some changes to the video schedule. So in addition to um, kind of slowing down a little bit with the uh, the new stuff 
Um, one of the main things I'm going to be uh, putting on hiatus is Andy Cade. So, um, I do like playing video games, and uh, I do like how some of the Andy Cade episodes have turned out, and you guys seem to like them too. But the thing is, it is a very time-consuming uh, process to make them, because I gotta, it's not really like it's hard, it just takes a lot of time, because a lot of those episodes are like, you know, 15, 20 plus minutes long. And that's just what I put up on YouTube. You know, there's also the process of, you know, especially now because I'm a lot more um, picky about what I put up in Andy Kate episodes. It used to be just kind of, you know, put whatever on there and that's it. You know, just basically have it like a raw file and, you know, just kind of deal with that. But uh, lately I've been kind of getting a bit more picky about what I put up there and just try to trim a lot of the you know slow parts out but uh, again that takes more time to you know go through the whole thing and just kind of get rid of all the slow parts and then put in new edits and all that kind of stuff and again it's not hard it's just time consuming so that's the main point I want to get across here you know oh it's too hard for you to play video games and put online what's going on <laughs> no that's not the case at all it's just uh, just a matter of time really and with, uh, you know, summer classes, and I got uh, a new job, finally. So um, that's going to be eating into more of my time. Uh, so it's just, you know, it doesn't really make sense for me to keep on doing Andy Cade, at least on a consistent basis like this. So I decided to put it on hiatus for now. I'm going to be finishing up my current game, Go Go Nippon, my first trip to Japan. And then once that's all done, once it's done with its little five episode run, then uh, we'll just kind of put the whole Andy Cade thing on the shelf for a little bit and uh, just kind of go from there. Now, uh, does this mean that I'll never, ever, ever play video games and put them online again? You know, no, that's not really the case. Um, I do want to have Andy Cade be kind of a uh, an occasional thing. Just, you know, like if, if a new game that comes out that is interesting, and I think I'd be into, you know, I definitely do want to put that up on the channel, but it's not going to be uh, as consistent of a thing as it was, you know, with five episodes a week and stuff like that. It's not, it's not really going to happen anymore. So it's just going to be kind of an every once in a while thing. But uh, for now, I'm just going to kind of pump the brakes on it until uh, I get my time situation under control. <laughs> so, um... But what does this mean for content in general for the channel? So I'm um, still going to be doing the re-uploads of old stuff. So there's still going to be uh, new, quote unquote, <laughs> uh, releases on my channel. Um, just so that way there's, you know, an influx of content and stuff like that. But uh, I'm going to reduce those to uh, just one episode a day every day. Um, I haven't quite figured out what time slot I want to put it in yet. Um, I'm kind of aiming for like uh, late morning, early afternoon Eastern Standard Time. So if I would, if I would like give you guys an estimate, probably somewhere in between like 10 in the morning to around 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, somewhere about there. Um, once I figure it out, I'll, you know, let you guys know on Twitter. So if you aren't following me there, it's twitter.com slash theandysan. So easy to remember, right? <laughs> Consistency. Um, but, yeah, I'll just do one episode a day for those instead of, you know, one a day and then two on the weekends. So that way, you know, you guys get something. But, uh, yeah, I'm just going to be slowing down on the new stuff for a little bit once I get my schedule under control and you know I'm doing good in classes and stuff like that but um, the new videos when they are to be made will be released uh, maybe like an hour or two before the re-upload and uh, I'll be sure to announce it on Twitter uh, a little bit before like maybe the day before or something like that uh, when a new episode's coming out so be sure to follow me again on Twitter so twitter.com slash the Andysan follow me <laughs> So anyway, now let's get into uh, the personal uh, problems and stuff like that I've been having. So uh, one of the main reasons um, I wanted to take a break 
on doing new stuff on YouTube in addition to uh, trying to uh, get a good beat on my uh, schedule with work involved and summer classes and stuff like that is that you know quite honestly I've just been you know too focused on growing the channel as opposed to just making good videos or at least enjoyable videos and because I've been so growth driven it's really kind of taken the joy out of making videos for you guys and I, that's just something that I'm totally against and it, it just it took me a while to realize it because you know I was so stubborn and like I wanted to have the channel do good so I tried you know looking at some of the looking at the analytics and seeing you know what's trending on YouTube and you know trying to fit in with the cool kids and do stuff like that but you know a lot of that stuff's just kind of been met with uh, you know modest success at best you know despite you know the effort that I put into it but you know, even when it was successful, I just wasn't overall happy with it. And, uh, you know, the whole, one of the main things that kind of leaked into my whole uh, bad attitude was, you know, number one was financial problems and that at the time I didn't have a job. So I was digging into my savings a bit more than I should have. And, you know, eventually it just kind of, well, ran out. So uh, <laughs> that also put a lot of stress on me and, you know, grades and stuff like that. You know, there was times where, you know, I wouldn't have homework done or, you know, even days where I wouldn't show, show up to certain classes, uh, which is something I don't recommend. Um, because, but it wasn't because, you know, I was sad or anything like that. It was because I was, you know, busy hunting for jobs and, you know, all of it's done online. So... You know, I'm just sitting here on the computer, okay, you know, going through Craigslist, going through, like, LinkedIn and all these other different job boards, Monster, Indeed, all that kind of stuff, looking in the area, like, okay, you know, what jobs are available? And then just kind of looking through, like, a map of Kalamazoo Portage area and seeing, like, okay, uh, what kind of minimum wage job could I get, you know, possibly, and just kind of put in my application here, 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 and uh, just kind of waiting because um, the thing is like with with how it is now, um, it used to be, you know, you'd put in your application either, it used to be, uh, you know, mainly paper-based, so like you go to the place, ask for an application, get the application, bring it home, fill it out, and then bring it back and you know you could possibly talk to a manager then I don't know depending on the company or you could just say you know hey here's my application you know have a nice day you know put on the the smile <laughs> and uh, at least maybe try to get a little bit of face time with the manager but if not you know at least you got it in so uh, and then like wait a week start calling seeing like hey you guys I'm just checking on my application you know I was wondering if you guys were still hiring you know I'm still available you know, stuff like that, but worded a lot more businessy. So, um, and then that was the basic way to do it. But now it's all done electronically. You know, you just send in your application, you do the little uh, assessment quiz, and uh, you know, because I tried call, I tried doing you know the old method of you know calling him back after a week of sending the thing in, and uh, you know, most of the time, in fact, well all the time that I've done that. Um, the thing is, uh, that particular store doesn't actually hire people per se. It's all done through either an HR department that they have in store or that's just kind of outside the store. You know, it's all done corporately. You know, all the applications and stuff go through the machine and they look, you know, for stores in the area of, you know places that they need people and they look for like the best quote unquote candidate and then you know once they determine that you're the best then they send out a little thing to the store saying hey call this guy in for an interview you know see how he does and that's when you can get the determination for being hired but as far as getting picked up for an interview I should have clarified that so you get hired by the store but 
you get the interview through the HR department computer uh, corporate machine, basically. So and that was the thing that was kind of killing me because I couldn't get any FaceTime with the manager to the point where it'd be like, you know, eh, they're coming for an interview. So it was a lot, it was a lot less personal than uh, what I'm used to. So I just pretty much had to sit there and take it in the face, you know, and just wait until people were hiring. And uh, obviously one of the big things was timing, you know, because I came here in the, in the, the winter slash spring semester. Um, the, uh, a lot of the stores, in fact, none of the stores around were hiring for anybody because, you know, they had already got everybody locked in from the previous semester so they didn't really need any new people. And plus it was winter time, so you know, they they weren't really hiring to begin with. But uh, I still kept in kept plugging in my application to places. And uh yeah, it wasn't until <laughs> ironically enough, it wasn't until the uh the la the previous month, April, the last month of the semester, uh for spring that I started getting callbacks and that was something else that kind of affected my grades because I got I got so many callbacks for interviews and stuff that it kind of affected my grades cuz like I'm worried like okay I hope I do good in this interview you know I hope it you know do good and you know there'd be times where I'd have to either miss class or get out a little early in order to make the interview or to make it back home to change because I don't want anything like I don't want to accidentally sit in some, you know, sit in like a dirty seat and have like a stain on my butt or something like that. So I wanted to make sure, you know, my interview outfit was nice and clean and didn't have to worry about any of that stuff. So I'd, you know, go to school in normal clothes and then come back home, change, and then go to uh, wherever the interview was. So it was just a lot of, a lot of worry and, you know, at you know, on one hand, I was very excited that I was getting all these callbacks. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. But at the same time, I was like, where were you guys a couple months ago when I really needed you? <laughs> Not that I don't now, but, you know, hot dang. So, but eventually after all that, um, I uh, got hired at a McDonald's. I know, really exciting. But, uh, yeah, that was kind of uh, a humbling experience, you know, just because... I, you know, my the one thing I was looking for uh, in the beginning when I was looking for jobs was as long as it wasn't fast food or food related, um, I'll do it. You know, because I was looking at like either retail, like an office job or like a paid internship or work study and uh, the whole work study thing, you know, all the programs were locked in for that particular semester, fiscal year, whatever you want to call it. So I couldn't get an in with any of those, even the VA work study, because they were all locked in for that time period. But uh, next, this coming uh, like fall semester, I might be able to. It's just a matter of uh, applying for them and making sure that they can uh, give me the hours and pay that I need to, you know, help keep the lights on during the month. Because uh, the whole thing, and yes, I do get BAH because I'm going through the post 9-11. But it only goes so far, and I still gotta put gas in the car, still gotta eat, and all this other stuff. So I've been living uh, very leanly, eating like, you know, ramen noodles and, you know, microwave burritos, because you can get those pretty cheap and they're pretty filling. And, you know, I got, you know, huge bags of rice. So I've been, you know, and just drinking water which, you know, is also good for you. You know, don't get me wrong. But, uh, yeah, I really haven't been li living, you know, you know, luxuriously or anything like that. It's been very, very Spartan lifestyle. And another reason why I stay in the apartment so that way I don't end up, you know, spending more money. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why I haven't been doing too many videos outside is because stay in the apartment so I don't spend money. Whether it's money and gas to drive around or, you know, maybe I go outside and I go to the convenience store. I'm like, hey, I want to pick something up, you know, <laughs> just because 
I'm in the area, you know, want something to drink, you know, whatever. I'm just kind of tempted. So I figure just kind of best to, you know, keep the blinders on because I really don't, I really, I literally can't afford to, to do stuff like that right now. But uh, now that I got hired at McDonald's, uh, once the paycheck starts coming in, then I can, you know, spend a bit, I uh, can kind of breathe a bit easier and, you know, spend money on actual food which is another thing I'm going to be getting into uh, once I can, you know, recalculate my budget based on what I make at McDonald's and stuff like that. So, but that's a video for another time. But in any event, uh, basically just to boil that whole rambly thing down, um, I just got very frustrated with not being able to get a job, having little to no money, uh, and having my grades suffer because I was so stressed out. And it just kind of bled into my whole attitude. And plus, I was, I was, and still am going through um, just the whole transition of not only getting out of the military, but coming back to America after being in Japan for two years, and then going back to college after being out of college for going on 10 years now. Actually, it was 10 years uh, this month in May, May of 2006 or 2007. So actually, that's nine years. Never mind. So. Uh, nine years of being out of uh, college for the first time. So it's just a lot of changes happened in a very short amount of time. And, uh, you know, it's going to take me a little bit to kind of, you know, even out again. But uh, I, think I'm, I think I'm on track and I'm kind of getting there. And uh, getting a job again will uh, really help out, you know, not only with uh, helping me out with the money situation, but also giving me a little something extra to do and kind of give me, giving me a reason to get up in the morning besides school. So there you go. And, uh, yeah, so this whole negative mentality and it kind of leaked over, you know, cause I would watch a lot of these, uh, really great up and coming YouTubers. And, uh, I remember following them when they only had maybe a couple hundred subs or even less than that. And you know, within a matter of months, they surpassed me in subs, you know, by a significant amount. And uh, yeah, I was, I was and am happy for them. But at that time, you know, I was also just really jealous because, you know, I was, ma you know, I thought I was making good videos and I'm like, why couldn't I get a little bit of those subs too? You know, like what's wrong with my videos? Like, is the lighting bad? The sound bad? You know, do I ramble and um and ah and you know too much? You know, what's wrong with my videos? And I, you know, took it really personally because I figured, you know, like there's something wrong with me. And, you know, I put a lot of my self worth into those videos and. Just, I guess, the not really those videos, but the analytics of those videos. I should uh, rephrase that. Uh, because even though the videos I think are good, but uh, they may only get like maybe a hundred or so views, you know, compared to some other ones that I thought were just kind of throwaway videos, but ended up getting like tens of thousands of views. Um, but the whole thing with YouTube is. Uh, it's just really a luck of the draw, and you can do a lot of things to um, even the odds in your favor. But uh, ultimately, YouTube is comes down to luck, really. And you know, like I said, you know, if you do a lot of good things, you know, make good good quality content on a consistent basis. But uh, that doesn't work for everybody. But ultimately, it's just a crapshoot. But anyway, this whole mentality of thinking that, you know, what's wrong with my videos, what's wrong with me, um, just really killed my creativity. And I could tell in some of those videos I was just really angry and wanted to, uh, the videos to do well. And it just, you know, leaked into the videos, leaked onto social media, you know, because I would post a lot of negative stuff. And, you know, some of my friends were getting kind of concerned, you know, like, what's going on with them up there? Uh, but, you know, I was talking with my mom on uh, Mother's Day 
Um, because we usually talk like, you know, once a week, you know, usually on the weekends when uh, both of us aren't working. <laughs> I can say that now because I got a job. But uh, yeah, we usually like talk once a week. And uh, we were talking on Mother's Day and she just kind of, you know, gave me a little bit of advice. And uh, one of the main things that really stuck with me was, you know, living more in the present because uh, I noticed that I focused too much on you know, things I did before in the past, whether that was my life in the Navy or my life in Japan or when I was in college the first time or when I was in high school or something like that. I kind of looked at it a little bit, you know, too much. And then for the future, you know, I was focused too much on the future. You know, like, okay, you know, this whole college thing, it's, I got about like three to four years then after that I'm going to be in Japan so this whole college thing doesn't mean anything and it just is just a bad mindset to be in so um, I'm going to be focusing more on the present whether that's making this video right now or having a drink of water or eating some microwave burritos I don't know <laughs> maybe going outside for a walk after this probably uh, but in any event I'm going to be focusing more on uh, just the present and being more in the present so that way I can enjoy what's going on right now and be more appreciative of what I have right now in this moment and hopefully I can get back to a, a proper mindset and one of the things that I feel is going to help me with that is to even though I said you know be in the present and stuff like that uh, but I do want to get back to my roots uh, my blogging roots because uh, I did the whole blogging thing you know even before YouTube started up um, I originally started it back in 2005 but I've had uh, a website in I started my own first website uh, back on GeoCities <laughs> way back in the day uh, that started back in I think either 2003 or 2000 I was thinking it was 2004 very early 2004 because um, it was the only free uh, website thing that you could get at the time and I started it up originally to uh, have like a log of Yu-Gi-Oh cards and Yu-Gi-Oh card rulings because basically my best friend and I were uh, doing this uh, Yu-Gi-Oh uh, trading card game tournament and uh, I just wanted to make like a quick little down and dirty site because the uh, the official site had flash and you know keep in mind this was like early 2000s so not everybody had awesome internet that they do today or internet on their phones that was a pretty new thing and even if they did it was hella expensive so <laughs> not exactly something you know high school kids could have for the most part so uh, I just made this little website just to kind of keep an inventory on uh, all the new cards and uh, certain rulings and stuff like that so that way we could reference it faster than the official site. And it was all just kind of a you know, cut and paste from uh, the official site as well as the Beckett Yu-Gi-Oh page, which um, in the early days, I don't know if they still do it anymore because I don't think Yu-Gi-Oh is as popular now as it was back then but uh, when it first came out um, Beckett made uh, these little uh, Yu-Gi-Oh uh, I guess magazines with like really good art on the cover and you know a lot of times you know it was like special like uh, reflective art and stuff like that it was really cool and uh, it had like um, it had uh, the big thing was it had um, all the uh, card prices for that time and stuff like that so you know we would obviously get like the newest issue of Beckett so that way when um, we would go in to trade for cards and you know somebody was like I'll give you this for this and we kind of look at the uh, the market value for you know the cards in question and we'd be like really you know this cards like you know maybe five dollars more you know <laughs> um, maybe throw in a little something extra you know maybe we can talk or something like that and uh... it also had like i think deck strategies and covered like the um... 
like the American tournaments and the Japanese tournaments and stuff like that. So it was pretty cool. Uh, but I don't think they do it anymore because it's not as popular as it used to be. But uh, I digress. So anyway, I um, originally started a website in 2004. Then in 2005, I started blogging because uh, my best friend, same guy, who uh, I did the uh, card tournaments with, even though he was more he was more in charge of it than I was, but uh, I was a regular, we'll say. Um, but he went off to college, and at the time I was going to tech school, so I was uh, just commuting from home. So it was basically like being in high school, but really far away, and I only had to go like two to three times a week. But uh, he went off to a proper four-year university, and uh, he was out of town and stuff like that. And uh, I was just doing uh, some random Googling one day, and I found his blog on Zanga. <laughs> You guys remember that from back in the day. And I'm like, oh, this is really cool. And then I found out that some of his friends in college kind of got him started into it. And they all kind of did it too. And I'm just like, oh, this is really cool. So I figured I'd, you know, start up my own Zanga just to kind of keep in contact with him. And, you know, see what his friends are up to as well. And then later they became my own friends. So I wasn't a total creepazoid. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just, I really fell in love with the platform. And, uh... You know, it was a good way for me to keep in touch with my friends because keep in mind this was, you know, before Facebook or like in the early, early days of Facebook where uh, you had to have a, uh, a college email. And uh, I remember this because when Facebook, when I first heard about Facebook back in like 2005-ish, I think, um, I wanted to get on it. And I'm like, oh, this is really cool, dude. But uh, I was going to ITT Tech at the time. Um, and Facebook wouldn't accept my ITT Tech email address as an official accredited college, which should have been a red flag right there, you know, looking back on it. But uh, in any event, I couldn't get a Facebook account until uh, about a year later when I transferred from ITT Tech to Urbana University in Urbana, Ohio. And then I was able to get, I was able to use my Urbana address to, uh, to sign up for Facebook. So that was the initial address I used to sign up for Facebook before it went public, I think like a year or two later. And I'm just like, fuck, really? <laughs> Come on, Mark. Why you do this to me? Zucks. So, um, yeah, that's why I started blogging because, and <laughs> that was actually a tagline for my blog, you know, because I can't Facebook. So I started the blog because I couldn't get on Facebook because of the email thing because this was before they went public. So I used that to keep in touch with uh, with him and you know his friends later became my friends. And then I found a whole community of uh, different people and stuff like that. And then when YouTube came around, um, I got an account uh, May 1st of 2006. So I recently celebrated my uh, 10 year anniversary. Uh, that's pretty cool. But I originally signed up for YouTube so that way I could uh, take advantage of the subscriber function. So that way I could, you know, subscribe to all my favorite YouTube, you know, video makers, YouTubers, before they were all labeled content creators. And uh, so I could get uh, emails in, you know, my Gmail, Hotmail back in the day, uh, letting me know when new videos would come out. So that way I could go over there and be like, ah, new video, cool. <laughs> So I signed, I signed up for uh, YouTube for that reason, as well as to leave comments and stuff like that. So like way back in the day, I was really big into commenting on other people's YouTube videos, and I still do it. I mean, obviously, you know, because, you know, A, it's a good way to get your channel out there, and B, um, I always like leaving comments on uh, people's videos that I like and stuff like that, and I think it's just kind of cool to be part of the, the community, you know, one of us. <laughs> So I started it to do all that, and then I was, as I was watching all these people kind of come up into, you know, being regulars on YouTube, um, I wanted to do it too, but at the time I didn't have uh, any cameras or anything like that. And keep in mind, this was before cameras were on every phone, you know, and the cameras that were on phones weren't very good, you know, even by, by the standards back then. So back then you had to get like an actual camera camera. So, you know, I was kind of shit out of luck pretty much. 
and uh, I borrowed my friend's camera to record a couple things while I was still in college. Um, did a little bit of recording random things every once in a while, but it was very erratic. It was just kind of like a whenever we get around to it sort of thing. But in September of 2008, that's when I decided to make the plunge, or take the plunge rather, and uh, purchase my own uh, little camera. It was a little Sanyo Zakti uh, CG6, so it was like the little pistol grip cameras that were really popular back in the day because he had the uh, the flip cameras, which had the little USB dongle that came out, and it had the screen on the back you couldn't flip around and see. So I got the Sanyo Zakti because you could you know, flip the screen around so you could actually kind of see what you were doing. But uh, the, the lens wasn't wide angle, so if I held it like about this far, it looked like I was like way up in your face and like my whole face took up the uh, <laughs> took up the video. But I only held it out this far because if I extended my arm for like a long period of time, even though the camera's not very heavy, um, after a while like my arm started shaking because like I'd try to hold it still and if I'm walking, you know, it's just like, ah, <laughs> you know, I got a lift. I'm, I'm, I'm not one of the strong ones. But, uh, yeah, so a lot of those early videos were a little, eh. But uh, the reason I'm uploading them is to, you know, show my progression as a YouTuber, video maker, content creator, yeah, <laughs> and stuff like that. And uh, don't worry, later on, uh, fairly soon, we're going to be getting to the HD videos which are a lot nicer in quality. So you're going to be seeing that very soon with the re-uploads. But uh, yeah, man. So once I got my own camera and stuff like that, started making videos a bit more regularly. Um, it wasn't like a, a daily or a weekly thing, but I uh, made them a lot more often than I did before. And I really got into it. And you know, the more I got into YouTube, uh, the less I did on my blog, you know, as far as written posts and stuff like that. So over time, and uh, it was especially uh, hard to do while I was in the Navy because, you know, you only had so much free time that you could work on stuff like that. And uh, the free time that I did have, I was dedicated mostly to making videos or putting videos together, you know, stuff like that. And I remember, you know, even when I was on the uh, the USS Kurtz, you know, just putting videos together, you know, in one of the spaces. Because you know, I had, like, my little uh, computer and stuff like that, and I would take the files and just had Sony Vegas, and I was just sitting there, you know, with the headphones on, just, okay, this part, this part, you know, so, yeah. <laughs> Couldn't really do that on Lassen because they were a bit more strict about it. And uh, we were doing a lot of operational stuff when we were underway on Lassen, but uh, on Kurtz, it was a lot more relaxed, so I I was able to do that and uh, stuff like that. But um, the main point of this is that, you know, the more I did YouTube, the less I did, you know, actual text blogging to the point where I kind of stopped it altogether and just did YouTube. And so I decided, you know, what, what if I uh, just incorporated my videos into my blog, you know, and just kind of made it like a mishmash of both of the things and so it kind of became that and then after a while I uh, you know tried keeping it uploaded or updated rather and you know there's just times where I couldn't get to like a proper computer you know I'd have to do it on mobile so I'm like ah, I can't really sit down to you know put it all together for a blog post so I'll just put it up on YouTube anyway so yeah that was kind of a a sad thing but uh, basically um, now that I have a little more time than I did when I was in the Navy um, still I still got things to do you know I got class to get to and work and all that kind of stuff but uh, I want to get around to revamping the blog uh, get the blog updated for videos and stuff like that um, the idea is to uh, just kind of keep it updated for uh, you know, from where I left off, basically. Um, eventually, I want to get to um, just kind of <clears throat> like uh, redoing the URLs for the YouTube videos. So that way it's uh, to the re-uploads versus the old videos, which have all been unlisted. So the videos will still work, but they're going to be on my old channel. So like if you wanted to you know, like go and 
watch it on the YouTube page and leave me a comment there, it would direct you to the old channel. So I think, you know, you know, I guess to give my re-uploads a chance to get some views and stuff like that, you know, it's best to, you know, change over the links and stuff like that. It's the same video, but uh, it's just on my new channel. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, as far as like the future goes, um, I want to do more blog posts versus video posts, at least for a little bit, just so that way I can kind of get back into the right mindset. I can, you know, dust off my, you know, writing chops and uh, stuff like that. But uh, it's not going to be a regularly scheduled thing, you know, because I feel that if I stick to uh, that kind of schedule, um, I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to panic a little bit too much because, you know, I got to scramble to put something together, you know, just so that way I can meet the deadline. And, you know, at first it was kind of cool to do that, but after a while it just kind of uh, ended up deadening my creativity because I had to put something out there and, you know, I had to do it like really quick. So <laughs> didn't have a whole lot of time to think about stuff. So uh, the blog posts and stuff like that are, you know, they're not going to be a, a frequently scheduled thing. But uh, I do want to make it happen and uh, maybe tailor up the blog a little bit. I'm not sure, you know, because I do like the look of it. But, uh, you know, look into some things, stuff like that. But first and foremost, we got to get it updated. That's the big thing. So I think I've covered all the bases here and we're, we just passed the 40-minute uh, the mark on the raw recording. So this is going to be a, a bit of a long one, but I uh, hope you guys kind of understand you know what's been going on with me lately why I've been acting a little weird and stuff like that and I hope you guys understand you know why I'm doing the things I'm doing to hopefully get back into a better place and to you know make better videos blog posts just make better stuff in the long run so with that said this is the Andy San sign up for now thinking you guys poop for tuning in to this long ass video <laughs> of me talking to my webcam and uh, for watching my other stuff, reading my other stuff on my blog. And I uh, also want to thank you guys for liking with the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you, book to talk about study abroad programs here at uh, Western Michigan University. And uh, the reason I'm talking to you guys about this is because uh, in a previous update that I posted on like Facebook and Twitter, and I've even talked about this uh, before in earlier videos, is that uh, I want to go back to Japan at some point. And uh, whether that's after I graduate or for a study abroad program here, um, still haven't 100% decided yet, but I am looking into uh, the different study abroad programs that Western offers, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So right now I got on the screen here all the different programs that Western offers uh, for universities in Japan in alphabetical order because, eh, why not? <laughs> I'm OCD like that, I guess. So anyway, um, not all these programs I'm going to be uh, super interested in, and uh, there's also a timing issue because as you can see here, for Daito Bunka, uh, there's no current uh, active application cycles right now. So they open up at certain times of the year. So obviously that's going to change depending on when depending on like when I actually apply. Now, and also keep in mind that this is a kind of a long term ish project. It's not, you know, it's not like I have my bags packed and I'm ready to go like right now. <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, I still have a lot of work to do as far as getting myself ready for these kinds of programs should I decide to uh, utilize them. Um, again, there's a lot of stuff I got to look into as far as like credits, how long I, I could potentially be out there for, uh, stuff like that. Just a lot of different uh, variables. But uh, anyway, in today's video, we're just going to look over the different programs that Western offers. So let's begin. So first up is Daito Bunka University in Higashi Matsuyama, Japan. Um, don't quite know where this is. I think this is like mid-Japan somewhere. 
unfamiliar with this area. But uh, anyway, looking over here, the program lasts for an entire academic year. Um, housing options include an apartment, which is pretty nice. Um, class standing, so basically like what grade you have to be in to do these study abroad programs. And typically this is it, you know, usually it's sophomore, junior, senior, that sort of thing. You know, freshmen, they don't allow over there. You know, they gotta prove themselves, get their GPA up, do core classes, stuff like that. So again, I'm not gonna do this anytime super soon, but you know, in the next year or two. Uh, let's see, language experience required, yes. So typically from what I've seen, uh, with the Japanese study abroad programs, you have to have at least, uh, I think, two classes worth of Japanese, maybe three. They may require an additional class, but from what I've heard from my Japanese teacher, that's pretty much what you have to do. Uh, see, program length is one academic year, and they usually start in the spring, so the beginning of the year to the end of the year, and then you come back you know, either for Christmas break or at like the beginning of the following year. I'm not quite sure. Again, more reason to, to you know, talk to the study abroad coordinator. I'm just looking over what's on the website here. So language of instruction, Japanese. Um, some courses are offered in English as well. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, minimum GPA is around 3.0 and that's kind of typical for the study abroad programs. Um, I've seen some of them as low as like a 2.5 and some of them as high as a 3.5. So again, it depends on the program and stuff like that. So just got to look into it. And plus, I didn't do so good this past semester, so that knocked my GPA down considerably. So um, I got to rebuild it in the next year or so. And by the time I'm actually up for these programs, it should be fine. But again, more reason to study, right? So uh, let's just look at some of the photos here in the photo gallery. I wonder if you can maybe, uh, I can't expand them, sorry. But there's the campus. Here's the, uh, the international office. And more of the international office. Welcome, Western Michigan University. <laughs> oh, shit, skipped, sorry. Uh, cafeteria, a little walk around campus. More of the cafeteria, the outside portion. That's pretty cool. Uh, more of the campus. It's very green, I like it. Then more of the international office. So that's cool. Alrighty, not too bad. I'm not familiar with this area, so I'll have to look into it a bit more. But uh, that's just one of the programs offered. So let's go to the next one. This one, this is one of the ones that I'm really looking into as well. This is uh, Doshista University in Kyoto, Japan. And just like with the previous program, it's for one academic year. Um, you get a dorm, but it's a single dorm, so that's pretty cool. Again, only offered sophomore through senior. Language experience required, yes. Pretty much the same requirements and stuff as it was with the previous program, but it's in Kyoto, which is like traditional Japan, so that's pretty cool. Um, never been out to Kyoto, and that's actually one of the places I want to go to if I decide to do a study abroad program. I've never been to the Kansai area before. So there's the entrance to the campus. Global Village and Learning Center. Oh, shit, skip it, sorry. This thing's a little... Anyway, there's the campus. Pretty campus. <laughs> More of the campus. Uh, classroom. Looks pretty much like ours. A little different, but much the same. Oh, dang. This thing goes by too fast, sorry. Heading to the cafeteria. Dang, this guy's contemplating life right here, huh? Um, walking through campus. New building on campus. Entrance to the camp. Oh, okay, and we looped right back. Okay, cool. Uh, it looks okay. Um, and here it goes into a bit more detail about what those particular programs are. You know, it's highly competitive and stuff like that. And it just kind of goes through the history of Doshishita University and stuff like that. And just talking about the location, it's Kyoto. So. Let's see, this one's located in the heart of Kyoto City, north of the Kyoto Imperial Palace, and just in front of the renewed, re-owned Shikoku-ji Temple. 
So, and this is just a more detailed version. And costs and stuff, again, that's something I have to look into because I'm a special case being on the GI Bill. Um, I'll have to look into it, but from my understanding, uh, because I, I would be studying abroad, all my tuition and stuff would be going through Western, so it'll be as if I'm still at Western, so I don't have to worry about uh, weirdness, I don't think. But again, I have to look into it, so. Anyway, next uh, university. So this is the uh, the Japanese Academic Year Exchange Program. I'm a little uh, confused with this particular one. I'm not sure. I I'm assuming that maybe you spend like maybe a semester at one university and then you go to the next one or something like that. But basically it just kind of looks like an all around thing. But the, uh, the accommodations are a little different. You can either get an apartment or a double dorm or a single dorm still offered to the same people. It's for an academic year. Its uh, language of instruction is in both Japanese and English. Uh, minimum GPA is 2.5, so this would be a bit easier to get into. Uh, let's see, same thing as last time. Japanese exchange programs are competitive. And just see, complete immersion. Okay. And, uh, okay. And it pretty much just talks about this, but uh, I, I don't know if this is just the generic, this is the exchange program kind of thing. I'm a little confused about this one, so anyway, we'll skip it. Next up is JCMU, the Japanese Center for Michigan Universities. This is, again, one of the easier ones to get into, and you can do it for uh, an academic year. You can do it for single semesters as well, so you can do it for like the fall semester, spring semester, uh, summer two, but they also have summer one up here too, as well. So, uh, I don't know, I'll have to look into it, I guess. But uh, anyway, you can uh, go to a double dorm, which usually just like a roommate or whatever, or you can stay with the host family, still offered to the same amount of people. This one doesn't require language experience, so again, easier to get into. Uh, you can do it for a semester, an academic year or for the summer. Language of instruction is in English and Japanese. Minimum GPA is 2.5. So anyway, all right, so let's go back to photos. So here's tatami room, another part of the tatami room, dorm room, dorm kitchen. So it's like a community kitchen, I guess. Uh, dorm bathroom, yes. Deep Japanese tub, I so miss that, dude. You got the courtyard overlooking Lake Biwa. Oh, okay. This is still up in Kansai area, I think. Classroom, classroom overlooking Lake Biwa. And view from the library. And we're back. So this is in, oh, this is in Hikone, Japan. Okay. I, th I don't know exactly where that's at, but that's where like a lot of hot springs and stuff are, I think. So that's pretty cool. Let's see. JCMU Center consists of a beautiful, spacious, active building. Cool, cool. Located in Hikone, a city of approximately 100,000 people, situation on the eastern shore of Lake Biwa and Shiga Prefecture. It's a castle town. Okay. It's about 45, 90 minutes away from Kyoto, Nagoya, and Osaka. So yeah, it's in the uh, you know Kansai-ish area. It's located in the center of Honshu, the main island. Okay, yeah, yeah. And it just kind of goes into more... Okay, so that's why summer two wasn't in there. It's for the language intensive semester. Students interested in... Okay, that's why. Okay. That explains it. Okay, so this is actually a really interesting one. This one I might be getting into. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. Next up is KO University. So, for those of you who've been watching the uh, JVlog community for a long time, uh, you'll know that the uh, the late great Roger Swan went to KO University through Western, actually. So this is the exact exchange program that he went through to get out to do the Tokyo Swan series of videos. And this one is actually, from what I've seen, the toughest program to get into, and you'll see why. So. Like with all the others, it's for an academic year. Um, you get an apartment for an housing option. 
same class standings, you need language experience, language of instructions in both Japanese and English, but you need a 3.5 GPA to get into. So this one is definitely the, you know, the creme de la creme, you know, for uh, Japanese exchange programs offered at Western. So Keio University is like one of the top, I think it's like one of the top five or top three universities in all of Japan. Uh, seconded maybe only to Tokyo University. So it's basically like saying, you know, it's like the Harvard and Yale and Stanford of Japan, pretty much. So anyway, let's look at some of the photos. And there's a lot more photos with this one, what I can see. So there's Keio University circa 2003. There's a Sanja festival. Uh, you know, Kashira Park in Tokyo. Shit, skipped it. It's hard to get a beat on these. Oh, it's the same thing. Anyway, uh, Golden Pavilion in Kyoto, Kyo Mizudara Temple, Dare Temple, Soy Sauce, Dumpling, Ramen, Morph Ko, Cherry Blossoms in Tokyo. I think this is in uh, Meguro, I think. Shrine Festival in Tokyo, Okinawan Delicacies. Entrance to the campus. Yeah, I remember going to uh, the entrance area. It's right by Tokyo Tower, this area. It's really impressive and it's just massive. More bar bikes parked outside campus. Um, the old library. Note the crest, which is the crossing of two ink pens, symbolizing the university's sole focus on education. Tokyo Tower, yeah, Tokyo Tower is very close to this part of the KO campus. There's a debate house, I guess. Alleyway crossing the street from campus with great restaurants. And great restaurants are everywhere in Japan, so not hard to find them. Student Plaza at the Mita campus. Uh, campus view from across the street. So there's uh, the Mita campus and the Yagami campus. I think this is the Mita campus. Um, they don't specify. More campus. Oh, skipped it. Oh, and we're right back to where we were. Okay, cool. So yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> if I can get my GPA up to this high, um, this would definitely be a very interesting program to get into. Would love to get into uh, KO University. This would be just a massive boon for me. But again, it's very difficult to get my GPA up that high and to be recommended for this program. So, but it's something I'm shooting for. So anyway, next up, we got Nihon University. This is uh, also in Tokyo, Japan. Oh, Keio is in Tokyo as well. So um, Nihon University is actually recommended to me by my Japanese teacher. She said it was one of the, uh, I guess like the middle of the road programs or whatever it's called. Program terms are for academic year and for summer one. I'm assuming like with the pre, like with the JCMU program, summer two is only for the intense Japanese course. So we'll see. Um, class standing is the same. Uh, minimum GPA is 2.75. So, you know, a little harder, but not, you know, extensively harder. Language of instructions in Japanese. Uh, let's see. University is found as a law school located, uh, let's see, it's by the Ichigaya Station, downtown Tokyo. Okay, I'm, I don't know if I've been to this part of Tokyo. It just basically goes over different places, you know, Ginza, Ueno Park, stuff like that. Okay. Let's see, a 12 week intensive language and culture program. Yeah, I mean, this isn't, this ain't too bad. But again, I want to go to some place other than Tokyo, unless I can get into the KO program. But uh, yeah, Let's see. Next up, Otaru. This one's really interesting. Now, for those of you who don't know where Otaru is, it is um, in the northern island of of uh, Hokkaido. So uh, this would be a bit colder <laughs> than uh, typical Japan. A lot more snow. But uh, I think it'd be really interesting because Otaru is also the location of a uh, yearly ice festival where they show off different ice sculptures and it's a big thing. It's really cool. No pun intended. <laughs> 
but I think this would be a really interesting program to get to get into as well. So this is in, uh, obviously we'll get into that. Okay, academic year, same standing, language of instructions in both Japanese and English, minimum GPA is 2.5, so it's a bit easier to get into. Uh, same blah. National University located in Otaru on Hokkaido, which is the northernmost of the four main islands. Um, talk about Otaru some more. So it's a historic seaport on the northern island of Hokkaido, located at the northern tip of Hokkaido's uh, Shiribeshi district. Uh, city is stunningly beautiful. I've seen a lot of pictures of Otaru. It's gorgeous out there. And it's about 35 minutes away from Sapporo which is like the main city on Hokkaido. It's the fifth largest city in Japan, so it's pretty big, <laughs> to say the least. And it's approximately a 16 hour train ride by JR from Tokyo. Uh, I would either go by, either by plane or by Shinkansen, but the plane ride is only an hour, so yay. Uh, it just kind of goes over the program a bit more, 2.5 GPA. And I got a complete Japanese uh, 2010, so that is I think two more Japanese classes I have to go through. Because I have to go through 1010, and I have to go through 20, uh, 2000, and then 2010. Although, um, there may be ways around this. I'm not 100% on it. But then it just basically goes over all the same stuff that you've seen before. So next up is this one. I'm not too keen on this one, but I thought I'd just show it off anyway, as it's just uh, for the summer. So, religion and culture in Japan. This is out in Kyoto, Nikko, and Tokyo. So, basically, you just kind of hop from place to place for the summer. Uh, you're in like a double hotel. Anybody can apply for this one freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, graduate, whatever the case may be. You only need a 2.0 to apply. You get three credits. It's a short term thing. Let's just jump into photos here. Is it? Okay, and sorry it's not so big as the other ones, but I guess you do like calligraphy and drawing and stuff like that. It's kind of interesting, but eh, I don't know. Not something, okay, I think it just loops back. It's not something I'm super duper interested in, but you basically just go over and look at the uh, religious aspects, you know, boot, visit Buddhist temples and stuff like that and you get three credit hours for the semester so that's i like it but you know it's i don't know <laughs> i'm just kind of eh anyway uh, here is rikyo university in tokyo japan uh let's see let's see you got uh academic year or the spring semester uh you get a single dorm it's available through uh sophomore through senior uh, it's for an academic, oh, I'm sorry, I misread that, it's for an academic year, sorry. Language of instructions in Japanese and English, 2.5 GPA. Here are some pictures. I really like this campus. This looks like an awesome campus, like a castle or something. It's pretty cool. Here's the library. It looked like a bus station or something. Here's more of the campus. Lots of grass on, at a Rikyo University. I just like this tower though, it's really cool. Wow, wooden seats, this is interesting. Oops, skip that, sorry. Big tree, more of the campus. This is the chapel area here. And we're back to the entrance of campus. So this is out, uh, I think this is some kind of, let's see. Reverend, yeah, this is kind of a, a religious campus if you couldn't tell, but you know, still really, really good architecture, and I'm kind of a, a sucker for good architecture. So this is located in Ikebukuro, out in Tokyo. So it's pretty interesting, and it just goes over different things. And for this one, you need uh, to complete at least 1010 Japanese. So that well, that would be the next. Uh, level of Japanese so and for business students like myself complete Japanese 1000 which I already did so I could technically do this you know next year but you know again we'll see we'll see then last but not least is Ritsu Maiken 
University in Kyoto, Japan. This one is actually one I'm really looking into. This looks like a very interesting place. So, you know, same as it was before, you know, you get uh, an apartment or a single dorm for housing. Minimum GPA is 3.0 and it's for an academic year. So we'll go over, I think, come on now. There we go, that's the beginning. Just wait for it to load here. Hmm, that's weird. All right, anyway, oh, of course it loaded as soon as I clicked away. So here's some of the campus. Here's the library. Um, shrine lanterns at Kitano Shrine. The Asakusa Shrine in Tokyo. Cherry Blossoms. Samurai Festival. Nagoya Castle, that's pretty colorful. <laughs> uh, the Mirror of Gold and Snow at the Golden Pavilion in Kyoto. Heijoku, okay. Oh, and there's more, nice. More pictures, different festivals. There's one in Nara. Here is a house dorm, I guess. Here is uh, some more of the library, a common area kitchen for dorms. Uh, here's an international dorm. This is, I guess, like a, another common area, something like that. Classroom, common space. Again, you got like washer, dryer, stuff like that. So, tatami room, laundry space. So you can do coin laundry and stuff like that. So this is in uh, Kyoto, obviously. It is this particular campus, the Kinugasa campus. It's located by different historical temples like the uh, uh, Kinkakuji, the Gold Pavilion, Ryoanji, the uh, rock garden, many of the famous sites because that's Kyoto for you. <laughs> Got a lot of good traditional Japan. So 3.0 GPA and a completion of tw a Japanese 2010 for intensive Japanese language program. And uh, no previous Japanese required for the Japanese and world perspectives program. So that's interesting. You either have to go through like the super duper intense Japanese or like nothing. Okay. I guess it depends on the different programs and stuff. So yeah, that's uh, the programs that are offered uh, here at Western. So now there's other programs that I can go to, but again, considering that I'm going through on the post 9-11 GI Bill, um, I don't know, you know, how much it'll cover or if it'll cover it at all. It's kind of a gray area right now. But uh, this is what's offered through Western. So if I were to utilize these programs, it would just be, you know, a simple exchange. I would go off to either one of these universities uh, for either, you know, typically the academic year, that's what I'm shooting for is for a full year but they also have like semester long programs as well but I figure if I'm gonna save up for the trip out there I want to make it worth it and go for the full year so as far as out of these universities that I want to go to uh, the ones that I find interesting I gotta look this one up the Daito Bunka I'm not too familiar with that that area uh, Doshista University in Kyoto I'm not familiar with that uh, the the uh, JCMU in Hikone that looks really interesting. Um, Ko obviously you know <laughs> even though I'm not too particular on going to Tokyo, if I were to get into Ko then I'd be like hell yeah <laughs> definitely want to go out there. Uh, Otaru would be interesting to see very cold but interesting and uh, Ritsume Kan Mikan. Uh, in Kyoto, Japan. And sorry for butchering these names. Uh, I just woke up a little bit ago, so I'm just kind of like, eh, I can barely talk in English right now. So that's what's offered at Western. I'm gonna be looking more into these programs to see which one would be the best for me to go get into and uh, what I gotta save up and you know how much you know my GI Bill would help me help uh, cover for me while I'm abroad. I don't know if I'll get BAH out there still. 
know, I'm not 100% on it. So again, something to look into. And if nothing comes of it, then, you know, hey, in a couple years, I'll be able to go out there to teach English to the kids anyway. So with that said, this is the Andy San. Sign up for now. Thinking you guys, Poop, for tuning in to this little look through of the different programs offered at uh, my university, Western Michigan, and uh, for watching my other stuff. And if you guys uh, saw a program or a university or whatever that kind of caught your eye and be like, you know, either you went there or you know somebody went there who had a good time, you know, be sure to let me know in the comments below in the boopy boops and uh, just tell me about your experience or their experience whatever the case may be and uh, i also want to thank you guys for liking with the thumbs commenting subscribing send a few friends to the party and hey as always we'll see you next time catch you later guys bye all right i'm recording Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you book, with my June 2016 update video for, you guessed it, June 2016. Woo! So yeah, as always with these uh, monthly update videos, I'm going to talk about some personal life stuff, as well as a little bit of youtube -y stuff. So, let's get right into the YouTube stuff. Uh, with YouTube stuff, there's going to be a lot of changes, and uh, one of the major changes is that in these monthly update videos, I'm not going to announce upcoming videos anymore. And the reason behind this is because I felt that um, I was being pressured in a way. I was putting uh, extra pressure on myself to uh, meet the deadlines and to, you know, just make a video just to meet the deadline, not because I want to make a video or because I like the video. I just felt like I was meeting deadlines and it was too much like work. And it just kind of stunted my uh, creativity, I guess, <laughs> with uh, the videos I want to make. So uh, I'm not going to announce any upcoming videos anymore on these monthly updates. Now you're probably still going to get like a one or two day notice on Twitter. You know, when a video comes out, I'll probably say like, ah, a new video coming soon at this time or something. I don't know. It depends. It's a case by case thing. Uh, but that's about it really. And uh, I'm also not planning on scheduling any videos. So like, um, <laughs> it's kind of confusing, but uh, I'm not planning on, like, say, at this time, on this day, this video is going to come out, you know, every day. You know, aside from the re-uploads. The re-uploads are going to be my only scheduled uh, videos, and those are going to be coming out once a day, every day, at uh, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's minus five hours Greenwich Mean Time. So uh, depending on where you live, just adjust your time accordingly, I guess. But uh, the re-uploads are going to be the only thing that's uh, scheduled and that's uh, consistent, I guess, this is the word I'm looking for, um, until I'm done with those, which is going to be a while, looking at uh, how, how much of my old stuff I got left. But aside from that, and uh, my newer videos, those are going to be kind of like a case-by-case -case basis. So, you know, once the video's done, then I'll put it up and then I'll schedule it. But I guess what I mean by I'm not scheduling any more videos is that I'm not going to, you know, say, have a, have a video out at this time every Friday or something. I don't know. <laughs> you guys get the point, I hope, right? What does this mean for the YouTube section of my monthly updates? So, um, instead of uh, just completely getting rid of the section entirely, um, I'm just going to discuss, maybe kind of spitball, brainstorm, whatever you want to call it, uh, some possible ideas for upcoming videos. They're not like announcements per se. It's just, you know, some ideas that I have in my head for uh, videos. If you guys like them, you know, let me know. Uh, maybe talk about some trends and stuff I've noticed on YouTube if it's kind of major enough or whatever, but I think I would save those for a separate video. So. Um, some possible concepts for videos that might be coming out in the future. Um, Life After Navy. Um, that series has been doing especially well. And I know I promised that I would make uh, future Life, in, Life After Navy uh, episodes. But uh, <laughs> my fat ass has been really lazy about it. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. But, you know, school, work... You know, gotta do what I gotta do. Um, but uh, I do have some concepts written down for future Life After Navy videos where, you know, I talk about certain aspects of being a veteran and, you know, maybe talk a little bit more openly about 
uh, what happened during my time in the Navy because uh, the reason that I decided to split this off from NFAX is that, you know, with NFAX, I was active duty at the time, so I felt that there was a lot of stuff I couldn't say about the Navy as far as like opinion based things. You know, I couldn't talk about anything really negative about it because I felt that it was kind of a conflict of interest and also I didn't want, you know, somebody letting someone high in the chain of command know, hey, so-and-so was talking shit about the Navy and making us look bad. So I didn't want to start that whole thing because um, I remember there was, uh, when I was going to A school out in San Diego, there were a couple people who found my videos and I wasn't really even talking about the Navy all that much during that time. But they were all like, dude, you gotta take down your videos. You gotta delete your channel. Cause if the captain sees that, you know, your your ass is going to captain's mast. And that's not true. <laughs> that That's not gonna happen. Unless you're, you know, talking very explicitly about the Navy or revealing secrets or something like that. You know, you're not gonna get sent to mast for making YouTube videos. So that's one of the reasons I was kind of careful about what I said while I was in the Navy. But now that I'm out, I don't have to worry about so much. I mean, obviously I can't talk about secret information or any of that kind of stuff, but I can be a bit more open about my opinions of my time in the Navy. And keep in mind, it's my time in. You know, I'm talking about my time in, I'm not saying, you know, the Navy in general or anything like that. Cause like some people, you know, really enjoyed their time in. Some people really didn't enjoy their time in. I kind of had a, a mixture of the, of, uh, of the two. You know, I had some experiences that I really liked and some, some experiences I really didn't like and uh, stuff like that. So there you go. Um, another thing I'm, you know, thinking about doing is uh, doing uh, editing tutorials. So um, I've done uh, editing live streams in the past where I live stream my, uh, the editing process for me, like making these videos, you know, me using Premiere, Adobe Premiere Pro to uh, put these videos together and, you know, I just kind of say, okay, I'm doing this because of this and stuff like that. Those videos are typically like an hour, two hours long. So for people who want to know how to do like a simple little thing, those live streams aren't very conducive to that. So I've been thinking about doing uh, some Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial videos where I talk about maybe like simple how to's like how to import a video or you know how to do a, a picture slideshow or something like that you know it's very you know easy beginner level Adobe Premiere stuff because I'm by no means like a super awesome editor like I don't know a lot of special effects or any of that kind of stuff I just kind of put stuff together in a nice way I guess you could say so I know the basics and the basics are basically good enough for me so we'll put it that way um, but I do want to share what I've learned over the years as a youtuber as a video editor audio editor as well so I'm also planning on or not planning <laughs> no I'm not planning anything but I'm thinking about uh, making a series of videos where I also deal with Adobe Audition and uh, some of my older software like uh, Audacity and Sony Vegas because I know a lot of YouTubers like to use Audacity and they like to use Vegas as well and I've used Vegas for years and years I've used it for uh, almost 10 years until I recently switched over to Adobe products uh, earlier this year 2016 and uh, Adobe's nice I love it that's why I use it but that's not to, to uh, discount Sony Vegas or, or uh, Audacity so I want to you know possibly do videos involving those programs as well again going over the basics you know how to do this how to do that and then maybe putting out kind of a uh, uh, not really a comprehensive, but just kind of like a basic how to make a video guide, which will be a bit longer. But most of these little how-to tutorial videos are probably gonna be about three to five minutes long on average, uh, depending on what we're going through, of course. So that is the, uh, the concepts that I have for upcoming videos. So now that we've talked about the youtube -y stuff, let's get into uh, some personal life stuff. So 
yeah, um, school's going pretty good. Um, started up uh, summer one classes uh, last month. Um, doing really well. Haven't missed any assignments. Haven't missed any classes. I've been keeping pretty on the ball with that. Um, I also got a job last month as well, working at McDonald's. You know, it's not <laughs> it's not an awesome job, but hey, it helps me pay the bills. And uh, now that I got a job, a second source of income, I can start catching up on the bills as well. So I've calculated it out, and it's probably going to take me about uh, a month or two to completely catch up on bills. Maybe three max to where I'm actually saving money. And so the plan is once I'm all caught up on bills and I'm starting to save up money again, I'm going to save up for my eventual move back to Japan. So another thing I want to talk about was uh, in an earlier video, I did like an overview of uh, the study abroad programs that Western Michigan offers for uh, going to Japan. And that was definitely a program or definitely a thing that I wanted to do. But I looked into it and the GI Bill doesn't offer aid to study abroad programs unless like your major explicitly requires you to go overseas. And my major doesn't do that. So it's not one of the uh, one of the exceptions to that. So, you know, it is what it is. And if I were to do something like that, I would have to come up with all the funding uh, strictly out of pocket or through scholarships. So it is definitely a possibility, but it, it seems more and more unlikely that I'll be doing that just because of all the extra legwork and stuff like that that I would have to go through. And it would eventually, it would uh, also kind of delay my graduation anyway, because with me taking uh, summer classes and stuff like that, um, at the rate that I'm going, I, I could potentially graduate a, uh, a semester, or not a semester, but a year early. So I think maybe the best route would be to just kind of press on, graduate a year early, and then uh, go back to Japan. Either as an English teacher to get my foot in the door to uh, eventually get into like an IT job, something like that. Because that, that's what I want to do in Japan is work in IT. That's kind of my thing. It's my major, you know, <laughs> computer information systems. It's an IT major. So I want to apply that to a company in Japan because, well, I love Japan. So, but I figured the whole English teacher thing is just a way to kind of get my foot in the door, start making some money, and then I can network and get an IT job that way. Now, if I can get an IT job right off the bat and then, you know, go over on a working visa based on that, awesome. But, you know, that's just kind of my plan for now. And uh, I have a lot of time between now and then, so lots of things could change. But uh, that's basically just what I'm going to be uh, focusing on for now is just uh, getting my bills under control again, getting my grades back up to where they should be because um, I can also get scholarships and stuff like that. Even if I'm not going to Japan, it's still nice to have scholarships, you know, to help again cover the bills, help with expenses, help me save up to eventually go back to Japan, stuff like that. And yeah, but uh, that's pretty much it with uh, this video. So I'm going to close out this video by mentioning uh, my Patreon account. So for those of you who don't know what Patreon is, it's basically like an online tip jar. So it's used pretty extensively by like YouTubers, artists, anybody who makes stuff online basically can utilize it. And uh, what you do is you sign up for the thing and then you can request to uh, basically send uh, money to uh, like an artist or a YouTuber, maybe me. <laughs> Um, you can send them like X amount of money per month and uh, I'm working out reward tiers because a lot of content, a lot of content creators using that word, but a lot of people online like to use uh, reward tiers. So if you donate X amount of money, you'll get this back from the creator, like a little kickback, uh, maybe like a postcard or something like that. I'm still kind of working out uh, the reward tiers. Um, let me know what you guys would you know possibly like for rewards i'm still pretty new to the mechanics behind patreon so uh, if you're a little more experienced with it let me know and uh, i can start working that up but uh yeah patreon.com slash the andy please 
<laughs> uh, I don't like to be an e-beggar, but uh, it's definitely something I got to start plugging, you know, to help me uh, save up for moving back to Japan. So with that said, this is the Andy Son. Sign up for now. Thanking you guys, boop, for tuning into this uh, monthly update and for watching some other stuff. Also, I want to thank you guys for liking, other thumbs, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I don't record. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you, boop, with my July 2016 update video for, you guessed it, July 2016. Woo. So yeah, as always with these uh, update videos, I'm going to be going over some personal life stuff as well as youtube -y stuff. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, today is July 4th, Independence Day for Merca. Yeah. So if you hear fireworks and stuff going on in the background, that's what's going on. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I just wanted to get this video out uh, as soon as I can. Uh, it's probably gonna go out on the 5th, but uh, at the time it's recording, it's the 4th. So I just got off work, so hair is all messy and gross, so deal with it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's get into the uh, the youtube -y stuff. To be honest, there's really not a whole lot going on. Um, I've been prioritizing school over uh, uh, YouTube and all that kind of stuff, so it just kind of is what it is right now. Um, got to work on my grades and stuff like that so and plus with a part-time job working at Mickey D's which I just came back from so that's why my hair is all nasty and I smell like fries and berg <laughs> but yeah since I got all those things going on it's just harder and harder for me to uh, dedicate uh, extra time to YouTube for new videos and stuff so it's not that I'm quitting YouTube or anything like that so don't freak out it's just that right now Things are going to be kind of slow on the YouTube front just because I don't have the time for it. So um, it's another reason why I'm also doing the uh, the re-uploads as well. So that way you guys have something to look forward to uh, on the daily. I did record some videos. Um, I have a couple from the archives that I recently found. Uh, some from, uh, I'm just looking at them right now, in March and April. And also have... Uh, some footage of my uh, brother Raj's uh, high school graduation that I'm going to be putting together um, eventually <laughs> when I get around to it. So there's that. And I have some ide new ideas for uh, new Life in Video, ep or not Life in Video, but uh, Life After Navy episodes. So, ooh, big boom. <laughs> so those are going to be coming out um, eventually. <laughs> I don't want to say soon because I don't want to get you guys' hopes up and then nothing happens so uh, I just want to be realistic about my release schedule so it's basically just going to be a when it's done sort of thing so sorry if, uh, if that doesn't work out for you it just kind of is what it is in my life right now uh, once I get things back in check then uh, I'll be able to make more videos but until then I just <laughs> gotta work hard for my money so hard for my, my money yeah, I can't talk tonight. Jeez, I just got off work, so I'm a little. Mm, but anyway, that's pretty much what's going on YouTube-wise. So let's get into personal life stuff. So uh, summer one just wrapped up at uh, college. So um, my summer semester is broken up into two sp two parts. So it's like two half semesters. So you got summer one and summer two. Summer two just started last week. Getting along just fine with uh, the new class schedule. It's actually pretty laid back. Most of it's online. And I think, you know, moving forward, that's what I want to make uh, the majority of my classes, if I can. I mean, not all of them I can, but uh, for the majority of them, I want to try shifting more towards online, just so that way I'm not at the campus as much. So spending less gas and all that stuff. But uh, summer one, I did slightly better grade-wise, but uh, I still ended up failing uh, one of my classes, and that was actually <laughs> my computer class. And uh, the reason behind that was um, uh, they have like this online system that you have to submit homework to. So instead of buying a book, you buy like a subscription for the length of the class to the service and that and then you do the homework and you do the quizzes and all that kind of stuff through that but as you guys know i fell really far behind on bills at the end of spring semester 
leading into summer one semester. So once I got my job at McDonald's, I was working a lot of hours, more than I'm comfortable with, especially balancing uh, full-time uh, college classes. But I uh, had to do what I had to do to uh, pay the bills. And uh, it took me a while, but I eventually did get caught up. But by the time I did get, get caught up to pay for, for the, uh, the online thing to submit all my homework, it was just kind of one of those like too little too late sort of things you know and i did as much of it as i could submitted as much of it as i could i did take late penalties and i tried doing the projects and stuff like that i even had to call of work once because uh, i would have missed the deadline otherwise and they were not happy about that so it's kind of caused a bit of a rift between me and you know mickey d's you know because I know, I told them that uh, college is my number one priority right now, and I'll work as much as I can, but you know, right now I just have to dial it down because I gotta focus more on school or otherwise I'm gonna get kicked out. And if I get kicked out, then I lose GI Bill benefits and I get kicked out of here. So <laughs> even if I did end up working full-time at McDonald's, it's not gonna be enough to sustain myself here without uh, this, uh, the BIH. And it just kinda is what it is. Um, maybe once my lease is up here, I can find someplace cheaper. Not sure. Got to look around for that, but that's not going to be until April. So I have some time until then. But in the meantime, just got to do what I got to do. Pay the bills, keep the lights on, you know. <laughs> Explosions. <laughs> but yeah, so after failing that class, after working my ass off trying to get in all that homework and stuff, um, I just decided, uh, once I received the failing grade, to uh, pursue another major. On Wednesday, so two days from now, at the time it's recording, I'm going to be uh, talking with an academic advisor at the School of Communications at Western to see if I can switch over to the film, video, and media major. So it's not exactly like a film studies. I mean, it kind of is, but calling it film studies is a little... Uh, misleading I think it's more uh, towards the production side of the house so I'll be learning basically the same stuff I do do on YouTube but on a, on a bigger scale with an actual budget and how to make uh, traditional uh, films as well as TV shows and stuff like that so I think that that falls in line with where I want to be uh, career wise because I mean I like computers and stuff like that don't get me wrong but uh, I've been pursuing this major since uh, I went to Urbana back in 2006. As much as I want to be like that, never give up, you know, just keep pressing on. You know, I just got to face facts and realize that I don't have the, uh, the time or the attention to devote, to dedicate towards uh, this major. It's just, it's too... It's too intensive for me to do that, plus, you know, my part-time job and keeping up with, you know, having a place of my own and stuff like that. And I know some people will be like, well, just, you know, room with other, others. And that might be a possibility further down the line uh, once I start meeting up with some people. Because uh, <laughs> I only had the spring semester and, you know, most of those people were already in perfectly good uh, living situations from what I can tell, at least the ones that I got along with. So yeah. that might change eventually, but uh, for now I just gotta do what I gotta do. So uh, with this major, uh, I guess my plan is to, uh, also they have, uh, ugh, kind of all over the place, but they also have uh, work study programs to where you can get experience in the field so um, some, some students uh, go to work at the, uh, the local college radio. Uh, some do like uh, uh, the social media accounts. Some do uh, like the local TV station and stuff like that just to learn how to operate the equipment. Either they're in front or they're behind. And it just depends on what they do and what they need. So um, that's definitely something I want to uh, pursue. Uh, maybe, you know, dial down the hours at McDonald's if need be, you know, if I want to work these uh, work-study programs. And uh, also looking into uh, 
going to like a recruiting agency to see if I can get a another main part-time job so that way I'm not struggling as much as I am with all these bills and stuff although I have to say like at the time of this recording I've uh, officially broke even with bills so I'm no longer catching up anymore with past bills um, now it's just a matter of in the next couple checks to start uh, saving up and all that kind of stuff so that's good but uh, I do want to save up a bit more, a bit faster, I guess. Because, you know, even though I'm getting 950 an hour, which is pretty good, um, I think it can do better. Um, and I'm talking with this uh, recruiting agency, see if I can get uh, some kind of part-time gig going. They've been contacting me recently, and for a while I just kind of blew them off because I already got hired at McDonald's. I'm just like, okay, I already got the job, and you guys didn't really have anything to offer me at first, but I mean, now, with all this other stuff going on, I think, you know, it's probably best to find someplace new. And it's not a knock on McDonald's or anything like that. You know, it's a perfectly fine job. I like the people there. Um, it's just a good job to just kind of turn your brain off and, you know, just make food and just do uh, manual labor, stuff like that, stuff you don't really have to think about doing. But uh, that's basically what's going on in my life right now. Sorry for being so spacey and explosions in the background. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that in the mic, but uh, that's what's going on. With that said, this is the Andy Song. Sound off for now, thinking you guys boop for tuning in to this kind of rambly update video and uh, for watching my other stuff and uh, new videos are coming i just don't know when <laughs> it just depends on uh, how much free time i get so uh, just be on the lookout and i'll i'll be sure to make announcements on twitter and stuff like that so if you're not following me on twitter it's at the andy son thanks for watching my stuff and uh liking and the thumbs commenting subscribing Send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Coming at you. Pook. I had to reach for that one. <laughs> With my August 2016 update video for, you guessed it, August 2016. Ooh. So yeah, as always with these uh, monthly update videos, I'm going to be going over some personal life stuff as well as youtube -y stuff. So, let's get right into the youtube -y stuff. And I know I've been kind of quiet lately in the past month, but uh, this month I'm doing a lot more YouTubing than, uh, than usual. I've just been getting a lot of uh, new ideas and stuff like that. And uh, most of the videos I've already recorded are out by now. Um, I got a couple more on the back burner. Still got to get some stuff from the archives out that I recorded a couple months ago. Uh, so that's going to be coming down the pipe soon. Uh, I've also got a lot of cool concepts. And uh, I know you guys have noticed that uh, Andy Cade, my YouTube Let's Play series, has made a comeback. Uh, I decided to bring it back uh, just part time. I'm not going to be doing like I did initially, where it was just like a video every day. I'm just going to do it maybe like once, twice, three times at the most a week. Um, just playing a game that uh, I like and have picked up recently, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, um, <clears throat> this time I'm going to be playing uh, Asagao Academy, the time it's recording. Um, really been enjoying that playthrough. I'm making it more of an interactive and more of an inclusive Let's Play because it's, it's basically a visual novel. But there are certain, uh, I guess, flags and choices and stuff that you make to change the story. Um, haven't played it all the way through, so I don't know all the little uh, tricks and stuff for the routes. So I'm basically just making this, you know, you guys choose uh, which route that I take. And we've chosen the, John, the JonTron route. We're just going to be kind of going through and basically I play up to we reach a choice and then uh, I put up a little poll on Twitter asking you guys which I choose and then whichever gets the most votes uh, gets the go ahead. So I'm going to be recording Asagawa Academy Part 2 very soon, probably later on today um, at when I'm done making this video. So that's going to be coming out and like I said the 
the whole concept of uh, bringing back uh, Indicade, rather, is uh, just because I do enjoy doing Let's Plays and stuff, but when I first tried doing it, I was very new to the platform, and I didn't really quite know what I wanted out of a Let's Play from me, because there are a lot of people that do it. It's a very overly saturated genre on YouTube now, because a lot of the big YouTubers got big based off of it, so uh, there's not a lot of ground, not a lot of uh, new ground to cover with Let's Plays, but I thought I'd do it just because I enjoy doing it. I do enjoy playing video games, but I'm more of a casual player now, uh, just because I got a lot more stuff going on with the job and school starting up next month, so there's that. Uh, but I do want to continue doing Andy Cade, so I found ways to uh, streamline the process. I, you know, I'm not using you know, fancy cameras and stuff to record uh, my playthroughs on Andy Cade. It's more of a very streamlined, very simple, basic sort of thing. Uh, so I'm hoping to make more Andy Cade episodes in the coming months. But like I said, it's not going to be you know the five to seven episodes a week kind of thing like it was before. It's going to be just a couple. So there's that. Um, I'm also coming up with some new cool concepts for uh, future YouTube videos. Got one coming out. I'm still kind of, you know, messing with it a little bit about uh, learning a new skill and, you know, recording the process behind learning that skill. So I'm still kind of refining what the video is going to be or the series of videos rather. So it's still very much in a developmental stage, but that's going to be coming down the pipes soon as well. So. Now that we've got most of the uh, youtube -y stuff out of the way, uh, let's get into some personal stuff. And uh, boy, do we have a lot, of cover, lot to cover this month. Um, I've been very quiet about my personal life, I think, for the past month. And there's, uh, there's a good reason behind that. And that is uh, just a lot of stuff going on with school. So um, earlier in July, um, right before, I think, I recorded my uh, July 2016 update video, um, I was academically dismissed from WMU, where I was going to school at. And I found this out because after my summer one semester, I didn't do so well with that one either. I went to another uh, department, another college within the university, and asked if I could switch majors just because you know, I gave it a good try. It really wasn't working out with my computer information systems major. Uh, just the classes were just too difficult for me to balance between, you know, going to class, doing all the, all the studying and all that kind of stuff that's needed for those classes, and also holding down a pretty, a pretty solid part-time job as well. So uh, it just became too much for me to. To manage and there was also a lot of uh, financial problems with that as well because you know yes the GI Bill helps pay for housing and stuff like that but you know like I've said before it only pays for the days that you go to school so if you have uh, say like spring break or winter break or something like that you don't get paid for those days in my case a day without school is like a day without sunshine pretty much so it's not as stable of an income source as some people may think so I definitely recommend, uh, and again, it depends on your living situation, but if you plan on living by yourself or whatever, uh, I definitely recommend uh, at least getting a part-time job. And so once I got my part-time job at the end of uh, the spring semester, I worked a lot of hours, more than I'm really comfortable in doing. And so that again took more time away that I should have been putting towards uh, towards uh, my studies. So it just kind of compounded things. So while I was building myself back up financially again, you know, academically I wasn't doing so good and it reflected in both semesters. So because of that, I was academically dismissed. So after finding this out, when I went to go apply for a new major, because the grades had just come out that day and I didn't know, I didn't receive any writing or anything. So I was very uh, surprised <laughs> by my quick dismissal. But you know, it just, it just kind of is what it is. And so I applied for just a reapplication, I guess, to the university under a new major. 
and uh, I just wanted to wait to talk about this to see what the outcome of that was because I had a lot of different things going on but I couldn't really go forward with any long-term plan until that decision was reached so and I'm proud to say today <laughs> that a decision was reached and I will be readmitted into Western Michigan University effective next month. So I'll be starting in the fall of 2016 under a new major. So I'm switching from computer information systems to film, video, and media studies slash production. So um, I've been doing YouTube for over a decade. Uh, it's definitely something I'm very passionate about. And I was kind of hesitant in making that sort of thing my major because it's not nearly as lucrative, at least on average, as a film major, or CIS is, is more lucrative of a major than film is, or film studies and stuff like that. But I decided, you know what, I tried the IT side of the house, uh, it just wasn't clicking for me, you know, it was just too much for me to handle with all the other stuff I got going on. So I decided to, you know, take a big risk in uh, majoring in uh, film production. Um, it's definitely something I'm very passionate about and it's definitely something I look forward to doing. And you know, I figured, you know what? I wanna finally uh, bet on myself. I want to do something that I know I can be good at rather than just something that's marketable to the outside world. This is definitely very much a passion project and I think this is also going to go hand in hand with my YouTubing as well because I'm going to be learning about all different kinds of uh, film techniques and stuff like that, whether it's just theory or a little bit of production, I guess depending on what classes I take and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I definitely want to apply that more to my YouTube videos so that way they're uh, better quality. <laughs> now I can't make like a, a five star stellar YouTube video every time because that just takes too much time. But I do want to make uh, some, you know, higher production videos, you know, just nicer quality, B-roll, nice music, all that kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> all, the, all the niceties of YouTube videos. And it is something I've been struggling with over the years because, you know, there was that balance you had to maintain between uh, just making a good video, good quality video, and not spending so much time on it because you know YouTube does like the nice high quality videos but those videos take a lot of time to edit and film and render and all that kind of stuff and YouTube also favors daily content so you know for guys like Casey Neistat to produce uh, such high quality videos on a daily basis that's just to me that's insane you know and I thought that he had like a team of editors, you know, just he would throw them the SD cards and be like, go. <laughs> but apparently, uh, looking at some of his behind the scenes videos, it's all him. And it just blows my mind how one person can do all that. But it's also kind of inspirational too, you know, I don't want to be a, a Casey Neistat clone or anything like that, but it's definitely, definitely something to aspire to as far as, you know, high quality vlogs and stuff like that. So there's that. And uh, overall, I'm just happy with, uh, with where my life's going right now. I'm pretty solid with my part-time gig at the Mickey D's. <laughs> kind of a full circle thing, you know, because I worked there back when I was in high school and a little bit into uh, tech school as well. And now I'm back <laughs> working at McDonald's. Not the same McDonald's, but a different one, uh, nonetheless. Going to college and working there as well. So it's kind of a a weird little full circle moment for me. I get along pretty good, I get a fair amount of hours, I'm gonna be changing some things around hour wise to uh, accommodate my new uh, class schedule because um, now that I've been readmitted I'm still technically on academic probation so it's kind of a like a trial period to see if I do well uh, with this semester and uh, it's kind of a last chance thing for me at this university really so I'm going to be taking it uh, very seriously and I'm going to be reducing uh, my work schedule to pretty much weekends and holidays and uh, it's not really going to impact me too much I mean it is going to impact me financially but it's not going to uh, I'll still be okay I'll still be able to get by 
you know, with housing and all that kind of stuff, the bills and all that. So I'll still be good. But I'm going to be focusing a lot more on school. I'm also still going to do YouTube, but not as much as I've been doing. Um, I still want to get some videos out and stuff like that. But uh, this is definitely, you know, high time for me to get my shit together, academically speaking. So that's going to be the main source of what I'm focusing on. Still going to be uh, stuff to look forward to on, on the Andy San channel. Uh, still going to be doing re-uploads and stuff like that. I have uh, just a boatload of stuff from the archives to at least keep you uh, satiated until I get some new stuff out. And uh, speaking of which, I'm also going to kind of dovetail that back into the YouTube stuff, something I completely forgot about, was live streams. Um, I know I mentioned in on like Twitter and Instagram that I'm going to be doing more live streams. And with uh, class coming up, I want to kind of uh, make them a bit more, uh, not really, I guess scheduled, but at least give you more of a, more of a specific time as far as when I'm doing them. Because, you know, before they were just kind of a, well, when I get time or when I get a day off or something like that, I'll do a live stream of me editing stuff. So um, I want to do them more during the week. Um, again, it depends on what my uh, school schedule is going to be like. Um, I have to get that all ironed out and I'm going to go tomorrow to Western to talk to my academic advisor about which classes I should sign up for, sign up for the classes, get that schedule all taken care of. So I'm hoping to have a more concrete answer as far as when uh, new when uh, live streams are going to be coming out. I'm going to be uh, aiming for time-wise around uh, probably 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, originally, I thought that was kind of a bad time to do these kind of live streams because I figured people would either still be in school or they would be eating lunch or supper or whatever the case may be. But uh, you guys really seem to dig that time slot and I got a lot of very positive feedback from one of my recent live streams around that time. So I figured, you know, if you guys are cool with it, I'm cool with it. So I'm going to be aiming for, you know, 2 to 4, maybe 4 to 6 at the latest p.m. Eastern Standard Time for live streams. As far as what day of the week to do them, I'm going to do them sometime between Monday and Friday. I'm not going to do weekend streams or any of that kind of stuff because A, I'll be working and B, nobody really tunes into weekend live streams for the most part. I've seen. <laughs> uh, so uh, let me know what you guys think about, you know, doing live streams. And I also want to do uh, different things on live streams as well. It's not just going to be uh, me editing stuff all the time. I, I like doing those too, but I also want to kind of have some variety in the live streams. If you guys want to do like a Q&A live stream or just whatever, me playing games, stuff like that. I mean, I could do like a Twitch live stream as well. Maybe, you know, export it over to YouTube so you guys can watch it after the fact. Got a bunch of different ideas, so I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say in the comments down below in the boobity boops so let me know <laughs> and uh with that said this is the andy san signing out for now thinking you guys pook uh, jesus the camera's like really far away this time but anyway i want to thank you guys for uh tuning into this uh update video and for watching my other stuff also want to thank you guys for liking the thumbs commenting subscribing Send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, coming at you, book with my September 2016 update video for, you guessed it, September 2016. Woo. So yeah, as always with these uh, monthly update videos, we're going to be going over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So let's get right into it. And this month, uh, both the personal life stuff and the YouTube stuff kind of blend together. So I'm not going to, you know, talk about YouTube stuff first and then get into the personal stuff like I normally do with these monthly updates. So we'll just uh, talk about uh, some of the big news for this month and uh, leading on into pretty much the rest of the year, I guess, in a way. So this month marks uh, my return back to college. 
Uh, I just went through my first week and uh, went to all new classes and you know met with the professors, got the syllabus, stuff like that, you know. Pretty easy first week getting uh, reacclimated and all that. I think the only real problem I had going back to college was trying to find parking and dealing with all the new students. I have a pretty packed schedule this semester and uh, it's going to be very difficult for me to uh, make newer YouTube videos on a more consistent basis. Even though I didn't really do a whole lot these past couple months, you know, new video wise, I've, I figured, you know, in this month I might as well just, you know, come out and tell you guys that I'm going to be very busy for the uh, foreseeable future. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do for new videos as far as like when they're going to come out and stuff like that. So I guess I'll just make it official and say that I'm going to be going on a YouTube hiatus uh, for the time being. Now that's not to say I'm never ever going to release a new video again or you may not, you know, see any new uh, videos this month. Um, I just wanted to put it out there so that way, you know, in case that is the case, then you guys kind of know what's going on because, you know, I'm extremely busy with school. I have a, uh, a fully packed schedule, so much so that I had to uh, reduce my work schedule actually. So I went from working, you know, five days a week to now three days a week. Basically, it's just, you know, I had to get my priorities in order. And don't get me wrong, I love doing YouTube. I love interacting with you guys and hear what you guys have to say, not just on YouTube, but on my other social media like Twitter, Instagram. Uh, the Facebook fan page, you know, stuff like that. Um, it's really fun to interact with you guys through there. And uh, that's another thing because um, just because I'm not on YouTube, you know, as often doesn't mean that I'm, you know, <laughs> completely off the grid or anything like that. I'm um, still going to be pretty active on like uh, Instagram and Twitter primarily. And I'm also on Tumblr as well. So theandysan.tumblr.com. So if you're one of those Tumblr types, I'm there. <laughs> There's all kinds of different ways you can follow me and see what I'm up to and, you know, see what life is like for a uh, returning college student. And I'm also going to be doing, you know, like Instagram videos, stuff like that. So, you know, <laughs> you haven't seen the last of me, but uh, as far as YouTube goes, um, I just, I don't really have a whole lot of time to sit down and edit videos like I used to. And plus this schedule is very new for me. So I'm going to uh, try to find blocks of time where I can sit down and make videos and edit them and possibly live stream depending on how much time I have but uh, I'm not really sure about that. And that's another thing I wanted to talk about was live streaming. I know I'd promised um, that I would, you know, kind of hash out a good time for that. But, you know, with school this month or this semester, this, the rest of the year, pretty much, I don't really know of any uh, particular specific time that I'm going to be doing live streams. So apologies for that. Thing is, I just, I got to take my studies seriously because this is pretty much my last chance. So I got to uh, get my shit together pretty much, get my grades back up, and uh, get that diploma so I can come back to Japan. Cause that's like the big thing, right? Is not only graduating from college, getting my undergraduate degree, but also being able to come back to Japan and uh, getting a bachelor's degree, at least for Americans, for People, for non-Americans, there might be other routes to get to Japan through like a working holiday visa or something like that. But uh, for Americans, the primary way of getting a uh, visa to stay in Japan is a work visa. And in order to get a work visa, you have to have at least a four-year degree. So uh, if anything, the degree will help me at least get a visa in Japan. So I'm totally fine with that. And uh, I also want to learn like new uh, filming techniques and stuff like that. Uh, as you can see, uh, you know, I got a green screen and all that kind of stuff, so I got a cool little background thing going. And I still got to kind of tighten up the green screen because I noticed the hair is a, a little too green, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it doesn't quite, you know, shave off the fro, but you know, it is what it is. But uh, I just want to learn new things, you know, on this YouTube journey, I guess because even though I've been doing it for as long as I have, I'm still learning new things. And as new technologies come, come around, 
uh, I'm going to continue to learn new things. And uh, that's one of the really cool things about YouTube. You get a little better each time you upload a video, I think. Looking back at some of those re-uploads that I've been doing, um, I just, I can kind of see that process in motion. You know, because my video making skills, my equipment, all that kind of stuff is uh, a lot different then than it is now. For better and worse, <laughs> depending on your perspective. Mostly for the better, I think. Um, even though I know some people are kind of eh against the whole like webcam in your apartment sort of dealio, but you know, gotta do what you gotta do, right? So speaking of re-uploads, sorry, I kind of bleh, <laughs> kind of off the top of my head here, but uh, the re-uploads are gonna continue going through, so at least you'll have something going on in the channel. But as far as new videos, um, I'm not really sure like when they'll come out or like what frequency or anything like that. So that's why, you know, I just wanted to announce my YouTube hiatus, quote unquote. Um, so that way you guys will know that I didn't fall off the face of the earth or anything like that. And uh, if you want to continue to follow me, you know, I have other social media outlets as well, like I explained earlier. So I just wanted to kind of, you know, ease some of the concerns that I know some people have been having about my videos, my upload schedule, all that kind of stuff. So. Um, just gotta, you know, put certain priorities ahead of YouTube and uh, it's just simply, it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? But speaking of YouTube, uh, there are some, some things that I've been uh, toying with and just kind of mulling over as far as like what new videos I want to do, you know, if and when I get the opportunity to do them. But this is just me kind of spitballing here, so just kind of bear with me. I definitely want to do more life and Life After Navy videos. Um, this month actually marks my one year anniversary of uh, getting out of the Navy, as well as uh, leaving Japan. With, uh, with time permitting, I want to you know, make videos about those different topics and just, uh, just kind of talk about my uh, struggles in not only readapting to civilian life, but readapting to American life as well after being, you know, in the Navy for as long as I have been and, you know, being stationed over in Japan for two years. So I think th those will be pretty interesting. But again, this is all time permitting, so it's kind of hard to say when they'll come out. But I'm aiming for this month, you know, hopefully. I <laughs> also want to do more driving vlogs, too. I don't have a whole lot of time to sit down and edit videos. So another possibility would be to do kind of like the mobile, mobile vlogs like I used to do back in the day that you see in the re-uploads now. Obviously better quality, it'll be in HD. <laughs> so you won't have to worry about the little letterboxing thing, uh, which YouTube apparently phased out so I can no longer you know, zoom in like I used to with some of the re-uploads. So I don't know why they did it, it just kind of, I don't know. <laughs> but they've been doing a lot of weird updating to uh, their site, so I guess removing the letterbox feature uh, is just one of many. But uh, there's plenty of other YouTubers out there talking about that stuff. And in case you, you know, if you guys are wondering for whatever reason about the whole demonetization YouTube terms of service thing that's been going on lately, uh, no, none of my videos were really affected. At least that I noticed. I just kind of looked through to see if anything was demonetized and I didn't get any messages from YouTube. So, you know, as of this recording, uh, nothing has been taken down or demonetized or any of that other stuff because, you know, I'm careful with copyright and the stuff that I do have that does have copyright material on there, I don't monetize because who needs that headache, <laughs> you know? And plus, if YouTube, you know, catches it, they don't even let me monetize it anyway, so it's not like I have a choice. Uh, just to recap, um, before we head out here, I'm going on a YouTube hiatus. Not going to be uh, uploading as many uh, new videos, if if at all, you know, depending on time and stuff like that, because I'm putting my college education first, and then you know, YouTube and job and all that kind of stuff is pretty much secondary to this, because it's my future. Damn it! <laughs> so um, we got that. Uh, Reuploads are going to continue to, you know, go through. Um, I'm gonna up. I'm gonna re-upload rather one new video every day 
at uh, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's going to continue to be a uh, constant flow of videos, content, if you will. <laughs> Even though it's basically just reruns for some of my older viewers, but for some of my newer viewers who may have missed out on some of those videos, it'll be a good chance for you to uh, catch up on old episodes of the Andy Sand. <laughs> So, and plus it also makes me look good to the YouTube algorithm because YouTube, YouTube's algorithm really loves daily uploaders for whatever reason, I don't know. But uh, it's really been favoring those. So it'll help me get in good with that. And plus, you know, you guys will have at least something to look forward to every day. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Sorry if I uh, rambled on a little too much and kind of repeated myself, but uh, yeah, just kind of is what it is, and uh, hope to see you guys soon, hope to do more videos, live streams, all that kind of stuff. It's just kind of a, uh, on a case-by-case -case basis, whenever we get the time to do those things. And uh, who knows, like, like I said, this is my first week uh, doing this new schedule, so I may put out like a new video next week or even tomorrow or something like that, who knows. Uh, it just depends on when I get time to do these videos and stuff like that. So with that said, this is the Andy San signing up for now. Thinking you guys poop for tuning into this video and for watching my other stuff. And uh, also wanna sincerely thank you guys for being so patient with me in uh, adjusting to this, you know, newish schedule and for understanding that, you know, I can't upload new videos all the time. So I really gotta thank you guys for being so supportive, you know, seriously. And I uh, also want to thank you guys for watching my other stuff. And in addition to that, also want to thank you guys for liking with the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, seriously, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you poop, with another driving vlog. And today I'm just leaving class for the day at uh, Western Michigan. And I uh, thought I'd do a little driving vlog to uh, just talk about some things. And uh, sorry if I sound a little stuffed up right now. My leg's really itchy, so. <laughs> but uh, kind of getting over a bit of a cold or whatever. Could be allergies, I'm not sure. <laughs> So apologies for all the grossness that you may see and hear in this video. But I thought I'd get some uh, some thoughts out regardless. And uh, yeah, I was listening back to one of my older videos. And uh, I do this from time to time just for, uh, for mostly technical reasons. Because uh, I think it's good for uh, video makers, YouTubers, whatever you want to call them, to... Uh, listen back to their videos on different uh, platforms. You know, I think you should do it with headphones in uh, your computer. You should do it with the speakers on. Then you should do it, you know, in your car. You should do it with uh, headphones on, on your cell phone, I think. It is, uh, it's really good because you get to hear how sound plays out in different uh, scenarios. So like, I was listening back to my September 2016 update video, and on my computer it sounded pretty good with the headphones on, but with speakers it sounded like the music was really, really low. But then I listened to it on my cell phone with the headphones, and the music sounded just fine. So uh, I don't know. <laughs> I tried to uh, mix it for people on the go listening to it on uh, their headphones with their cell phones and stuff like that. So that's kind of what I gear my mixes towards. So uh, if you're wondering, why is the music so low? You know, <laughs> probably not listening to it on your cell phone with your headphones in. Most likely, I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, I was listening back to my, uh, my I Miss Japan uh, driving vlog, so I was kind of inspired to uh, to do another one, right? So, uh, yeah, um, this month actually marks my uh, one year anniversary of leaving Japan. So, uh, sorry, bug flying around here. But uh, anyway, so this year, this month marks my one year anniversary of leaving Japan, 
and uh, I want to do like a, a proper, you know, what I've accomplished in that year, or whatever kind of video. But uh, thought I'd just kind of sit, uh, just sit here while I'm driving, and uh, just kind of talk off the top of my head about uh, what the impact of me being in Japan is. And I'm sorry, I gotta, turn, I gotta roll the windows down a little bit because otherwise I'm just gonna fucking pass out in this car. So sorry about the extra wind noise and cars and all that kind of shit, but I gotta breathe here. So apologies for that. Apologies for breathing. Anyway, um, so it's been a year. Moved from Japan to uh, originally back to Ohio, back to my hometown. Uh, stay with my folks for a couple months waiting for the semester to begin at the beginning of this year, 2016. And uh, got an apartment up here in uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan, starting class over at Western. Um, and uh, it's just been a big transition year for me because, you know, not only have I left Japan to move back to America, but I've also gotten out of the Navy, which I've been in for the past five years. And I'm also starting uh, college classes again, which is the first time I've done that in, uh, I think, over a decade, almost a decade. I think it's, no, oh, it's, actually, I correct myself. It's a decade this semester. So it would have been, you know, nine years and whatever amount of months when I originally started. Uh, college at Western at the beginning of this year, but anyway, semantics. <laughs> so, just doing all these different major life changes, and with that comes a lot of uh, just stress, and just trying to deal with all these different changes in, in my life, and uh, I'm not going to lie, it was hard. And I look back at some of my uh, posts and some of my videos during that initial time, uh, and it's just kind of, it's kind of hard to look back at them because I, I can feel how angry and hurt I was from those videos, and uh, it's just it's, it's hard to look back on. But I think. I equate it somewhat to like unemployment, like if you've worked at a job for a long time and you all of a sudden either quit or get fired or whatever the case may be, but you don't work there anymore. I kind of equate it to, you know, unemployment and that the first, you know, week or two or three is pretty okay. It's like you're on vacation. That's how it was for me um, coming back, you know, to America, back home in Ohio. I just felt like I was on leave, you know? I was just sitting around, not really doing anything for the first week, just relaxing and <clears throat> taking it easy after running myself ragged for the past couple months. So I figured, eh, I earned a break, you know? <laughs> so I sat around for a month, or not a month, a week. And then the next week came around, and that was usually, at least when I came home on leave, usually the first week was kind of recovery week. You know, I'd stay, stay with my folks, chill out, whatever. Then the next week would be where I'd go hang out with friends. And that's what I was kind of looking forward to, to, uh, to doing. That second, third week I was coming back. Or after I came back, rather. And uh, it just it didn't really happen. I mean, I hung out with, uh, with a couple of my friends. I remember hanging out with Zach, Phoenix787, on the YouTubes. Uh, we did a couple videos together of our time hanging out in Cincinnati. Uh, so that was fun, but ultimately pretty short-lived. And uh, I tried calling some of my other friends, but uh, you know, they got their own lives now. And uh, that's something else that, you know, veterans got to, especially the younger veterans. I mean, if you're, you know, well into your 30s, 40s and up, you know, it's kind of, kind of understand it a bit better. But for the, you know, 20s to early 30s vets like myself, uh, it can be a bit hard to wrap your head around that you spent all this time in the military doing your thing and living a very closed off life because, you know, the military is everything and you live for the mission and stuff like that. And when you finally are out of that environment, it can be kind of shocking because, uh, you know, 
I think some people have this misconception of the world sort of being put on pause when you enlist. You know, it's just like, okay, I'm leaving my old life behind and I'm gonna go do this new thing in the military and uh, I'm just gonna put a pause on my old life and then when I get out, I'll uh, just unpause it and everything will be back to normal, just the way it was, just ha like how I remember it when I left. And, <coughs> you know, in some cases it may be the same, you know, you may encounter, you know, the same buildings and the same stores of uh, your pre-military life, but uh, a lot of the people, especially the people that you hung out with, either aren't there anymore or they've changed dramatically, you know? Maybe when you enlisted or were commissioned, whatever, you, uh, you hung out with your friends a lot because they were single or maybe they had a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. And uh, come to find out, when you joined a couple years after that, you know, they got married and had a couple kids and now they're living this totally different life than, uh, than before. And so that can be really hard to wrap your head around. You may think, oh, my friends abandoned me. Nobody fucking cares about me. And, you know, I experienced a lot of that when I first came back home because, you know, I figured it was just going to be like leave, but really, really long instead of just two weeks like I normally did. You know, it'd just be like a three-month vacation. <laughs> Extraordinaire. But, uh, you know, I didn't have the added budget of the Navy. I had my savings, but that savings was for, for a particular purpose. It wasn't just to go blow money for the sake of blowing money. You know, just because I was in town. You know, it had very real practical purposes, so I couldn't just tap into it whenever. And uh, just a lot of things were different, man, you know? <laughs> it wasn't a case of, well, Andy's only gonna be in town for a couple weeks, so I better go hang out with him because I may not see him for a while. It's just, well, you know, Andy's gonna be there for like a couple months, maybe longer. You know, he, he's back, so you know, we'll go hang out with him whenever. And, you know, one thing led to another, you know, they got work, kids, all some stuff. And, and anyway, and th this is by no means a bash on my friends for, you know, abandoning me or not wanting to hang out with me for whatever reason. You know, this is just simply reality, you know? Life goes on with or without you. And that's just the simple reality of it. And uh, it can be really difficult for people to, to understand that. And it was really hard for me to understand that as well. And I know, you know, especially coming back from overseas, being in Japan for two, two plus years, like I was, you know, I was used to the culture, just the way they did things. And uh, when I came back to America, it's just, <laughs> it was not like that at all. You know, it's not very, you know, there's a lot of impolite people, especially, you know, in a city as big as, Kalamazoo, you know, I mean, it's not a big city, but it's not a little, little small town or anything like that. You know, there's a lot of big city mentality, a lot of different races and different income classes that you can see pretty clearly. And it's, you know, it just simply is what it is. And, uh, you know, it's hard for me to, to really grasp that, like, you know, I understood it, but I didn't like, it didn't really sink in, I guess is what I mean to say. So, uh, there was a lot of disconnect on my end from everybody. I just felt like it was just me and then everybody else was just kind of there. I, I felt disconnected from everybody, from my friends, my folks, you know, my relatives, everybody. I just felt like, you know, I was in this, very uninviting land, and then you hear all this sensationalist stuff in the news, and I think that also didn't really help the news, in fact, it made it worse, of, you know, oh, somebody got ran over, somebody got shot with a gun out here the other day, there was an armed robbery somewhere, and it's just like, pretty soon you get to thinking, like, why did, why did I even come back to America to begin with, you know, if all this shit's going on. 
but you know, after a while, you start to. And I think the thing that really helped me was getting a job, giving me some sense of purpose and focus. You know, school is kind of supposed to be like that too, but I don't know. I was still getting used to the academic way of doing things because I've been out for over a decade. <laughs> And at least with work, it was, you know, manual labor. It was something that was easy. I didn't really have to think a lot. It was just a lot of stuff made sense. And so I could just do something like that to distract my brain. <coughs> Excuse me. So that way it was just easier for me to adapt. And, you know, once I found a job, it just, I think that really helped give me a sense of purpose again. Even though it is working a little rinky-dink McDonald's, it's not exactly not exactly changing lives here, but it uh, gives me something to do, gives me a little extra pocket cash, so, you know, can't complain too much. And uh, half off food, <laughs> except when I work, then I get a, a meal on the house. In the house of Mickey's, but, uh, yeah, so it's just, uh, once I got that, it, it kind of helped even me out a little bit. I got a lot less worried about bills and stuff because that was another stressor. It wasn't just, you know, readapting to all these different things. It was also trying to pay the bills because the GI Bill is a, a very unstable source of income because it's based off of how many days you go to school. And on days where you go to school the whole month, you know, it's great. You know, you don't have to really worry about bills or any other stuff. But if you go on like a spring break or a winter break or something like that, then, uh, you know, you pretty much have to foot the bill yourself to cover the difference. So I had to do that with my savings for a lot of months, you know, a couple, like about a month, like the first month before the GI Bill actually kicked in, I had to uh, live entirely off of savings. And you know, anybody who's gone to college knows that first month is the worst because you know you gotta pay for all this different shit. <coughs> Excuse me. And just everything is so expensive, but you have to get it or else you fail the class. And it's like I can't deal right now. So uh, yeah, that was extremely stressful and I tapped out a lot of my savings doing that. So Quick, I gotta get some gas. But uh, yeah, I'm just thankful uh, that I made it out the other side in one piece. I know that there are a lot of veterans out there who can't say that. You know, they once they got to the outside, they had some problems, and you know, either led to suicide or excessive drug use or both. <laughs> And uh, thankful to say I'm still alive. Heart's still ticking for the time being. Uh, so, just thankful that I get to continue to live this life. And uh, yeah, just gonna keep going until I can't go no more. And uh, with that said, this is the Andy Son. Sign up for now, thinking you guys put tuning into this uh, little driving vlog and for watching my other stuff also want to thank you guys for liking with the thumbs commenting subscribing send a few friends to the party and hey as always we'll see you next time catch you later guys bye driving vlog and I decided to change the setup just a little bit so um, I'm trying to find a way to, uh, to get rid of all this uh, background noise so I figure if I have uh, consistent noise with the fans and stuff um, maybe I can eliminate that a little bit easier than I can with background with, uh, with the windows down because the background noise is uh, it varies from you know passing cars and stereos and whatever and, and then stuff like that but I figured if I have the windows up and the fans on the fan is a constant noise it's easier for uh, my editing software to pick up so hopefully this is the idea here hopefully
hopefully um, the sound will be a lot quieter once I get down to editing this thing. Uh, but <laughs> that's the idea anyway. If it doesn't, then I apologize and this experiment's a failure. Anyway, the reason I'm doing this vlog is to uh, kind of talk about uh, some of the difficulties I had in uh, transferring uh, from Japan back to America. And this is kind of a uh, bit of a video response to my friend Zach, also known as Phoenix787. He's kind of going through uh, a bit of hard times lately and uh, you know, he's considering some of his options about either staying in Japan, coming back to America, stuff like that. So I figured I'd at least share my story, you know, for better or worse, and maybe it'll kind of help him out. So, um, I know that there was a lot of uh, different emotions and stuff in me when, uh, a little before I left Japan. And I know for the last month or two, um, I was very reclusive. Um, I didn't want to go out and do much of anything just because I felt, in a lot of ways, you know, in some ways because, you know, the Navy was a very stressful job. It was a job that I wanted to leave so I could move on to do better things. You know, I didn't want to leave Japan because, you know, that's that was pretty much the only thing that I liked about, you know, being in the Navy was being stationed out in Yokosuka and uh, meeting all the people out there and getting to see the different sites and all that kind of stuff. So I didn't want to lose that, but at the same time, the Navy was really stressing me out and I felt like I, you know, didn't want to be, didn't want to continue down that career path anymore. I wanted to do something else. So I was really torn between something I really liked, but having to do something I really didn't like in order to keep doing the thing that I liked. And, you know, I just had to weigh my options and decided to, uh, decided to, uh, not re-enlist. And, you know, uh, <laughs> I guess through, uh, you know, physical fitness failure. And, uh, that's attributed to, you know, me being stressed out and I never really worked out all that much anyway and you know, just being very stressed out and just feeling like I didn't have a lot of time to work with things and so I'm definitely a stress eater so when I'm stressed out I eat and I recognize that now and I also drank a lot while I was over in Japan just because it was easy a lot cheaper over there, it felt like, to get alcohol, at least enough to give you a buzz, something like that. You know, regular beer just doesn't really do it for me. Um, so I went with like the strong chew highs and stuff like that, which are like 9% versus, you know, your typical American beer, like maybe 5.5 to 6% on average, maybe less. But uh, in any event, went through all the stress, gained a bunch of weight back to America and gain more weight, but that's what it is. But in any event, failed the, uh, the PRT because of my weight, and um, at that time, they had this uh, this revised instruction for the PRT to where um, they could scrub one of your past failures in order to uh, let you to continue to serve. So if you got one more failure, then you'd be out. Uh, so I was given the option to, you know, continue on, provided, you know, I worked out, lost the weight, and didn't get another failure. But I decided not to go through with that because, you know, I just felt that for me, and this is just for me, you know, I'm not saying the Navy's a bad place to work or you can't get a good career out of it or whatever. You know, the Navy's great, can be great for, for some people, but for me it just wasn't it, you know. And I recognized that, and I decided to just move on with the out processing, get out. Um, I wouldn't have, I didn't lose any of my benefits, so I got out on an honorable discharge. No benefits lost. I think the only, the only benefit, I guess, that I did lose, so the only difference between me getting out at my EA West versus getting out through this PRT failure was that um, I wasn't able to take terminal. 
so I had to buy back all of my uh, leave time, which actually in the long run helped me out because it gave me a little bit of extra, extra money to help with uh, moving expenses and other stuff while I was coming out here to Kalamazoo, you know, to get an apartment and all that kind of stuff. So in the end, it actually helped me out, so um, it all worked out in the end. But uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to get into Zach's situation because, you know, that's, that's his own personal thing. But uh, for me, uh, when I first came back to America, I was very, very uh, just jaded and very hurt by the whole thing. Like, yeah, I was glad to, you know, be back with my folks and stuff, but, you know, it wasn't the same as coming home on leave where you just feel like you're visiting, but you're eventually gonna, you know, get back to real life and get back to the Navy and do your thing out there. You know, it was just, this This was life now. <laughs> and it was really hard for me to, to grasp that fact. Um, so I fell into a bit of a, Depression when I first came back, and I think this is normal for, for most returning expats and most um, newly, uh, you know, newly discharged veterans as well. So they go through these, this period of depression and not knowing who they are, not knowing what their goals and stuff like that are anymore, and losing focus and stuff. And that that three month period in between me getting out. And going to school was really rough for me because, you know, I was so used to always being on all the time and just having something to do. And going from that very hectic, very stressful uh, environment in Seventh Fleet, which is where I was stationed, uh, to going to doing nothing all day. Like, I would, I would just sit at home in my room be on the computer all day just looking at YouTube videos of people out in Japan and a lot of my friends' videos and stuff like that, just wishing like, I wish you could be there with them, be there and experience those different things with them. You know, it didn't even have to be in Japan, but I just wanted to be there with them as well. And, uh, it was really rough and plus, you know, my friends from back home, uh, most of them moved and uh, ones that did stay, you know, had a significant other and kids and, you know, they were, they were busy with their nine to five jobs because, hey, we grow up, shit happens. So it was hard for me to hang out with them because they were just busy all the time, either at home with their kid or kids or uh, with their nine to five jobs. So it was very difficult for me to adjust to that. So it was pretty much just me. Like, my folks were, I don't know, they didn't really push me to do anything because they knew that I was going to leave in a couple months, so, you know, they weren't really pushing, like, get an apartment, get out, <laughs> you know, they're very, they're very, uh, pretty hands-off, I guess, but at the same time, I kind of felt like such a fucking failure to be in that house, I don't know, like, you know, even though they didn't say anything, I just, I felt the weight of failure. Because, you know, living there, even temporarily, just I felt like I couldn't provide for myself. And it really, you know, really just hurt me, I guess. And then when I eventually came out to Kalamazoo, lived in my, and, you know, got my apartment and started living on my own again, that helped a lot, helped alleviate a lot of that depression. But I was still kind of feeling it because, yeah, I was going to school and stuff, but... Like, I didn't really know anybody. I didn't really connect with a whole lot of people. I think the only people I really connected with were, uh, you know, people in my Japanese class, which, you know, that was cool. They, you know, they get to share stories about Japan and all that kind of stuff. So that, that really helped. But I think, you know, especially that first semester, the Japanese class was the only class that I consistently went to. You know, there were some classes besides that one where, you know, I would just skip out because, whatever reason, either I was sick, or I just didn't want to go, or I was really tired because I stayed up too late, or whatever the case may be, and you know, <laughs> kind of paid the price for it, low grades, some of those classes, 
and uh, so I decided for uh, the next semester, which was summer one, because Western divides their summer semester into two parts. So summer one, I decided to get, get a bit more serious about my grades, give it, you know, no pun intended, but the old college try. And I did well in my English class, passed, but uh, for, oh, that one was cool. uh, but for uh, my other class, which was towards my major, my then major, of computer, computer information systems, um, I ended up failing it. So overall, I, you know, didn't win the war, as far as that goes, and so I had to make an appeal to come back to the university because after that semester I was academically dismissed and at that point I recognized that you know what this whole CIS major thing just isn't for me um, I'm gonna do something that I enjoy something I'm passionate about and that's making YouTube videos even though I don't do it as much anymore just due to time reasons mostly that's the reason why I do these driving vlogs because not a whole lot of editing involved, it's just very stream of consciousness, you know, I hardly edit these things at all, except for maybe putting music in, you know, music titles, whenever the song comes on, that's about it, really, you know, so it's very easy for me to edit these videos, put them out there, it's a series that I really want to continue to do, so long as I have stuff to talk about, you know, whether, whether or not people find this interesting, I don't know, but maybe... Even if they don't, it's kind of my own form of therapy to at least get to, you know, barf out these different ideas online. But uh, in any event, kind of getting back to the, you know, the, the reason for the story, you know, my friend Zach, um, I went through all these different changes, but after I experienced failure, I decided to reassess myself and figure out, okay, what, what, what do I really want here? What do I really want to do? Not, I don't want to, you know, taking money and stuff out of the equation, not what's the most lucrative career choice for me or any other stuff. Like, what do I want to do? And the answer was to make videos, whether it's for YouTube or some other platform that may come up later on. I, I enjoy making videos. I enjoy connecting with people who also do the same thing. And I want to help them out in any way I can. So I decided to switch majors from computer information systems to film, video, and media production studies, whatever you want to call it. And uh, starting with this semester, the new major, new focus, um, doing pretty well. Um, Still resuming my Japanese classes, so I think maybe I'll, you know, minor in Japanese at this point, because, you know, fuck it, why not, right? <laughs> and, you know, the major, film video media major, is very, um, you know, it's very set up very well to the point where I can do something like that, so I figured, why not? And, uh, I'm just going to continue on do this major, graduate, get my bachelor's degree, and uh, with that, get a work, you know, get a job out in Japan, get my work visa, and, you know, live my life out in Japan. And, uh, yeah, that's just my goal, because I love living out there in Japan, I love the friendships that I made, and I just love, I just love the aesthetic of Japan, you know, there's a lot of you know, just how they uh, put buildings together, just the, the aesthetic. I mean, <laughs> that's the only word I can come up with to describe, you know, Japan to me, I guess. And this isn't some little pie in the sky, you know, yellow fever kind of description because, you know, I lived in Japan for two years. So, like, I know... I mean, I don't know everything, I'm not claiming to be a know-it-all, but I at least know kind of how some things work, and at least I know enough to kind of dispel some of the, you know, pie-in-the-sky views of Japan and stuff like that, and I still want to go back, because I love it. And, uh, you know, to my friend Zach, you know, 15 minutes into this video, 
Uh, I just want to say, you know, maybe if you do decide to come back to, to America, you know, don't think of it as a negative, just, you know, use this experience to really help assess what you want in life and to assess what your real goals are, not goals to get a lot of money or whatever the case may be, just goals that you personally want. work towards those goals. And however you get from point A to point B, you know, it's largely irrelevant so long as you're making progress towards point B. And you know, don't don't be uh, don't be too proud to accept jobs that you may not like or you know, be part of situations that make you uncomfortable just because they make you feel uncomfortable or make you feel less than you are, you know, whatever the case may be, you know, just recognize that, what's the chick like? <laughs> I don't recognize that, but uh, just recognize that, uh, you know, these, you know, this is kind of a, uh, a real developmental stage in your life, and that a lot of this badness will eventually pass, and you just got to refocus and reassess what you, uh, what you want in life, and maybe it's in Japan, maybe it's not, I don't know, that's, that's up to you, but if you decide to, you know, come back to Japan, that's cool, I mean, I decided to come back to Japan, and, uh, making it my goal to get back there, so, I just figured out how I wanted to get back to Japan, get a college degree, okay, cool, once I get the degree, find a job, get my work visa, come back. Easy day. So how I get from point A to point B doesn't really matter because, you know, it's, it's a very dynamic thing. It's a dynamic environment that we live in. So, it's whatever, so long as you're making progress towards point B. So, you know, I just, I wish you all the best and I hope that uh, everything works out for you and that you find out uh, what you really want in life. And uh, I hope you get it, man, because, you know, you're a real good guy. I don't wish anything ill, I don't wish have any ill will towards you or anything like that, you know. One of my friends I made off of you too. And, you know, I want you to succeed. But it's all up to you, man. You know, nobody can hold your hand through the whole thing. So just take this time to assess yourself, assess your life, figure out what you really want to do, make it happen. So, with that said, this is the Andy Son, signing up for now, thanking you guys for tuning in to this driving vlog and for watching my other stuff, and uh, best, w best wishes to my friend Zach, also known as Phoenix787 on YouTube. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to him, be sure to subscribe, show him a little, little uh, love there. <laughs> And uh, tell them the Andy Son sent you. And I want to thank you guys for, uh, for watching my other stuff. Also, want to thank you guys for liking, the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Coming at you, Pook, with my September 2016 update video, part two. So yeah, I'm just making this video as quick as I can so it's not gonna be as edited and polished as I'd like it to be because I gotta go to work here in a little bit. So I'm just putting this up here so that way you guys know what's gonna be going on for the next couple weeks. So, as I announced earlier this week, I'm going to be doing a Roger Swan remastering of all of his episodes of Tokyo Swan and Iwate Swan. So uh, if you want more details for the project, uh, links will be down below in the description. Uh, the first episode drops this coming Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and that's kind of gonna be the schedule for them. Um, we're gonna stagger the updates. So this week we're gonna have two episodes out. So one on Wednesday at 2 p.m. and then one on Thursday at 2 p.m. And then next week it'll be Wednesday at 2 p.m. and then the following week will be Wednesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. respectively. And in addition to that, um, <laughs> looking at the re-upload schedule, um, I've noticed that that was the time where I went to 
the Patrick Stump solo concert back in 2011. So in the interest of not making it like the next two weeks, like all Patrick Stump stuff, because I know some people don't really care for his uh, stuff, I've decided to kind of uh, <laughs> basically double my re-upload output. So I'm going to be releasing the, uh, the Patrick Stump uh, concert by song uh, every day at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then the normal re-uploads will be like vlogs and updates and all that kind of stuff. That's gonna stay the same time at 10 p or 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, rather. So you're gonna get a little bit of extra Andy Sand there. And like I said, we're also gonna do the Roger Swan thing on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Well, every other Thursday, rather. But every Wednesday, at least. Today is a very special day because in addition to a new Solid Monster Sounds Off podcast, which is my all-time favorite wrestling podcast, and the one thing I look forward to the most every Sunday, just a little, little small plug for a favorite podcast of mine. So in addition to that, today, September 25th, 2016, is my, oh Jesus, sorry for the table lighting, is my one year anniversary of getting out of the Navy. So um, I want to do a proper uh, sit down video where I talk more about it and we'll make like a Life After Navy episode about it, but I guess I'll just kind of keep it brief here. I'll be honest, I thought the transition from, you know, military back to civilian life was gonna be pretty easy because I'll be honest, uh, a lot of my friends on Facebook had gotten out before I did and they made it look like super easy. It was just another day to them. It was just, all right, you know, we're getting out of the Navy and then we're going back home and then we're going to college and it just seemed so seamless. So when I finally got out, um, I was very surprised to see just how hard it was. I mean, you know, when I first got out, it was pretty easy. It was just, you know, relax and watch YouTube videos all day because I didn't have to be anywhere. And, you know, I was trying to save my money, so it was probably best that I did stay home most of the time during those uh, first three months that I got out. And then when I finally arrived here in uh, Portage, Kalamazoo, Michigan, to start my journey back to college, the first time in nearly a decade. Um, I encountered a lot of uh, just different problems, you know. Most of it was financial because, you know, I didn't have a job at the time. I didn't get one until near the end of spring semester last year, or this year rather. <laughs> and uh, it was very difficult for me because, you know, I only had so much left in savings and the GI Bill only covered so much. And, you know, also on top of financial problems, I also was just getting used to civilian life, American life, college student life. There was a lot of major life changes that happened to me all at once. And it just kind of, you know, it was a little too much for me to handle at first. So that's why the first two semesters were a little shaky. You know, the second one went a little better. The second little, you know, summer one semester, I guess. So it was like a half semester really. Uh, went a little better, but still, you know, got academically dismissed and decided to shift my focus from you know, the IT department or the IT uh, industry rather, I guess, I don't know, <laughs> over to uh, film, video and media studies, which is something that I'm very passionate about and something that, you know, I look forward to learning more about and hopefully making, making my upcoming vlogs more entertaining for you guys. Cause I know I got a lot of good comments for my Roger Swan project announcement video because I use B-roll from some of the remastered episodes. So a lot of people liked that. So I figured maybe I can incorporate more B-roll as much as it pains me because I was never I was never really good at B-roll. That's why I didn't use it all that often. But I didn't really know where to put it. I thought it made it look a little hokey whenever I did try to do it. But, you know, I guess I gotta bite the bullet and, you know, at least get better at it, right? So yeah, I guess in essence with the whole you know, getting out of the Navy one year later, um, it was very difficult for me to readjust. Um, it's not as easy as it may seem, you know, for your Facebook friends who just recently got out and everything's all, you know, all sunshine and rainbows and all that kind of stuff. So uh, just keep that in mind if you're thinking about getting out. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's a lot harder than you might think. I gotta get going to work here soon, so I gotta sign off. 
So with that said, this is Andy San. Signing off for now. Thanking you guys, Boop, for tuning into this short little update video and for watching my other stuff. Also, want to thank you guys for liking, the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party, and hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Coming at you, Boop. My October 2016 update video for, you guessed it, October 2016. Woo! So as always with these uh, monthly update videos, we're going to be going over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So let's get right into it. And today... You know what? You know what? I'm, I'm sorry. I can't do this. I'm, I'm sorry. I just... I'm done. I can't. You know what? For 10 years, I've done YouTube. I've tried to portray my life as real as possible. I've connected with so many great people, made a lot of great friends through YouTube, and have done a lot online. Made a lot of videos talking about my time in the Navy, my time in Japan, both at the same time. And now I'm just kind of at a crossroads with YouTube because it feels like I don't really have much to say anymore. I feel like my vlogs have gotten boring. You guys think I'm a boring person. You think I'm not confident. You think I'm some lonely, lonely little jack off who has no fucking friends. And like I said, in these YouTube videos, I've always tried to be as real as possible. I've always tried to portray myself as real as possible. I'm not trying to be a character. It, you know, if I'm happy, I'm happy. If I'm sad, I'm sad. And I try to put that in my videos. But YouTube apparently doesn't like that. By YouTube, I mean YouTubers. People who watch YouTube. You, motherfucker, you're the problem. You want content that's all happy and has uh, got all kinds of cool effects, like B-roll, like this. And you want everybody's life to be super happy and jumpy and yeah, look at all the fun we're having. But life's not always like that. So I'm a bit at a bit of a crossroads right now. Do I keep being real, keep being me, you do you, boo? Or do I go off the deep end like I'm doing right now and just vent my frustrations, let myself be known, let my real self be known, and just kind of do what I want to do? You know what? I think I'll choose the latter. Because for 10 years, I've tried to be as real as possible, as myself as possible, and nobody fucking gives a shit. Nobody fucking cares. You don't care. Don't even type in the comments, Andy's saying, I care. I care about you. Fuck you. You don't know shit. You want an energetic, motherfuckers? You're going to get it. Videos where I'm a little more energetic, a little more animated, a little more genki, as the Japanese may say, and uh, a little less of, you know, that whole webcam business that you got over here. It's a Sony, bitches. So that's what's gonna be going on. Be sure to tune in for more of my videos. Watch my stuff all the way through. Goofs and gaffs abound. With that said, this is the andy San right here, motherfuckers, in front, in your face. Sign off for now. Thinking you guys for tuning into this video and watch my other boring ass stuff. Even though know, you say you do, you don't. I know, I watch. I read the analytics. But in any event, I gotta thank you guys anyway for watching my stuff. And I also have to thank you guys for liking with the thumbs, sharing it everywhere, liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys, bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you, book with a late night vlog. And my hands kind of, my right arm's gotten kind of tired, so I'm using my left hand for this vlog. So this is a first for me. I just want to apologize up front for, well, that, <laughs> as well as uh, for the lack of energy in this vlog. I'm coming down with like a fever or something, so I'm not exactly at 100% for this video, and that's one of the reasons why I haven't been making new videos lately. It's just been re-uploads and stuff. So again, apologize, apologies for the lack of energy in this video and for the lack of new videos as well. But the reason that I'm doing this video is because of a comment that I got on one of my, you know, rare new videos that recently came out at the time of this recording. And they were basically asking me something to the effect of, why do you still keep doing YouTube after all these years and you only have like so many subscribers? I think he said like 200 or something like that. And for the record, at the time of this recording, I have 285 lovely subscribers. 
But I get the general gist that he, I'm assuming it's a he, is making. And that is, you know, why do I still do YouTube? You know, why do I put all this effort into something that only gives me a very minimal amount in return? And the simple answer to that is because I love it. I love doing YouTube. I love interacting with everybody in the comments. I love inter I love watching videos of people. I love making video responses to people and hearing what they have to say and stuff like that. And it has, you know, brought me closer to various people from all around the world. And I've made a lot of really good friends off of YouTube, you know, people who I've met in real life, people who I've talked to through like a Google Hangout or I've talked to on Skype, stuff like that. People who, if I were still living in, you know, old Salina, Ohio, I would not have met otherwise. And so I owe a lot to YouTube for that. And it's the reason that I do what I do because I love connecting with people and I love putting myself out there so that way I can connect with other people as well. And I realized that the stuff that I put out there isn't everybody's cup of tea. I realized that not everybody likes my videos or certain types of videos that I do, or they may think that, oh, you don't use enough B-roll, or oh, your voice is annoying, or oh, there's too much shaky cam, and you know, why don't you cut your hair, or something, you know. There's always something with YouTube videos. Regardless, I still love doing what I do. But uh, as Dolph Ziggler would say, sometimes the things you love don't always love you back. And from a subscriber count and from a view, view count, um, my channel is a quote unquote failure. And you know, it hasn't really had the success that it should have considering how long I've been doing it, how many videos I've put up, stuff like that. From that perspective, I do agree, but I love doing YouTube and I love connecting with people. If I can still connect with people, even if my videos only get like three to five views and I only have 200 to 300 subscribers, then that's fine. Granted, I would like to get more than that. <laughs> you know, maybe 301 subscribers. You know, that's, that's not too much to ask, right? In any event, you know, I've wrestled with the whole idea of just trying to, you know, get with the times and do what all the cool kids are doing and all that kind of stuff. And it's just, I don't know, like some things I've incorporated, but there's a lot of things that I haven't. And the main reason is, again, connection. Feeling connected with somebody, being real with somebody. And that's the reason why I do the things I do on YouTube. And, why I don't incorporate certain things, you know, like B-roll and all that other stuff. And I realize that, that it makes the video easier to watch. I realize that, but it just kind of, to me, it kind of takes away from that intimate atmosphere that is one of the uh, charms of vlogging, you know, where it's, it's not fancy, it's not pretty, it's not all dolled up, it's not, in a recording studio or in a recording booth with the lights and stuff all on you. Like, I mean, <laughs> throughout this whole video, I mean, you know, I'm going in and out of focus because of the way the lights are arranged. So like, sometimes I look really good, like, <laughs> like uh, here. Then other times I turn and it's like, oh, you can't see my face. <laughs> so that's part of the charm of vlogging at least from my perspective, I know. Like I said, it's not everybody's cup of tea. I realize that some people are, you know, really into the Casey Neistat style of vlogging where it's like drone shots, B-roll, a lot of really good high quality stuff. And that's fine. I mean, I love Casey Neistat vlogs, but I'm not Casey Neistat. So, um, and I know a lot of other people are trying to copy him, so. Let's just, you know, let Casey be Casey and let Andy be Andy, okay? <laughs> just put it that way. So yeah, you know, in a weird roundabout way, um, the reason that I still do YouTube even after all these years and with very, very low quote unquote success, you know, subwise, wise V-wise, the reason I do it is because I love it and I love connecting with people. 
I'll close out this video by asking you guys, why, why do you like YouTube? If you're a YouTuber, why do you do YouTube? Is it for fame, for fortune? Is it to connect with people like me? Maybe not necessarily like me, but uh, you know what I mean. So yeah, just uh, put your answer down below in the comments, in the boobity boops and I'll be sure to uh, respond in kind. So anyway, probably gonna go take an Advil or something and lie down because I am not feeling that good today. So with that said, this is the Andy San. Signing off for now, thinking you guys poop for tuning into this rambly, late night, lack of energy vlog and for watching my other stuff. And again, apologies, like I said, for the lack of energy in this vlog, I'm trying to put as much chutzpah into it as I can, but I'm very limited on energy. And uh, I also want to thank you guys for being so patient with uh, the lack of new videos due to various personal circumstances, life, time, energy, name any of those. <laughs> anyway, I just want to thank you guys. And you know, I want to thank you guys for sticking with me through all this all 285 of you at the time's recording hopefully we can get a couple more maybe 286 or something <laughs> but regardless i want to thank you guys for uh watching my stuff and i also want to thank you guys for liking the thumbs or the stars for you old school youtubers commenting subscribing sending a few friends to the party and hey as always we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang. Andy here. Coming at you. Boop. It's my October 2016 update video. Part two. So, yeah. I um, haven't really been making too many new videos as of late, but uh, I've gotten a lot of comments and stuff in some of my re-uploads of, Andy, why aren't you making new videos? Andy, what's going on in your life? Andy, what's happening? Where are you? Are you dead? What's going on? And the uninteresting answer to that question is, well, no, I'm not dead. Sorry. <laughs> and also, I'm just not really a whole lot going on in life right now. I'm still doing my usual thing, going to work, going to school, uh, making some videos when I can. But there's just not a whole lot to talk about right now, so not making a whole lot of new videos. At least, you know, a lot of personal videos anyway. Even though that's the case, I have been starting up uh, new content, like uh, a podcast, which is the first time I've ever done any kind of podcasting before. So if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, check out the Weekend Wrestling Podcast. I've done two episodes so far at the time of this recording. So uh, yeah, check it out. And I'm still getting used to the format of podcasting. Uh, it's, it's a lot different from doing a YouTube video where you have to worry about, oh shit, the lighting's terrible. Oh no, don't do that. <laughs> you know, make sure you get in all your head and oh no, you're too zoomed in. Oh God, you're double chest sticking out. What's going on? <laughs> so there's a lot less of that to worry about and more of just focusing on the pacing. And that's something that I'm struggling with. And I really noticed it with the recent episode. And that's, <laughs> I really shouldn't uh, like downplay, you know, the stuff that I'm trying to get you guys to watch and listen and all that kind of stuff. But I'm just noticing that I'm still getting used to the pacing of doing a podcast versus a video where I can kind of, kind of just ramble on and off. And, you know, these videos are generally pretty off the cuff and just off the top of my head, very stream of conscious type things but with podcasting it's very structured very formatted you know people want what they want and that's all they want they don't want to hear you rant and rave about various things especially if you're boring so <laughs> that's why I, I stick to a script with uh with my podcast but it i don't know like i can't get it to sound like like I'm actually talking rather than just reading a script. I'm like, okay, Roman Reigns did the thing and then Dean Ambrose did the thing. You know, it's just, it sounds very unnatural. So I don't know if that's just gonna come with time or maybe I gotta change up my format a little bit. I don't know, but hopefully we'll get to it. <laughs> but at least the sound quality is good, right? I've gotten a lot of good praise on the sound quality for not just the podcasting, but for my videos over the years, or the past couple years anyway. I've been listening to some of my older videos and I was like, Jesus Christ, 
you know, and that's kind of the point of these re-uploads is to show just kind of a progression. And that's why I keep the old videos up on my channel. I know some people like to delete their old shit or unlist it or whatever. And they're like, no, don't look at my old videos. No, don't do that. <laughs> but like, I don't mind, dude. Like, we all have embarrassing shit. And so I'd rather just be upfront about it and own it rather than you guys digging around. It's like, oh, you said that one thing like eight years ago. And uh, you hate people. Uh. I don't know where I'm going with this. But yeah, that's one of the reasons why I do the re-uploads slash keep all my old shit up, stuff like that. And plus, you know, like I've said over the past couple months since I pretty much start or like moved to this channel is that I'm doing the re-uploads not only to show new people, you know, hey, this is what I was doing back in like 2011, 2012, which is kind of where we're at right now with the re-uploads but also to kind of give you guys some kind of daily content. I know it's kind of a cheap way to do it, but hey, it works for TV, right? They got syndication and shit like that. So I have like almost 10 years worth of content, so I don't want to just plop it all out there and just be like, here you go. You know, I just want to kind of let you savor the flavor, if you will. And no, not all of my videos are going to be re-uploaded. There are some that I'm just kind of, you know, not doing because uh, they're very timely or they're for projects that never went anywhere or whatever. So you're really not missing anything. I'm just re-uploading probably like 95% of my stuff, I guess. So the stuff I'm not re-uploading is really nothing you should really concern yourself with. It's really not that good. <laughs> so just to give you an idea. Uh, but as far as new stuff, uh, I don't really have anything planned other than what I already have with uh, the Weekend Wrestling Podcast being my more consistent thing. And then, you know, obviously doing re-uploads for my own channel, doing the remastered project for uh, the Tokyo Swan and Iwate Swan series of videos, which reminds me, I gotta start, I gotta start working on more of those because I think I only have like 30 episodes done so far. So, you know, I gotta start catching up with that. <laughs> but those are pretty easy to crank out. It's just... Uh, you know, I gotta actually do it, so, yeah. And uh, I've really been enjoying doing the uh, the remastered stuff. It really helps me with editing and stuff like that, even though, even though you don't really see that in a lot of these types of videos, because I like to keep them fairly loose, freeform, whatever you want to call it, so it's not all super edited and choppy and jump cut, ah. <laughs> so yeah, ah, coffee, it's good, it's good for you. Also, Low amount of sleep. I haven't really been able to sleep that well lately. I don't know why. And it's not because I'm drinking too much coffee. No such thing. <laughs> I don't know, it's just, I, I always get in these types of moods around fall time. So around like September, October-ish, I start kind of drifting and just like, eh, just not, not enjoying life as much as I usually am. You know, so. Yeah, it's just, it is what it is. So, I think that's about it. I gotta get down to editing this video, pumping it out, stuff like that. But I just wanna touch base with you guys, let you know that no, I'm not dead, and I'll try to make more life update vlogs and stuff, but not really a whole lot going on, so. <laughs> kinda hard to talk about stuff, but anyway. With that said, this is the Andy Sound. Signing up for now, thinking you got spooked for tuning into this random all over the place kind of update video and for watching most stuff. Also want to thank you guys for liking, the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later guys. Bye. Alright, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Coming at you, Pook, with my November 2016 update video for, you guessed it, November 2016. Woo. So yeah, as always with these videos, I'm going to be going over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube-y stuff. So let's get right into the youtube -y stuff, which is probably the reason you're watching this video to begin with. And that is to explain the mass upload that I did a couple days ago. Blew up a lot of 
uh, people's Twitter feeds and stuff like that. For that, I apologize. But the reason I did that was to announce that there's going to be no more re-uploads. I'm done with it. Sick and tired of trying to justify myself to you guys and to explain why I have to do these up re-uploads and the return of investment on those re-uploads was minimal maybe like two views and if, if I get anything in the comments it's usually well where's the new stuff when's the new stuff coming out I've already seen this video this is stupid so I'm sick and fucking tired of it I know you guys are sick and fucking tired of it so I decided to just upload all the things at once and you guys can watch it if you like if not whatever I don't care um, I'm gonna be going through the episodes uh, bit by bit and adding titles, tags, description, all that kind of stuff. But it's a lot of fucking videos, so that's gonna take uh, a lot of time to do. So it's definitely not gonna be an overnight thing. I'm also going to be organizing them into playlists very soon as well. So you guys will be able to watch uh, some, some of what I do by series a lot easier because I didn't exactly upload them in a very uh, nice order. It just kind of was like, bah, here you go. <laughs> so there you go. And as far as uh, daily content from me, you're not going to be seeing that anymore. I'm done with that. Um, the only consistent content you're going to see from me is the Weekend Wrestling Podcast, which is going to come out every, I'd say probably Friday or Saturday is what I'm shooting for. And then you're also going to see the Roger Swan Remastered Project, which is every Wednesday and every other Thursday. So uh, more details will be following on Twitter. So if you aren't following me on Twitter, twitter.com slash the Andy Son, um, I'll be posting more specific updates uh, for episodes as they are released. So if I release something a little early, if I release something a little late, you'll know if you follow me there. As far as new content from me, well, I don't know. I don't know what else to do. I feel like I'm just really burnt out from YouTube. I don't, I feel like I don't really have much else left to give. I can't really talk about my personal life too much anymore because it's quite honestly just boring and nobody wants to watch it. So why bother? Ever since I moved back to America, I've just been depressed and I haven't been able to find my groove back in America. It's difficult, and I feel like even though I do have a lot of you guys' support, um, it just feels like I'm all alone, and I am all alone up here. And I know you guys are going to be like, well, you know, just meet people. And I, f I can't relate to anybody up here. You know, a lot of these kids are kids, and they're outside of their own home for the first time ever. And it's just hard to relate. And then of the people that are around my age, they got their own families and shit to worry about. And you know, same with my friends from back home, they got their own shit to worry about. So I don't have anybody to talk to about my problems. And I don't have any money to go see a therapist. So I just, I don't know what to do. I feel like I'm not really going anywhere. And I'm just, I'm just here. You know, whether that's in class, at work, on YouTube, I'm just here, taking up a spot. And I, I don't know what to do on YouTube anymore. Um, I, I enjoy doing the Weekend Wrestling Podcast, and I enjoy uh, doing these remastered Roger Swan videos. That's... That's fun, but you know the Roger Swan stuff. That's his own stuff. It's not. It's not my own. And granted, I fix it up and make it look as as nice as I can. But it's it's not of my own creation. And I feel like whatever I put out there on YouTube just isn't connecting with anybody anymore. And I feel like I'm not connecting with anybody anymore. And it's just I don't know what to talk about on YouTube anymore because I used to be the Navy guy I used to be the Japan guy I used to be the Navy guy in Japan guy and I don't have that anymore I'm not in the Navy I'm not in Japan I'm just some overweight 30 something in Michigan 
that's not even an interesting part of Michigan. It's just very much a nothing town with, you know, factories and all that kind of stuff. It just basically reminds me of a scaled up version of where I grew up at. And it's just, it's hard to connect with people anymore. I'm just feeling very isolated from everybody. I just don't know what to do. You know, obviously you guys are gonna say, well, get help, get help, go, go talk to somebody, talk to a therapist, talk to somebody. But nobody can relate to what, what I'm going through right now. Nobody can say, well, you know, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be all right. I don't know. You know, it'll be okay eventually, but I know this is gonna come back again. It's not gonna be, you know, if I say these things or talk to this person, that this will just magically go away and I'll be able to live my life again. But it's just, the, the weight of depression is hitting me pretty hard right now. And it's difficult for me to do anything, whether it's school, work, YouTube. Honestly, I just wanna stay in my apartment, just watch TV and go to sleep and it's it's difficult you know I, I just i feel like i'm being constantly constantly scrutinized for every little thing that i'm doing i feel like everybody's watching me everybody's looking at me and wondering what's going on with that guy it just it feels hard to even connect with people from back home too because they've moved on and i've moved on i don't know what to do so See where things go, but uh, for now, we'll see you next time. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, coming at you boop, with another vlog. And uh, it's certainly been a while uh, since I've done any kind of vlogging, much less a driving vlog. Usually, when I'm on the go, I'm doing uh, Facebook Live things. But uh, I noticed lately, for some reason, the uh, the signal gets a little jumbled. When I do them now, so I don't know if that's just uh, part of the app or if that's something to do with the network in the area or a little of both. I don't know, but I'm just starting to kind of pull back on those. Maybe do them more when I'm home rather than on the go, which sucks because I actually like doing the Facebook Live. It's a lot of fun getting uh, real-time interaction and stuff like that while uh, while driving. So, but any, in any event, uh, today I wanted to talk about uh, my friends Grace and Ryosuke from the Texan in Tokyo channel. Uh, finally hanging it, hanging it up, giving up on YouTube. Um, they just released a video, uh, I think it was technically yesterday or so, talking about how uh, they want to start a family. And so they're... Uh, basically scrubbing almost their entire online presence to uh, to start a family and uh, to just you know go back to living a private life get regular jobs again stuff like that and uh, you know I I'm sad that they're go that they're leaving but at the same time I realize that obviously family comes first real life comes first before YouTube and uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, they're not gonna get sucked up into the YouTube system to where they feel like they have to make videos. They have to do this. Otherwise, you know, they're not gonna get paid anything. You know, when, it's difficult when YouTube becomes a job because, you know, YouTube always usually starts off as like a hobby. Just something you do in your spare time Usually talking about stuff you're passionate about, things that interest you, stuff like that. And uh, eventually once you start making enough money to be able to support yourself, then people often, you know, just do it full time. And rightfully so, but, you know, sometimes people become a little too dependent on YouTube. And, you know, they often rely on, like, clickbait titles and only doing a particular type of video, a particular style of video, talking about certain topics because they know that those are the ones that are gonna pull in the eyeballs 
not necessarily because they like to talk about those things, but because people are going to watch and they know that they're going to watch. So, um, I'm just glad that uh, Grace and Yosuke never really did stuff like that. They did some popular trendy videos, but not really to that extent. So, I'm just glad that they got out of the YouTube system before that started to trickle in. So, anyway, it's kind of a roundabout way to say, you know, best, uh, best of luck in starting your new family and uh, hope to uh, see you all again soon in the real world, not just on YouTube. Uh, but anyway, this, this whole thing just kind of got me thinking. Uh, not necessarily about quitting, but just, uh, just like my reason for staying on YouTube and my reason to keep going because, you know, like I said, it just, uh, it got me thinking, you know, at first it got me thinking, you know, maybe I should quit because I'm not really doing anything with the platform right now. Um, not really going anywhere, it feels like. Uh, just on a bit of a hiatus, even though I'm posting videos every now and again. Uh, but it just, it feels like I'm not doing anything on YouTube consistently. And uh, just, it makes me think, well, maybe I should just give it up. I mean, 10 years, almost 11, was a pretty good run, right? Um, but maybe it's time to hang it up. And I thought about it, and the thing is, like, I still enjoy making videos. I still enjoy hearing from you guys. Sorry, there's construction going on. But I still enjoy hearing, Jesus Christ, Michigan drivers. I still enjoy hearing from you guys uh, in the comments, and and I do miss that, you know, since moving over to the other channel. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of people saying like, "Oh, you shouldn't have moved. You shouldn't have moved. You had a good thing going. Why'd you move?" And I'm not gonna get into that whole thing because I have to keep on explaining that in every video because people don't don't understand, you know. I just, you know, I did it because I wanted YouTube to become to be able to supplement my income, and I couldn't do that on my other channel, so that's why I moved to this channel. So that, that's the long and short of it. I'm not gonna get into more details, because that's basically it, so. But in any event, it, the whole thing just got me thinking, you know, maybe it's time for me to, to hang it up, but uh, the thing is, I still love doing what I do. I love making videos. The thing is, I just, I hate the YouTube system. I hate what it has turned some content creators into, and that is people just chasing the buck, chasing the money, and they think that posting these types of videos that a lot of people watch will get them a lot of views and therefore a lot of money, whether that's in AdSense or in sponsorship deals because some of these people will subscribe to you and so they can go to sponsors and say, hey, we have X amount of subscribers. We get X amount of views every month, you know? Why not cut us a deal? Get us some money. And it just kind of goes from this, you know, being a hobby to being like a paid hobby to people just kind of losing their own morals over just getting a quick buck on YouTube. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, Grace and Ryosuke got out before it got to that point. Because, you know, they were talking about almost violating one of their YouTube rules of, you know, getting video footage of somebody without their consent. Or somebody who was just simply unable to consent, to be more accurate. And, you know, just got me thinking about the whole right and wrong of doing YouTube, you know, just whether you chase the buck or you do something because you love it, and, uh, like, I want to make money on YouTube. I'm not going to lie and say that I don't enjoy, you know, seeing the payment history on, on AdSense, which isn't a lot, mind you, but see it go from nothing to something is definitely something. Uh, but, I mean, that's not my end-all, be-all. That's not the reason why I do YouTube. That's not the end goal. 
you know, the money to me is just simply a means to the end. It's just simply a means for me to continue to, de to do YouTube because, you know, to do YouTube takes time. It takes time to record the videos. It takes time to edit the videos. It takes time to upload the videos schedule them make sure the thumbnail looks right make sure you market it right because that, that's another thing a lot of a lot of youtubers don't really consider is the marketing and I I've experimented with like paid marketing and stuff like that before uh, one of my videos uh, the reaction to the uh, the Navy getting rid of the uh, Navy listed ratings that was an experiment in marketing on uh, on reddit and I got couple hundred hits off of that um, it could have been better but it was, you know I'm not used to optimizing tags and stuff like that via reddit so um, <clears throat> like I said it was just kind of an experiment but it did have some success but anyway I, I'm getting sidetracked the point is um, I still want to do YouTube and you know, I still want to do YouTube. I still want to interact with people on YouTube. I still enjoy that aspect. I enjoy helping people and I enjoy connecting with people on YouTube. I've made a lot of legitimate friends off of YouTube. Like actual flesh and blood people, not just, you know, fucking Skank Hunt 42 from Nowhere, Colorado. You know, like actual people who I've met in real life. And. That is just, that's the reason I do YouTube. And sorry about the, uh, the lens flare there. So I'll just have to kind of do it like this until uh, we get past this sign here. But that's the reason I do YouTube, is to connect with people from around the world and to help people, whether that's through my tutorial videos on how to, how to, shit, sorry, on how to do stuff, with certain programs, which by the way, uh, I'm gonna be working on those very soon. Um, I just downloaded the new uh, CC 2017 suite from Adobe uh, that just came out, I think about, <clears throat> I think it was like, sorry, I don't throw something scratchy, but I think uh, CC 2017 came out like a week or two ago, uh, but I just now got got down to uh, to downloading it. Because uh, I've I just been so busy with school and other things. Not YouTube, obviously, but uh, <laughs> but other things. You know, a lot of big projects, you know, coming up that I have to focus on. But uh, in any event, I'm, I'm sorry, this video is all jumbled and I'm getting sidetracked here. But uh, like I said, I, I enjoy helping people, connecting with people. Like I said, helping people either through tutorials, like I said, are gonna be coming back soon, um, or just having them live vicariously through me. And that's not to sound egotistical and, oh, I'm so important, people want to be me. You know, it's just, I realize that YouTube uh, has this thing where people can just kind of feel like they're living other people's lives. Um, because I've done that before. I've done that with a lot of vlogger type people where I get to see what they get to see, what they see and uh, it, it can be a lot of fun. And so I realize that some people watch my videos for that aspect. Um, and I just had a bit of a an identity crisis when I got out of the Navy because my videos had been focused mostly on traveling, whether that's in Japan or visiting different ports that we'd hit, stuff like that. Um, it was always traveling. And I do like vlogs and stuff like that, just kind of keep you guys updated on my personal life, where the channel's going, and stuff like that. And I figure, you know, maybe once, twice, three times a month isn't so bad doing those sorts of things. Uh, but, you know, again, when I got out of the Navy, I wasn't traveling as much. I wasn't really traveling at all because um, in a way I really couldn't afford to because I wasn't getting those nice Navy paychecks every uh, every uh, 1st and 15th. Alright, so I uh, took the camera off the uh, little holder here. 
um, just because the lighting is god fucking awful. We got a whole bunch of light coming in from this side, as you can see. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> but to finish my thoughts, like, I still enjoy what kept me on YouTube for 10 years. I still enjoy that aspect of YouTube, but I just become so mired with the whole aspect of making YouTube. I mean, ideally, I want to make YouTube a full-time gig, but uh, I just want to kind of take it one step at a time and, you know, first transition it to a secondary source of income, maybe like a part-time gig, that sort of thing. And then as I get more money progressively, I'll be able to transition into a full-time job. And that's, you know, that's the plan for me. You know, obviously long term. <laughs> and I may never get to that level, at least not on my channel. But that's just the plan that I'm going through right now to make videos that hopefully are interesting to people, make videos that I like. And it's just that kind of clash that's, you know, that I'm dealing with right now is that I like making videos, but sometimes, most of the time, the videos that I like to make aren't the most commercially viable types of videos or they're or like they're only good up to a certain point you know and uh, I've experimented with different types of videos just to see well maybe it's time to freshen things up because like I've said in previous videos I don't want to be known as the the blank guy you know I don't want to be the Navy guy or the Japan guy or the tutorial guy although that one's not so bad I don't mind teaching people <laughs> that one I can live with but uh, I just don't want to be labeled as a s certain type of video maker you know I want to be I want to have a variety of different videos I want to experiment with different types of videos and I enjoy that wide selection of stuff on my channel and I think that's what what I really like about it is that I'm not pinned down to a certain genre or a certain niche of video making. But at the same time, uh, niche YouTube channels are, you know, one of the main ways, pretty much the only way really, to get noticed on YouTube. Uh, because you have to be focused on a certain topic, certain subject, niche, whatever and just make like a bajillion videos consistently over time and uh, <laughs> if anything the re-uploads have taught me is that um, consistency doesn't really work for me anymore so I'm um, not going to be making videos on a consistent basis anymore um, at least moving forward. That may change in the future, but for now, I'm not gonna make videos on a consistent basis where it's like pinpoints, like <laughs> at this time on a Wednesday, Eastern Standard Time, I'm gonna release a video and it's gonna be about this and whatever. Um, I just found that doing stuff like that doesn't really work for my channel. And it may work for others, I don't know. I'm not saying to just post whenever. <laughs> Because posting consistently may uh, help your channel, but it didn't really help mine at all. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a rambly video, kind of went off topic a lot. But I just had a lot of things on my mind. And uh, I'm just going through a lot of stuff. And uh, if you guys are wondering, uh, today I'm going to be visiting a therapist to hopefully uh, get my shit in order. Or at least, you know, begin the journey to get my shit in, uh, in check because I'm going through a lot of, uh, I'm going through a particularly bad depressive episode right now. Um, it started while I was in the Navy and it just kind of cycled in and out. Uh, like, I would have months where I was just in a really bad state and then other months where, you know, I was happy to be alive and things were great and it just cycled through. And uh, it just, it got worse when I got out because, like I said, I had an identity crisis. I didn't really know who I was anymore. Um, didn't really know what I wanted to be or anything like that. 
and it was just really hard. And it's gotten to the point where I'm skipping class. I'm just staying inside my apartment, just holding myself up and uh, not going on YouTube, not really doing anything. And no, it's not because of the election. <laughs> just want to get that out there. I'm actually, if anything, I'm glad the whole thing's over by now. So uh, that's one less thing I got to worry about. Uh, but in any event, it's just been really rough for me. Like I've only, you know, I only really leave my apartment to go to school, go to work, go to the store to uh, get groceries and whatnot. And that's about it really. Oh, and go to drive throughs to get something to eat sometimes. A lot of times. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's just been rough for me. So I decided to finally get some help about it. And uh, I want to do a video talking about uh, mental health in the military because I think it's a very, very important subject. And I just want to talk about my experiences dealing with it. Um, it's not going to be a positive video, um, but I still want to get that out there and hopefully uh, convince some people, whether they're active duty or, you know, veterans, if they're going through some shit, you know, go go seek help. So, you know, even if my video only helps one person, that's 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 fine by me. But in any event, I gotta get going. So uh, with that said, this is the Andy San signing off for now. Thanking you guys, poop, for tuning into this video. However, however rambly and <laughs> tangenty it is, it has been, and uh, for watching my other stuff. Also, want to thank you guys for liking, the thumbs, comment, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you, Pook, with a late night vlog, as you can see right there. <laughs> I got it. Um, recording this before I go to bed here, because I gotta get up early in the morning to uh, drive back to Keizu. Um, I'm actually home uh, for Thanksgiving today, so I'm in my brother Raj's room. Let you guys have a look. So yeah. I'm just here sleeping in his room for now, and then I gotta get up early tomorrow and head on out, because I got work, so, yeah. <laughs> gotta be there for Black Friday, right? You know, so. But in any event, I just wanted to talk to you guys about some stuff that's gonna be going on in the uh, coming months. Um, not gonna be anything super soon, but like I said, starting next year, uh, I was talking with my folks about uh, possibly transferring to a closer university and, you know, they were pretty okay with it. Um, not that I needed their approval or anything, but uh, I just wanted to transfer someplace closer because eh, I don't really have anything in Kalamazoo and uh, it's starting to wear on me a little bit as far as uh, just being alone up there. It just feels like I either go to school, go to work, go to the store, and that's it. Because, you know, the cost of living up there is really high as well. So, that's another thing I gotta consider is that, you know, my GI Bill doesn't really get me all that far. And I only have so many hours that I can work and still maintain a halfway decent GPA. So, I'm just kind of in a bind as far as that goes. And I don't want to get roommates because I don't really trust anybody in the area. And I don't really know anybody all that well to be like, yeah, let's let's room together, <laughs> you know. But also, it's just you know, with Western man, like, uh, I just feel like the school's really not for me. I feel like it's just really not that much of a good fit for me up there. So, um, looking into transferring to a college a bit closer and in Ohio as well, because, you know, being an out-of-state student kind of puts a damper on some things, so I'd rather be within Ohio. The college I'm looking to transfer to is uh, Wright State in Dayton, Ohio. Um, it's close by to my folks. Uh, some of my friends are out there as well, so, you know, 
We get a little bit of free time, we could hang out, do whatever, stiff like that. And plus I'm a lot closer to my folks, so that's that's really important, you know. And the cost of living out there is a lot cheaper too. And I'm only taking a I think like a twenty or thirty dollar pay cut on my uh GI Bill BAH, so you know that's not bad. And I was just doing some apartment searching earlier and I found like a lot of really good places for a lot less than what I'm paying now, probably at least a hundred dollars or or more or less than uh, what I'm paying up in Kalamazoo. And you know, if I get an apartment that's fairly close to campus, then you know, the commute's a lot less, so I'm paying less for gas. All just kind of works out. And plus their, uh, you know, their multimedia program, motion pictures program, stuff like that, is actually really, you know, well put together from what I've seen. You know, Tom Hanks, of all people, apparently has his own thing involved with that. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> I, I got to see the the uh, dedication ceremony on YouTube, and that was actually fairly recently too. So uh, I think in April of this year. So that was pretty interesting. Going to be getting the wheels in motion for that. Um, I still got to talk with the VA coordinator over at Wright State to see you know what all goes into transferring. How much time do I need in between semesters to get this thing going? And I mean, ultimately I can't really apply to Wright State until the end of this semester because that's when my GPA will be recalculated. So with my much higher grade, my much better grades this semester, that should definitely, you know, boost it back up. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm shooting for uh, transferring out there ideally in the summer because there's not going to be a whole lot of people on campus. Um, all the kids are going to go home, so apartments are going to be uh, very vacant. <laughs> and also, you know, a lot of local jobs are going to be needing to be filled as well because, you know, like I said, all the kids are going home. Restaurants and all that kind of stuff still got to run. But, you know, but that just seems to be a pretty good time to go out there. So I think it's all gonna work out. And even if I don't go in the summer and I have to wait till fall, that's fine too. I could still uh, take classes at Western until I manage to transfer. But ideally I would prefer the, uh, the summer semester just because it all seemed to work out. So that's my plans moving forward as far as personal life stuff goes. I'm um, really looking forward to it. Um, I think just being up in that part of Michigan is just really made me lonely and depressed and all this kind of stuff and I haven't really felt I haven't really felt connected to Western Michigan University you know I haven't really felt like you know that's my school you know it just feels like a place that I go to and I'm just kind of there <laughs> so I felt no real connection with it so I think going to a different place uh, one that's closer to friends and family will definitely help out and plus, the uh, the lower cost of living will also help as well. So I don't have to worry about bills and stuff like that. And I can begin to save up and I can begin to go, you know, I, I can feel less guilty about going out to do stuff. Because I think, I think that's one of the, uh, the main reasons I've felt so isolated up in Michigan is because, you know, I never really had a whole lot of money up there. It was just pretty much enough to get by. You know, as far as bills and things like that, and I was, I felt like I was just breaking even every month. And even on months where, you know, I'd work a couple extra hours or whatever, and I'd have extra money to go out and do stuff with, like I'd feel guilty because it's like, I don't want to go spending money because if I spend a little bit of money, then I'll start spending a lot of money, and next thing you know, I won't be able to afford rent, and you know, all this kind of stuff. So I'd feel guilty about you know, spending money recreationally, even though I think, I think you should be able to do it to some extent. I mean, obviously don't go blowing your whole paycheck on stupid shit, but you know, there has to be some kind of balance. And I felt like I really haven't had that balance, which is another contributing factor to why I haven't really been feeling like myself 
up in Michigan, and I've been really thinking about transferring for a while now, but I just hadn't really figured out where or, you know, just the logistics behind transferring. But uh, I was looking into the Wright State program uh, before I came down here, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I think could, I think that could work out. So, yeah. <laughs> um, obviously, I haven't submitted an application. I haven't gotten accepted yet. So, I don't want everybody to get too ahead of themselves. So, you know, we'll see what happens. But I am, you know, looking into transferring to a an Ohio-based university, preferably in the Dayton area. So, that's what's going to be happening. And as far as youtube stuff goes, um, sorry I haven't really been posting a whole lot lately. It's just been really busy with, you know, Thanksgiving coming up. All my classes have been like, oh, you got to do all these big assignments and they got to be due now and all this kind of stuff. So I've been busy working on them before uh, break started up. So um, and I think now it's just going to be leading into finals. So I don't really know what I'm going to be posting from here until the semester ends. Um, I'll basically just make videos whenever I can, and I think that's just going to be my MO moving forward with this channel, is just to make videos when I can. I know obviously sticking to a schedule would be best, you know, according to a lot of major YouTubers, you know, they stick to a consistent uh, upload schedule, but that has never really worked for me in the past. Um, even before the re-upload thing happened, uh, I tried doing scheduled videos before, and it just, I didn't really see any difference, you know? If anything, I saw i saw a, uh, a negative trend when I started doing videos on a consistent basis. So, yeah. <laughs> I think I'll just do videos whenever I can. Um, I'll try to get stuff out. I'll try to shoot for at least one video a week. That's kind of my goal. And as far as like what kinds of videos, um, shooting for tutorial videos for a premiere and for audition, stuff like that. So I'll be looking into different things you can do with the uh, Adobe Suite. Um, the 2017 suite recently came out and I downloaded that. It's been, there, there's not too many differences from what I could tell, but uh, just it's mostly just the layout. It's a little different and just little tweaks here and there to make an overall better product. So, but I still want to go over it so that way I can teach you guys how to do different things in there. So that way you can make your, your vlogs and your videos that much better. So that's going to be one of my main focuses. Um, I'm going to be starting up the Life After Navy series. I'm going to be doing more uh, just talking about uh, what life is like after the Navy, talking more candidly about Navy stuff, you know, comparing things to when I was in versus what it's like now, stuff like that. And also, uh, my brother Raj recently joined the Army, so. Um, that's another possibility of when he comes home on leave to do like a Q&A with him, kind of a Navy versus Army Q&A. So I think that'd be kind of cool just to kind of compare, you know, what boot, boot camp was like for him versus for me and stuff like that. And just how his uh, DIs were compared to my RDCs. Uh, so I think that'd be pretty fun. And uh, vlogs and stuff are just going to be kind of a whenever thing. You know, obviously the monthly update videos are still going to go on. Um, I'll, you know, continue talking about what's going to be happening and stuff that's going on in my life and things like that. Um, I also, speaking of which, I did some cleaning up on my uh, YouTube playlists. So I added all of the vlogs up to the most current one. I made two separate playlists where it orders the vlogs in order of, you know, you know, basically like from 1 to 252, and then there's another one where it's 252 to 1. So you can watch the vlogs in either order. So I think that's pretty cool. 
and I'll try to keep them updated as I add vlogs and stuff like that. And I've already completed the Andy Japandi playlist as well, so if you want to check that out, um, there's that. I'm still working on thumbnails, descriptions, and all that kind of stuff. Like I said, I got a lot of videos, so it's going to take a lot of time. It's by no means an overnight deal. <laughs> It's going to take a lot of time to get all that stuff taken care of. So, uh, just tackle it bit by bit, you know, maybe change a thumbnail around, stuff like that, you know, just whatever. So that's basically what's going to be going on. And, and also, I don't want to, uh, <laughs> uh, I guess I'll give you guys a little teaser, but, uh, you know, when I do transfer to uh, right state, if I get accepted obviously I don't want to don't want to jinx myself but if if it does happen that I transfer to Wright State I'll be closer to my best friend the Talking Vidalkin so there's another possibility of doing uh, collabs and stuff so we could do I don't know first, first impact anime I've been shooting a bunch of different ideas with him you know maybe doing like a let's play or something like that so I think that would be a lot of fun so that's another possibility for uh, when I transfer to Wright State, if I get accepted, of course. You know, I don't want to jinx myself. Knock on pillow. <laughs> but anyway, this vlog is getting a little too long, so uh, I'll end things here and get to bed. So, with that said, this is Andy Sound signing off for now. Thinking you guys, Pook, for tuning into this late night vlog and for watching my other stuff. Also, want to thank you guys for liking the thumbs. Comment, subscribe, and send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Coming at you, Pook, with my December 2016 update video for, you guessed it, December 2016. Woo. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm going over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube -y stuff. YouTube stuff. <laughs> so let's get right into the YouTube stuff. Um, as you guys know, uh, I went on a YouTube hiatus uh, earlier last month, and that was mostly due to uh, catching up with a lot of homework. Um, a lot of big projects and stuff for my classes were due that month, so I had to focus the majority of my attention to that. So that's why there hasn't really been a whole lot of YouTube videos and also dealing with the uh, the Weekend Wrestling Podcast and the Roger Swan Remastered series. All that stuff was just kind of put on hold while I was working on all these other projects for school. But I'm hoping to uh, get some things started again. As far as the, uh, the Weekend Wrestling Podcast goes, um, I'm gonna be putting that on the shelf for the time, for the time being, just because um, it is a lot of work to get everything all compiled up for the podcast and I just don't really have the time or the energy to focus on that right now, especially with school. As much as I enjoyed doing it and I did learn a lot making the podcast and stuff like that, um, I just can't in the uh, near foreseeable future continue doing it. Um, I hope to pick it up again at some point later on down the line when I'm less busy, but for now it's just not really a practical uh, use of my time, so uh, I'm still gonna be watching wrestling and all that kind of all, all that kind of stuff. So I'm not giving up on wrestling; I'm just giving up on the podcast for the time being. Um, so that's kind of the end of that. R.I.P. Weekend Wrestling Podcast. <laughs> and as for the uh, the Roger Swan Remastered series, um, like I said, went on the YouTube hiatus, so that was one of the main projects that kind of. Got the old pause button because uh, I was working on other things, but I am hoping to uh, continue that series up again. I just got to um, upload the episodes that I have so far and then just schedule them out, do the thumbnail, all that kind of stuff. As far as like new videos for me goes, um, I have a couple in the can right now. I have an unboxing video that's going to be coming out soon. Uh, it'll probably be out by the time this video comes out, actually. <laughs> if not, around that time. Um, I'm also finishing up uh, the rest of my backlog of Andy Kate episodes. Because I had recorded a couple episodes uh, a while back, earlier in the year. 
before I decided to put Andy Cade on hiatus because, you know, finals <laughs> it happens. Um, but I'm hoping to get the rest of those episodes out before the end of the year. And then once those episodes are done, then I plan on uh, doing some more Andy Cade stuff. Um, I don't know if it's going to be like a regular thing because, like I said, with school and all that kind of stuff, it's really uh, hampering the amount of time that I have towards YouTube because not only do I have school and homework and projects and studying for finals, I also have a um, part-time job working the weekends. So there's a lot of time that's devoted to other things. And plus sometimes, you know, just my brain needs a vacation from uh, focusing on creating content for you guys. So a little selfish, yeah, but uh, if, uh, if my, uh, my head and my heart aren't into it, um, I don't want any part of it. So it just kind of is what it is. But you know, I'm looking to get back into the game this month leading into 2017. But uh, as far as like having a uh, consistent schedule and stuff like that, it's really not gonna happen for me. Um, I've tried so many different times to have a consistent schedule, but I don't want to feel like I'm obligated to make videos. I wanna feel like making a video because I want to make a video, not because, you know, oh shit, it's like, it's Thursday already and I haven't made a video yet. Oh shit, better fucking do something, buy something at the store, unbox it, I don't know, do something, panic. <laughs> Because you know how the YouTube algorithm is, which, by the way, uh, if you guys were wondering, uh, as far as like at the time it's recording, YouTube went through a slight algorithm change. It, shaked, it uh, kind of did some things which affected views and subs and all that kind of stuff. And I was looking at my own analytics and I didn't really seem to be affected all that much. I think it was probably because I didn't really post at all for the most part. So it seemed like whenever you posted a video, some people would get unsubbed and your views would drop and stuff like that. But because I didn't post anything, it really didn't affect my channel. So I was uh, glad to see that. And if anything, I actually gained subscribers. So we had passed the, uh, the 300 subscriber mark. I don't know if I mentioned this in the last video, but we're uh, above 300 subs. Yay. So really excited about that. I'm looking forward to continuing to grow this channel and get it uh, back up to where I left off on my Andy San channel and then going beyond that because I know some people were very skeptical about me starting a, basically a new channel. Even, even though this channel isn't really a new channel, I've had this channel about as long as I've had my Andy San channel, but I used this initially as just kind of like a spare channel, mostly for like... Uh, concerts and stuff like that or just stuff that I wouldn't normally put on my other channel just random miscellaneous things um, but at the beginning of this year not the beginning but like March 2016 at the 10 year mark of my original Andy San channel I decided to make the move over to this one mostly to uh, start collecting AdSense money because uh, I do you know, I am looking into other sources of income now that I'm out of the Navy and I'm not getting that sweet Navy coin every 1st and 15th. So I'm not <laughs> I'm not in the poor house, as you can see behind me, but it would be nice to uh, have an extra source of income to help uh, just kind of even out the expenses a little bit and give me a little extra to help with uh, bills, groceries, whatever <laughs> and plus um, like I said before YouTube does take a lot of time to do it takes time to make the videos takes time to edit the videos put them out there market them get the thumbnail all right get the SEO and all that kind of stuff just right so it does take a lot of time to do and like I said I don't have a whole lot of time uh, to be doing those things because I have you know work and school and stuff so the time that I do have is uh, it has to be spent very, uh, very carefully. So it just kind of is what it is. And no, I'm not doing YouTube for the money. It's just money is a nice way for me to uh, get a little bit of uh, 
reciprocation from devoting all that time to a certain project. And it's doing YouTube. It's YouTube. I fucking... Uh, I've been doing YouTube for over 10 years, and I wouldn't have wouldn't have stuck around this long if I didn't love it, you know? And it's just now that I'm starting to actually get paid for it. And that's pretty much it for, uh, for YouTube-y stuff. Now, as far as like a schedule schedule, before we get into the personal stuff, um, like I said, I'm not gonna be doing a set schedule. Uh, what I'm gonna be doing is just basically aiming to do at least one video a week. And then if I can do more, I'll do more but I'm gonna be aiming for at least one video a week. I don't know exactly when, but uh, I'm aiming for one video a week, so there you go. And another thing I'm gonna be doing is starting uh, starting next year, and uh, I'll, I might be doing a little bit of tweaking leading into 2017, but one of the things that I really want to start pushing at the beginning of next year is my Patreon. So for those who don't know, patreon.com slash theandysan. Uh, links below in the description if you want to check that out. Um, I'm going to be doing more of a push towards uh, getting more patrons on Patreon. And uh, again, one of the reasons for that is to help supplement my income, help uh, get more equipment, get better equipment, help with upgrades and stuff with my computer, software, all that kind of stuff. Because, you know, this stuff don't come cheap. <laughs> and uh, I would like to um, upgrade my setup a little bit as time goes on. So I think Patreon would be a nice way to do that. Now, as far as rewards and stuff like that goes, um, I'm still, still toying with ideas. So just let me know in the comments down below, in the boobity boops, what you guys would like to see for rewards. And I'll see if I can oblige to... Uh, to those reward tiers. And uh, I'm also uh, planning on uh, offering my services as like a freelance editor to help out smaller channels and stuff like that with projects. And uh, that's gonna be another aim at uh, Patreon is to hopefully set up a thing to where I can accept commissions and we can get that all set up and stuff like that. So be on the lookout for that in 2017. So now let's get into the personal stuff. So as I had explained in a previous vlog, I'm looking into transferring over to Wright State University in Dayton, Ohio next year. And the main reason for that is so that way I can be closer to my friends and family. Um, and also, I'm just not really uh, digging the vibe out here in uh, Kalamazoo anymore. Not that I ever did, but I figured I'd at least, you know, try to give it a shot and stuff. And it's just, eh, it's just not really clicking for me. So I'm thinking about moving over to Dayton, Ohio, transferring to Wright State uh, the beginning, not the beginning, but uh, at the end of spring semester in 2017, ideally. Um, but it all depends on how well my grades are for this semester, uh, if I'm off academic probation and stuff like that. But uh, if I am off of it, then I'll go ahead and apply and uh, go through that whole process. And if I get accepted, I'll transfer in the summer but if they want my GPA to be a little higher, then I'll continue to go to uh, Western out here and uh, get my GPA back up again. So that's the plan moving forward. Um, I can't wait to be back in Ohio with uh, my friends and family again. And I think that's gonna be very good for me mentally because I just, I don't know, I just, I really can't relate to the people that are in college, it's just, you know, they're, they really uh, kind of make me more aware of how much older I am compared to them, because a lot of their problems are stuff that I had faced before, and they just don't really affect me all that much anymore, and just, you know, stuff like that. Plus, I know that I'm not going to really see them again after college, so it's kind of, to me, it's just kind of uh, not really pointless, but I'm just kind of getting my hopes up, I feel. If I try to get close to them, only for them to, you know, either graduate or leave within a year. So it's just kind of like, mm, what was the point? <laughs> and uh, yeah, I could be friend Facebook friends with them and stuff like that, but it's not the same. So 
uh, transferring back to Ohio so I can be closer to uh, my long my long term friends and closer to my family so I don't have to plan a whole big thing when I want to go visit them. It's more of just a well I'll just see them on the weekends or if I get a little bit of free time or whatever I can just zip on over and it's not that big of a deal. Whereas living out here in Kalamazoo I have to section out different you know times of the day I have to leave really early to get back home at uh, at a reasonable time. I have to leave early in order to get back here at a reasonable time for work and stuff like that. So it's a bit of a disconnect and uh, stuff like that. So yeah, can't wait for that to uh, to get going. Um, as far as my own mental health, I think going back home for Thanksgiving really helped me uh, clear out a lot of stuff that was in the old nog nog. And uh, I'm also eating a little better. Uh, taking vitamin supplements, which are really helping with my uh, frame of mind, stuff like that. Uh, like, uh, just nothing really too, you know, too complicated. It's just uh, B vitamins and uh, vitamin D as well. So those usually help me out during these uh, seasonal depressive episodes. And they've been keeping me on the, uh, the straight and narrow for the time being. And uh, yeah, I just look forward to coming back home to Ohio where uh, I'm a lot closer to friends and family and I'm not out here by myself all alone. So, um, and uh, that's pretty much it for this video. <laughs> so sorry if it's a little rambly at parts. Um, it's been a while since I've done one of these little sit down vlogs. Uh, I've been mostly working on schoolwork and whatever so um, to sit down and do these these videos is uh, really fun for me but it's uh, you, I use I see YouTube as like a muscle and you know if you don't if you don't use it you lose it so I just gotta get sharp and get good at the YouTubes again so anyway before I ramble and talk your head off for another 20 minutes uh, we'll just end things here and with that said this is the Andy son. Signing up for now, thinking you guys for tuning into this rambly ass update video at the end of the year, 2016. Woo. And uh, for watching my other stuff, also want to thank you guys for liking, for the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you, Pook, with a new Vliggity Vlog. And today I'm gonna to be talking about my life, uh, grades for this semester, and youtube -y stuff as well. Uh, the most important thing is uh, my grades came in today for uh, fall 2016 semester. And I have to say, um, I'm really proud of the, uh, the turnaround and the uh, rate of improvement that I've had compared to my previous semesters. Um, as you guys know, I was originally in the Management Information Systems major, which is kind of a combination between like computer science and business. So it's kind of a hybrid between the two. Uh, that was my previous major. And when I came back to college, after being out for nearly a decade, you know, going through that major, uh, I found out it really wasn't for me. Uh, my GPA suffered. I got put on academic probation. I actually got academically dismissed because I did so poorly. And um, I was able to come back for the fall of 2016 semester, which was this previous semester that just finished up last week. And uh, I was put on like <laughs> almost like double secret probation, basically, to where uh, I had to take like an academic recovery course and all this other stuff and uh, I've also decided you know to change focuses change majors and that was another impetus for me to come back to Western Michigan so um, after going through all that going through different class you know classes that I'm more interested in you know with filmmaking and things like that um, my GPA really improved now I'm not saying that I'm, you know that I have like a 4.0 or anything like that but uh, it is above a 2.0, we'll say that. And because of that, um, 
I'm going to be uh, continuing to go to Western Michigan for the time being. Um, I haven't put on extended probation because uh, my GPA for this semester wasn't enough to get my overall cumulative GPA beyond a 2.0. So um, it's not quite enough to get past that yet. So I've been put on extended probation because I've shown significant improvement and you know, I'll be able to continue classes. So that's good. So really looking forward to the next semester where I can focus more on my major, some gen eds, things like that. So really excited about that. Uh, really excited that, um, you know, my grades were better this semester. I was really nervous about that because I had went through a really bad depressive episode uh, last month in November and it really uh, affected my grades and everything and I was really worried that um, I wouldn't be able to continue going to college you know it just you know it just wore a hole in my stomach and there was nights where I couldn't really sleep because I was just thinking about it because you know anxiety <laughs> but uh, I got the results back today and uh, no I'm not out of the doghouse yet I'm not on the Dean's list yet <laughs> But uh, I have shown significant improvement, and I'm definitely on the right track to uh, getting my GPA back up again. And then uh, the plan moving forward with that is uh, once I get my GPA back beyond a 2.0, ideally around 2.5-ish, um, I'll start applying to universities a bit closer to home in Ohio. Uh, one that I'm looking uh, into the most is uh, Wright State in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, it's a place that's very close to uh, my friends and family from back home. So if I wanted to, you know, visit my folks on the weekend or something, I could do that without having to take into account long driving times and stuff like that. And I'm a lot closer to my friends, so they're only a couple minutes away. And I'm really um, excited to be closer to them as well. Because, you know, here in Kalamazoo, being a 30-something, it's kind of hard to make friends. Not impossible, but it's uh, certainly a lot harder, you know, to relate to uh, the kids on campus. I'm just glad to be a bit closer to my OG friends. <laughs> Hoping to uh, make some more videos and stuff uh, with my best friend, Eric, also known as the Talking Vidalkin. I uh, hope to uh, make some more collab videos with, that, with, uh, with him when I move a bit closer to home. Uh, maybe we can get like First Impact Anime up, we can do other things as well. Um, so I'm really looking forward to the possibilities of all that. And plus, uh, Ohio is a lot more, uh, the cost of living in Ohio is uh, a lot better than in Michigan. So that's another, another reason why I'm moving to Ohio is because, you know, here in Michigan, yes, I do have the GI Bill, so I'm able to afford this place and pay bills and stuff like that. But I do have to have a uh, significant part-time job in order to uh, cover the other expenses like food and you know, maybe like insurance and stuff like that. You know, grown-up stuff. <laughs> so it's not like I'm just sitting on my butt on the couch all day doing homework or whatever. You know, I, I have to work. <laughs> so... Uh, it just kind of is what it is, and I feel like, you know, living out here in Kalamazoo, I'm just barely breaking even for the most part. Um, I am able now, because I've climbed out of debt and stuff like that, I'm now able to breathe a little bit easier. But if some big emergency came up, I'm not exactly in a good position to, uh, to tackle that. So I have to really play it carefully with things, and I'm hoping... You know, once I move back to Ohio, uh, the cost of living is going to be a lot lower and I'll be able to get an apartment that's pretty much, you know, like this one, maybe a little better for either the same price or most likely lower. So that'll be nice. And plus, I'm also looking for apartments that are a bit closer to campus as well. So that way, A, the cost is lower and B, uh, I don't have to pay as much in gas. So that's another win-win right there. So that's the plan moving forward uh, in the personal life, all that kind of stuff. But for now, I'm just going to kick back, relax, 
uh, chill out for this break and get some well-earned relaxation time in. And uh, one of the things I'm gonna do, even though it's kind of, it sounds counterproductive to the whole uh, relaxation thing, is uh, make more YouTube videos. And I already have a couple videos in the can that I have to get to editing. But uh, one of the things I wanted to do with my channel is to try to uh, have uh, very specific brands of content rather than just rando stuff all the time. So one of the things that I want to do is to be a little bit more consistent with my Life After Navy series where I talk about, well, my life after the Navy and talk and uh, answer questions that you guys may have about uh, the military, my time in, you know, maybe if you're looking to get out and you're looking to use like the post 9-11 GI Bill, you know, if you guys have questions about that, I'd love to answer those. And I really enjoy doing the Life After Navy series and I think I'm able to talk a bit more candidly about my experience in the Navy because I felt that, and uh, one of the reasons, and I don't think I'd really talked about this before, but uh, one of the reasons why I stopped doing NFAX uh, there's several reasons. Um, one of them, I was kind of getting burnt out with the same question over and over again. You know, what's boot camp like? And uh, another reason was I felt like uh, some of the questions that I was getting, I wasn't able to really honestly answer. And that was just because I felt that if I were to honestly answer those questions, it would, you know, show that I have a negative opinion about something in the Navy and it's kind of it's kind of that old saying you know don't shit where you eat basically so I didn't want to get myself in trouble with uh, Big Navy if they found my videos because I know a lot of people you know from my ship uh, some people when I was back in training found my videos and some of them were like ah it's kind of funny you know oh, it's kind of cool and then others were like dude you gotta take that stuff down you know you don't want to get go to mast or anything like that and I'm like what? <laughs> so I was playing very, uh, very carefully with the rules because, you know, when I was in, this was 2010 to 2015, um, the Navy, the military was starting to make uh, regulations for social media use. So this is all very new. And so I was just trying to uh, just play it as carefully as I could and... In doing that, I couldn't answer questions where my answer would reflect negatively upon the Navy, but now that I'm out of the Navy, it's not like I'm gonna be bashing the Navy all the time, because to be perfectly honest, you know, without the Navy, no matter what my opinion is of them as an organization or whatever, without the Navy, I wouldn't have this apartment. I wouldn't be going back to college. You know, I wouldn't have a car sitting out there at least one that works to be totally honest so yes there are some aspects of the navy that i don't like but the fact of the matter is at the end of the day without the navy i wouldn't have those things so it just kind of is what it is but now that i'm out i am in, able to answer questions more candidly and talk a little bit more negatively about the Navy if it warrants it. I'm not just gonna go on a big Navy bashing, you know, frenzy or anything like that. So that's what I really enjoy about the Life After Navy series is that it's a bit more honest about uh, my opinions of the Navy. In addition to the Life After Navy series, I'm also gonna be doing more uh, Adobe tutorials as well because that's the software that I use for the majority of my videos. Now, I'm also going to be doing maybe a couple tutorials here and there of um, like peripheral software that I use. Like to record this video right now, I use a program called OBS. And it basically is just capturing video from my webcam. So I'd show you guys how to use it and stuff like that. And uh, But the main focus is going to be on uh, Adobe products that I use. like. Adobe Premiere, Adobe Audition, and I'm just now learning how to use Adobe After Effects. Um, <laughs> might be a while before I start doing tutorials on that, but uh, that may be something in the future that I'm looking into doing. But for now, you know, Adobe Premiere, Adobe Audition, 
how to do certain things, how to make your video sound good, maybe like a basic overall, like a Adobe Premiere for Dummies or Adobe Audition for Dummies kind of thing, maybe in the future. But uh, if you guys want to learn how to do something with those programs, be sure to leave me a leave me a comment down below in the boopity boop, and I'll do my best to answer. And you know, who knows? Maybe your question will be the subject of a future tutorial video. But I do want to get those videos um, out on a more consistent basis. I uh, found that you guys really were receptive to those videos, so I want to do more in addition to the Life After Navy series stuff. And then in addition to all those two things, <laughs> all those two things, um, I also want to do like more vlogs when I can and uh, start up on the Roger Swan Remastered series again because again, like I said, uh, that was one of the series that kind of fell by the wayside when I went through that bad depressive episode last month. And I really want to get started on that again. Now, like I said in my previous update video, the Weekend Wrestling Podcast is on essentially permanent hiatus because um, the amount of time that I have to dedicate to that podcast is very high because there's just so much wrestling content on just from the WWE. I'm not talking about wrestling overall, just in WWE, that it just, the amount of time I'd have to dedicate to it is too much for my schedule being in school and all that kind of stuff so as much as I liked doing it it just doesn't seem very um, practical for me to do right now so apologies but uh, it just kind of is what it is and uh, other forms of content that I want to do um, are like the Andy Cade series I uh, really want to get back into doing Let's Plays again. Um, I don't think it's going to be a uh, consistent series. It's more going to be just kind of a an occasional series based on you know when I get games, when I'm able to do uh, capturing of the video game footage, stuff like that. So it's not going to be like a uh, consistent form of content. It's just going to be kind of an, an every once in a while sort of thing. But I do want to make Life After Navy uh, Adobe tutorials. I want to make those a bit more consistently for my channel. So I'm really looking forward to making some videos come uh, 2017. I'm thinking that this is going to be a really good year for me. Uh, 2016 was kind of a kick in the balls for uh, for a lot of people, but I'm really uh, I really have high hopes for 2017, and I hope you guys uh, will stick around with me. Uh, for the years to come. So, with that said, this is the Andy San signing up for now. Thinking you guys, Poop, for tuning into this video and for watching my other stuff. Also, want to thank you guys for liking, with thumbs, <laughs> commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you book, with a little vliggity vlog. And uh, today I'm at my parents' place here in Sline, Ohio, so a slight change of scenery. And I uh, also got myself a new haircut, so uh, they kept the sides pretty short, so it's easy for me to wear hats. And I can style this up right now. I don't have any goop, so I can't, you know, do things with it, so it looks like I have a pineapple on my head. <laughs> But it's whatever, at least I can wear hats, and that's important for my job. So, anyway, um, I just wanted to make this vlog to talk about what 2016 meant for me um, as a person, YouTuber, all that stuff. So, 2016 was a very challenging year for me. One of the reasons was it was my first full year out of the U.S. Navy since I joined in 2010. And uh, it was very difficult because I'd gotten out in September 2015 but this was my first full year out. And so that presented a lot of challenges in just getting back into the civilian mindset again and just kind of, you know, being your own motivator. Because, you know, in the military, you had other people telling you what to do and when to do it. Now it's just me. So <laughs> I'm all I've got as far as that goes. I just had to learn to, you know, pick myself up again. So. That was pretty challenging, and uh, 
I want to thank you guys for sticking with me during some of those uh, rough spots. I know I worried a lot of you guys in some of my vlogs because I got really badly depressed and was just wondering, like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And uh, there was a lot of concerns from some people. And uh, I just want to say thanks for sticking with me through those rough spots. Not to say that there's not going to be any more rough spots because, hey, life, right? Yeah, hopefully 2017 will be a little bit smoother than 2016 since I have kind of uh, an idea of what I'm doing now. Um, 2016 was also my first year back in college since 2007. So nearly a decade after I had left college the first time around, I'm now back, you know, no longer as a 20 something, but as a 30 something. So that presented its own challenges. And uh, I gotta say, getting back into that college mindset I think was the hardest for me just because I'd been out of the education environment for so long. Um, I'd just forgotten a lot of the study habits and the discipline needed to, okay, I gotta commit to doing homework at this time for this many hours or wherever the case may be, depending on what I had going on. You know, and I just had to, again, be self-motivating to do stuff like that. And it was kind of hard to, you know, do it all by myself. But, you know, eventually I got into a groove of things and, you know, I'm happy to say things are turning around for me. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, when I first started college at Western, you know, at the beginning of 2016, um, I was strapped with a major I wasn't really all that keen about, um, wasn't very good at it. And because of that, my GPA suffered. Um, decided to switch to a major that I was very passionate about, filmmaking. Having done YouTube for over a decade now, it's just something that I'm really interested in and I'm hoping to, you know, maybe do something with it, you know, once I get out. Yeah, because it's doing something that I like, I'm actually pretty good at it, and my GPA is starting to turn around. Um, it is going to take some time because, like I said, you know, the previous major kind of... <laughs> through my GPA for a loop, so it's gonna take some time to rebuild, basically. But I'm hoping for fall of 2017, or maybe late summerish, to transfer over to Wright State in Dayton, Ohio, so I can be uh, closer to friends and family. And also for a cheaper cost of living, because it's really expensive to live out in Michigan. Like, a lot of people don't really realize it, but it is pretty damn expensive living out in Michigan. So that's another reason why I want to move back to Ohio. And plus, you know, being an in-state college, um, I get a lot more financial benefits and stuff like that, so that's nice. And uh, stuff like that. So, can't wait for that. Um, it's not gonna happen as soon as I originally expected, because in initially I was gonna transfer at the beginning of uh, summer of 2017. But uh, my GPA wasn't quite up to what I was expecting at the end of this semester and uh, it's probably gonna have to wait for another semester or two before I can uh, build things back up again so it is what it is but uh, we're gonna move on so yeah that was uh, those were two main uh, challenging points for me in 2016 but moving on to 2017 I'm hoping to like I said get my GPA back up again um, definitely a lot a lot more prepared for college and you know leading into 2017 than I am you know when I first started in 2016 I think I'm definitely in the right mindset for it and I realize that there are going to be roadblocks you know stumbling blocks whatever you want to call them and I think I'm a lot better equipped now to deal with those than I was when I first started so definitely going to be some challenges up ahead but uh, a lot better prepared for them so can't wait for 2017. Woo. And uh, I also want to get into uh, more youtube -y stuff as well, because I realized 2016 was a really bad year for me, uh, YouTube-wise. There was a lot of good things that happened, but also, like I said, you know, stumbling blocks with college really affected a lot of things, including YouTube, because I would focused more on college when I wasn't doing so good and less on YouTube. And now that uh, you know, starting to balance things out again. I want to focus a bit more on YouTube. Um, obviously, you know, college is number one priority, so 
I can't you know, go full time with YouTube because, you know, not only do I have college, I also have a part time job. So that tends to uh, affect the amount of time that I can work on videos and stuff like that. But I do want to, you know, make videos and I want to do more with my channel. And, you know, since I got out of the Navy, one of my main concerns was what do I talk about on YouTube? Because I've been in the Navy since 2010 and that's when my channel started to gain some traction because, you know, there wasn't a whole big, you know, vlogging scene for military members. You know, now it's starting to, I think, really come into its own with guys like JT Suits. What up, fam? <clears throat> Sorry, throat's a little, st a little sore still. Um, among others in the military community from other branches as well. Even though I'm not the Navy guy anymore, you know, I'm just a veteran now. Um, I do want to still continue doing some Navy related videos. You know, I really do enjoy the Life After Navy series. Um, I think it's definitely a more honest approach than my NFAC series was because there were some questions that I would get when I was doing NFACs and uh, I felt I really couldn't answer them properly because they involved like a negative aspect of the Navy. And back when I was active duty, that's something I really wanted to avoid online was, you know, talking in any way negatively about the company that I work for. You know, it's like the old saying goes, don't shit where you eat. So I didn't want to get myself in hot water with them. So I tended to uh, avoid those types of questions. But now that I'm out, I feel like I can, you know, maybe tackle those questions a bit better or maybe give a more good and bad um, approach to certain questions. Whereas when I was active duty, I really couldn't do that. So that's not to say, you know, oh, the Navy's bad and fuck the Navy and don't join the Navy, it's stupid. You know, I gotta be honest, overall, Joining the Navy was one of the best decisions of my life. It helped me really get my shit together. You know, not only as a person, but also as a college student now, you know, I wouldn't have been able to come back to college had I not gone and joined the Navy because I just, I didn't have the money to get a college education. You know, now that I'm out, I'm on the GI Bill and I'm able to get my learn on and, uh, hopefully make something of myself uh, once it's all said and done. So, can't wait for that. And I uh, also want to do videos a bit more consistently than I did in 2016. I realized especially, you know, near the end of the year, it was starting to get pretty bad because I'd fallen into a bit of a, a bit of a depression, a bit of a funk with uh, everything really. And so it just kind of, you know, <laughs> put a damper on everything. And I'm hoping to make YouTube videos a bit more consistently. So um, some things that I'm looking forward to doing in 2017, obviously more Life After Navy stuff. Uh, some more vlogs when I can, when there's stuff to talk about, stuff to vlog about. You know, maybe getting out of the house a bit more once um, I'm a bit more financially stable. I'm still kind of getting there, but uh, I don't exactly have a whole lot of coin to go you know, throwing around for random unboxings and stuff like that, at least on a consistent basis. Um, but I do want to get out and explore uh, Kalamazoo a bit more. And I think that's something that's really been missing in a lot of my videos is the outdoor stuff, you know, the life, life and video stuff where I'd go and explore different interesting parts of uh, wherever I'm at. And I really miss doing those types of videos, but one of the things I noticed being back in America is that I'm a lot more self-conscious of myself talking to either a camera or a cell phone or whatever the case may be. And, you know, when I start to kind of get going, you know, I see somebody walk by and they kind of either look at me or whatever. And it's just like, oh, shit, you know, all right, better be quiet. <laughs> it's really weird. You know, even after all this time, I still get very self-conscious about it. Um, when I was in Japan, not so much, at least not around the Japanese people, because, you know, they didn't really give off that vibe of, what's that foreigner doing? You know, it was just a, oh, foreigner. And that was it. <laughs> but in America, you know, I don't want people like approaching me or, you know, taking my shit away because, oh, look at that expensive camera, you know, where's your money? <laughs> Stuff like that. 
I definitely want to avoid it. Uh, but I do want to do uh, do videos out and about in town. Um, but again, it depends on you know what I'm going for, stuff like that. How much money and time, especially, do I have to devote to those things? And uh, now that my financial situation is getting to be a bit better, it's starting to starting to even out a little bit. Um, I'm hoping to do more outsidey things as well. Other things I'm looking forward to doing, in addition to the Life After Navy stuff and the vlogging when possible, um, is also uh, Adobe Tutorials. Um, I know a lot of you guys have been asking about that. If you guys want to know something about uh, either like Premiere or Audition, those are the main two programs that I use to edit videos. So if you want to know stuff about that, you know, leave me a little, little something something in the comments down below in the boopity boops. And, you know, who knows? Maybe your question will get answered in a how-to video. In addition to that, I also want to eventually do a very uh, focused, like, how-to, you know, use Adobe Premiere, use Adobe Audition for beginners, things like that. I just want to make, I want to make the, uh, the tutorials very focused. I don't want to go off on this long 20-plus minute video rant talking about a little specific thing on, uh, Premiere or whatever. I want them to be very focused. So they're going to take a little bit more work to do than like your standard rambly ass vlog like you're doing with now. <laughs> so um, can't wait to start doing those. But again, got to kind of feel out this semester a little bit, see how much time I have and which classes are more of a, you know, investment in as far as like homework and things like that. So uh, just kind of kind of feel it out and then start uh, start a schedule. So the plan with YouTube is uh, in 2016, for those who don't know, um, I switched channels to the one I'm on right now. This channel was originally my secondary channel and uh, where I would just put up random stuff, usually, you know, copyrighted stuff that I couldn't deal with on my other channel, just as kind of a miscellaneous whatever channel. But uh, I decided when I got out of the Navy that I was going to lose a lot of subscribers anyway. And I also wanted to, uh, you know, start looking into other sources of income because I wasn't getting those nice Navy checks like I, like I did when I was in. So I wanted to look at other sources of income to just kind of help me out, you know, during my time in college. So I um, looked into doing YouTube a bit more seriously, which is kind of funny looking back on it now. I decided to uh, switch over to this channel once my AdSense account got approved for it, trying to make this like my secondary source of income. So that's the goal leading into 2017, is to make this basically as my part-time job, quote unquote. So the idea is to generate enough income on a consistent basis from this channel to where I don't have to work a another part-time job and I can focus on YouTube a bit more so the main thing with YouTube is you know and I'm not doing this for money you know it's just I love doing YouTube but in order for me to really invest more into it I need money to you know pay the bills all that kind of stuff you know especially during months where the GI Bill isn't quite as strong with the BAH so <laughs> Um, it is what it is, but uh, I'm just hoping to be able to focus a bit more on YouTube, you know, still do the college thing and all that kind of stuff. And then by the time I get out of college, well, I can do YouTube a bit more seriously. And, you know, I'll have enough of an income source to where I can uh, do YouTube or do whatever anywhere. And, I mean, I think that's my, one of my main goals is to have a... Uh, what they call them like flexible jobs or remote jobs, commuter jobs, whatever. Basically where you do all your work online or through like Skype or whatever the case may be. I think that's something I definitely want to pursue uh, once I get out of school. I think that would be a really fun career because I could be anywhere in the world as long as I get my work done. So I think, you know, YouTube also plays a big part in that as well in that I can be anywhere in the world and so long as I upload videos, and can upload videos, stuff like that, then I'm good to go. Can't wait for 2017. A lot of things are in the mix. Um, 
it just looks to be a, a much better year than this one. This one was kind of the uh, the very transitiony, transitionary year. A lot of big changes, but now that I'm a bit more established, um, 2017 should, in theory, be a lot smoother. So, with that said, this is the Andy Son signing off for now. Thinking. You guys, poop for tuning into this rambly ass vliggity vlog and for watching my other stuff and for sticking with me through all these changes and being there when uh, I had my stumbling periods and stuff like that. And I look forward to seeing y'all in 2017. And I also want to thank you guys for liking the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. See you in 2017. <laughs> Bye.